This film is purely fictional. Please do not imitate it. Your like and subscribe are the motivation for me to update. Chapter 1 Traveling Through Dakian South of Dakian Jinong City The residence of the Qin family The third class general serving the country As a burst of medicinal fragrance flowed into the tip of his nose Qin Feng Who was lying on the bed Suddenly opened his eyes The antique bedroom The bed with light gauze curtains Everything is so strange The confused Qin Feng shook his head And couldn't help but wonder Where is this place? How did I get here? Young master are you awake? A crisp voice sounded. And Qin Feng looked up and saw a pretty girl dressed as a maid in a green skirt. She was holding a bowl of steaming soup in her hand. I'm going to report to the master and the second madam. The pretty girl was impatient at first sight. She put down the decoction without saying a word and hurried out of the house. Qin Feng wanted to ask something. But seeing the scene, he had no choice but to give up. At this moment, with a stabbing pain in my head, all kinds of information poured into my mind. Qin Feng, a weak scholar from the Dakian dynasty? My father, Qin Jianan, is a third-class general serving the country, and his family now lives in Jinyang City in the south. Qin Feng's eyes widened. Did he travel through time, or was he from a famous family? Before he could be too surprised, more memories emerged. The ancestors of the Qin family once fought with the late emperor of Dachian in all directions, slaying demons and demons, and made great achievements in military service. He was named a third-class general who controlled the country. Later, the title was reduced and hereditary, and he became a first-class auxiliary general, general, then second-class, and third-class. Now, the Qin family, which was originally famous, only has the title of third-class general. Qin Feng's face was complicated. He originally thought that the third-level general serving the country was some kind of high official but he didn't expect that there were generals supporting the country and generals holding the country above him. In this case, wouldn't anyone be able to overpower him? According to Dakian's hereditary system of relegation. In fact, as long as someone in the Qin family can make military exploits, they can still retain the original title or even advance to a higher level. However, except for that ancestor, most of the descendants are mediocre people. So the Qin family gradually withered. This can be especially demonstrated in the original owner's father, Qin Jianan. Originally, the Qin family still lived in Fontian City, the imperial capital, but Qin Jianan felt that the prices in the imperial capital were too high, so he chose to sell his ancestral home and move his family to this remote town in the south. This move shocked many people at the time. You know, there are many people in the Dakian Empire trying to enter the imperial capital Fontian City, and there are very few people in the world who take the initiative to leave the imperial capital. If the ancestors of the Qin family knew about this, they would definitely jump out of the coffin in anger. Talent! Qin Feng couldn't help but sigh. However, why did he travel through time? Is the original owner dead? Qin Feng tried hard to recall and finally understood the whole story. Today is the tenth year of the Ming Dynasty. Demons and ghosts are in chaos. And hundreds of ghosts are walking at night. Even though Dakian has a demon-slaying division to kill demons, and eliminate demons to protect the safety of the people. They are always treating the symptoms, but not the root cause. Five days ago, outside Jinon City, a black fog invaded the city, sucking people's energy and killing people. Several people sent by the Demon Slayer Division in the city never came back. The original owner was depressed at home, and there was no curfew in this small Jinon City, so he liked to walk in the city at night all year round to vent his dissatisfaction. Unexpectedly, he happened to encounter a demon who entered the city to cause trouble. And then, just close your eyes, kick your legs and be scared to death? Qin Feng opened his mouth. This kind of death was really unexpected. From his memory, he finally understood why the original owner was depressed. It turned out that the original owner's biological mother died when she was one year old because of a chronic illness. Qin Jianon later married a second wife and gave birth to an heir. Originally, this was nothing. After all, it was common for the ancients to have three wives and four concubines. However, the strange thing was that the second son of the Qin family was too talented. In this world, in order to fight against demons and ghosts, the human race has various Taoist traditions, such as Bai Gui, Xin Wu, Literary Sage, and Qinan. The second son of the Qin family practices the Xin Wu Taoism because he was born with strong blood and energy, and his muscles and bones were different from ordinary people. He successfully entered the ninth level of body refining at the age of 15. 
then the 8th level of chi training at the age of 16. And now he has reached the 7th level of breath gathering at the age of 18. Even if it were placed in Fontian City, this kind of advancement speed would be amazing. What about the original owner? Not to mention that he has no strength to tie a chicken. Most of what he has learned and heard is just talk on paper. He could have entered the literary sage lineage by studying Wen Dao. However, this scholar has been studying for more than 10 years and has not even entered the realm of building the foundation of the ninth rank of literary sage. After this back and forth and comparison, the original owner naturally felt that his face was dull. At home, he always felt that the servants and maids in the house looked down on him. Even when the second lady and his brother looked at him, the original owner felt that there was naked contempt in their eyes. Because of this, the original owner would be depressed all day long and wander around Jinyang City at night to vent his dissatisfaction. Jin Feng sighed deeply. In his previous life, he had been oppressed by other people's children since he was a child. He didn't expect that in this life. He would be oppressed by his own brother and be unable to hold his head up. But it doesn't matter. I came from time travel and had no talent for cultivation. I was scorned by others at home, targeted by the vicious stepmother, and oppressed by my extremely talented half-brother. Judging from my past life experience, this is all about taking off. The rhythm. Maybe. In a few days, he will be framed by his second mother and his brother, expelled from the Qin family, and then leave behind the heroic words. Thirty years to the east of the river. Thirty years to the west of the river. And he will skyrocket from there. Thinking of this, the corners of Qin Feng's mouth raised unconsciously. And he was a little excited when he thought about it. At this moment, with the sound of hurried footsteps, a person stepped into the door, then quickly came to the bed and grabbed Qin Feng's arm, turning his head and looking around. He saw that the person was wearing a black warrior's corset. He looked handsome, about 18 or 19 years old, and his eyes were bright and lively, making people's hearts beat. Qin Feng was stunned for a moment. His face turned red, and he pulled away his arm and said, Girl, if men and women don't kiss each other, please respect yourself. Even so, my heart was filled with joy. It was rare to see a beauty with such a chiseled face. What was her relationship with him? Could it be that she was his fiancée? But in my memory, I didn't see these. The man in black frowned when he heard this. He turned around and asked, Dr. Song, what's wrong with my brother? He's talking nonsense, and he doesn't even recognize me. If I'm not wrong, I'm afraid that the eldest son is frightened and something goes wrong with the three souls and seven souls. We may need to call someone from the demon slaying department to check. A gray-haired old man said this after thinking for a while. Reply? When Xin Feng heard this, he looked at the man in black with a look of surprise on his face. This man actually called me brother? But there are only two young masters in the Qin family. Doesn't that mean? He is my second brother. Qinan? The original owner had been unable to raise his head in front of this person. So his memory seemed to deliberately not want to remember this person. And his impression of this person's appearance was extremely vague. Incredible. Incredible. Such a delicate appearance. If she puts on women's clothes. Phew. What was I thinking? There were thousands of thoughts in my mind. And the woman's sobs came from the door again. I didn't agree with leaving Fontion City in the first place. The world is so chaotic. Demons are rampant. And nowhere in Dakian is safer than God. But Master, you just refused to listen and insisted on coming to this remote place. Now, if something happened to Fomer, how could I explain it to my deceased sister? Madam, don't cry. All the mistakes you made are my fault. I will go find the people from the demon slaying department and the hundred goes tradition later and let them see if my son's soul is damaged. Jean Fong looked around and saw that the person crying was a beautiful woman of about 35 or 66 years old. Well maintained, with a plump figure and good looks. Standing next to her was a middle-aged man with a resolute face and a handsome appearance. According to memory, one of these two people is his second mother, Meng Shui, and the other is his biological father, Qin Jianan. But the current situation always feels a little different from what I originally thought. What about the evil stepmother who was promised? And the second brother who was promised to kill me? If you care and love me so much, how will the next plot unfold? Chapter 2 Weird Eyes Qin Jianan couldn't hold back the second wife's sobs and hurried to the demon slayer division in the city. The handsome second brother was pacing back and forth beside the bed, constantly blaming himself. The gray-haired doctor saw and knew that there was no use in staying here. So he left a prescription for calming the nerves and then left. Seeing the woman crying, Qin Feng couldn't bear it. 
he wanted to say a few words of comfort. But when the words came to his mouth, his body seemed to be very resistant. It seemed that the original owner of this body really didn't like this mother and son. Two people. Chin Fong coughed dryly and finally said, Second mother, don't cry. I'm fine. I just woke up and my head is still a little groggy. So I mistakenly recognized my second brother and said some nonsense. As soon as these words came out, the sobbing stopped abruptly and Chinan, who kept blaming himself, turned his head and looked up with surprise in his eyes. What did you call me? The two voices said almost in unison. Looking at the disbelieving expressions on the two men's faces, Mom Chin Fong was confused. Second mother? Second brother? Chin Fong asked tentatively, Did he say the wrong thing? Isn't it called this in ancient times? Snapped. A crisp slap sounded, which stunned Chin Fong and also confused Chin In. Mom, why did you hit me? Chin In covered his cheek. Isn't this a dream? Meng Shui looked happy at first. And then she seemed to have thought of something and turned pale. Fonger must have had his soul taken away by that damn demon. Otherwise, why would he suddenly call me, heir, after not speaking for more than ten years? Mother. As soon as the words fell, tears started to flow down like rain. Chin and sighed and consoled him. Mom, Dad has already gone to the Demon Slayer Division. Wait until the Taoist priests from the Hundred Ghost tradition come over. After checking, we will find out that it will not help if you cry like this. Chin Fong twitched the corner of his mouth and worked for a long time. It turned out to be this. The maid in a green skirt was quite discerning. Seeing that the atmosphere in the room was a bit solemn, she took the initiative to get a basin of hot water and came to the bed, intending to wipe Chin Feng's cheeks. I'll do it myself. Chin Fong had never enjoyed such treatment. Feeling uncomfortable, he took the towel, dipped it in hot water, wrung it out, and wiped his cheeks. In the copper basin, the water was clear, reflecting Chin Feng's face, with sword-shaped eyebrows and starry eyes. His appearance was very similar to Chin An's, but it only added a masculine look not to mention anything else. Judging from appearance alone, I should be more suitable for practicing martial arts. And my second brother is more suitable for dancing and writing. Unfortunately, talent has little to do with appearance. At this moment, Chin Fong discovered that there was a golden light flashing in his eyes in the bronze mirror. But when he took a closer look, the golden light disappeared. Could he have seen it wrong? Chin Fong pinched his eyebrows and stared for a moment. He still looked like a normal person. Young master, I think this water is dirty. Why don't you ask Chinger to get another basin? The maid beside asked crisply. No need. Chin Fong shook his head, raised his head, and something unexpected happened. She was originally a pretty girl in a green dress, but now she looked like the outline of a human body. The flow of blood, the beating of the heart, the changes in the bones, and the contraction of the muscles in the outline were so clearly visible. Chin Fong couldn't believe what he saw before him. And then he heard a, yeah, sound, which brought him back to reality. And everything in front of him returned to its original appearance. Chinger's face turned red with embarrassment. She glanced at Chin Fong, then bit her lip and ran away through the door. The other two people in the room both looked shocked. Brother, what are you doing? Fong, you? Ern Yang covered her mouth and hesitated to speak. I, I was too surprised by what I saw just now. So I touched it without thinking. Brother. Chinan looked complicated, and then said earnestly, Before you step into the seventh level realm, it is recommended that you stay a boy. This will be good for your practice. Chin Fong opened his mouth, unable to laugh or cry. He knew that nothing he said at this moment was meaningless. But what exactly is going on? Why can I see the inside of Chinger through her skin and flesh? Is this the golden finger I have traveled through time the clairvoyant's eye? But what's the use of a clairvoyant eye that can't penetrate clothes, and can only penetrate flesh and blood. Am I only allowed to appreciate those skinny beauties? Thinking of this, Chin Fong shook his head regretfully. Having said that, having such an ability is much better than having nothing at all. The key is how did you activate your clairvoyance ability before? Chin Fong lowered his head and pondered, and then concentrated on his eyes. A golden light flashed deep in his pupils, and everything in front of him seemed to have changed. The air is filled with green light spots, like fireflies, which is really beautiful. He turned his head and looked at Chinan, just like he looked at Chinger before, seeing all the details of the other person's inner being directly through his flesh and blood. It has to be said that those who practice Shinwu Taoism are indeed much stronger in blood, energy and muscles than ordinary people. Every beat of Chin An's heart was so powerful, 
And what surprised Jean Fong even more was that there were countless tiny golden veins in the opponent's muscles, extending in all directions. And finally, they were all concentrated in the abdomen. What are those green spots in the air? And what are the golden veins on the second brother's abdomen? Jean Fong searched the memory of the original owner and did not see any relevant introduction. Just at this moment, a voice came from outside the house. Madam, I have brought the master of the demon slaying division's hundred ghosts tradition here. How is Fong doing now? Chapter 3 Demon Slayer Sikong Phylon As footsteps approached, a woman walked into the house. Led by Qin Jianan, Qin Fong looked at the door and then looked stunned. He had never seen such a woman before. Her long black hair stood up on the back of her head and reached her waist. The black scarf covered her beautiful face like a scarf, and her exposed eyes glowed with a faint blue light. Enchanting and heart-stopping, she was wearing tight blue-black trousers that covered her slender thighs and her upper body was only wearing a black vest-style dress, with undulating peaks, revealing two smooth and fair arms. What she wears is far from the conservative style of the ancients. But if she encounters an enemy and kills her, this outfit is exactly the most suitable. I am Song Filin from the Demon Slaying Department of Jinong City. I am trained in the Hundred Ghost Taoism. I was entrusted by General Qin to come to check your soul. Please sit up. The voice was light, without any emotion. Qin Feng responded, then lifted the quilt and sat on the edge of the bed. Song Filin took out a small copper stove from her waist, then took out a fire stick and lit the small copper stove. White smoke emerged from the copper stove, exuding a refreshing aroma. At this time, Qin Feng noticed that there were two daggers and a wooden token hanging on the opponent's waist. On the token, there was a word, John, and three stars engraved on it. Qin Feng knew that this was the Demon Slaying Order of the Demon Slaying Division. Every Taoist who joined the Demon Slaying Division would receive such a token. The Demon Slaying Token is divided into a token, Jade Token, and Red Lotus Token. And each token is divided into one to three stars. The higher the level of the token, the more stars on the token. Which also indicates that the holder of the token has a higher status in the Demon Slayer Division and the stronger his ability. In this small city of Jinong, it is extraordinary for the other party to have a three-star wooden order. This is the soul-fixing incense, which can stabilize the soul. Just sit upright and let me check your three souls and seven souls. Song Filin ordered like this, and then put his fingers together and crossed in front of his eyes. And a green light came from it. The depths of the pupils appear. For those who follow the Taoism of Hundred Ghosts, the ninth level is to eat in. The eighth level is to look at Qi. And the seventh level can open the eyes of ghosts, distinguish ghosts, and recognize souls. At this moment, Song Filin has opened her ghost eyes in order to observe Qin Feng's three souls and seven souls. Everyone in the room held their breath and did not dare to disturb him. Qin Feng swallowed and did not dare to breathe. There are various Taoist traditions and strange abilities in this world. Could the other party, who has practiced the Baigui Taoist tradition, be able to see that he has transformed into a soul and been reborn? Strange. Song Filin frowned slightly. As soon as these words came out, Everyone else in the room was shocked. Mist Song, are my son's three souls and seven souls really damaged? As expected, I knew Fomer's soul was taken away by that demon. Otherwise, why would she call me second mother? The second lady's eyes turned red, and she sobbed again. Hearing this, Qin and clenched his right fist and frowned. Qin Fong was also startled and looked at the other party in confusion. Song Filin shook her head and spoke again. Don't worry. Mr. Qin's three souls and seven souls have not been damaged. But his soul is very powerful. On par with the 8th grade 100 ghost Taoist. Which makes me a little surprised. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when they heard this. Master Qin, do you practice the 100 ghost Taoism? Song Filin asked as she put away the copper stove. Qin Feng thought for a moment and immediately replied. I have been studying since I was a child and wanted to join the literary sage lineage. However, I am not talented enough. Now I am just an ordinary weak scholar. Scholar? I see. When Shang Taoism emphasizes enlightenment with literary energy, no wonder your soul is stronger than ordinary people. Song Filin lowered his head and muttered. However, Dickian advocates martial arts. And most people study Shenwu Taoism and focus on physical training. Even if there are people who major in spiritual soul, they will step into the path of a hundred ghosts like me. There are very few people like Mr. Qin who read the books of sages and intend to step into the path of literary sages. Bai Wei is just a scholar. Qin Feng laughed at himself. 
Hearing this, Song Filin frowned slightly, and a trace of displeasure flashed in her eyes. But she quickly restrained her emotions and returned to her previous cold and frosty look. Yesterday, evil spirits fell into Jinyong City. Except for Mr. Chin, everyone else they met were lost and died on the spot. I still have some questions that I need Mr. Chin to answer. Chin Fong nodded and told all the vague memories of encountering the evil black mist in his mind. When the second lady heard what happened, she sobbed and beat Chin Jianan and said, It's all your fault for selling the ancestral home and moving away from the imperial capital. Otherwise, how could Fong have suffered such danger? It's like walking through age, L. Chin Jianan comforted the second wife while blaming himself. I am useless. After Song Filin recorded what happened, she rolled up the book and saw a white light flash from the three star wood spirit, and the paper in her hand disappeared. Qin Feng's eyes widened when he saw this. This demon slaying order is actually a spatial treasure that can hold objects? It seems that the black mist is an evil spirit that specializes in sucking people's souls. Fortunately, Mr. Qin's soul is different from ordinary people, and Master Cijin arrived just in time to scare away the evil spirit. The leader of the local demon slaying department is called Cijin and he is also the most powerful person. Scared away? Jean Fong grasped the key point and couldn't help asking. Didn't the evil spirit be wiped out by Lord Sijun? When the others heard this, they also looked sideways. Song Filin shook his head and said, The evil spirit is very powerful. It is conservatively estimated that it has at least three levels of calamity power and possesses strange magical powers at great speed. When Lord Sijun arrived, the evil spirit had already disappeared. In the Qian Dynasty, Demons and ghosts use the power of calamity to distinguish the strong and weak. The calamity power of the first level is similar to the ninth level of the human race's Taoism. The second level is similar to the eighth level. And so on. The evil spirit that invaded Jinyang City this time has at least three levels of calamity power. Which means that if you want to kill it with absolute strength, you will have to send out a sixth level Taoist at least. After all, demons and ghosts often give birth to their own natal magical powers after the second round of tribulation. If a human being of the same level is not careful, they will die on the spot. No wonder the curfew was enforced in Jinong City four days ago. The second lady turned pale with fright and clutched Qin Jin on sleeve tightly. Everyone should be more careful these days. Although the Demon Slayer Division has strengthened night patrols, the demon is cunning and accidents will inevitably happen, Song Filin warned, then turned and left. Looking at his mother's frightened look, Qin Jin said, Father! Mother! Brother! Don't worry. As long as I'm here, the Qin Mansion will be safe and sound. While he was speaking, he stepped lightly with his right foot, leaving a shallow footprint on the hard green stone floor. Among the human clan orthodoxy, if we talk about which orthodoxy has the strongest combat power outside of the sixth grade, Xin Wu is the well-deserved number one. Seeing this scene, Qin Feng showed an envious look. If he wanted to survive in such troubled times, he couldn't rely on others. Only when his own strength improved could he feel at ease. Chapter 4 Ancestors Engagement At night, everyone in the Qin family had dinner in the lobby. Qin Feng walked into the hall and sat down on the dining table naturally. The other people were stunned when they saw this. What's wrong? Qin Feng looked at the surprised expressions on several people's faces and asked curiously. Erin Yang's eyes were red and she said, Since you were 10 years old, our family of four has never sat down to have a meal together. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and was in a hurry to eat. He had forgotten that the original owner always felt that he was not welcome at home. So he did not want to sit with everyone at the table. The meals were all brought to the room by the maid Qin'er. But after a day of observation, Qin Feng discovered that everyone in the Qin family did not have any contempt or prejudice towards this good-for-nothing young master. Instead, they cared for him. From this point of view, the impression in the memory was just the inferiority complex of the original owner just causing trouble. I was too naive before. This time I escaped from death and I saw a lot more clearly. I won't be like that again. When several people heard this, their eyes lit up. Qin Jin inside. This accident is not all in vain. At least my son has finally grown up. Erin Yang thought it was really made of water. Tears welling up in her eyes again. This is good. This is good. Qin Jin was about to speak but stopped, then lowered his head to eat but the hidden corner of his mouth was clearly raised slightly. Today is a great day. Ching, please order the kitchen to add another meat dish. Okay, sir. Ching exited the hall, and Ching Fong glanced at the dining table. It was clear soup with only one or two meat dishes. 
It seemed that even if the Qin family moved to this remote place, it did not solve the family's current situation of poverty. From the original memory, Qin Feng finally knew the reason. The second brother Qin is extremely talented and practices Xinwu Taoism. As we all know, the early stage of this Taoism consumes the most money. Not only does it require buying various medicinal baths and blood pills, but also constantly eating animal meat. This is a huge deal for the Qin family, not a small expense, in order to step into the literary sage tradition. She also needed to read various classics and ancient books. The second lady was afraid of favoring one over the other, so she also asked people to find all kinds of books, and even spent a lot of money to buy many unique copies. However, the original owner did not live up to his expectations, but he was well read not even entering the ninth level of root building. But the above two points are not the main reason why the Qin family is living in such a tight situation. The real culprit is the handsome middle-aged man sitting in the center. Obviously he has no talent for business. But he doesn't believe in evil. He sold his ancestral home in the imperial capital and moved his family to Jinyang City. He spent half of his savings to buy Wang Yueju, the largest restaurant in the city, and then fell into business due to business problems. If you are not good, you will suffer losses every month and every year. It would be fine if he had to step back from the brink. But this person obviously has no self-awareness. Every once in a while, he will hire a Taoist from the Demon Slayer Division to escort him to other towns to resell goods. The result is often that he buys at high prices and sells at low prices. Every time I said I would lose nearly a hundred tails of silver, no matter how much wealth you have, you can't afford such squandering. When the whole family eats at the same table, they enjoy themselves happily and the conversation naturally opens up. Er Yang swallowed a mouthful of rice and suddenly asked, Master, a few days ago you went to Chiang Town, a few hundred miles away, to resell grain. Did you gain anything? As soon as these words came out, Qin Feng and Qin and also looked up. Qin Jianan's face froze. And he suddenly smiled and said, Madam, if I didn't say it, I almost forgot. Chiang Town is really a nice place. The scenery there is beautiful, surrounded by mountains and rivers. Fishermen fish at sunrise and rest at sunset. This life really makes me envious. Speaking of which, the boiled fish soup there is delicious. If you have the chance, I will take you to taste it. This topic is too rigid. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and knew without guessing that this transaction must have lost money again. The second mother, Meng Shui, frowned. Master, I didn't ask you this. What I meant was, did you earn any money from this trip? Qin Jianfang ignored him, picked up his chopsticks and kept saying, Eat, eat. If you don't eat this food, it will be cold. Master, Er Nian yelled, obviously angry. Qin Jian uncovered his mouth and coughed. Just when everyone thought he was going to tell how much money he lost on this trip, he pretended to be mysterious and said, Madam, do you still remember the girl from the Lu family in Fontian City? The second mother was stunned. Such an excellent daughter will certainly remember her. But why did you mention her? He actually managed to change the subject. Er Nyang, you asked next. Qin Feng felt a little regretful that he missed watching a big drama. She returned to Fontian City from Wanjin sect. Qin Jianan put down the bowl and chopsticks. Er Nyang was stunned for a moment, then said with a complicated expression, This has nothing to do with us. The Lu family in Feng Tian City is in charge of Mr. Lu, the Duke of Daqianfu. His title is still above the first-class general who governs the country. His ancestors have made great military exploits for Daqian. Even today, the Lu family is still in the imperial capital of Daqian, a powerful combat power. Not only that, the Lu family also gave birth to a good daughter Lu Jianli. Not to mention the beauty and fragrance of the country. The talent and cultivation is even more astonishing. At the age of 15, he entered the seventh level breath gathering realm. He was noticed by the master of Wan Jin sect and was brought into the sect for training. At the age of 16, he advanced to the sixth level of concentration. And one year later, he entered the fifth level of divine walking. Throughout the ages, no one has such a terrifying cultivation speed. And she is also a sword cultivator. You must know that Shin Taoism mainly focuses on body refining, supplemented by weapons. Among them, there are many kinds of side sex. But among the many weapons, the two most commonly used ones are undoubtedly knives and swords. The sword opens and closes widely, extremely domineering. The sword is as fast as lightning, and the sword seals the throat. Even the master of Wanjian sect was full of praise for Lu Jianli's attainments in swordsmanship. 
The latter even threatened that this girl would definitely enter the realm of the sword god in the future. Such a beautiful girl from heaven is naturally the one whom many royal nobles in Feng Tian City admire and admire. Emperor Mingda even drunkenly said that whoever could marry a daughter of the Lu family would ensure the prosperity of the family for hundreds of years. After that, there was an endless stream of royal relatives and relatives proposing marriage to the Lu family. Logically speaking, this kind of family and this kind of beautiful girl from heaven should have nothing to do with the down and out Qin family. But God seems to like to make such a joke. The ancestors of the Lu family and the Qin family had a good relationship. The ancestors of the two families once asked the Tianjian imperial master in Feng Tian City to perform divination. The results revealed that if the offspring of the two families happened to be one boy and one girl, they would be a match made in heaven, and they should get married in Feng Tian. The two ancestors naturally believed what Tianjian imperial master said, and kept these words in mind. But who would have thought that the Lu and Qin families had lived for six generations, and all their children were boys? It was not until Qin Feng's generation that the Lu family gave birth to a girl like Lu Jianli. But times have changed, and these two families have long been in the wrong family. Wouldn't it be a big joke in the world to let a beautiful girl from heaven marry a loser? Naturally. The ancestral precepts of marriage passed down from generation to generation between the two families fell into disrepair. Qin Feng searched his memory, and when he saw this, he couldn't help but sigh. If the Qin family was still in Fo Tian City, maybe the eldest lady of the Lu family would send someone to break off the engagement. At that time, he could leave behind the heroic words of 30 years to the east of the river, 30 years to the west of the river, don't bully young people into poverty, and soared into the sky from then on. However, there is an unreliable father trap. Thinking of this, Qin Feng glanced at the handsome middle-aged man resentfully and picked up the bowls and chopsticks. Actually, Mr. Lu visited the Qin family at night and told me that he wanted to complete the ancestral marriage contract and let Jianli and Feng get married. Qin Jianon's words shocked everyone. Qin Feng just took a mouthful of rice, then spit it out and kept coughing. Ernyang's eyes widened, and Qinan looked up with a look of disbelief. However, I rejected it, Qin Jianan explained. Although the Qin family has been in decline, at least the incense has been passed down from generation to generation. The reason is that they have self-awareness. Do you really think I left the imperial capital because I thought it was too expensive? The three of them nodded. Qin Jianan's face twitched, and he coughed dryly. Of course, this is also a reason. But the main reason is because of this marriage. At the beginning, there were many people in Fo Tian City who proposed marriage to the Lu family. But Mr. Lu refused them one by one because of the ancestral teachings. Mr. Lu is upright and honorable and keeps his promises. But this is not a good thing for our Qin family. That's it. Qin Feng wiped the rice from the corner of his mouth. Thoughtfully. Brother, do you understand? Qin and looked up from the side. Your ability to understand is in vain, and you have the appearance of a scholar. Qin Feng opened his mouth to explain. Every man is not guilty of the crime of harboring a jade. The strength of the Qin family is not worthy of marrying the Lu family. However, the Lu and Qin families are bound by ancestral precepts. Those who seek marriage cannot blame the Lu family. Naturally, they can only blame the Lu family. The Qin family regards him as a thorn in his side. Yes, at the beginning, the Qin family's property in the imperial capital was suppressed everywhere. And even Fomer often encountered accidents and almost died. At that time, I knew that Fon Tian City was not a safe place for my Qin family. Therefore, I sold my ancestral home and moved my family here. There are times when an unreliable father can be reliable. I blamed you wrongly. Qin Feng cast a look of approval. Like a kind father who saw that his child had finally grown up. Seeing that the atmosphere in the hall was a little strange. Qin Jianan picked up the bowls and chopsticks again. Let's eat. Let's eat. It's okay not to mention these things. The second mother and the second brother also moved their chopsticks again. But their expressions became much more solemn. Everyone has a grimace on their faces. How can they still eat this meal? It seems I still have to take action. Qin Feng thought like this and immediately asked. By the way, Dad, how much did you earn during this trip? Puff. After coughing up a mouthful of rice, the atmosphere at the dinner table became cheerful again. Chapter 5 The Literary Style of the Book Early the next morning, just after dawn, Qin Feng was awakened from his sleep by the sound of wind blowing in the yard. Qin Feng got dressed, and walked out of the house. Then he saw Chinan, who was shirtless, holding a narrow-edged knife and waving it over there. The morning light poured down, and the other party's sweat-covered muscles looked gleaming. 
which made Qin Feng really envious. If you have such a figure, why worry about not having a beautiful woman by your side? Brother, are you awake? Qin and stopped waving the blade, wiped the sweat from his forehead, and walked closer. Well, by the way, second brother, I just want to ask you something. If I abandon literature and pursue martial arts, where should I start? Brother, you don't want to read books about sages anymore? Qin Feng sighed. I have been reading books for more than 10 years, and I have not even stepped into the literary initiation or the ninth grade root building. Maybe I am not a material for reading. Second brother, if you are in the Shen Dao lineage, if you have divine help, I would like to. Big brother, try it. What the elder brother said makes sense. Qin and thought for a moment. Then his body sank immediately. He took up his horse stance and explained. Strength starts from the ground. If you want to enter the ninth level body refining realm of Shinwu Taoism, you must first polish your lower body. Pan, big brother, you should learn from me first. Try to step on the horse and see how long you can hold on. Okay. Qin Feng shouted, followed by a gourd and a gourd. He still didn't believe it. He was a time traveler, but he couldn't even hit the horse step. He is a man who wants to become a god of war. After half a stick of incense, Qin Feng leaned against the wall, breathing heavily and sweating like rain. Brother, don't be discouraged. You are very talented for being able to hold on for so long for the first time. Is this true? Of course it's true. Qin Feng's eyes lit up. And I asked why I was so tired. It turned out that everyone was the same. It seemed that Shunwu Taoism was tailor-made for me. By the way, second brother, how long did you last for the first time? Xinan pondered for a while and replied. The first time I walked on horseback was when I was 10 years old. I lasted for about three hours. Huh? Brother, where are you going? Library, are you going to practice Zama step? No more practice. Qin Feng left angrily. If you study martial arts but not literature, you will be a member of the Xia Kingdom in vain. I want to study for the rise of the Qin family. Squeak. The door of the library was pushed open. And at first glance, it was filled with all kinds of books, many of which were high quality and unique books. Qin Feng casually picked up a book called Dakian Map Qi. The content was nothing more than about the geographical division of the Dakian dynasty. He flipped through the pages and had a preliminary understanding of the entire distribution of the Dakian. Due to the rampant demons and demons, the Dakian dynasty was unable to do anything. So the founding emperor divided the entire Dakian territory into five regions. In addition to the central government, which was fully controlled by the dynasty, the four regions in the southeast, northwest and northwest were managed by four princes. Jinong City, where the Qin family is located, is in the southern region and is under the jurisdiction of Prince Luo. By delegating power to the four princes, wouldn't the Qian dynasty be afraid of losing its position? Qin Feng looked through the books and was confused. But he soon got the answer. Outside the four regions of the Dakian territory, there are still foreign races who are eyeing them. The princes of the four regions have to spend a lot of energy to resist the foreign races. So they have no spare time to covet the imperial power. Allowing the four princes to compete with foreign races will not only protect the territory of Dakian, but also consolidate the aloof position of the imperial power. As expected, those who can become emperors are all old foxes. Qin Feng sighed and read the Dakian map. Put it back on the bookshelf. For the next hour, Qin Feng stayed in the library, constantly flipping through books. Through reading, he learned more and more about the world. But he also discovered a fact that frustrated him. Even though I have read more than 10 books, I still don't feel the slightest change in my body. It's no wonder that the original owner has still not been able to enter the ninth level of root building after studying for more than 10 years. It seems that the path of becoming a literary saint is really not that easy. Qin Feng put down the book in his hand and sighed. At this moment, he suddenly thought of something. Song Filan of the Demon Slayer Division once said that the literary saint Taoism emphasizes the initiation of literary energy. But what exactly is this literary energy, and where should it come from? In order to solve this confusion, Qin Feng began to search back and forth in the library. However, among the tens of thousands of books in the study, most of the Taoisms involved are about gods, warriors, and hundreds of ghosts. Even if they mention the Taoism of Wenxing, they are only mentioned in a few words. Ba, vulgar warrior. Qin Feng spat. This result was also what he expected. Dikian used force to rule the country and secure the country. Compared with the gods, warriors and ghosts, 
the number of people from the Wenshang Taoism was pitifully small. Naturally, there were few people on the market. Books on the practice of literary saints. Is it true that the path of Wenshang Dao Tong is dead? As soon as he finished speaking, a golden light flashed in Qin Feng's eyes, and the whole world became different. In addition to the green light spots he had seen before, he was surprised to find that there was also a faint white light emitting above each book. Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva, somewhat in disbelief. Isn't this white light a symbol of Wenchi? Chapter 6 Second Brother Watch my literary initiation. I really couldn't find anything after trying hard to find it. And it took no effort to get it. I didn't expect that this so-called literary spirit is far away and right in front of me. But after feeling happy, Qin Feng's face froze. And then he fell into deeper despair. The original owner had been studying for more than 10 years. But he still failed to absorb the literary spirit from these thousands of books. How could he do it? Qin Feng's mood at this moment was like that of a eunuch who had just entered the palace and saw a graceful woman lying on the bed, constantly waving and calling, Master, come and play. I feel itchy and unbearable, but also extremely helpless. No, I have to calm down and not be impatient. At least now, I have found where the Wen Chi lies. The next thing I have to do is to find a way to activate Wen Chi for initiation. Qin Feng took a deep breath and began to analyze continuously. First of all, just reading books will definitely not arouse the literary spirit. This has been confirmed by the original owner. But the literary spirit is in the book. Reading is useless. Do you want me to eat it? In this way, wouldn't it be true that you are full of knowledge? Qin Feng glanced at the thumb-thick book in his hand, then glanced at the entire library, and swallowed subconsciously. If I really want to eat it, I'm afraid I won't succeed in arousing the literary spirit, and I will be choked to death by the pages of this book. This method will definitely not work. Is there something wrong with the way you study? Qin Feng's eyes suddenly lit up. In his memory, although the original owner spent more than 10 years reading through all the thousands of books in the study, he could only have an impression of them, and he did not reach the point of memorizing them by heart or understanding them thoroughly. Perhaps, as long as you memorize every word of a book, you can arouse the literary spirit in the book? The more Qin Feng thought about it, the more it made sense. He was about to try it, but when he saw the full page of text and the thick pages, he gave up. If you want to memorize such a thick book without missing a word, even if you are as smart as me, it will take at least a few months. If it works, that's fine. If it doesn't, wouldn't it be a waste of time? Just when Qin Feng was struggling, something unexpected happened. Under his golden eyes, the words on the pages seemed to have come to life, constantly flowing into his mind. After just a glance, he could remember exactly what was on the pages. This, Qin Feng was stunned at first, and then was extremely surprised. I didn't expect that these eyes could be of such use. In this way, it only takes a while for me to memorize this book. In order to verify his conjecture as soon as possible, Qin Feng did not waste any time and began to flip through the pages of the book quickly. Within a moment, he understood all the contents in the book. At the same time, the faint white light above the books turned into lines and connected to the top of his head. As if rain was dripping continuously, Qin Feng suddenly felt refreshed. He closed his eyes and concentrated, carefully feeling the changes in the literary energy in his body. But he saw a dry waterfall appear out of thin air in his consciousness. And the trace of literary energy also evolved into a trickle as thick as a little finger. Seeing this, Qin Feng thought thoughtfully, Literary Qi Initiation. Literary Qi Initiation. I understand. If you want to step into the ninth level of literary saints root building realm, you only need to activate enough literary chi to fill this waterfall. That being the case, Qin Feng was extremely excited when he discovered the direction of his cultivation. He did not want to waste any time and began to quickly read through the books in the room. Time also passed by unknowingly. At night, the sky is full of stars. In the lobby of the Qin mansion, Aaron Yang picked up the bowls and chopsticks and put them down again before taking a bite. Where is Fonger? I haven't seen him in a day. I met my eldest brother in the morning. He went to the library at that time. I don't know where he is now. Chinan said after swallowing the food. Library? You can't stay there for a whole day. Right? Chinger at the door immediately replied. Reporting to Madam. The eldest young master is still in the library. He told me before that he didn't want to waste his time reading. So he won't have dinner. Chin Jianan, who was sitting in the seat, was thoughtful when he heard the words but didn't say much. But the second mother beside him was extremely distressed. Isn't this nonsense? 
no matter how hard you try. You can't stop eating. Right? Master, go and persuade him. It's a good thing that Fonger can work hard like this. Why should we bother him? Just ask the kitchen to leave some food for him. Later, when he gets tired from reading, he will naturally ask Chinger to warm up the food for him. That's all. That's all. The next day, before dawn, Chinen got up and went to the yard to practice his sword skills. However, before his sword was unsheathed, he saw Chinger running anxiously in front of him. Second young master, please go to the library and have a look. The eldest young master seems to be crazy. He stayed out all night and kept reading books there. He didn't listen to Chinger's advice. What? When Chinen heard this, he immediately ran towards the library without even bothering to practice his sword skills. After a while, the two came outside the library and looked inside the room. Sure enough, they saw Chin Fong running back and forth with excitement on his face. Every time the latter picked up a book, he just glanced at it, then put it back where it was before quickly picking up the next one and flipping through it again. It looks like he is reading a book. Did the eldest brother have his soul stolen by the evil spirit a few days ago? Chinan was shocked and immediately ordered, Chinger, go find my father and mother quickly, and I will stop the eldest brother. Chinger nodded in agreement, not daring to delay, and hurried towards the master's house. And Chinan, without saying a word, walked to Chin Feng's side and grabbed the other person's wrist. Brother, what on earth are you doing? Chin Feng was stunned for a moment, saw the appearance of the person clearly, and shouted, Second brother, let go. This is the critical moment. After a day and a night of hard work, he had memorized nearly 10,000 books, seeing that the waterfall in his mind was about to be filled with literary energy. He naturally did not want to be interrupted by others. But when Chin and saw Chin Feng's bloodshot eyes, he thought that the latter was really crazy and refused to let go no matter what. Chin Feng was so angry that he gritted his teeth. Obviously, as long as you finish reading this book in your hand, your literary spirit will fill the waterfall. What kind of trouble is this bastard here to cause? In desperation, Qin Feng took advantage of his plan. He looked at the door with a horrified look on his face and shouted, Second brother, be careful. When Qin An saw this, he thought something terrible was coming behind him. He hurriedly mobilized his energy, blood and muscles to turn around and deal with it. But the moment he turned around, there was no danger. The door was clearly empty. When Qin An turned his head again, he saw that his elder brother had turned to the last page of the book and then laughed maniacally with excitement on his face. I succeeded. I succeeded. In my mind, as the last trace of literary energy merged into the waterfall, white light suddenly appeared and the water flowed down. Qin Feng understood that this was a precursor to Wenqi initiation. Unable to suppress the excitement in his heart, he immediately pointed his finger at the sky and shouted, Second brother, Watch me receive the literary chi initiation and step into the ninth rank of literary sage. However, what he didn't expect was that the originally filled waterfall shrank to one-tenth of its original size in an instant after the white light emerged. What was even more embarrassing was that my father and mother-in-law arrived at exactly this moment and saw the strange scene. Chin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. Father! Mother! Second brother! I can explain! Chin and ignored it, dodged and directly controlled Chin Feng. Er Yang said anxiously. Go to Dr. Song quickly. Qin Jianan also said. I'll go to the demon slaying department and ask Miss Song to come and check. Chapter 7 Healing Diseases Qin Feng was lying on the bed. His hands and feet were tightly tied. And two pieces of cloth, one black and one white, were stuffed in his mouth. Qin An said that the reason why he fortified Bai Bu was because he was afraid that his eldest brother would become mad and bite his tongue to commit suicide. The second mother thought it made sense but felt that a piece of white cloth was not tight enough. So she stuffed an extra piece of black cloth. Qin Jian originally wanted to stuff another piece. But after several attempts, he found that it really couldn't fit anymore. So he could only shake his head sadly. As if he, the head of the family, had been outclassed. Qin Feng was extremely uncomfortable on the bed and could only keep struggling. The gray-haired Dr. Song was still checking the whites of his eyes. And his upper body was also covered with silver needles of different lengths. Looks like a hedgehog. Qin Feng was full of grievances. But he couldn't express his pain. So he could only vent his anger on the Wenqi waterfall in the Divine Sea. He clearly saw that the waterfall was filled with Wenqi. And he also clearly saw the white light suddenly appearing in the waterfall. But why did the Wenqi suddenly shrink to one-tenth of its original size? Doesn't this mean that if you want to truly fill the waterfall, 
You mean to memorize at least 90,000 more books? What a joke. No wonder there are few people in Dakian who study Wenxiang Taoism. Memorizing 10,000 books by heart takes at least 10 years. Memorizing 100,000 books is so familiar that half of one foot has to step into the coffin board. Good. After complaining in his heart, Qin Feng calmed down. Anyway, he has these eyes. And it will only take more than 10 days to memorize 90,000 volumes of books. The problem now is that he has memorized all the books in the library. Where can he find the remaining books? You know, Da Qian worship martial arts but not literature. It is not easy to find so many books. At this moment, Qin Feng suddenly discovered that Demon Slayer Si Song Filin, who was invited by his father, was standing motionless in the center of the house, and her light blue eyes were staring at her from beginning to end. He? What's happening here? Could it be that she was finally impressed by my handsome appearance? Qin Feng was a little excited. After all, a dashing beauty like Song Filin was exactly what he liked. Not to mention anything else. Just those long legs wrapped in blue and black trousers. He can play with them all his life and never get tired of them. But while he was excited, Qin Feng glanced at himself from the corner of his eye. At this moment, he was not even remotely handsome. A terrible thought suddenly emerged. Does she have some special hobby? Qin Feng's whole body was agitated. If this was really the case, would he resist with all his strength? Or should he close his eyes and endure it silently? So confused. Miss Song, is my son's soul damaged? Qin Jianan asked. Hearing this, Song Filin shook her head. All three souls and seven souls are still there and have not been damaged. Dr. Song, did you see anything? Erin Yang asked anxiously. The gray-haired old man shook his head. I checked Mr. Qin's body and everything is normal. Qin Feng nodded desperately to express his approval. This old man also had some medical skills. Unexpectedly, the other party changed the topic. But from your description, Mr. Qin's soul is here. But he behaves strangely and talks crazy. It is very likely that he was too frightened in the past few days and suffered from hysteria. The old man suggested that Mr. Qin should be tied to the bed like this. And he should be observed for a while longer. When Mr. Qin's condition improves, he could be untied. Qin Feng's eyes widened. Quack. You quack. Immediately, the struggle became more intense. And he kept making grunting sounds from his mouth. When Dr. Song saw this, he hurriedly called out. Hurry! Hold him down quickly. He is having another symptom. Let me do it. Qin Jianan took out a wrist-thick hemp rope from nowhere and fixed Qin Feng to the bed with a satisfied smile on his face. At this moment, Song Filin suddenly said, I think he has something to say. Why not take out the cloth from his mouth and listen to what he has to say and then make a judgment? Qin Feng nodded desperately. But what if the cloth is taken out and the eldest brother goes crazy and bites his tongue to commit suicide? Qin and expressed uneasiness. It doesn't matter. If something goes wrong, I will put the cloth back again. Qin Jian and took out a piece of linen cloth from his arms and showed an eager expression. That's all it can do. The cloth in his mouth was taken out, and Qin Feng exhaled heavily, in order to prevent himself from being misunderstood as hysterical again. He tried his best to calm his tone. Father, mother, second brother, I am not sick. I really touched the ninth grade literary saint at that time threshold. That's why I shouted excitedly. You must believe me. Dr. Song immediately shook his head. People who suffer from hysteria often say that they are not sick. Mr. Chin, this statement cannot be believed. I think so too. Then I put linen cloth in his mouth? Wait. Chin Feng stopped him. It seemed that no matter how he tried to defend himself, he had to find a way to prove himself. He turned his head to look at Dr. Song, and suddenly a golden light flashed in his eyes. He knew the doctor's physical condition in an instant. Dr. Song, do you often have cold hands and feet at night? And feel dizzy and hot? Sometimes you get dizzy when you squat down and then stand up again. Dr. Song looked surprised and immediately said tremblingly, You? How do you know? Oh, the so-called slow pulse. Blood not nourishing sweat. White tongue. Blood not nourishing liver. You are obviously a sign of weak chi and blood. How should I heal this? Qin Feng's lips slightly raised. It's very simple. According to the book, miscellaneous talks on hundreds of diseases. In a situation like yours, you should spend five qian for a racy, one and a half qian for lily, two qian for two cho xing ma, and one lian for prunella vulgaris. Use colt's foot flowers as a medicine guide. Then use civil and military fire to repeatedly fry each other. 
and finally boil it with eight bowls of water to make one bowl, ensuring that the medicine will cure the disease. Is there such a thing? No, it's impossible. I have also read the book. Miscellaneous talks about all diseases. But I don't remember this description. Dr. Song's expression changed. How could he, an old doctor, admit that his skills were inferior? People, if you want to judge whether what I said is wrong, you will know after a while. Shinger, go to the library. Enter the third bookcase on the right side of the door, in the fourth row, and get the seventh book on it. Chinger left in response, and the others were shocked. There were dozens of bookcases in the library, containing thousands of books. How could Ching Fong remember the location of the books so clearly? It didn't take long before Chinger took back. Miscellaneous talks on all diseases. Ching Fong looked confident. Dr. Song, turn the book to page 37 and see what is written on the seventh line. Dr. Song was still in disbelief. He slowly opened the book. The others also looked at the pages with curious faces. As a result, the location of the content was exactly what Qin Feng said. Snapped. The book fell to the ground. And Dr. Song staggered. I didn't expect that I have been studying medical skills for decades. But I am not as good as Mr. Qin. Mr. Qin has a clear mind. I think he is not hysterical. So I resigned first. Qin Jianong wanted to say a few words of comfort. But he didn't know how to speak. He could only say, walk slowly. Then he glanced at the linen in his hand and reluctantly stuffed it back into his waist. Seeing this, Qin Feng finally breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, a wisp of literary energy in his divine sea suddenly grew stronger, becoming approximately ten times the size before. This sudden change frightened him. Is this the style of writing in the book? Miscellaneous talks about all diseases. Chapter 8 Leaving the House the literary spirit in this book has been absorbed by me for a long time. So why did it suddenly become stronger? Is this related to the fact that I just used the content in the book to treat Dr. Song's illness? Wait, I seem to understand that if you want to absorb the literary spirit of the book, memorizing it by heart is the first step. Then, if you can apply what you have learned in the book, you can attract more literary spirit into your body. Qin Feng was very excited about this discovery. He even considered whether to open a small medical clinic of his own to treat diseases and save people. In this way, wouldn't the literary spirit come rolling in? Brother, you won't write down all the books you read in the library. Right. Chin and remembered Chin Feng's state when he was reading and couldn't help asking. Oh, what's so difficult about this? I've been studying for more than 10 years without any results. I just want to make progress step by step and accumulate more knowledge. But brother, yesterday morning, didn't you tell me that you would give up literature and join the martial arts? Song Filin frowned slightly, and a trace of displeasure flashed in her light blue eyes. Qin Feng coughed dryly. Superficial. You can't even see my good intentions. I did it to let you remember the first time you entered the Shinwu Taoism. And to tell you a truth haste makes waste in everything. Only by forgetting your original intention can you achieve success. That's it. Brother. I understand. Feeling the adoring gaze of his second brother. Qin Feng expressed his calmness. But in his heart, he thought that Wu Fu was still pure in mind. Since I'm not sick, why are you still tying me up? Mom and Dad, please untie me quickly. Ouch. Please slow down and pull out the silver needle first. Qin Feng, who had regained his freedom, twisted his wrists. During the process of untying himself, he also explained his discovery of the Wensheng Dao tradition to his family. After hearing this, Er Nyang could only think for a moment. According to what Fonger said, as long as more books can be bought, Fonger can borrow the literary spirit from the books and step into the ninth rank of literary saint. Master, what are you waiting for? Quickly take out the silver coins at home and collect books for Fonger. Jean Jianon's face twitched and he hesitated. Madam, Jinan City is a remote town. Not as good as Fontian City, the imperial capital. Where could I find so many books? What's more? You also know that the evil spirits that invaded the city a few days ago have not yet been found. Ordinary people rarely go out now. Our Wanyu residence has no business at all. Our Qin family can hardly afford even a nurse medicinal baths and blood pills. After what his father said, Qin Feng simply summed it up no money. Father! Mother! I have encountered a bottleneck in the seventh level breath gathering realm. I won't be able to use medicinal baths and blood pills in a short period of time. You should spend your money on buying books for your eldest brother. After hearing this, several people looked at Qin'en. Qin Feng covered his chest. For such a sensible second brother, 
he actually suspected that the other party wanted to kill him. He really felt guilty in his conscience. It doesn't have to be like this. Although Wang Yueju has not had much business recently, I have recently thought of a way to make a fortune. When the time comes, I will just... Before the words fell, several people hurriedly spoke out. Master, my family is short of money recently. Please stop wasting money. Dad, it's better to save your money to buy books for my eldest brother. Dad, you are really not a business person. You must be a little self-aware. Qin Jianon was anxious, blushing and saying, What do you know? What matters in business is the right time, the right place, the right people, and the right people. The last few times I suffered losses were all because of bad luck. Er Nyang ignored it and just rolled her eyes. Qin Jianon sighed and looked down at his toes. Sure enough, making money has to rely on me as a time traveler. Qin Feng shook his head. When he was thinking about where to start, Song Filin, who had been ignored in the house, spoke. If you just want to read a book, I know a place to go. However, it's not easy to get in. You can try with me. Qin Feng followed Song Filin and left the Qin mansion. This was the first time he went out since time travel. I just took this opportunity to take a look at the environment of Jinyang City and assess the purchasing power of the people here. You know, doing business depends on your brain. If you were like your father and took food to a fishing village where there was no shortage of food to sell it, you would be damned if you could make money. It was approaching noon, and people were coming and going on the street. Both sides were filled with the shouts of vendors. This scene was very similar to the along the river during the Qingning festival I had seen in my previous life. Qing Feng carefully observed his surroundings, intending to find future business opportunities, but his eyes were always inadvertently attracted to the beauty in front of him. Hey, there are people selling coal there. After all, the weather has turned colder. But the coal is so white. Oh, is this the scallion pancake sold in ancient times? This scallion pancake is really delicious. There is even stinky tofu. It smells so good. And these legs. Snapped. Qin Feng slapped himself immediately. What's wrong? Song Filin turned her head away when she heard the commotion. Those light blue eyes were so breathtaking no matter how many times she looked at them. Calm down. I want to be calm. After all, I was also a car god in Chiu Ming Shan in my previous life. I have never seen any big winds and waves. So I must keep calm. Mosquito. It's almost November. So it's strange that there are still mosquitoes. Song Filin said lightly. Who says it isn't? Qin Feng coughed dryly. And his eyes followed the long legs swinging back and forth unconsciously. At this moment, not far ahead, a chicken crow suddenly came. Qin Feng looked for the sound and then paused. In an elegant attic, a group of warblers and swallows lean on the railing and look at the passing pedestrians with smiles. Several beautiful girls with sharp eyes caught a glimpse of Qin Feng, and they immediately brightened up, waved their embroidered handkerchiefs, and shouted softly, Sir, it's freezing cold. Why don't you come in and sit down? How unbecoming it is to do this in broad daylight. Qin Feng subconsciously reached out and touched the money bag at his waist. And then sighed heavily. Where did he get the money bag? But even if he had money, he would definitely not go. After all, he has not yet reached the seventh level. The belief in making money and improving cultivation seems extremely strong at this moment. Sure enough, desire is the strongest driving force for human progress. Before Song Filin stopped, there was already a slight distance between the two. Qin Feng saw this and hurriedly followed. When the pretty girls saw the handsome young man approaching, they shouted even harder. If they had the choice, they would naturally prefer to receive such a handsome young man. Unexpectedly, at this moment, Song Filin suddenly raised his head, his light blue eyes flickering. The girl upstairs felt a chill down her spine, and her voice reached her throat. But she couldn't come out. It wasn't until Song Filin and Song Filin walked away that they recovered. This was the first time they encountered such a strange thing. Qin Feng followed Song Filin closely and walked through seven or eight alleyways until he came to a mahogany attic. On the attic door, there is a plaque with three big characters engraved on it Ting Yushuan. This is it. Song Filin stopped and narrowed her eyes. Chapter 9 Couplet Next to the door of the attic, an old man with gray hair and gray robe was lying on a wicker chair with his eyes closed swinging the paper fan in his hand leisurely. When he heard the movement, he opened his eyes to look, and then sneered. You really don't give up. You obviously don't have the ability to come in. But you still come every day. Aren't you tired? Oh, you brought a helper? 
The white-haired old man noticed Qin Feng behind Song Filin and was about to taunt. But when the words came to his lips, the old man seemed to have discovered something. His eyes widened and he jumped out of the wicker chair. Sit up. Such a thing can happen. Boy, what's your name? This person is so rude. He even called me a kid. Why am I kid? Qin Feng frowned. Old man, if you want to know other people's names, should you introduce yourself first? Hearing this, Song Filin looked sideways, her eyes seeming to say, I didn't expect you to be so talented. The white-haired old man was also stunned, then smiled and said, I have lived for so long, and you are the second person who dares to talk to me like this. Boy, listen clearly. My surname is Bailey. As for my name, I won't say it. I know. It's not good for you. Damn it. Why is this old man so arrogant? And Miss Song's eyes? I won't accidentally offend some big boss. Right? Qin Feng swallowed a sip of saliva and immediately changed his attitude and said respectfully, Senior, I was joking. Just now, I was disrespectful of my courtesy. My name is Qin Feng, and I am a scholar. Qin Feng, the old man murmured, his eyes meaningful. After a moment, he lay back on the wicker chair. The rules are the same as before. If you can match the second couplet, you will be let in the old man said leisurely, fanning himself. Come on the question. Song Filin pondered for a moment, but her tone didn't sound very confident. Old man Bailey tapped the wicker chair with his right index finger. Within a moment, a white scroll flew out of the attic and landed lightly in front of Song Filin. Sheen Fong was curious and looked down, only to see clearly written on the white scroll heaven is the chessboard and the stars are the pieces. Who dares to play? Oops. What a big breath. Have you chewed Yida? Qin Feng is naturally familiar with this couplet. In his previous life, he was considered a top scholar. This couplet was written by Li Shangchu of the Ming Dynasty to make things difficult for the chief minister of the cabinet. It has a grand and heroic conception. He just didn't expect that there were people in this world who could make the same couplet. Words can reflect people's hearts. It can be seen that the people in the first couplet are either in high positions or have lofty ambitions. Song Filin saw the content on the white scroll clearly and frowned slightly. She stood there thinking for a long time. But there was no movement for a long time. This second line is not right. Miss Song may have missed Qin Feng standing aside. Although he knew how to answer the second line, he did not say anything. This rule still needs to be followed. Don't waste your efforts. Today's first couplet is much more difficult than before. You can't even answer the previous ones, let alone today's one. There was obviously some gloating in the tone of the old man Bailey. Qin Feng glanced at it. This bad old man was really bad. He actually liked to bully a girl. It's just a couplet. If you can't answer it, you can't answer it. I think Miss Song won't care too much. Qin Feng originally thought so. But unexpectedly, there was a slight sob beside him. What's the situation? Qin Feng was shocked and looked away. Only to see Song Filin holding his arms and his body trembling slightly. Looking at the water mist in the other person's light blue eyes. It was obvious that he was about to cry out of grievance. Hey, hey, hey. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a couplet that doesn't match up. And it's not like my husband is dead. So why should it be like this? He always thought that a brave and beautiful woman like Song Filin should be like an assassin in the ancient night, whose mood would not be affected by external objects. But he never thought that the latter would be like an exam. Just like the little girl who failed. Her psychological defense was broken because she didn't match the couplet. Miss Song, are you okay? You don't need to worry about it. I will make the second line right away. Song Filin replied stubbornly. The mist in her eyes had condensed into water droplets, swirling in her eye sockets. Time passed minute by minute. And with Song Filin's ability, it was natural that she couldn't answer the second line. Old man Bailey yawned and said disdainfully, Go back early. Don't delay my efforts. You bad old man. Why are you so arrogant? How can you bear to bully such a beautiful woman? Thinking of this, Qin Feng immediately said, Miss Song, you have helped me twice before. I never like to owe others favors. Why don't you leave this couplet to me? Song Filin raised her head. Her already enchanting eyes seemed to be able to melt even stubborn rocks under the reflection of water mist. Can you tell me? The tone was not as cold as before, but had a strange feeling. Qin Feng straightened up, coughed and said, I can give it a try. Senior Bailey, can I answer for her? The white-haired old man still waved his fan leisurely. It's not that I look down on you. But even if there are ten more of you, you still can't forgive me for this second line. 
This bad old man has a really venomous mouth. If I were practicing Shin Taoism, I would definitely beat him up. Qin Fong clenched his left fist and said with a smile. What if this junior can fight against him? Then let you two go in together. It's a deal. Qin Fong waved his sleeves and asked immediately. Do you have any pen and ink? So what if I give it to you? Old man Bailey tapped his finger on the wicker chair. And a pair of white scrolls and a brush dipped in ink flew out of the attic. Qin Fong took the brush and spread the white scroll in front of him. The hand holding the brush was hanging in the air. But it still didn't come down. How is this going? I clearly know what the second line is. But the pen in my hand seems not to obey my command and cannot be put down at all. Old man Bailey looked sideways. Thinking that Qin Fong couldn't answer the second line. So he was making a fuss. Young man! You don't know how high the sky is. Can this be tolerated? Qin Feng's eyes widened. He gritted his teeth and the veins on his right hand popped out. The pen that had not been written down finally started to move. At the same time, in the Divine Sea, the winchy waterfall began to churn, turning into water and flowing towards the brush in Qin Feng's hand. Old Man Bailey suddenly felt something was wrong, and the fan in his hand stopped swinging. He opened his eyes wide and saw the first word written on the white scroll. This is... Qin Feng's right arm trembled. Sweat dripped from his forehead like rain. And he wrote the second word with difficulty, Zwa. Then comes the third word. Then the fourth word. Qin Feng only felt that what he was holding in his hand was not a brush, but a huge stone. As the number of words increased, the huge stone became heavier and heavier. By the time the seventh word came down, the brush seemed to weigh 10,000 kilograms. Tick tock, tick tock. Blood was dripping from his two fingers. Seeing this, old man Bailey shouted hurriedly, Boy, stop writing. With your current ability. You can't bear it. Qin Feng ignored it and instead shouted loudly. In the divine sea, the winchy waterfall began to boil, like a volcano erupting, surging into the tip of the pen. The pressure on his fingertips suddenly decreased, and he immediately started writing vigorously. When the last word of the second line was finished, a white pillar rose into the sky above the white scroll. Qin Feng felt as if all his strength had been drained and he collapsed on the ground. At this moment, he felt as if his entire right arm was not his. Old man Bailey dodged and came to Baiwan with a look of horror on his face. On the other side, Song Filan looked at the lower couplet on the white scroll with bright eyes. Under the black scarf, her red lips parted slightly, and she couldn't help but murmur. The ground is a pipa, and the road is a string. Who can play it? Chapter 10 Joining the Cabinet Bailey old man waved his sleeves, and two white scrolls floated up, and they glowed with white light at the same time reflecting each other. The old man held the white scroll in his hand and looked back and forth. He really couldn't put it down. Chin family boy, I underestimated you. Huh? Chin Feng sneered and cherished his words like gold, showing off his superior demeanor. This feeling of being looked down upon and then slapped in the face was so satisfying. Even though the price was a bit high, he still hasn't recovered yet. But what happened just now? He obviously just wanted to write the second line but there was a strong resistance hindering him. If it weren't for the support of Shanghai Chinese Qi, he might not be able to write a word at all. Song Filan looked at the second couplet in the old man's hand. Her light blue eyes seemed to be shining. She was obviously very happy, but she said something that she didn't mean. Not bad, but if you give me more time, I can do it. Come up with Chin Fong, the strong song girl in life, twitched the corner of his mouth and refused to comment. This couplet is good. But it's a pity that the word in the second couplet is really ugly. Old man Bailey sighed. You know what the HL. My name is Quan Kao. Chin Feng's face turned red, and he was still defending himself in his heart. Calligraphy is about characteristics, and different people have different opinions. Yes, it is like that. According to the previous agreement, you two can go in together. Old man Bailey coughed dryly, naturally rolled up the lower couplet, and wanted to put it in his arms. At this time, Song Filan stretched out her white arm and placed it in front of the old man. What to do? The old man looked wary. Song Filan returned to her previous cold and heroic appearance and said calmly, This second line was written by him. Why did you put it away and bring it? You girl, this second couplet is not of much use to you. You have nothing to fight with me for. If you can't do it, how about I give the first couplet to you? I can still distinguish the value of original treasures from imitations. Qin Feng was puzzled by what he heard. There was no mention of any imitation of the original treasure in the book. But this bad old man wanted his second couplet so much. 
Could it be that that thing was really some kind of treasure? No. The old man began to cheat, holding the lower couplet of the white scroll in his arms like a protective calf. If I remember correctly, your dragon beard pen is almost used up. Song Phylon narrowed his eyes slightly. Hearing this, the old man's eyes widened, and then he struggled with his expression. Finally, he reluctantly put the lower couplet in his hands. Superior, Jean Fong saw the scene and Monk Jonger was confused. But he really didn't expect that Miss Song would fight for her own things with the arguments of that bad old man who looked unusual at first sight. It seems that she must have me in her heart. I'm so happy. After his body slowed down a bit, Jean Fong stood up and patted the dust off his body. He was about to reach out to take the second couplet when he saw Song Phylon put the white scroll of the second couplet into the demon slaying order at her waist without changing her expression. The hands hanging in the air looked so embarrassed. Forehead. What's wrong? Miss Song. My second couplet. Second line. What second line? That is. Don't waste your time. Let's go in early. Jean Fong stood frozen on the spot for a moment. Old man Bailey sneered. Lay down on the wicker chair again and waved his fan leisurely. This ending seemed to have been expected by him. Song Phylon ignored it and moved first, followed closely by Qin Feng. The two of them stepped into the gate of Tinjiakshuan one after the other. The old man reminded, You are only allowed to browse the lower three floors. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows when he heard this. From the outside, the attic only had three floors. What the old man said was really incomprehensible. But when he completely stepped into the attic, he couldn't help but be stunned by the sight in front of him. The style of the attic was like a spiral staircase in Western Europe, with each floor showing a circle. The surrounding walls were covered with all kinds of books. The number is simply uncountable. Looking up, the attic that looks small on the outside is actually nine stories high inside. At the top of the attic, white mist shrouded, making it difficult to see clearly, as if it was the peak of a mountain reaching deep into the clouds. How is this possible? Jean Fong looked in disbelief. This object is a treasure. It forms a space of its own. What you see outside is just its appearance. Song Phylon looked around, with a hint of excitement in her light blue eyes, under the black square scarf that covered her face. There was still a trace of a slight swallowing sound was made. I'll walk around and find some food. You can do whatever you want. Song Phylon left these words and left. Looking for something to eat? Is there anything else here besides books? Jean Fong looked confused and looked at Song Phylon. The latter had already climbed up the stairs to the second floor. That's all. Reading is more important. If I can memorize all the books here, even if the literary energy I absorb can't help me log into the ninth rank, it won't be too far off. Jean Fong suppressed his excitement and concentrated on his eyes. A golden light suddenly flashed in his eyes. Then he didn't waste a moment and began to quickly read through the books on the first floor. Beside the gate of Tinjiuxuan, the old man Bailey crossed his legs and squinted his eyes leisurely. The breeze blew by, blowing the white hair on his forehead, and the corners of his mouth suddenly raised slightly. Time flies by quietly. When it comes, the sun is still shining in the sky. In the blink of an eye, the sun is already fading. Qin Feng's movements never stopped, and the books in his hands changed one after another. Ting Yushuan is really amazing. There are many kinds of books, and each one is of high quality. The contents are detailed and there are many annotations. In an environment like Dickian Dynasty that worship martial arts, it was not easy to collect these. Then what is the identity of the old man? Why would he stay in a remote place like Jinong City? When he was confused, Jin Feng didn't notice that a book on the right automatically moved its position and was transferred to his hand. After he finished reading the current book, he picked it up and the book fell into his hands. Chao and Jing? The title of the book is quite interesting. Qin Feng flipped through the book and was about to read ten lines at a time. But what he saw on the first page made him freeze on the spot. This is actually a book about Wenshang Taoism. The opening page of the homepage reads everything is inferior. Only reading is superior. Qin Feng's eyelids jumped when he saw this. If someone from Shenwu or Baigui Taoist saw these words, they would definitely tear this book to pieces. He even speculated that there were almost no books about Wenshang Tao tradition on the market in Dakian. Could it be because the contents in them were so unflattering? Most scholars in ancient times thought they were noble. This phenomenon seems to have not changed much even in Dakian who worship Wu. The pages of the book turned quickly. Qin Feng read with great interest and gained a deeper understanding of the Wenshang Taoism. Before, he only knew that the ninth rank of literary sage was to build the root and the eighth rank was to enlighten the mind. 
but he did not know what the next realm was called. And there was a corresponding record in this, Chao and Jing. Seventh level of righteousness. Sixth level of hexagram destiny. Chapter 11 Chao and Jing. This book introduces that the ninth level of literary saints builds the foundation, which is to stimulate the literary spirit, inject it into the sea of spirits, gain enlightenment, and accumulate foundation. The eighth grade of clear mind means that when the literary spirit has accumulated to a certain level, there will be a test of asking questions to establish the ambition in the heart. The seventh grade righteousness and the sixth grade hexagram destiny are related to the ability of Wenshun Taoism. When one reaches the seventh level of literary sage, the literary chi in the body will travel throughout the body and turn into righteous chi. All evils will be avoided and all poisons will not invade. As for the sixth grade hexagram destiny, it is even more incredible. This will give the Wenshung Taoist a certain ability to divine and seek good fortune and avoid misfortune. It has to be said that Wenshung Daodong's defense is really strong. It avoids all evils, is invulnerable to all poisons, and seeks good luck and avoids evil. But the problem is, this seems to have no offensive means at all? Is it because scholars are afraid of death? So they focus all their abilities on defense? When Qin Feng saw this, his mood was quite subtle. As a glorious time traveler, if he could choose, he would of course prefer the exhilarating feeling of punching through the sky and stepping on the earth. But this literary Saint Taoism always gave him a feeling that his power was useless. Could it be that every time he fought with the enemy in the future, he would have to do a fortune telling for himself? Qin Feng pondered for a moment and roughly imagine the scene. Enemy. Today is the day you die. Self. Wait a minute. Let me calculate a hexagram for myself first. Oops. What happened? The hexagram is very bad. This battle has a near-death chance. Say goodbye. This is too shameful. Continuing to read down. The. Chow and Jing. Did not introduce the realm after the sixth level of literary sage. However. Qin Feng finally understood what Song Filin said before about original treasures and imitations. The so-called original treasures are works that were personally constructed by literary saints who injected literary spirit into them. This kind of work can be poetry, calligraphy and painting, articles, or music. The imitation, as the name suggests, is a work imitating the original treasure. The original treasure contains the beliefs and artistic conception of the literary sage. And the combination of the two with the literary spirit will give the original treasure incredible abilities. The stronger the belief, the loftier the artistic conception, and the stronger the ability that the original treasure can display. However, ordinary people cannot use this original treasure because it must be driven by literary spirit. Doesn't that mean that only people from the Wenshung Dao lineage can control Yuan Bao? Unfortunately, this book does not mention how Yuan Bao's ability is demonstrated. Qin Feng sighed and he probably understood the value of Yuan Bao. But why did the second line written by me, a person who has not even entered the ninth level, make Bailey old people want to take it as his own? Qin Feng shook his head, feeling that he still had a lot to learn. When he reached the end of the Chao and Jing, he had a deeper understanding of Wenshung Taoism. When he opened the last page of the book and wanted to see who wrote the book, he found that the signature had been deliberately erased. Qin Feng looked confused, but didn't think much about it. He closed the book and was about to put it back where it belonged. Suddenly, a white light swept out from the Chao and Jing and entered his forehead. And his consciousness also followed the white light and enter your own divine sea. The white light turned into a white human-shaped shadow in the divine sea. Qin Feng was shocked when he saw this. Could it be that this is the soul of a big boss hidden in the Chao and Jing and wants to seize his body? The white shadow waved its right hand. And the Wenqi and the Wenqi waterfall followed its guidance and submerged into the shadow. At this moment, the five internal organs of the human body actually appeared on the white shadow, and the circulation route of the literary energy was extremely clear at a glance. At this point, Qin Feng finally figured out that this white shadow had no consciousness of its own, and what it was doing was more like teaching some kind of skill than seizing someone's body. After Qin Feng understood this, he immediately concentrated his attention and stared at the circulation route of the literary energy not daring to miss any of it. After the Wenqi walked through the white shadow for three weeks, it regrouped on the right hand of the shadow. Immediately afterwards, a white mirror appeared on the right hand, with ripples flowing on it, emitting bright white light. At the same time, an inexplicable voice sounded in my mind. This unique skill is called Haotian Mirror. It can be used after entering the ninth level. The mirror is condensed with literary energy and can resist attacks from others. The stronger the literary energy, the stronger the defense. 
After the words fell, the shadow disappeared out of thin air, and Qin Feng's consciousness returned to reality. Hao Tian Mirror sounds awesome at first glance. But why is Wen Sheng Dao Tong's secret skill actually a defensive skill? Qin Feng was dumbfounded. Am I the strongest tank in the future? That's all. I got a secret skill for nothing by reading the book. It's not a loss. But I have been reading the book for so long, and I haven't even finished 1% of the first level. Qin Feng examined the Divine Sea. The Wen Qi on the Wen Qi waterfall was about a quarter greater than before entering the attic. Based on this estimate, he had probably read more than 2,000 books. As long as you read all the books on the first level, it will be no problem for the literary energy to fill the waterfall. But the key is, will this time be like before? When the waterfall is full, the literary energy will be compressed again? Just as Qin Feng was thinking, Song Filin's voice came from behind. How do you like reading the book? Qin Feng shook his head. It's still far from enough. Well, I will take you back to Qin Mansion today. And then I will bring you here tomorrow. Qin Feng was stunned and asked in confusion. Can I stay here? Senior Bailey didn't seem to say there was a time limit. Hearing this, Song Filin's light blue eyes blinked slightly. But her cold tone remained the same. You can't stay overnight in Tinjiakshuan. This rule is tacit. It's normal if you don't know. I see. Miss Song has been to Tinjiakshuan many times. And she thinks she knows more than she does. So Qin Feng doesn't doubt it too much. I will come by myself early tomorrow morning. I feel sorry for bothering Miss Song all the time. No. Song Filin immediately refused. Qin Feng was a little surprised. He clearly just said some polite words. But why did the other party react so big? Is there something wrong? Song Filin frowned slightly and pondered for a moment before replying. The evil spirit that invaded Jinong City has not yet been traced. You are an ordinary scholar who leaves early and comes back late. If you encounter that evil spirit, accidents will inevitably happen. As a member of the Demon Slayer Division and having some friendship with your father, I naturally cannot see you in danger. It would be safer for you to come with me. When Xin Feng heard this, he felt happy. Miss Song cares about me so much. She must have me in her heart. I don't know if there is a chance to win her down. It doesn't matter whether she looks good or not. The main thing is to find someone in this strange world. A true love. Wait, why am I feeling like one of the three major delusions in life? Qin Feng thought for a moment, and suddenly thought of a possibility. He probed. Miss Song, are you afraid that you will not be able to enter Tinjiakshuan if you come alone? I don't understand what you are talking about. A trace of panic flashed in Song Filin's eyes. And then she walked straight away with her long legs. This is really the reason. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and his dream was shattered instantly. Chapter 12 Teaching Sword Skills Fontian City It's night, and all the lights are on. A piece of news instantly swept through the entire imperial capital like a violent wave. From the emperor's relatives to the peddlers and lackeys. No one knows about it. After everyone heard this, they were all shocked. Lu Jianli, the proud daughter of the Lu family, returned from the Wanjin sect. But due to the backlash of the sword energy due to her failed breakthrough, her lower body was paralyzed, and she could only use a wheelchair for the rest of her life. At first, some people doubted the authenticity of the news. But when the royal doctor stepped out of the Lu Mansion, with a solemn face and rushed back to the Imperial City, everyone knew that the news was probably true. Like water droplets falling into a pan of oil, the entire Fontian City boiled. You know, Lu Jinli is a rare talent that can only be seen in a thousand years. The leader of Wan Jian sect personally admitted that he will become a sword god in the future. However, God is jealous of talents. In the Imperial City, after Emperor Mingda listened to the Imperial Doctor's dictation, Long Yan was furious. Trash. They are all a bunch of trash. According to what you said, Lu Jianli's injury can't be cured at all? The Imperial Doctor crouched in the room, trembling all over. Reporting to the Emperor, Lu Jianli was filled with thunder and penetrated by sword energy and his meridians were severed, causing his lower body to lose consciousness. Although the master of Wan Jian sect has eliminated all the sword energy in his body, there are too many broken meridians, and some of them are already intertwined. It is simply not possible for humans to reset and reconnect one by one. And if you are not careful, Lu Jianli will probably die. So, that's all. Emperor Mingda was still about to get angry. But at this moment, Duke Lu Jiafu came to visit. Emperor Ming was thoughtful, dismissed everyone, and summoned Duke Lu Fu. That night, no one knew what Mr. Lu and Emperor Ming talked about. Until the next day, 
A big news came from the Lu family. Lu Jianli is going to marry far away from Jinong City. The person getting married is the Qin family, Qin Feng, in Jinong City. The sun rose in the east, and Qin Feng was once again awakened by the sound of sword dancing in the courtyard. Looking out through the gap in the window, it turned out to be Qin and practicing his sword skills over there. My second brother has started to practice hard, but I am still lying on the bed. Thinking about it, I really shouldn't. No, I can't fall anymore. I have to enter the ninth level of literary saint as soon as possible. Qin Feng made up his mind, then turned over on the bed. Um, squinted for a while. After about a stick of incense, Qin Feng opened his eyes again. He originally planned to sleep until noon, but for some reason, his right eyelid kept twitching, and he was always feeling panicked and depressed. Seeing that he was completely sleepless, Qin Feng could only reluctantly get out of bed, put on his clothes, and pushed out the door. Qin and heard the commotion and looked up. Sorry, brother. Did I disturb you? Qin Feng cast a resentful look. Aren't you talking nonsense? But this can't be blamed on Qinan. When the Qin family moved to Jinyang City, most of the money was used to by the restaurant Wang Yueju. Father Qin Jinan saw that there were not many servants and maids at home, so he wanted to buy a smaller house to save some money. That's why the courtyard and the bedroom are very close to each other. After thinking about it, I still blame that cheater. Qin Feng waved his hand. Actually, I woke up before dawn, but I just kept reading in the room. The majesty of being the eldest brother cannot be lost. Brother, you are really working hard. It seems that I can't slack off anymore. I will get up before dawn tomorrow to practice swordsmanship. Qin An's eyes were excited and his tone was firm. Oops, he made a mistake. Qin Feng twitched the corners of his mouth, wishing he could tear his stupid mouth apart. The two chatted casually for a few more words, and Qin An began to wave the narrow-edged knife in his hand again. Qin Feng originally wanted to leave directly for Ting Yushuan, but he thought of Song Filan's instructions yesterday. In desperation, he could only sit on the side of the yard and watch his second brother practice his sword skills. The Shingu Taoism is divided into nine levels, with body refining as the main focus and weapons as the supplement. The use of these weapons is also divided into five levels of artistic conception. It is John Feng, Shongyue, with a clear mind, hidden weapons, and the realm of all gods. The name, John Feng, means that the weapons are as fast as thunder. As the saying goes, everything is invincible except speed. Qin An's attainments and sword skills remain in this artistic conception. He is now practicing sword skills desperately, hoping to step into Zhong Yue's artistic conception, and then use this to peek into the realm of the sixth level of Shen Wu. It's a good idea. My second brother's talent in the divine martial arts tradition is indeed enviable. But, Qin Feng frowned and saw some clues. Having read thousands of books, he could tell at a glance that the sword technique his second brother was practicing at the moment was the leaf-cutting knife. In the Qin family's library, there is no problem with the front artistic conception. But if you want to enter Zhong Yue's artistic conception through leaf-chopping knife, even it is a bit of a fantasy. He took the wrong path as soon as he came up. It's no wonder that Qin An has not made any progress at the seventh level. Second brother, please stop. Hearing this, Qin An put down the narrow-edged knife in his hand and asked curiously, Brother, what's wrong? The leaf-cutting sword is of little use to you now. Apart from this sword technique, do you have any other sword techniques to study? Qin An shook his head. Martial arts skills are a rare treasure in the world. My father spent a lot of money to find this sword technique. How can I have other sword techniques? Qin Feng lowered his head and groaned, which was considered understanding. Dickian used force to rule the country and secure the country. So there should be no shortage of martial arts skills. However, most of the major sects and aristocratic families were people who cherished their own things. As a result, there were very few martial arts skills for people to learn in the world. Yanong Dakian, which occupies a vast area and has numerous talents, is always shrouded in the shadow of demons and ghosts. There is always a reason. Wait. Qin Feng suddenly thought of something and his eyes widened. Yesterday I was in Tintiaxuan and read many books. There seemed to be a lot of martial arts techniques in them. Qin Feng closed his eyes and thought, and soon found a sword technique from his memory that was most suitable for Qin An at the moment. Tian Gang Yuan Slash This sword technique emphasizes concentrating energy to break the surface. It does not rely on gravity but speed. It is exactly what Qin An needs at this moment. Second brother, come here and I will teach you a new sword technique. Brother, are you telling the truth? 
Sheenan was doubtful, and strolled closer. Of course it's true. I'll still lie to you. Even so, this sword technique only exists in my own mind. How can I teach it to my second brother? After thinking about it, Qin Feng moved his eyes to the narrow edge knife in Qin An's hand. Thinking about it, although I haven't condensed my energy, I can practice the sword skills and then tell him the skills of how to move my energy. In this way, can I teach him the sword skills? Qin Feng felt confident and said, Lend me your sword and I will demonstrate the sword skills for you. Brother, this knife is a bit heavy. I'm afraid of you. Huh? How much can a mere narrow edge knife weigh? Do you really think that all scholars in the world are powerless? Bring it to me. Oh well. Qin and handed over the narrow edge knife. And Qin Feng immediately reached out to take it. But the moment the other party let go of his hand, Qin Feng only felt that his arms were overwhelmed. And his whole body fell a little shorter with the handle of the knife. Brother! Chapter 13 Tian Gang Yuan Slash Qin Feng leaned on the doorpost on the side, panting heavily, his face turning red and white. I miscalculated. I didn't expect that this narrow edge knife was made of meteorite iron. It didn't look big, but in fact it weighed several hundred kilograms. It's all my fault that my second brother, who weighs so skillfully, gave me a wrong perception and misled my judgment. Brother, are you okay? Qin Feng coughed dryly and hurriedly hid his trembling right arm behind his back. What can happen to me? It's just that I stayed up late reading last night. I was too tired and lost my strength for a while. Second brother, what do you mean by this? You don't think I can't even hold a knife? Do you? Sheenan suppressed his laughter, raised his right hand easily, and picked up the narrow edge knife again. Of course I trust brother. Come on. Show me the knife skills. Hold the knife away from me. Qin Feng was startled and hurriedly retreated. Realizing that he had lost his composure, he pretended to be thoughtful and said, I just thought about it carefully. This sword technique is very mysterious. I am just demonstrating it. Because I'm afraid you won't be able to understand the essence of it. So, let me draw the sword technique on the ground. You follow the drill. And if there are any deficiencies, I will naturally point them out. Then I'll bother you. Brother. Yeah. Qin Feng glanced at the courtyard and caught a glimpse of a branch on the ground. He was about to squat down and pick it up with his right hand. But suddenly he stopped and switched to his left hand. Damn it. When I was writing the couplet yesterday, my right hand was overwhelmed. I didn't expect that the injury would get worse today. Shall you? I can't help you. Holding the branch tightly with his left hand, Qin Feng originally thought that since he was not left-handed, the paintings he drew would be crooked but he was surprised to find that his left hand was as skillful as his right hand. Is this also the effect brought about by Wenshung Taoism? Within a moment, lifelike pictures of figures and swords appeared on the ground. If anyone compares the pictures in Tian Gang Yuan John, they will be surprised to find that the two are exactly the same. Second brother, this is the first stage of swordsmanship. You learn it first and make random gestures. Qin Feng, who is well read, understands that Tian Gang Yuan John is not extraordinary. Although its moves look simple, there are there are many skills in martial arts, and they pay attention to the techniques of exerting force. Therefore, Qin Feng does not expect that the other party can learn these moves in a short time. Qin and looked at the figure on the ground. Yin Dao too, in a daze, as if he had not heard the words at all. When Qin Feng saw this, he didn't bother him. After about half a stick of incense, Qin and, who had been hesitant to move, finally made a move. His eyes widened suddenly. He raised the knife in his right hand and then began to perform knife skills in the courtyard. The sound of breaking wind was heard endlessly. Sheenan was swinging the sword faster and faster and became more and more skillful when he swung the sword for the third time. His sword skills were exactly the same as those shown in the diagram of the sword. Damn it. What an enviable talent Sheen Feng muttered. Huh, Sheenan took a deep breath, put down the narrow edge knife in his hand and said with bright eyes, Brother, this sword skill is really amazing. Where did you learn it? Oh, your brother. I have everything in my mind. It's just a sword technique. It doesn't matter. Wait until I tell you the secret of the energy flow in the first stage of this sword technique. You try to circulate the energy in your body and then use it again. Knife once. Okay. Qin Feng spoke out what he had recorded in his mind. After Qin had finished listening, he pondered for a long time before starting to swing his sword again. Obviously the moves look the same on the outside. But when swinging the sword, the energy in the body is activated at the same time. 
and the consumption required is far beyond what it was before. Chinan only used the sword technique once, and he was panting and sweating like rain, seeing that the opponent was about to withdraw his sword. Chin Fong found a palm-sized stone in the yard and threw it three feet away from the opponent. Second brother, this sword technique is called Tian Gang Yuan Slash. It pays attention to the four levels of strength. Please try and see if you can chop this rock three feet away. If you can do it, it means you have successfully stepped into the A big push. Okay. Chin and responded, then held the handle of the knife with both hands, shouted loudly, and slashed out with the knife. As expected, the rock did not break into pieces, but only left a line on the ground between the two. Shallow knife marks. From the looks of it, it's still far from enough. Thinking about it, if one can step into the first level easily, then this sword skill would be too worthless. Second brother, you don't have to be depressed. In martial arts, practice makes perfect. With more practice, you will surely improve. Chinan looked at the narrow-edged sword in his hand and frowned. Brother, I'm not frustrated. I just always feel that I am a little weak when performing this sword technique, as if there is a problem with the flow of energy. When Chin Fong heard the words, he pondered for a moment. The secret of energy circulation is not something that can be understood by dictating at once. The reason why those famous teachers can produce great disciples is because they can point out the shortcomings of others based on their own experience and guide them on the right path. But the problem is, I don't have energy in my body. Even if there is a problem with the circulation of my second brother's energy, I can't do anything about it. At this moment, Chin Fong suddenly thought of something and his eyes lit up. If I remember correctly, when I looked at my second brother's body before, I saw countless tiny golden veins in his muscles. Combined with the descriptions of the 8th level Qi training and the 7th level breath gathering of the Shinwu Dao tradition, those golden veins must be the condensed strength. That being the case, Chin Fong had an idea and immediately said, Second brother, please mobilize your energy again and perform. Tian Gang Yuan Slash. Again. Okay. Chin and said nothing and waved the narrow edge knife in his hand. At the same time, Chin Fong concentrated on his eyes. As the golden light flashed in his pupils, everything changed again. At this moment, the changes in flesh, blood, bones, and breath within Chin and body can all be seen at a glance. Especially the golden veins in the opponent's muscles are extremely clear at a glance. Chin Fong watched his second brother practicing the sword carefully. He was already halfway through the moves. And there was no problem with the flow of golden energy until... Stop! What's wrong? Chin and put the knife on the ground and looked up. When you swung the sword just now, did you feel that your energy was not flowing smoothly? I do have this feeling. How did you know about it? Brother? Chin and looked curious. Because I have a pair of clairvoyant eyes. Of course, I have my own methods. The problem with your energy flow lies in the move just now. Having said that, how should I correct his mistakes and guide him to flow his energy correctly? At this time, Chin Fong thought of yesterday's Haotian Mirror, the secret art of literary saint. Since literary chi can guide the external manifestation, can I inject literary chi into the second brother's body and then guide his strength? Chapter 14 Encountering the Evil Again Just do it. Chin Fong walked up to Chin in raised his left hand, and placed it on his abdomen. I have to say, the eight-pack abs feel really good to the touch. Chinan asked curiously, Brother, what are you doing? Chin Fong explained, Second brother, wait a moment, and I will inject the literary energy into your body to circulate. You can calm down and experience it carefully. No problem. I'm ready. Yes. Chin Fong took a deep breath and began to guide the Wen Chi in the waterfall in the Divine Sea. Within a moment, the Wen Chi surged and turned into water, converging towards his right hand, and then entered Chin An's abdomen. Damn it. This introduction of literary energy is more difficult than I originally intended. Chin Fong frowned, gritted his teeth and controlled the literary energy in Chin An's body, and then guided it according to the root of the energy flow in Tian Gang Yuanjian. Second brother, do you feel it? Chin An felt carefully that his originally uncomfortable expression suddenly became excited after a few breaths. He finally knew the correct way to circulate energy. Brother, I feel it. It was too late to say, but it was too soon. Chinan held the knife in his right hand and used his strength to slash at the stone a few feet away. This time, although he still did not cut off the rock, the cracks on the surface of the rock, about one finger behind, were so clearly visible. Well done. Chin Fong was very pleased to see this. At the same time, 
A wisp of Wen Qi in the Wen Qi waterfall in his mind suddenly grew crazily. After it subsided, it was dozens of times larger than before. This, Qin Feng was stunned at first, and then became very excited. He instantly understood that not only can he gain extra literary spirit by treating diseases and saving people according to medical books, but also by teaching and guiding others through the contents of the book. He can also apply what he has learned, and he can also gain more literary spirit. With this method, his speed of absorbing Wen Qi will be greatly accelerated. Just when he was excited, he suddenly felt like a light on his back. He turned around and saw Er Nyang and Song Filan standing not far away, looking here with complicated eyes. Er Nyang hesitated. Oh, Miss Song has something to do with you. If you're looking for me, look for me. Why do you have this expression on your face? Sorry, I didn't pay attention just now. When did you come? Song Filan said calmly. When you asked, second brother, do you feel anything? As soon as these words came out, Qin Feng's expression suddenly became stiff. He savored the words and then took a look at the current situation between him and his second brother. One was shirtless, and the other was caressing the other's abdomen just now. No matter how you look at it, this picture is a bit fascinating. Uh, listen to my explanation. Meng Shui thought of the previous scene where Feng were touched the maid Qin, and then thought about those previous scenes, and she had many more guesses in her mind. She did not dare to stay longer, and said with a stiff expression, Second mother, if I have something else to do, I won't disturb you. Watching Aaron Yang running away, Qin Feng opened his mouth, feeling that the other party had misunderstood something. Aaron Yang ran back to the lobby of the Qin mansion and said worriedly, Master, shall we find a marriage for Feng Er? Qin Jianan took a sip of tea and asked, Why did you suddenly think of this? I just think Feng Er has reached this age, and it's time to find someone. Having said that, this is too sudden. Suddenly, I think it's the right time. Madam, what's wrong with you? Qin Jianan put down the teacup with a puzzled look on his face. It's nothing. I'm just a little worried. By the way, what do you think of Miss Song? Sneeze. Qin Feng rubbed his nose after leaving the mansion. The weather was getting colder. Song Filan looked sideways, her light blue eyes containing a special meaning. As if she was saying I didn't expect you to have such a hobby. I'm not. I didn't. Don't think nonsense. Qin Feng waved his hands hastily. I didn't say anything. Song Filan retracted her gaze and continued to move forward. I have to say that Miss Song's eyes are so sparkling no matter how many times I look at them. Just exposing her eyes is so intoxicating. If you take off the black scarf, what kind of face will it look like? No, no. If I dare to reach out, I will be beaten to death by her. In order to kill this bold idea, Qin Feng hurriedly looked around and diverted his attention. Huh? Were there also candied haws in ancient times? That candied haws on a stick is so long. Oh, is there someone selling Yanchun noodles on the street early in the morning? That big iron pot for cooking noodles is so white. And that scallion pancake. How can it be so warped? Snapped. Are there mosquitoes again? Song Filan tilted her head. Yes, there are still mosquitoes in such a cold weather. It's strange that this mosquito keeps staring at you and bites you. Who says it isn't? Jean Phone touched his cheek and said angrily. See no evil. See no evil. By the way, Mist Song, have you found any traces of the evil spirit? Song Filan shook his head. That evil spirit is extremely cunning. And all the people from the Demon Slayer Department's Hundred Ghost tradition came out. But no trace of him was found. Lord Si Jung has not closed his eyes for several days in order to prevent him from continuing to harm others. Is it possible that the evil spirit has left Jinong City? Some of us have raised this question before. But Lord Sijin said that the evil spirit likes to eat people's souls and cannot leave easily. After all, only Jinyang City has the largest population within a few dozen miles. I see. Jin Feng groaned and suddenly realized something was wrong. He was very impressed with the scallion pancake stall. Logically speaking, after walking a short distance past that stall, he should be able to hear the pretty lady's crisp voice. But after all this time, I still haven't seen that elegant attic. Moreover, in the surrounding area, the sellers of Chinese noodles and candied haws were clearly seen not long ago. And now they have appeared again. What is going on? Miss Song. Qin Feng reminded. I know. Song Filan responded. And then said coldly, You dare to come out and harm people in broad daylight. Do you really think you don't take our Demon Slayer Division seriously? Demon Slayer Division? Along with the permeating laughter, 
The surrounding scene quickly retreated like running water. But in the blink of an eye, Jean Fong discovered that they were already in a strange world. In this world, everything was dim and dull, and the ground he stepped on was like a mirror, reflecting their shadows. However, their faces in the shadows were completely dark, which made people's hair stand on end. In this small Jinong city, even Sijin can only hold the jade token at best. What can he do to me? After the words fell, a black shadow appeared out of thin air in front of the two of them. Jin Fong felt a stabbing pain in his head, and a strong sense of fear instantly filled his heart. That was the memory of the original owner. The evil spirit that killed the original owner was the black shadow in front of him. Chapter 15 Fierce Battle I really didn't expect that I saw your three souls and seven souls disappear the night. But you are still alive? The black mist trembled and made a sinister voice. Jean Fong was shocked when he heard this. Wasn't the original owner scared to death? And something about what it said always sounded wrong. Didn't the original owner have the misfortune to encounter an evil spirit when he was wandering around Jin Yang City at night? Why did the other party still remember him? After thinking for a moment, Jin Fong thought of a possibility. Unless the evil spirit sucks the souls of the other people just to deceive others. Its real goal is itself. Are you trying to kill me? Oh, why do you think so? Because you remember me. You sucked the souls of many people that night. If it was just to satisfy your appetite, there is no reason why you would specifically remember my appearance. Maybe it's just because you look good that I have a deeper impression? After all, when I was alive, what I hated most were you pretty boys. Thanks for the compliment. The black mist shook for a while, and Song Filing couldn't help but take a sideways glance. Jean Phone coughed dryly and continued. You have endured so many days without showing up. There is no reason for you to suddenly show up today during the day. Even if you can't wait to suck the soul, you should find an ordinary family without leaving home. Instead of find me who is protected by a 7th grade 100 ghost Taoist. Therefore, I am sure that your target is me. And, for some reason, you have to take the risk and kill me in daylight. Hei Wu fell into silence. And after a moment, he spoke. You are very smart. My target is indeed you. Someone promised me that if I can successfully kill you, I will be given enough souls to help me step into a higher realm. I also know that you are trying to trick me and delaying time, waiting for the people from the Demon Slayer Division to discover this place. However, I have some regrettable news for you. Just before the stick of incense was burned, Sijing and the people from the Demon Slayer Division had been deceived by my clone. And you two are destined to die here today. As soon as he finished speaking, Qin Fong saw a surge of black energy coming towards him. And the target was himself. Just when he was at a loss what to do, Song Filin instantly took off the soul-fixing furnace from his waist, stepped in front of him, and stopped the person. A black spirit. Thank you so much, Mist Song, for saving me. I have nothing to repay. I can only show my kindness with my own body. Shut up. Oh. Song Filin looked at Hei Wu with cold eyes and said coldly, Speaking human words, coupled with the intensity of the attack just now, you are just a ghost cultivator with the third level of tribulation power. How dare you speak arrogant words? You don't have to wait for Si Zheng to arrive. I can kill you by myself. Qin Fong hid aside and looked at Song Filin with admiration. With this intoxicating sense of security, he had even thought of the two of them being together in the future. One would be responsible for being invincible in the world, and the other would be responsible for making money to support the family. It must be wonderful. Song Filin didn't say anything. She directly put her fingers together and clicked on the soul-fixing furnace. As a burst of fragrance came out, bursts of white smoke turned into chains and strangled towards the black mist. However, the black mist only flashed a few times and avoided all the white smoke chains. Super speed and magical power. Song Filin frowned. The opponent relied on this move to avoid Si Jing's pursuit. A mere 7th grade 100 ghost Taoist who doesn't even know how to restrain souls dares to say that he wants to kill me. Come and die! Along with the roar, the dark wind howled, and countless black energy emerged around the black mist. Qin Feng felt a chill down his spine, and his consciousness was in a trance, as if the three souls and seven souls in his body were about to be sucked away. Hold the soul-fixing furnace and don't move it. Don't close your eyes. If you can't bear it, just smell the soul-fixing incense. Song Filin handed out the small copper furnace, and then held Qin Feng with her arms like jade lotus roots. Protect behind you. Mist Song, give me this thing. How can you fight against that evil spirit? Qin Feng's face was complicated, and he only hated his low cultivation level. 
If he stepped into the ninth level, he could at least use the Haokian mirror to help him take some damage. But at this moment, let alone helping, it would be nice if he didn't hold him back. Song Filan didn't respond. She crossed her eyes with her fingers and opened her ghost eyes. In this dim world, her light blue eyes emitted weak fluorescence like fireflies. The black mist trembled for a while, and countless black energy shot out from its body, covering Qin Feng and Qin Feng like a big net. With such an intensive attack, if you are not careful, you will be completely destroyed. The evil spirit let out an enchanting laugh, as if it had already seen the final fate of the two of them. But at this critical moment, Song Filan instantly took off the dagger hanging on her right waist. The dagger was in the shape of a crescent. A silver light flashed across the edge, followed by just a few thunder breaths and dense black energy. He was cut into pieces by this crescent dagger. Qin Feng's eyes widened, and he saw Song Filan bowing to face the dagger. The black hair tied behind her head seemed to be unable to follow the master's movements and remained in the air, with a different kind of beauty that was suffocating. No! It's impossible! How can you have such a method with the hundred ghost Dao tradition you have learned? Hei Wu panicked, and his tone was no longer the same as before. It's a pity that Mist Song didn't seem to have any intention of talking nonsense in the battle. Her right leg wrapped under the blue and black trousers suddenly exerted force. But in the blink of an eye, when she reappeared, she had already jumped to the top of the black mist, with a dagger in her hand, exuding a formidable light. He raised the dagger and dropped it. Silver light suddenly appeared and the black mist was split into two in an instant. Okay! Qin Feng couldn't help shouting excitedly, but Miss Tong's body was still like a tight string, not relaxing at all. She quickly glanced around, as if she was following some trace. Hey, a sinister murmur made Qin Feng's heart lift to his throat again. That evil spirit is not dead? The terrifying murderous intention struck. Qin Feng's pupils shrank, and the hair on his body stood up. He seemed to feel something, and slowly looked down with his head. In the shadow in the mirror, a smiling face grew out of the faceless place, with ferocious fangs, accompanied by a shrill cry. The shadow stretched out its hands, which were covered with sharp nails, which could be easily penetrated at a glance. Mortal body. The sharp claws quickly reached out. Qin Feng's eyes widened, and he could only watch the sharp nails getting bigger and bigger in his pupils. Am I going to die like this? As soon as this idea came up, the familiar figure appeared in front of him again. Whether it was an illusion or not, there seemed to be a touch of silver at the end of the dark hair. How could she be so fast? The slender jade arm touched his chest. And then a strong force came. Qin Feng's body was pushed away instantly. The ghost claw that was supposed to pierce his head now scratched Song Filan's right arm. Miss Song! Qin Feng shouted anxiously. Don't come over! Song Filan shouted coldly. And Qin Feng hurriedly stopped. And in front, as the space trembled, the black mist that should have been divided into two appeared again. Chapter 16 Sieging Shurzimming You are not a hundred ghost Taoist at all. A roar came from the black mist. Yes or no? It has nothing to do with you. Song Filan was about to raise her dagger to strike again. But as soon as she exerted her strength, there was a sharp pain in her right arm. Looking sideways, she saw that she had just been scratched by a ghost claw. A trace of black energy lingered in the injured area. Is this ghost poison? Song Filan frowned. Qin Feng was shocked when he heard this. The so-called ghost poison is the result of the resentment of watering ghosts. Once contaminated, the flesh and blood will be corroded by it. However, the most terrifying thing about ghost poison is that it can infect the soul and make it the soul is gone. Thinking of this, Qin Feng felt extremely guilty. If he hadn't saved himself, with Song Girl's ability, how could he have been injured by the ghost claws? No, now is not the time to feel guilty. I have to cheer up think quickly, and recall carefully, there must be a way to break the situation. Qin Feng's brain was spinning rapidly, and the Winchy waterfall began to surge in the Divine Sea. Books about ghost cultivation that he had read before flashed through his mind like a slideshow. Ghost cultivators use the rotation of calamity power to distinguish the strong and weak. The higher the calamity power cycle, the stronger the strength. It is worth noting that ghost cultivators can derive their own magical powers every time they go through the second cycle of calamity power. Therefore, it is difficult to fight against ghosts. Be extremely careful when repairing. Wait, something is wrong. Miss Tong said just now that this evil spirit only has the power of three transformations. But why can it build such a strange space in addition to its super speed and magical powers? It is common sense that one cannot have two natal magical powers without reaching the fourth level of tribulation power. 
since it is not a magical power. It is borrowed from foreign objects. This world is very likely to be a space treasure similar to Tinjiukshuan. And as long as it is a treasure, it must have a life gate. Qin Feng opened his eyes wide, and a golden light flashed in the depths of his pupils. He hurriedly scanned the surroundings. Strangely, the sky and the earth were filled with tiny black light spots. And these tiny light spots finally converged into one place. That was behind him. With a sight about half a person's size. Mirror. Found it. Qin Feng was excited in his heart. But remained calm on the outside. With his ability. Trying to destroy the treasure was nothing more than a dream. But at this moment. Mist Song was injured. If he told her loudly. He would only be stopped by evil spirits. You must think of a safe way. The ghost cultivator sneered. No matter who you are. If you are contaminated with my ghost poison, you will definitely die. But now, I have to kill that kid first to avoid long nights and dreams. As soon as the words fell, the black mist curled up into a ball, let out a shrill scream, and suddenly attacked Qin Feng. When the opportunity came, Qin Feng calculated the distance and angle and shouted loudly, Mist Song, throw the dagger at it. Song Filin did not hesitate, and with a groan, she took off the other dagger from her waist with her left hand and threw it towards the black mist. The blade of the dagger flashed with silver light and pierced the air, but was easily avoided by the black mist. I have magical powers of speed. How can such a method hurt me? Click. At this moment, a sound of shattering mirrors suddenly came from the strange world. What? The ghost cultivator suddenly turned around and saw that the dagger was inserted into the void, and the void was as fragmented as a mirror. It was the spatial treasure that someone had given it before the dark sky mirror. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this. Fortunately, Miss Song had thrown the dagger accurately. If the dagger was thrown incorrectly, it would have been a mess. You brat! Did you calculate it accurately just now? So what? This space treasure has been damaged. The Demon Slayer Division and Si Zhang will be here soon. If I were you, I would run away now. Brother Ghost, you are just here to make a living. There is no need to work for others. Run away quickly. Qin Feng was calm on the surface, but panicked in his heart. The black mist shook for a while, obviously struggling. Just when Qin Feng thought something was coming, he heard the other party roar hysterically. Today, you will die. Qin Feng's face instantly turned pale. How could he have imagined that a ghost cultivator could have such professional ethics that he would trade with him for the sake of his employer? The surrounding world began to fall apart due to the shattering of the dark sky mirror. And the familiar shouts from the streets came again. Black Mist obviously had the intention of fighting to the death and didn't care at all. The black energy around him surged and attacked Qin Feng like a poisonous snake. Is everything over? At this moment, above the ground, among the black shadows, a huge black hand made of shadows suddenly appeared. The black hand grabbed the black energy of the ghost cultivator and then shook it violently. And the black energy was instantly eliminated. Qin Feng was shocked. If he guessed correctly, this should be the puppet's method at the fifth level of hundred ghosts. In the small city of Jinong. Apart from Demon Slayer Sijin. He really couldn't think of another Taoist who could reach the fifth level. Uh-huh. A figure fell to the ground. It was a middle-aged man wearing a black coat. His face was as sharp as a knife. He had a two-star sapphire order on his waist. And behind him, he carried the huge wine bottle is very eye-catching. When the ghost cultivator saw the visitor, he no longer wasted time trying to kill Qin Feng. Instead, he dodged and rushed towards the south. If I let you escape again this time, I, sure Zimming, will write these three words backwards. As soon as he finished speaking, the middle-aged man took off the wine bottle behind him and smashed it to the ground with a bang. The cracks on the gray stone were like spider webs. Spread rapidly, I saw him opening the wine gourd and saying, Jew, countless rays of sky-blue light suddenly flashed out of the spout of the pot, rushing towards the black mist. In just a blink of an eye, the ghost cultivator with super speed and supernatural powers was bound by the blue light, and the sound of hissing and melting mixed with screams could not be heard. Sher Zimming said, Lien. Again! The blue light flourished, accompanied by a shrill scream, and the black fog no longer existed. Damn it. This stupid ghost cultivator is really good at hiding. It kept me awake for several nights. Hey, kid, are you okay? Sher Zimming turned his head and asked aloud. Qin Feng was stunned for a moment, then immediately realized, I'm fine. But Miss Song, before the words were spoken, a burst of fragrance hit her, 
and Song Filin had already walked to her side. Don't worry. I'm fine. Jean Feng's eyes widened, and he hurriedly looked at the opponent's right arm. The place that was supposed to be scratched by the ghost's claws turned out to be intact and smooth as before. He raised his head to look at the other party, and suddenly noticed a detail. Normally, Song Girl's black square scarf could always cover half of her face, revealing only a pair of light blue eyes. But at this moment, it seems that an extra section of smooth and straight nose bridge is exposed. Could it be that Miss Song just took off her scarf? Perhaps noticing Qin Feng's gaze, Song Filin lifted up the black scarf again and returned to its previous appearance. Qin Feng secretly thought it was a pity. Hey, isn't this Shout Song? Do you know this kid? Hey, is he your lover? As soon as these words came out, Qin Feng felt that the temperature of his whole body dropped suddenly. And he felt murderous. Chapter 17, this is what a real man should do. But in an instant, Song Filin had already placed the dagger in front of Sher Ziming. If you can't speak, do you want me to help you cut out your tongue? Sher Ziming hurriedly raised his hands to express surrender. Shout Song. I was just kidding. There is no need to react so big. Song Filin didn't respond. She just took back the dagger, turned a knife flower in her hand, and stuffed it back into her waist. Sher Ziming also suppressed the smile on his face and asked lightly, Tell me, what is going on? The three of them were walking on the street together. During this period, Sher Ziming also learned the ins and outs of the matter from Qin Feng's mouth. Boy, it's amazing that you were able to find the treasured life gate by accident. But I didn't expect that the ghost cultivator is actually coming for you. By the way, you really don't know why the ghost cultivator wants to kill you. Qin Feng pondered for a moment. I usually help the old lady cross the road. Feed beggars. Be kind to others. And never make enemies. So the possibility of vendetta is relatively small. After thinking about it, maybe as the ghost cultivator said, it was jealous of my handsomeness. So it killed me. Song filing glanced sideways, but Sher Ziming ignored it and changed the topic. By the way, you said your surname is Qin. In Jinong City. I only know one family with the surname Qin. And that is the third class auxiliary country. General Qin Jinan. When he moved his family to Jinyang City, he brought several jars of wine to visit me. What is your relationship with him? Although this cheap old man has no business acumen, he is quite good at interpersonal relationships. Not bad. Qin Feng confirmed it in his heart. I am his son Qin Feng. I wonder if those bottles of wine are in line with Lord Xijing's taste. If you still want it, I can talk to my father when I go back. The key to doing business is connections. Qin Feng know this well. No need. I don't want those jars of wine. I can tell as soon as I smell them. They are all mixed with water. Actually, Lord Zhang, my father, and I have always had a bad relationship. This stingy bastard. How much money can a few jars of wine cost? And it's even mixed with water. In this small Jinong city, apart from the city lord, Demon Slayer Zhang is the top official in charge of tea honor. He doesn't know how to take good care of the relationship. Really? Sure Ziming looked sideways. His eyes intriguing. Well, Sir Xijing has worked hard day and night for the people of Jinong City. Now that the ghost cultivator has been eliminated, why don't you go home and have a good rest? Qin Feng stiffly changed the subject. I was just looking for a place to rest. Look, I'm almost there. Qin Feng was stunned for a moment and then heard the familiar sound of a chicken crowing. Looking up, in the elegant attic, red clothes are fluttering. Colorful silks are fluttering and the voices of gorgeous girls flow into my ears. Uncle, come in and have fun. Coming, coming. Sher Ziming on the side responded loudly, speeding up his pace excitedly. In front of the Fengyao Pavilion, the madam on the platform saw Sher Ziming. The moment he saw Sher Ziming, he immediately smiled and greeted him. Master Sher, I haven't seen you for several days. The girls are thinking about you day and night. Didn't I come here? I won't go back tonight. Sher Ziming waved his hand. Don't go back? Isn't there a curfew in Jinong City recently? The old madam looked embarrassed. Isn't it because they are opening so early every day because they can't do business at night? What's the curfew? I haven't slept a wink these past few days just to kill the ghost cultivator who couldn't open his eyes. Starting today, the curfew will be lifted. As soon as these words came out, the whole brothel was boiling, and the old bustard was laughing so hard. Oh, what a good thing. Lord sure is here in Jinong City and the evil spirits are not a problem at all. What are the girls upstairs waiting for? They bring out the best wine, dance the best dance, 
and come over to entertain Mr. Sure. Coming. Not long after, a group of wild bees, waves and butterflies surrounded Sure Ziming and brought him into the attic. Chin Feng stared at this scene, opened his mouth and said, Is that guy always like this? Song Filin seemed to have become accustomed to it. For him. This romantic place is his resting place. If it weren't for the brothel to open normally as soon as possible, how could he pursue the ghost cultivator so desperately? Master Sijing, you are really a man of good temperament. Chin Feng said sincerely. He doesn't care about worldly opinions and only pursues his ideals. A real man should be like this. Outside the entrance to the attic, there were several girls wearing gauze, showing their shining thighs, looking at the passersby with smiles. It's not easy for them to wear so little in such a cold weather. Chin Feng felt pity. If it weren't for the fact that he was short of money, he would really like to take care of these people's business. And when these girls saw Chin Feng, their eyes shone unconsciously, and they immediately smiled and said, This young master, it's better. Before the words were spoken, the girls felt as if something was stuffed in their throats. The words they originally wanted to say clearly reached their lips, but they couldn't even come out. At the same time, Song Filin just glanced casually, and these people felt that their body temperature dropped a lot instantly. They did not care about soliciting business at the moment, put their hands on their shoulders, and hurried into the attic to keep warm. Seeing this, Qin Feng had no choice but to look away reluctantly. What? You can't bear it? A cold voice sounded. Of course, I can't bear to say it. What did Miss Song say? As a scholar, what I hate to see the most is this kind of immoral phenomenon. How could they dress so scantily and solicit business on the street in broad daylight? If they hadn't run so fast, I would have scolded them face to face. Song Filin sneered and walked forward. Chin Feng scratched his cheek and hurriedly followed. The two of them arrived outside Tinjiakshuan on the familiar road. The old man Bailey was still lying leisurely on the wicker chair, waving his fan, just like yesterday. He heard the noise, opened his eyes a little, and then said impatiently, Why are you two here again? Song Filin ignored it and went straight to the point. The rules are still the same as before. Come out with the first couplet. Hey, you girl is so shameless. You came here alone some time ago. Every time you say the second line, you can't apologize. Your eyes are red and your nose is crying. Yesterday, with this kid's help, it was rare to enter the pavilion. You are still addicted. Already? This old man has the same venomous tongue as always. But his eyes are red and his nose is crying. Is he talking about Miss Song? Chin Feng glanced at Song Filin and thought of yesterday. The latter's aggrieved look when he couldn't express the second line which was in sharp contrast to his heroic demeanor during the battle just now. What are you looking at? Song Filin said with a hint of shame and anger. Just look here and there. Look here and there. Whatever you want. Qin Feng responded in a low voice. Song Filin glared at the old man. You set the rules for Ting Yushuan, and there's nothing in the rules that says you can't ask someone to answer for you. The old man suddenly laughed angrily. Chapter 18 The Battle of Zhenling Pass That's all. I'm too lazy to argue with you, girl. But since you said that I set the rules, I will change them today. Old man Bailey raised his eyebrows with a malicious look on his face. Look at Chin Feng. You bad old man. Look at what I did. Isn't it just that I made a second line yesterday? Can't you afford it? Hey, brat. I admit that you have some talent in couplets. But today, I don't want to test you on couplets. But on poetry. Poetry test? Chin Feng suddenly showed a strange expression. Not bad. Old man Bailey tapped the wicker chair with his finger, and a copper furnace instantly appeared in the attic. Many exquisite patterns were carved on the surface of the copper furnace, and golden light flowed. This is a Dinwin stove, and its function is simple. As long as someone composes a poem in front of it, it will exhale white smoke to identify the quality of the poem. The higher the height of the white smoke, the better the quality of the poetry. Boy, I will not bully you. As long as the poetry you create can reach more than three feet, I will let you two into Tinji Upshuan. How? This, Chin Feng has not yet answered. But Song Filin on the side can't help it. The Dakian literary saint tradition has been weak for a long time. And the poetry has been declining day by day. In the past ten years, there have been several high-sounding poems in Dakian. You Sanjong's poems? You're asking like this and you're not bullying me? Hey, I set the rules anyway. If you can't do it, you can leave. And I won't force you to stay. The old man Bailey crossed his legs, his expression indescribable that he wanted to be beaten. I really want to hit him. Chin Feng clenched his fist 
and asked to the side. Miss Song, is it difficult to have more than three feet of white smoke? Song Filan nodded slightly. The white smoke of Din when furnace is usually divided into three grades. One to three feet is ordinary grade. Four to six feet is treasure. And seven to nine feet is holy grade. To compose poems impromptu and step into the treasures. Even the top bachelor of Fotion City Howen Academy may not be able to do it. Let alone you. Well, you are looking down on me. Although I can't do it, I can transform into a copycat. Ching Phone complained in his heart, and then asked Bailey Old Man, What if I can make a poem over six feet tall? Woolen cloth? Six feet? Just you? Old Man Bailey sneered. Under Song Filan's black scarf, she also let out a vague cold snort. Hey, you don't believe it. Right. My bad temper. Don't worry about whether I can do it or not. I just ask, what if I do it? You brat. If you can write a poem, that's more than six feet tall. From now on, Ting Yushuan, you can come and go as you please. Okay. It's a deal. Chin Fong was secretly happy. The books in this attic are large in quantity and high quality. And you can get them for free without spending money. It's really a treasure. But every time you can only see the sunset going down the mountain. It's really inconvenient. If I could come in and out freely, wouldn't I be able to see from morning till night? Come on the question. Chin Fong waved his right hand with great enthusiasm. What's the question? Old man Bailey was confused. And Song Filan on the side also cast a doubtful look. Just write a random poem. And I'm afraid you won't be convinced if it reaches more than 60 feet. So you can limit the content of this poem. Anyway, I was a top student in my last life. And I chose this poem in order to get in touch with more girls in college. It's also a liberal arts major. The number of poems in my mind is so large and the scope is so wide that I'm scared to say it out loud. I'm determined to do this. When old man Bailey heard this, he said three good words in a row. He has lived for so long. And the young people who dare to be so arrogant in front of him are no more than one palm away. Today he will teach him a lesson. Young people, what is self-knowledge? Since you said so, then write a poem based on the Battle of Xinlingwen 18 years ago. When Song Filan heard this, her delicate body trembled. Ching Feng fell into deep thought and began to recall, and finally remembered the battle from a history book. In the extreme south of Dakian, stretching towards the Qinghai Sea, there is a mountain named Tianling Mountain, which towers into the clouds. And on top of Tianling Mountain, there is a powerful foreign tribe named Garuda. Garuda is a monster with a human face and a bird body. It is born with supernatural power. It feeds on dragons and can soar for nine heavens and 100,000 miles with a flap of its wings. 18 years ago, Garuda invaded Dakian on a large scale and broke through Xinling Pass, causing all life to be ruined. In anger, the previous emperor Ming Chung sent 100,000 soldiers and the strongest combat force of the Demon Slayer Division to Xinling Pass to fight to the death with the Garuda clan. In that battle, the sky was dark and the earth was dark. Even if the human race had the help of the dragon clan, they still won miserably. The Garuda clan was forced to retreat outside Jiling Pass. The number of the 100,000 soldiers who participated in the battle was less than a 100. Under Jiling Pass, the land was dyed dark red with blood, and it has not faded in the past year. After recalling this, Jean Fong felt heavy, and even his original intention to show off had faded away a lot. He couldn't help feeling that in these troubled times, the rare piece of the human race was infused with the blood of heroes. Do you have a pen and paper? In the attic, a white curly brush flew out. Chin Fong took a deep breath and was about to start writing when he suddenly remembered the scene when he wrote the couplet yesterday. And the brush was still hanging. Old man Bailey saw what he was thinking and said, Don't worry. When you made the second line yesterday, you were in a chess game with others. So you were under great pressure. When you write poetry today, that won't happen. That's it. Chin Fong nodded, and the brush fell on the white scroll, melting a little black ink. I saw the opening chapter. Ching Hai Chang Jian Shen Ling Shan vividly appear on the page. The Danwen stove trembled, and white smoke came out, reaching a height of one foot. The old man Bailey stood up in shock and came to the side of the white scroll. Song Filan looked at Bai Wan, dazed, as if she had seen that scene. And Ching Fong started writing again and wrote the second sentence. The lonely city looks at Jiling Pass in the distance. 100,000 soldiers gathered in the dead city. Garuda was so powerful that he killed people like crushing ants. However, knowing that there was a disparity in strength between the two sides, the 100,000 soldiers held the determination to die 
and guarded the dead city without retreating a step. The den when furnace made a golden sound. And white smoke rose three feet high. The pen moves like a dragon and a snake. And when rendered on the paper. I see again. The yellow sand wears golden armor in a hundred battles. The roars of the soldiers shook the sky. And they used their flesh and blood to pave the way of killing. Even if their armor was stained with blood and their bones were wrapped in iron clothes. So what? Old man Bailey's eyes widened and he clenched his right fist. Song Filan's breathing was rapid and her chest kept rising and falling. The den when furnace began to shake violently. And the white smoke was already six feet high. Qin Feng's eyes widened sharply. And the brush in his hand was like the edge of a sword. And he carved the final swan song on the white scroll. Until the giallo is broken, it will never be returned. Ding! The harsh golden sound resounded in the sky. And the white smoke from the din when furnace suddenly rose into the sky. The height had already exceeded nine feet. And above nine feet. It is a divine grade. Chapter 19 Eve. Old man Bailey recited the poem silently in his heart. Closed his eyes. And fell into memories. One hundred thousand soldiers went to the far south. Before each one left. They left a suicide note at home. They never thought they could return alive. The two sides fought at Jilin Pass for three days and three nights. As far as the eye could see, there was a river of blood and corpses all over the ground. Before the soldiers in front died, in order to resist Garuda's charge with their flesh and blood, they inserted the blade of the knife into the soles of their feet, fixed their bodies on the ground, and turned into shields for the soldiers behind. In this way, they went on and on, and finally drove Garuda back to Tianling Mountain. The word, tragic, is no longer enough to describe the war situation at that time. What is the concept of returning less than a hundred soldiers from a hundred thousand soldiers? The old man Bailey held up the white scroll with the poem written on it and couldn't help but sigh. At that time, if this poem had helped, why would so many people have died? Boy, what is the name of this poem? Jean Fong pondered for a moment and replied. Senior, you can choose the title of the poem. Okay, then this poem will be called Jinling Pass. As soon as he finished speaking, the old man Bailey waved his sleeve, and the brush in Qin Feng's hand immediately slipped into the old man's hand. I saw the old man writing and unwinding the scroll. The vigorous and powerful three characters in Lingwen, written at the beginning of the volume, were actually shining brightly. At the same time, Qin Feng seemed to hear the roar of the soldiers fighting on the battlefield, with their armor and iron horses swallowing thousands of miles. The white-haired old man looked at the white scroll and said with some regret, the poem is a good poem, but it's a pity that this word is missing. Boy, you should practice calligraphy well after you go back. Qin Feng's face froze, and he didn't respond. In fact, the original owner had been studying for more than ten years, and was good at calligraphy. However, he came through the soul, and it seemed that his body did not remember the calligraphy. The old man Bailey shook his head and sighed, while naturally rolling up the white scroll and trying to put it into his arms. The original treasure of divine poetry has not appeared for a long time. This time, it can make a lot of money. Just when the old man was thinking like this, a white jade hand grabbed the other end of the white scroll. What to do? The old man looked wary. This poem was written by him. Why did you put it away and bring it here? Qin Feng froze on the spot. Why did the scene seem so familiar? You girl, you took away the second couplet yesterday. But you still want this poem today? I won't give it to you. It seems that you have forgotten that the dragon beard pen is about to run out. By the way, by the way, the same recipe, the same taste. Qin Feng was enjoying watching the show. But suddenly his face froze when he thought of something. Yesterday's second line and today's poem were clearly written by me. You two are fighting over each other. It seems like you haven't asked for my opinion. Miss Song, Senior, this poem seems to be me. Poem, what poem? Old Man Bailey and Song Filan said in unison, You guys are so shameless. So I will lose. Qin Feng clasped his fists and backed away. Neezy, how about I make a deal with you? As long as you give me this poem. From now on, you can come and leave whenever you want to Ting Yushuan. Hearing this, Song Filan was silent for a moment, and finally chose to let go, which was somewhat unexpected by Qin Feng. The old man Bailey finally breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this and then carefully put the white scroll into his arms. Everything was settled. Qin Feng couldn't wait to enter the attic to read books and accumulate literary knowledge. He had just met a ghost cultivator. If Miss Song hadn't been guarding him, he would have died. Moreover, the ghost correction was coming towards him, although he didn't know what the other party's purpose was. 
Who could guarantee that if he escaped this time, they wouldn't come a second time or a third time? Right now, only improving your own strength is the top priority. When entering the attic this time, we must find a way to break through to the ninth level of the literary saint. In this way, we can at least use the Halkian mirror and have a glimmer of self-protection ability. Qin Feng thought like this and raised his feet to step into the attic. At this time, old man Bailey suddenly said, Boy, I think you have some talent. Do you want to enter Howen Academy in Phong Tian City for further study? Song Filan paused when he heard this. Howen Academy? Qin Feng bowed his head, saying that within the great Qian, the one who has mastered the unity of the holy way of literature must belong to Howen Academy in the imperial capital. According to legend, Howen Academy contains many insights into the orthodoxy of the literary sage, as well as the unique knowledge of the literary sage. It is a holy place that scholars all over the world yearn for. And the Tianjian Imperial Master, who founded Haowen Academy, is the only one in history who has stepped into the second rank of Wen Sage. Senior, is there any way to let me in? Of course there is. Qin Feng expressed his calmness, but he was shocked in his heart. A simple understatement could allow him to enter the holy land that scholars yearn for. The identity of this bad old man may be more terrifying than he originally thought. But? No need. I'm fine staying here. You brat. Do you know what Howen Academy means to scholars? That you have to miss this opportunity? The top Wenxiang Taoists and De Qian are all in Howen Academy. So I naturally know their value. Then you return it? Qin Feng solemnly said. There are people in Jinong City that I care about. And I don't want to leave them. What's more? As long as you have the world in mind. Where can't you study? Of course. The more important reason is that the water in the imperial capital is too deep. And my father moved his family just to protect himself and the Qin family. If you go back now, wouldn't you be throwing yourself into a trap? Even if you really want to enter Howen Academy, you have to wait until your strength improves. Otherwise you will be too passive if you are just a slave to others and others to others. Okay. You have a worldwide mind. And you can study anywhere. I underestimated you. Old man Bailey lay back on the wicker chair again, with the corner of his mouth slightly raised, and said no more. Mist Song, what are you doing here? Why don't you go in? Qin Feng asked curiously as he passed by Tsong Filin. The latter glanced lightly and stepped into the attic. However, the outline of the lips printed under the black scarf seemed to be slightly floating. Qin Feng followed closely and once again saw the books in his eyes. His eyes narrowed slightly. This time, he vowed not to leave until he entered the ninth level. Not long after the two entered Tinjiakshuan, a middle-aged man wearing patchwork clothes and a broken leg passed by on crutches. The scars on the broken leg were obviously burns, and all the flesh and blood were necrotic. The wounds were so hideous that it made one scalp numb just by looking at them. Various horrific scars can also be seen on the arms exposed by the sleeves. It is difficult to imagine what this person has gone through to become what he is today. The middle-aged man handed out the wine bottle in his hand. Old man, your wine. Old man Bailey took the jug, opened it and took a sip, and couldn't help but praise. Your Laoli's wine still smells good. Unlike other wines, which taste like water. Here, this is the money for the wine. A bunch of copper coins. 31. More. The middle-aged man raised his eyebrows. The extra lunch is your errand fee. Remember, we will deliver the wine at the same time tomorrow. Isn't it true that the old man's legs and feet are not strong enough? He is so lazy. The middle-aged man snorted, stuffed the copper coins into his arms, and limped away. Bailey old man looked at the other person's leading figure, then opened the wine bottle, raised his head, took a long breath and sighed. This wine is really damn strong. Bai Wan and his arms hugged him tighter. At night, the moonlight is like water. Fontian City. Lu family. Fugwagongfu. In the cold courtyard, the clouds and mist covered the moon, and it was lonely and lightless. Vaguely, there was a woman in white sitting there. Next to her, there was a woman wearing blue clothes, holding a sword in her hand and carrying a sword case on her back. Miss, Mr. Lu has already spread the news that you are getting married. Um, Miss, are you really going to Jinyang City to marry the eldest son of a third-class auxiliary general? The woman in blue sounded excited. Um, Miss, your injuries may be healed. The words came to her lips, but the woman in blue couldn't bear to say any more. For desperate people, any hope that is out of reach is cruel. Perhaps Mr. Lu understood this, and made up his mind to let the young lady go to a remote place to enjoy the rest of her life. The clouds break and the moon rises. 
and the bright moonlight shines on the body of the woman in white. Her skin is like snow. Her green hair is like a waterfall. And her beautiful face is breathtaking. Like a fairy descending to earth. It's a pity that this woman's face is as cold as ice. And her eyes are like a pool of stagnant water. Looking down, he saw that the woman was sitting on a wheelchair instead of a stone bench. She is Lu Jianli of the Lu family. Chapter 20 A Good Day to Get Married Ten days pass by in a hurry. In Tinjiuxuan, Qin Feng is arrived at the third floor attic. At this moment, he is holding a heavy book in his hand. After working hard day and night during this period, he finally compressed the Wenchi waterfall in the Divine Sea nine times. And as long as he finished reading the last book in his hand, he could fill the Wenchi waterfall for the tenth time. Boom! As the pages of the book in his hand were closed, the literary spirit as thick as a thumb swept into the sea of spirits and finally filled the last vacancy of the waterfall. In the Divine Sea, only the white light of the Wenchi waterfall was seen. Countless Wenchi were like dragons and snakes tumbling up and down from the waterfall, and then gathered on top of Qin Feng's head, like the Milky Way in the sky, flowing down. This is the Wenchi initiation. Qin Feng felt that his head had become extremely clear, and even the fatigue from reading books for many days was gone. This is the ability of the ninth level root-building realm of the literary saint. Now that things have come to this, he has finally entered the ninth rank of literary saint. Within a moment, the waterfall in the Divine Sea collapsed, and was replaced by a nine-step ladder to the sky. At the end of the ladder, a rooftop floated. Qin Feng knew that that was the only way to enter the eighth level of the literary sage the heart-asking platform. Although I really want to stay here, read books, accumulate literary knowledge, and hit the heart question platform. I have it returned to the Qin mansion for ten days. It's best to go back and have a look. Qin Feng thought like this, then walked down to the attic, and happened to meet Song Fei. Lan came forward. Succeeded? The latter handed over the bun in his hand and asked calmly. Well, thank you Miss Song for this time. Jean Fong took the bun and nodded directly. During this period, Song Filan brought him food every day, which helped him save a lot of time reading. You are welcome. By the way, where are my parents? Don't worry. I have already told them that you have been staying here reading in recent days. That's good. I plan to go back to the Qin mansion to see my parents and second brother. Miss Song, do you still want to eat here? In fact, until now, Qin Feng didn't know what the other party meant by eating. What exactly does that mean? Five days ago, he had secretly observed Song Filan, but apart from seeing her walking back and forth in front of several walls of books, he didn't see anything strange at all. It's impossible for the other party to secretly tear the pages of the book and stuff them into his mouth when he's not paying attention. Is he really full of knowledge? Qin Feng shook his head, and dismiss this nonsense. I'm not hungry today, so I won't eat. I happen to have something to go to Xiching, and I'll take a walk with you. That's fine. The two stepped out of Tinjiuxuan. After hearing the movement, the old man Bailey glanced at Qin Feng, said, not bad, and closed his eyes to rest again. After the two of them walked away, the old man raised the corner of his mouth and said again, The sun is shining brightly today, and the wind is gentle. It's really a good day to get married. Qin Feng and Qin Feng didn't walk long before they saw pedestrians on the road rushing towards the west. Qin Feng, who was full of curiosity, couldn't help but grab the passerby and asked, Brother, where are you rushing to in such a hurry? You don't even know about such a big thing? Over there in Fotian City, the imperial capital, there is actually a young lady from a large family who has married into Jinyang City. I heard that early in the morning. The woman's marriage team came in large numbers. The sooner you let go, the slower you go. I'm afraid you won't be able to squeeze in. A woman from the imperial capital married into Jin Yang City? Could it be that his brain was caught in the door? Jin Feng let go of the man and looked excited. Is there such a thing? I want to see how shabby this bride must be to be so worried that she can't get married and has to marry here. The two of them followed the flow of people and headed towards the West City. Oddly enough, walking on this road always felt very familiar. After careful observation, Qin Feng suddenly realized that this was the road he took from Qin Mansion to Tinjiuxuan. On weekdays, there are not so many people on this street, so it feels familiar and strange at the same time. This is good. I can go home and watch the fun, but I don't know if I will have a chance to have a glass of wedding wine. Qin Feng thought happily. After walking through a few more streets, the crowds became more and more crowded, and the noise in my ears became more and more noisy. Dang. The clear sound of gong sounded. Getting married involves beating gongs and drums. 
when Jean Fong heard this sound. He knew that the person he was going to get married to today was in front of him. Hey, is this direction quite close to the Qin mansion? Xin Feng looked eagerly into the distance and could vaguely see the bustling marriage procession. He wanted to continue moving forward. But the streets at this time were like the morning rush hour in the previous life of the magic city. With no room for you to stop. The crowd kept pushing and shoving. Xin Feng was afraid of getting separated from Miss Song. So he subconsciously grabbed her palm. The palm of his hand was delicate and smooth. With a hint of coolness. It made his heart flutter. But it also shocked him. Did I accidentally hold Miss Song's hand? Who gave me the courage? Liang Jingru? He suddenly thought of seizing Chur Ziming. But he made a joke to Miss Song. And the latter put a knife on his neck. And now that he was holding the opponent's hand directly, he couldn't have an arm cut off directly. Right? He quickly released his right hand. Qin Feng swallowed. Turned his head carefully. And secretly observed the other party's reaction. But what he didn't expect was that Song Filin didn't seem to notice what happened just now. And she still looked as heroic as before. Fortunately, fortunately, there were probably too many people around. So Miss Song didn't notice. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief. But he didn't see that the top of Song Filin's white ears had a touch of pink at some point. I borrowed it. I borrowed it. Qin Feng pushed forward desperately. But with little effect. During this period, some people yelled, Are you in such a hurry to reincarnate? In desperation, Qin Feng thought, Hey, who dropped all the money here? Where? Where? It's mine. It's mine. Don't pick it up randomly. Seeing that it worked, Qin Feng added fuel to the fire. Oh, there's actually gold. What? The crowd suddenly became chaotic. And Qin Feng finally took this opportunity to advance all the way. Not long after, he came to the front of the team and saw the wedding team. The procession was huge, with people in the front playing gongs and drums. People in the back carrying countless betrothal gifts and a big red sedan chair held high in the middle. There were tall horses on both sides, and at the front of the team leading the way. Qin Feng glanced at it, and was shocked. The horse was not extraordinary, but a black hoof divine horse. A famous war horse that ordinary people could not own. Only those with a title of first class general or above can raise such a magical horse. It can be seen from this that the background of the woman's family is at least a first class general. But what surprised Qin Feng the most was not this. He stared at the scene in front of him with wide eyes and some disbelief. Puzzled. Why did the wedding procession stop at the door of his Qin mansion? Is the father about to take a concubine? Or is the second brother about to get married? What happened during the ten days I was away? Qin Feng was confused. Chapter 21 One Stop Wedding In order to find out, Qin Feng squeezed out of the crowd and walked towards the gate of Qin mansion. But before he could take a few steps, at the head of the marriage procession, a man with dark skin and black armor riding on a black hoof divine horse stopped him with a halberd in his hand and said in a cold voice, Idle people, stay away. I, Qin Feng just wanted to explain. The dark skinned man flicked his wrist and swung his halberd. Looking at his posture, he was actually going to knock him away. At this moment, Song Filin, who was behind him, stepped forward, drew out the dagger from his waist, and blocked the halberd. The swarthy man frowned, and the strength in his hand increased again. But to his surprise, the woman with the black scarf in front of her responded calmly and did not take a step back. To protect its master, the black hoof horse neighed, and its powerful front hooves kept stepping on the ground, kicking up bursts of dust. Song Filin was unmoved and just glanced at it lightly. The horse seemed to be frightened by something. It put away its violent emotions and calmed down again. It even took the initiative to turn the horse's body to avoid Song Filin's sight. The man narrowed his eyes slightly, jumped off his horse, and announced his home. I am the vanguard of the Shiho army to participate in the punishment. Who are you? Song Filin didn't want to pay attention. Qin Feng was thoughtful after hearing the words. Shen Hujin? One of the most valiant and capable troops in Dechien. The vanguard officer holds an official rank equivalent to the third rank. This person occupies a high position. And he is willing to lower his status to become a guard for the marriage team? Wait. Qin Feng the general of the Shenho army, seemed to have thought of something. And his eyes widened. Are you from the Duke Lu Fuwa's family in Fontian City? The person sitting in the big red sedan cannot be Lu Jianli. Right. How dare you call Miss Lu Fuwa's daughter by her name? It turned out to be her. Jean Feng's thoughts were changing. He still remembered the marriage contract between the ancestors of the Lu family and the Qin family. But it shouldn't be. 
How could that talented young lady condescend to marry in this remote place? Wait, who is she going to marry? Not, at this moment, in the Qin mansion, Qin, who was wearing a green skirt, leaned out half of her body, took a look, then looked happy, and trotted out of the house with her skirt in hand. Young master, you are back. Sir, my wife and I are almost dying of anxiety. Please come with me to see them. Are you Qin Fong of the Qin family? Xing Sheng turned his head and said in surprise. What? I've never seen such a handsome young master? You? Xing Sheng was speechless. Qin Fong was too lazy to answer. He was eager to understand the marriage. After saying something, he followed Qing Er and hurried into the house. Song Filan did not follow him. After watching for a moment, she turned around and left, disappearing into the crowd. In the Qing mansion, the Qin family has long been in chaos. Qin Jianan was pacing back and forth in the lobby. He glanced at the woman in blue not far away, who was holding a long sword and carrying a sword case on her back and said, Madam, the guests are here, and you don't know how to make tea for them? Oh? Oh. Yes. Yes. Ming Shui was stunned, and hurriedly picked up the teapot on the table, took a teacup, and started pouring tea. However, she was too absorbed in thinking about other things that she didn't realize that this there was obviously no water in the teapot. Chinan looked out of the lobby from time to time, with an anxious look on his face. He turned around and saw his mother making tea. He frowned and felt something was wrong. After staring for a while, he noticed the problem and reminded him loudly, Mom, the teacup you poured into belongs to me. Ming Shui was startled, glanced at the teacup, and apologized. I took it by mistake. I took it by mistake. Mom, I'll change it now. The three of them had their own thoughts. But they are all thinking about the same person. Suddenly, Chinger's call came into the lobby. Master, madam, the eldest young master is back. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw Ching Feng arriving at the entrance of the lobby. When he stepped into the lobby, he immediately saw the woman in blue with a sword box on her back, with picturesque features and graceful figure. When the latter heard the movement, he also cast his gaze, his eyes full of scrutiny. Qin Feng only glanced at the woman for a few times, then came to his parents' side and asked in a low voice, Mom and Dad, what on earth is going on? The two were about to speak but stopped. Qin Jianan took a breath and handed over a letter, indicating to open it. Qin Feng opened the letter, took out the letter paper, and read down line by line until the last word came into his eyes. He showed a complicated expression. The gifted eldest daughter of the Lu family failed to survive the catastrophe and her lower body was paralyzed. Even the imperial doctors and the imperial capital were unable to cure her. Mr. Lu implored the Qin family to complete the ancestral engagement and allow Lu Jianli to stay away from the imperial capital and live quietly. Between the lines, there are all Mr. Lu's pleas and apologies. After all, Lu Jianli is no longer the aloof fairy now, but a person who has been demoted to the mortal world. Half the body is paralyzed. This alone will deter countless men. Of course, Mr. Lu knew this very well. Qin Feng pondered for a moment and did not give an answer. Instead, he raised his head and asked, Mom and Dad, what do you want me to do? The second mother wanted to speak but stopped. Qin Jianan patted Qin Feng's shoulder and said solemnly, That girl from the Lu family is also a pitiful person. The higher she stands, the more painful she falls. I want to help her more. After all, when we were in the imperial capital before, the Lu family never looked down on my Qin family, but took good care of me. Moreover, even though countless young talents in the imperial capital proposed to the Lu family, they were still rejected by Mr. Lu on the basis of the ancestral marriage contract. The Lu family has never broken their promise. The kindness of a drop of water should be repaid by a spring of water. So what I mean is, Qin Jianan didn't say the next words, but Qin Feng had already gotten the general idea. Dad hopes he can agree to the marriage. The second mother couldn't bear it. Master, why don't we forget it? Fonger. Qin Jianan stretched out his hand to interrupt. Let him decide for himself. Qin Feng looked tangled and put himself in Lu Jianli's shoes. He also sympathized with Lu Jianli's experience. But he couldn't sacrifice his future happiness. They were all men. Qin Jianan naturally understood his son's concerns. So he leaned close and said seriously. That daughter of the Lu family is so beautiful and fragrant that she is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Just looking at her is a pleasure to the eyes. And you kid, don't be too narrow-minded. The worst thing you can do is take in a few concubines in the future. 
I want to take in concubines. But I don't have such an opportunity yet. Ouch. Madam. Let go. What do you want? Ernyang pressed her hands hard. And Jin Jinan grimaced in pain. Father. Mother. There are outsiders here. Jinan reminded in a low voice. Ernyang suddenly felt that she had lost her etiquette. Let go of her hand. And smiled at the girl in blue. Jean phone sighed. The world always requires men to be fearless. And I just endured what I shouldn't have to endure at this age. I understand. Then when will the marriage take place? Qin Feng accepted his fate. Firstly to repay the Qin family's kindness to the Lu family. And secondly, naturally he was moved by his father's words. This naturally requires a lot of preparations. Qin Jianan counted the time with his fingers. And the girl in blue who had been silent suddenly said, My master has asked the scribes of Haowen Academy to calculate it in advance. Today is a good and auspicious day. Today? Several people said in surprise. This. My name is Lan Ningxuang, and I am the lady's sword attendant. Miss Lan, isn't this too hasty? After all, we have just learned the news. Qin Jianan was a little embarrassed. Are you so anxious? Are you afraid that you will regret it? Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. No, the Lu family is fully prepared. After Lan Ningxuang said this, she turned around and walked out of the Qin mansion. In a short while, more than a dozen strong men, headed by the dark-skinned man, walked into the Qin mansion with several maids. Each of them carried various decorative objects in their hands. And then, they started busy going back and forth in the Qin mansion. An hour passed by in a hurry. And when I looked at the Qin mansion, they all looked festive. Qin Feng looked dumbfounded. From the preparations, betrothal gifts, decorations, to the wedding ceremony, the Qin family had no involvement from the beginning to the end. It was all handled by the Lu family. Could this be the one-stop wedding ceremony of the ancients? It's so efficient. Chapter 22 The Visitor is Evil At this time, several maids from the Lu family entered the Qin mansion lobby one after another, and each of them was carrying a set of red crowns and red robes. It seemed that they had prepared multiple sets in advance because they did not know the size of the groom. The maid with empty hands came to Qin Feng, bowed and whispered, Master Qin, please raise your hands. Oh? Oh. Qin Feng did as he was told. After a while of measuring, the maid found the most suitable size. The two maids cooperated. One took off Qin Feng's outer shirt, and the other put on a red robe and a red crown for him. This groom's robe was made by Yuxiafang in the imperial capital. It is exquisite and noble in style, and it really compliments Qin Feng's handsome face. Seeing this, Er Yang couldn't help but blush. How could she not be excited when her son was getting married? In ancient times, when getting married, the groom would help the bride into his house. Qin Feng put on the groom's robe and was led by the maid to the door of the Qin mansion. Speaking of which, he still didn't know what the rumored Lu Jianli looked like. La Ning Shuang came to the side of the big red sedan, gently opened the red curtain, and walked in. Not long after, half of the bride's body came out. She was wearing a phoenix crown and xiaopei, and her coat was a gold-embroidered red silk shirt from Yuxiafang. The spectators stood on tiptoes, trying to see the bride clearly, but the bride held a round robe in her hand. A paper fan covered his face. This fan is called the K-Fan, which is used to conceal shame and ward off evil spirits. Only the groom can uncover it. Everyone said it was a pity, but the next scene made the crowd instantly restless. No one thought that the bride was actually in a wheelchair and was pushed out by the girl in blue who had entered the sedan earlier. He's a paralytic. No one was the first to speak out. And the insulting words spread among the crowd like a plague. Qin Feng had already expected this scene. But he didn't expect the response to be so intense. La Ningxuan frowned. Her face as cold as frost. She held the wheelchair with her left hand and waved the sword in her right hand. A blue sword energy surged out, leaving a sword mark about the width of a palm on the ground. The second realm of sword intent. Xiong Yue. Qin Feng was thoughtful. This sudden scene scared everyone into silence. Xing Sheng took this opportunity and led a group of followers to push the crowd back more than ten feet. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief and stepped out of the Qin mansion. He wanted to hold the bride's hand and lead her in. However, at this moment, a sudden change occurred. Among the already silent crowd, a harsh and gloomy voice suddenly sounded. What? The bride is paralyzed, and no one is allowed to tell her. Get out of here! Following an angry rebuke, there were screams one after another from the crowd. A middle-aged man with a burly body and a sinister face pushed aside the crowd and opened a path. Behind him, 
a group of people followed. And the man in white shirt, who had made a sound earlier, was the man in the white shirt surrounded by everyone. He had a feminine face and a contemptuous smile on his face, which made people feel extremely uncomfortable. When Xin Feng saw this, his heart sank. Although he didn't know who the man in the white shirt was, he recognized the other people around him. The middle-aged man with a flattering smile as he hung. The Lord of Jinong City. The young man next to him, who also looks like a dog, is his son Yi Luoting. And the others are the retinues of the city lord's palace. To be able to please the people of the lord's mansion of Jinyang City like this, you don't need to guess to know that the identity of the man in white shirt is certainly not simple. Lan Ningxuang saw the man in white shirt and said coldly, Tang Xian, why are you here? This is a big mistake. Mr. Liu is also the duke of the imperial court and the commander-in-chief of the Shenhou army. How can his granddaughter get married without anyone witnessing it? My father, minister of war, has been busy with the war recently and can't get away. So naturally, my son, I have to come to support him. Minister of the Ministry of War? He was a powerful minister in charge of the national military and military affairs and managed the war. Even the Demon Slayer Division had to obey his orders to a certain extent. I didn't expect that this disgusting white shirt young man was actually the son of that kind of person. Looking at this, the other party was obviously coming to the Lu family. And the person who came was not good. Qin Feng narrowed his eyes slightly. Xing Sheng stepped forward and held a halberd in front of the group of people. I'm sorry, Mr. Tang. The Lu and Qin families have no intention of inviting outsiders to this wedding. Tang Xian heard this, sneered, and then said angrily, Wang Ming, my father sent you to accompany me, and this is how you protect me? What kind of dog dares to bark in front of me? Xing Xing's face was ugly, but the burly middle-aged man raised his right fist without saying a word and roared towards him. Xing Sheng was shocked. He held his halberd in front of him. When the fists and halberds clashed, they heard a harsh golden sound. Forced back. It's just a dog. Why do you want to kill it for so long? Tang Xian said again. When Wang Ming heard this, he stamped his right foot on the ground. Everyone felt the ground tremble, and Xing Sheng's body was instantly knocked back more than ten feet. Fortunately, he inserted his halberd into the ground in time and was able to stabilize his body. But anyone with a discerning I could everyone could see that the hand holding the halberd was still shaking slightly. Qin Feng couldn't help but look at the burly man, showing off his energy, which was a method that could only be used by those in the 6th level Shenwu condensation realm. Tang Xian, are you doing this to provoke a war between the Lu and Tang families? Lan Ningxuang asked coldly, holding the sword tightly in her right hand. Hey, you can eat whatever you want, but you can't talk nonsense. I'm just here to attend Miss Lu's wedding, and I want to give you my heart by the way. Tang Xian sneered and shouted loudly. Why don't you treat me like this? Bring it over with the gift you prepared. After the words fell, I saw several strong followers behind the group carrying the body of a monster beast and suddenly threw it in front of everyone with a loud bang. Qin Feng looked down and saw that this monster was called Song Yin Leopard and was well known for its fast speed. But what was Tang Xian's intention in sending this thing? I heard Tang Xian speak again. On my way to Jin Yang City, I suddenly saw this monster galloping in the jungle and I immediately ordered someone to kill this beast. Thinking of me, Miss Lu, I am jealous of my talent. I failed to survive the tribulation. I lost consciousness in my lower body and will never be able to walk again. Why can this damn beast be so happy and gallop through the forest? Come here. Please cut off all four hooves of this monster for me and give it to Miss Lu as a gift. Qin Feng frowned. Does this person have such a bad mouth? After all, Lu Jianli was about to become his wife. How could she allow others to bully her like this? Too much bullying. Lan Ningxuang couldn't bear it any longer. She raised her sword and swung out another blue sword energy, aiming directly at Tang Xian. When Wang Ming, a tall man, saw the scene, he blocked the sword energy directly. He pushed forward with both palms to block the sword energy. Then he saw that his arms were violently exerting force. The astonishingly powerful sword energy was actually forced by him. Tear it apart. I am the son of the Minister of War, and you want to kill me in front of everyone. How brave you are! Tang Xian was about to use the topic when a voice suddenly sounded in his ear. It's almost winter, and I don't know which family's dog didn't take good care of it. It ran to the street and bit everyone it saw. It's so damn unlucky. Chapter 23 Marrying You is really a hard job. The originally tense atmosphere suddenly became quiet, as if you could hear a pin drop. In full view of everyone, Qin Feng strolled towards the red sedan chair. Were you talking just now? 
Tang Xian roared. Qin Feng simply ignored it, walked to the big red sedan, and said to Lan Ningxuan, Miss Lan, let me take her into the Qin mansion next. Mr. Qin! You, Lan Ningxuan hesitated to speak. She struggled for a moment and finally said, Be careful. Qin Feng nodded and walked to the side of the bride, who was wearing a red rosy cloud, although the bride covered her face with a fan. From the side, her skin was better than white snow and her flawless profile showed it now. Lu Jinli is not called the beauty of the country and the beauty of the country, and it is by no means groundless. He bowed slightly and said softly, Madam, it's freezing outside. I will take you into the house. The bride, who was clad in red rosy clouds, did not reply. Her right hand was still holding on to her face, but she was covering her face with a fan. However, she stretched out her left hand from the wide red robe. The white wrist seemed to be glowing with white light under the light of the red robe. Qin Feng smiled slightly, held her left hand, and then his mind wandered. She was obviously recognized by Dakian as the sweet girl of heaven. And she was obviously a swordsman genius proclaimed by the leader of Wanjin's sect. Qin Feng originally thought that even if Lu Jinli's hands were not full of sword cocoons, they would be rougher than ordinary women's hands. But he unexpectedly, the place where I started was delicate and smooth, soft and boneless. Qin Feng held the bride's hand and walked in front, followed closely by Lan Ningxuang, slowly pushing the wheelchair. When Tang Xian saw the scene, he laughed angrily. Okay, very good. This is the first time in so many years that I have been ignored like this. Wang Ming, the bride and groom have gone so hard. Don't you know how to help? Follow. Everyone saw Wang Ming clenching his fists, his muscles bulging out, and his whole body was exuding amazing heat. The bluestone pavement under his feet fell apart in an instant, and a crack as thin as an arm spread straight towards Qin Feng. Boom! At the same time, Qin Feng groaned. His face turned pale, and his figure instantly became shorter. His shoulders seemed to be weighing down a huge mountain, making him unable to breathe. This is a move at the sixth level of divine martial arts strong pressure, sending out the energy in the body, gathering it in one place, and oppressing the opponent. If it weren't for Qin Feng's literary spirit to protect his body, I'm afraid that just this one move would have pushed him to his knees. Tang Xian's intention was to embarrass Qin Feng in front of everyone and thereby slap the Lu family in the face. Master Qin! Lan Ningxuang and Xing Sheng said in unison, both showing worried looks. Xing Sheng even flew up and waved his halberd, trying to disrupt Wang Ming's energy. However, just when the halberd was within an arm's length of Wang Ming, a stone suddenly flew out from the crowd and hit the halberd knocking both the person and the halberd away. There is a strong man behind Tang Xian, and his strength is probably even higher than that of Wang Ming. Xing Sheng looked ugly and was about to attack again, but was stopped by Qin Feng. It doesn't matter. Let's go! After the words fell, he actually took the pressure and took a step forward. This move inevitably made Xing Sheng and La Ningxuang feel respectful. Damn it. I just wanted to show off my masculinity, but I didn't expect it to be so difficult. As expected, there is a price to pay for showing off. Qin Feng cursed in his heart. He also didn't expect that someone would dare to disrupt the Lu family's wedding. If he had known it, the wedding would not have happened. Blood loss. Tang Xian saw this and said angrily, You bastard. I asked you to help. And this is how you help. Didn't you see that the groom can't walk? Is this shit going to end? Qin Feng raised his head and glared at the other party. When Wang Ming heard this, his eyes widened as big as copper bells. He made a fist with his right hand and slapped his left palm violently. With a roar, the entire bluestone road beneath his feet collapsed. Qin Feng's chest suddenly fell tight, and he felt the pressure on his body suddenly increase. When Xing Sheng saw this, he said nothing and took a step forward, raising his halberd to resist the pressure together. The pressure suddenly eased. Qin Feng turned his head and looked at each other. Although this black charcoal head didn't look good, he had good eyesight. Without his help, he would probably be in trouble. Taking this opportunity, he asked in a low voice, The Tang family sent people to cause trouble. Don't you Lu family have any experts accompanying them? Stop pretending. I know you have a backup plan. And you want to take the opportunity to see my sincerity towards your lady. Right. In Qin Feng's eyes, he also felt that this was the same as the bride's bridesmaid in the previous life who made things difficult for the groom. Qin Feng added, The sincerity I have shown now is enough. Call your masters out quickly and catch that guy. I just need to slap him. Don't worry. I won't hit him too much. I have a sense of proportion. Hearing this, 
Sheng Sheng looked troubled. He turned his head and glanced back and then looked away. His young lady was a top expert. What other expert should he bring along with him? It's just that after experiencing the previous incident, the young lady is disheartened and may not be willing to take action. Moreover, he did not expect that the people of the Tang family would be so crazy that they would travel thousands of miles to Jin Yang City just to embarrass the Lu family on their wedding day? Jin Feng's face twitched when he saw the other party's expression. What's the situation? There is no master? Fortunately, your Lu family is still a big family in Fontian City. Marrying your own daughter is so unpopular. Hack, it looks like this slap won't work. So hurry up and enter the house. Go quickly. Go quickly. Jin Feng urged. While saying this, he moved forward another ten feet and was only the last ten feet away from the gate of Qin Mansion. Just when Qin Feng was about to go all out, Tang Xian shouted directly, Use all your strength. Don't hold back. As soon as he finished speaking, Wang Meng roared angrily, and blood surged all over his body. His skin turned red at the moment because the temperature was too high. Xing Sheng hurriedly mobilized the energy in his body, raised his halberd, and took the lead in dealing with the pressure. Then he let out a muffled groan, and the stone slab shattered under his feet. Seeing this, Lan Ningxuang raised the sword in her right hand. The sword energy was like a wave, but it was crushed by the force. Worse, the terrifying pressure fell. Qin Feng's eyes widened, and he hurriedly mobilized the literary energy in his body to display the Haotian mirror. Everyone saw that a white mirror appeared out of thin air on Qin Feng's raised left palm. The white lines on the mirror surface were flowing and dazzling. Is this the Haokin mirror? Tang Xian's eyes widened. He never imagined that Xiao Xiao San, the eldest son of a Fonghua general, could learn such a unique skill of a literary sage. Since Xing Sheng and Lan Ningxuang resisted most of the pressure, Qin Feng's Haotian mirror easily blocked the remaining pressure. Wang Ming. Tang Xian roared angrily. Wang Ming exerted force again. Fine cracks appeared on the surface, and blood flowed across the surface. At the cost of serious injury to himself, he raised the pressure to a higher level again. But at this moment, no one noticed that the beauty's red lips behind the fan moved slightly and let out a slight sigh. The burly Wang Ming skin instantly cracked and blood spurted out. Then he leaned up and fell heavily. When Tang Xian saw this, he gritted his teeth with hatred. Jin Feng also breathed a sigh of relief and brought Lu Jianli, who was wearing a wedding dress, into the Qin mansion. He glanced at the woman wearing red rosy clouds beside him and said with a wry smile, No wonder so many people in Fontian City wanted to marry you. But they didn't succeed. Marrying you is really a hard job. Chapter 24 Making Things Difficult Thank you for your hard work. Uncle. Xing Sheng and Lan Ningxuang said in unison, speaking from the bottom of their hearts. Originally, they had no expectations for the young lady's marriage. But their uncle's performance really impressed them. Feeling the respect in their eyes, Qin Feng was very pleased. Fortunately, the groom's robe was relatively wide, and you couldn't see my leg swaying. Hee <laughs> hee. A sixth grade martial artist is nothing more than that. Qin Feng took the opportunity to cheer. Bang bang bang. Tang Xian stepped forward while applauding. I didn't expect that Mr. Qin actually studied literary sage's Taoism and learned literary sage's secret skill. Hao Tian Mirror. It's amazing. It's amazing. No wonder he was able to marry the paralyzed Miss Lu back to the mansion. Oh, how could I say that about your bride? Mr. Qin won't blame him for a slip of the tongue. Right? Qin Feng frowned and suppressed the urge to slap the other person. It wasn't that he was afraid of the identity of the son of the opponent's minister of war. But he was worried about the mysterious master who had previously attacked Hei Tan too. That level of strength is probably still higher than that of the fallen Wang Ming. What Mr. Tang said. How can a person be as knowledgeable as an animal? If you win the quarrel, you are just beating an animal at best. If it is difficult to tell the winner then you are as good as an animal. If you lose, then you are not as good as an animal. From this point of view, if I really want to argue with Mr. Tang, I will suffer anyway. After all, the beast has been invincible from the beginning. Who else is meaner than me? Come and find out more about the 21st century. Xing Sheng and Lan Ningxuang glanced at Qin Feng in surprise. They didn't expect that this uncle had such a vicious mouth. Tang Xian's face kept twitching with anger. But after a moment, he seemed to have thought of something and instead exhaled and said with a smile, That's it. That's all. I don't have the same experience as you. I came here just to have a sip of Miss Lu's family Mr. Qin's wedding wine. You won't welcome it. Right. This person is not as simple as he seems on the surface. 
Qin Feng narrowed his eyes slightly. He hoped that the other person would be angered by his words. After all, compared to the rampaging bear, the venomous snake waiting for an opportunity in the shadows was more attractive. Hard to guard against. Tang Xian glanced at Wang Meng on the ground and said coldly, Come here. Throw this embarrassing thing away. Don't affect today's wedding. After saying that, he went straight to the gate of Qin Mansion. Seeing this, Xing Sheng held his halberd horizontally and blocked the door. Why? You don't want me to go in? That's not possible. I have traveled thousands of miles to come here. If I don't even drink a glass of wedding wine, won't I be laughed at when I go back? Mr. Emo, what do you think we should do? As soon as Tang Xian finished speaking, an old man appeared out of thin air beside him. The old man was wearing a green robe. He had a bald head and some white hair on his temples. He had sinister eyes and a hooked nose, which made him look scary. When Xing Sheng and Lan Ning Shuang saw the visitor, their whole bodies stood upright with chills, as if they were facing a formidable enemy. The method they had just used to appear in an instant was something that only those who had stepped into the realm of the fifth level of divine martial arts could do. When Mr. Mo spoke, his voice was as sharp as a steel needle scratching on a blackboard. Two seventh grade little kids, one of whom has just touched the second level of Sword Dao Shong Yue, are trying to stop my young master. Are they looking for death? The words seemed to carry inexplicable pressure. Xing Sheng, who was standing in front of him, turned pale and let out a muffled groan. But even so, he didn't take a step back. Oh, the bones are quite strong. Mr. Emo sneered and wanted to use his strength again. That's enough. Qin Feng suddenly said, Who can live without a few flies? Don't ruin everyone's interest. You? Tang Xian glared angrily. Why are you so excited? Are you that fly? Qin Feng asked curiously. The boy has sharp teeth and a sharp mouth. Master, do you need me to teach him a lesson? Mr. Emo said with a cold tone. Tang Xian's expression changed several times. And suddenly he smiled coldly, as if he had thought of some evil idea. No, let's go in. This bitch has some bad water in his belly. Qin Feng narrowed his eyes slightly. Uncle, seeing Tang Xian and his entourage enter the Qin mansion, Xing Sheng wanted to say something, but Qin Feng stopped him with his eyes. The situation was stronger than the others. If Tang Xian was stopped here, there was no guarantee that the other party would go too far. Means, Qin Feng suddenly regretted not establishing a good relationship with Xi Jinxi Ziming as early as possible. Otherwise, if he could be invited to the scene today, with his ability of 100 ghosts and 5th grade, he would not be as passive as he is now. In the Qin mansion, when everyone was picking up the bride, the servants and maids had already set up tables and chairs everywhere. Drinks were served one after another, and plates of cold dishes and delicacies were also served one after another. Not long after, Qin Feng and his party came to the lobby. At this moment, Qin Jianan and Er Yang were already sitting upright. Qin and beside him was full of joy. Seeing that today's two principals had arrived, Someone shouted, Please take your seats. Yes. Even if it was not known to everyone in Jinong City, it was not far off that a wealthy family in Feng Tian City was marrying here. Qin Jinong liked to send money to other places on weekdays. And he had quite a few friends. So it didn't take long. The entire Qin mansion was packed with people. Er Nyang asked with a smile, Oh, why did it take so long to pick up a bride? Something happened that delayed it for a while. The second mother looked at the bride in front of her no matter how satisfied she was. But when she saw the wheelchair under the bride's seat, she still felt emotional. How could such a good girl have to suffer such a thing? After chatting for a while, the ceremony continued. Just listen to the first bow to heaven and earth, the second bow to the high hall, and the husband and wife to each other. The family was enjoying themselves happily. The second mother stepped forward and took the bride's left hand, saying with red eyes, My dear daughter, from now on, this place will also be your home. No one in the Qin family disliked Lu Jianli's paralysis. Lan Ningxuang and Xing Sheng looked at each other. At this moment, they finally understood why Mr. Lu was willing to marry the young lady here. Originally, everything was developing in a good direction. According to etiquette, Qin Feng should unveil Lu Jianli's ban next. But at this moment, Tang Xian, who had been silent since entering the Qin mansion, suddenly stood up and said, No, this is not okay. The bride cannot get up to worship the sky, the earth, or her parents. If the fan could be opened so casually, wouldn't this marriage be too childish? Chapter 25 Appearance in Front of Others Lan Ningxuang shouted coldly, Tang Xian, don't go too far. Under the confused eyes of all the guests, 
Tang Xian walked into the lobby. I'm just telling the truth. Is this too much? As we all know, in Wudigan, it is not so easy for the groom to uncover the bride's veil. And the more thought the groom puts into uncovering the fan, it also shows that the groom attaches more importance to the bride. Mr. Qin, I don't know if I am right. Meng Shui and Qin Jian looked at each other, wondering what this person meant. Qin and's face was ugly, and he took a step forward. My eldest brother's wedding can be revealed however he wants, and it has nothing to do with you. Tang Xian turned his head and looked up after hearing this. The smile on his lips disappeared, and he said with a cold expression, I'm talking to your eldest brother. Why are you interrupting? Is the Qin family so unruly? As soon as he finished speaking, Boss Missouri waved his sleeve, and a strong wind went straight through the lobby, shaking Qin onching to the beam and pillar beside him, making a loud bang. Honor! Qin Jianan and Er Nyang exclaimed. All the guests took a deep breath. Lan Ningxuang and Xing Sheng stepped forward and glared at the situation. Looking at the situation, they seemed ready to start a fight if they disagreed. Some of the guests sitting outside had even sneaked away. The clay figurine was still angry, but Qin Feng could no longer bear it. He stepped forward and said expressionlessly, What do you want? Master Qin, what do you mean? I just want to follow the etiquette. Then I will listen to your etiquette. Generally speaking, if you want to unveil the fan, the bridegroom has to write a poem about fanning. However, Mr. Qin is a student of the literary sage, so a poem about fanning is not a problem. If you really want to do this, it would be a bit boring. Got it. How about this? The two of us each write a poem and discuss and compare it with each other, which can add a bit of fun to the wedding. What do you think? After he finished speaking, Tang Xian took out a black writing brush with a bloodstained tip from the jade pendant on his waist. When Lan Ningxuang saw this thing, she couldn't help but exclaim, Killing pen! Qin Feng also frowned when he heard this. It was mentioned in the book that the so-called murderous pen is a treasure that can materialize the artistic conception in poetry. Although this object cannot cause actual harm, it can break the poem. It is the platform for asking the mind of the saints. And once the platform for asking the mind is broken, the followers of the saintly way will no longer have the connection with the saintly way. It turns out that this guy has been thinking about this all along. I was worried that I couldn't teach you a lesson. Since you are seeking death, I will help you. Qin Feng narrowed his eyes slightly. In this world, as far as poetry is concerned, there is no one who can beat him. That's it. No. Before Qin Feng finished speaking, he was interrupted by Lan Ningxuang, who walked to his side and whispered, Tang Xian studied at Haowen Academy in Feng Tian City, and he has entered the 8th level Ming state of the literary saint not long ago. You but he is a ninth level scholar. How can he compete with him? Don't be reckless. Seeing this, Tang Xian sneered and said, If Mr. Qin is afraid, it's okay. But this is not a good etiquette. If you want to lift the bride's fan, I won't agree. This is a naked threat. Qin Feng glanced at the other party and said calmly, Miss Lan, there is no need to say more. I have made up my mind. You? Okay. Scholars should have such courage. Tang Xian laughed and immediately threw the killer pen in his hand into the air. Everyone saw that with the murderous pen as the center, a translucent white light shield spread instantly. And in the blink of an eye, Tang Xian and Qin Feng were enveloped in it. Tang Xian succeeded in his treacherous plan and couldn't help but look at Qin Feng with a sneer on his face. The murderous intent in his eyes almost turned into reality. However, Qin Feng was unmoved and asked instead, I wonder, Mr. Tang, is there any limit to the content of the poem? Everyone in the world knows that Miss Liu is extremely talented, and her attainments in swordsmanship are beyond the reach of ordinary people. In this case, we will each write a poem related to swords. The sword is the master of killing, and the sword is the poem. The artistic conception in the poem must be mainly about killing. He really does not hide his murderous intention. Qin Feng thought this way, looking at Tang Xian again. As soon as he finished speaking, he moved his fingers in the void. What was surprising was that wherever his fingertips passed, there was a golden light, and lines of poetry jumped out in the void. Is this the power of the killing pen? Outside the mask, Lan Ningxuang saw that Qin Feng was still in a daze, and reminded anxiously, Hurry up and compose your poems. The killing heart pen will materialize the artistic conception in the poems. Although both parties will not cut off the heart before the poems are completed, if they are killed by the other party, the artistic conception in the poem affects you, and it will be difficult for you to write poetry again. It's already too late. Tang Xian couldn't help laughing wildly as he drew the last stroke with his finger. 
he saw a burst of dazzling golden light from the gold-lettered poems in the void. Within a moment, within the light shield of the murderous pen, everything could be seen at a glance. The densely packed swords exude astonishing killing intent. Death! Tang Xian shouted, and countless imaginary swords crisscrossed. The sound of the swords trembled, and they slashed straight at Qin Feng. But everyone present never expected that the latter would slowly close his eyes under such a battle. Stupid! The concrete artistic conception in the poem affects the state of mind. What's the use of closing your eyes? Come and die! Tang Xian looked crazy. As soon as the words fell, thousands of swords flew together, and the sword light crisscrossed, all passing through him. Fonger! Qin Jianan and Aaron Yang stood up and exclaimed, Brother! Qinan, who was leaning on the beam and holding his chest, was filled with tears. Uncle! Xing Sheng and Lan Ningxuan attacked the light shield together. However, the killing pen is a very powerful weapon. How can they break through it with their strength? Tang Xian's arrogant laughter was so harsh. He firmly believed that with Qin Feng's ninth grade literary saint's strength, even if he was not frightened to death in such a battle, it would still be close. But the next one the sound made his laughter stop abruptly. That's the only way. Qin Feng opened his eyes, his face expressionless. Everyone present looked surprised when they saw that Qin Feng was fine. Except for Tang Xian. No. It's impossible. You are only a ninth grade literary saint. How can you resist the murderous mood in my poem? The combination of rhetoric and murderous intent is worthy of being called poetry? Qin Feng slowly raised his right hand, pointed it at the void, and said lightly, Let me teach you. What is called poetry? They all looked at me carefully with their eyes wide open. I am going to show off. No. The scholar's work should be made known to others as a saint. Qin Feng waved his fingertips and golden words jumped out. And he saw, a long sword and a glass of wine. A man's heart is small. Lin Kong's murder pen vibrated, and the golden text flashed. A knight holding a sword in his right hand, and a wine bottle in his left hand slowly walked out of the text, and came behind Qin Feng. I saw the knight raised his head to drink, then raised his sword and swung it. All the sharp swords that Tang Xian had evolved from poetry were knocked back. Tang Xian's eyes widened, and he said in a trembling voice, you clearly haven't completed the poem yet. So why can your artistic conception be embodied? Qin Feng ignored it, slid his finger again, and saw again. The silver saddle shines on the white horse, wrestling like a shooting star. With a neigh, a white horse with a silver saddle jumped in front of the knight. The knight put down the wine bottle, came to the door with his sword, and rushed straight towards the countless sharp blades. The white figure was as fast as lightning, and the sound of golden roar was heard endlessly. Within a moment, the knight rode the white horse back to Qin Feng's side. But on Tang Xian's side, the thousands of sharp blades that had evolved poetically were gone. Tang Xian's face turned pale in an instant. The other party only wrote two lines of poetry. And all his poetic ideas were defeated. If the poem was completed, his heart-asking platform would definitely be chopped off by Killer Pin. Seeing Qin Feng's fingers sliding again, Tang Xian hurriedly said, Wait! Wait! I admit defeat! It's too late. Qin Feng responded coldly, drawing a few afterimages with his fingers. And the third line of the poem was completed. Kill one person in ten steps and leave no trace in a thousand miles. The knight's eyes, transformed by poetry, suddenly opened, and he saw a wave of the long sword in his hand. Ten steps away, Tang Xian felt as if his head had been chopped off, and he let out a shrill scream instantly, and his clothes on his back were covered with cold sweat. Wet? His hair was disheveled, his body was trembling, and his eyes were bloodshot, which was in sharp contrast to his previous arrogant appearance. I am the son of minister of the Ministry of War. If you dare to kill me and destroy the foundation of my cultivation, my father will not let you go. Did you hear it? If you dare to finish writing the poem, my father will definitely send people to destroy your Qin mansion. Qin Feng was unmoved. The two sides had already reached a fight to the death. Even if he let the other side go, with Tang Xian's character, he would definitely settle the score later. In this case, it would be better to cut off its foundation and cut off its fangs now. Swipe your fingertips. Use your fingers as swords. And write down words to become a sword. No. No. Mr. Emo. Save me. Tang Xian screamed hysterically. Upon hearing this, the old man in green robe appeared in the lobby instantly. He turned his hands into palms and hit the light shield with all his strength. However, even with his strength, he could not defeat the protective realm constructed by the killing heart pin. Seeing this scene, 
Mr. Emo immediately shouted. Boy, stop now. Otherwise, even if you are the Lu family's husband, I will crush you to ashes. But Mr. Emo would never have thought that facing his own threat, he would get a cold glance from Chin Fong. And the last line of the poem is finally completed. When it's over, brush off your clothes and hide your merit and fame. Chapter 26 Rescue As the last stroke of his fingertips fell, the entire gold-lettered poem burst into dazzling golden light, soaring into the sky. Everyone present stared at the scene in amazement with their eyes wide open. At the same time, the body of the killing heart pin shook, and the white air waves spread to all directions, like ripples. From the blood-stained pin tip, a stream of blood energy flew out, turned into a blood blade in midair, and cut Tang Xian directly. When the latter saw this, his face turned pale with fright. He hurriedly turned around and wanted to escape. But the way to escape was blocked by all the guardians of Kill Heart Pin. But in the blink of an eye, the blood blade penetrated directly through his body and shattered the heart question platform in his divine sea. Tang Xian suddenly let out a hysterical scream, and a mouthful of blood spurted out. Young master! The winner has been decided. The heart question platform has been shattered. The killing pin has fallen to the ground. And the surrounding protective world has slowly melted away. Mr. Mo hurriedly rushed to Tang Xian's side. But at this moment, the latter was kneeling on his knees. His eyes were blank. But he kept repeating. Kill him! Kill him! Old slave! Take your orders! Old Mo took Tang Xian away from the lobby and ordered the people from the Lord's Palace of Jin Yang City to take him away. Then he came back in a blink of an eye. He stared at the man in a festive red robe not far away. The clothes flying around him were filled with murderous aura. The tables and chairs in the lobby began to tremble. And the air was as thick as a quagmire. Seeing this scene, Xing Sheng and Lan Ningxuang immediately protected Qin Feng with serious expressions on their faces. Even Qin An, who had been knocked away earlier, pulled out his narrow-edged sword and stood beside Qin Feng. This fight was originally initiated by Tang Xian. He before Lan Ningxuan could finish her words, she suddenly looked startled and hurriedly raised her long sword to block it in front of her. Mr. Mo had already appeared within a short distance, and all he could see was his fingers, tapped lightly on the blade. The gravity coming from the sword edge directly knocked Lan Ningxuan away. When she finally stabilized her body, her face turned pale, and the blood red at the corner of her mouth was very obvious. Upon seeing this, Xing Xing immediately protected Qin Feng and stepped back, shouting, in full view of everyone. You still want to kill Mr. Lu? Mr. Mo glanced coldly, waved his sleeves and robes, and unleashed his powerful energy, not only overturning Xing Sheng, but also knocking Qin in away. The tables and chairs fell over, and a porcelain vase as tall as one person in the lobby was smashed to pieces by Qin in. Today, no one in the Qin mansion can leave alive. After the words fell, the door of the Qin mansion suddenly closed with a bang. When everyone heard this, their expressions were extremely horrified. How did they know that they were just here to drink? A wedding banquet will actually put your own life on the line. Mr. Mo is already crazy. He strolled up to Qin Feng, hoping to see the panic in his eyes. But the latter was calm and calm. The little kid has a good heart. He doesn't change his face when facing death. Kill if you want. Why are there so many nonsense? Qin Feng replied coldly. You want to die in a hurry? It's not that easy. You chopped the young master's heart-searching platform into pieces and damaged his foundation. I won't let you die so happily. I will crush every bone in your body. Make you struggle in pain. Watch your relatives and friends die in front of you. And finally send you on your way with my own hands. Mr. Mo slowly raised his hand towards Qin Feng. And suddenly heard the sound of three breaking winds. Xing Sheng stabbed with a long halberd from the left side. Lan Ning Shuang jumped into the air and slashed vertically with sword energy. And Qin and swung his long sword and slashed horizontally with the right side. The three of them showed their horns and wanted to kill Mr. Mo by surprise. But in the face of such an offensive, Mr. Mo just snorted coldly. And before anyone could react, all three of them were knocked away. The gap between the two realms cannot be made up by this quantity alone. No one can save you, Mr. Mo sneered. The flesh on his face was wrinkled. And he stretched out his hand to crush Qin Feng's bones. The fingers of Lu Jinli's left hand which was hidden under Hong Xia's wedding dress, moved slightly. But then, they were quickly flattened. At this moment, a voice suddenly sounded outside the Qin mansion. What grudges and grievances have to be settled on the golden day of someone else's wedding? This free wedding wine tastes bad. Mr. Mo paused and looked for his voice. He only saw a corner of the yard. A middle-aged man wearing a black shirt 
and carrying a big wine gourd was drinking with his head raised. His eyes moved slightly downwards. The two-star sapphire order on the other person's waist was so eye-catching. Fortunately, he took action. Chin Feng secretly breathed a sigh of relief. If he hadn't seen Xi Jinxia zimming in the yard earlier, how could he dare to be so confident? Mr. M.O. didn't talk nonsense. With a flick of his finger, a bolt of energy was shot directly at the opponent like a sharp arrow. Sher Ziming didn't seem to notice the danger and kept pouring wine for himself. Just when Jin Chi was only an inch away from his head, the shadow under his feet suddenly stood up like a black wall. Covering M.O. Lao Jin Chi completely blocked it. The fifth grade puppet of Bai Gui. Mr. M.O. narrowed his eyes and said solemnly, I am a guest of the Tang family in Phong Tian City. I was ordered to come here to protect the young master. May I ask who you are? Sher Ziming picked up a mouthful of food and paired it with a sip of wine. He chimed in and replied, It's just Xijing, the demon-slaying department in Jinong City. I won't mention his name, since I am Xijing of the demon-slaying department. I am obeying the orders of the Ministry of War. The head of my family is the Minister of the Ministry of War. I hope you will do it for your convenience and not interfere with today's affairs. Maybe you can use this opportunity to achieve great success in the future even if you step into Phong Tian City. When Xin Feng heard this, his heart suddenly rose to his throat. He was not sure whether Sher Ziming would stand on the other side's side for the sake of profit. And this question, within a moment, he had the answer. Sher Ziming put down his wine glass and said casually, Old man, there are two problems with what you just said. Mr. Mo frowned when he heard this. Which two? First, the Demon Slayer Division is not affiliated with the Ministry of War. Even if the Ministry of War can dispatch the Demon Slayer Division to a certain extent, it is just following orders but not announcements, which is far from the obedience you said. As far as we are concerned, there is only one person who really obeys orders, and that is the commander of a domain. The Dakian Dynasty is divided into four regions, southeast, northwest and northwest, and each region will select the strongest person to lead the Demon Slaying Division of the entire region. That person is called Siming. Secondly, I never thought about going to Fontion City. There are too many rules there. And gulen and brothels are so expensive. There is nothing comparable to the freedom here. These words shocked everyone present. No matter whether it was ordinary people or wealthy merchants and nobles. There was no one in Dakian who desperately wanted to live in the imperial capital for the sake of a stable life. This person had a disgusting tone. Chin Fong twitched the corner of his mouth. He always felt that the real reason why Sher Ziming didn't want to go to the imperial capital was that Golan and brothels were too expensive. Mr. Mo's face turned completely gloomy. Then you mean to take care of this matter today? So what? As soon as these words came out, the atmosphere instantly became tense. Mr. Mo clenched his fists under his sleeves. He looked at the other person, his expression constantly changing. But after a few breaths, he finally let go of his hands and strolled towards the gate of Qin Mansion, passing by Sher Ziming. Mr. Mo asked sideways, Do you dare to declare your family status? Sher Ziming smiled disdainfully. I don't want to change my name, but I don't want to change my surname. Jin Ong City Demon Slayer Department Sijing Wang Fugue. Jin Feng. Chapter 27. Just lie down. Okay. What a king. Fugue. I will remember it. After the words fell, there was a roar, and the door of the Qin Mansion instantly fell into pieces and turned into sawdust. Old man Mo left the Qin mansion without looking back. When Qin Feng saw this, he frowned. The fifth grade Shin Taoism can clearly come and go without a trace. What does this guy mean by insisting on destroying the door? Show strength? Or do you use this to vent your anger? Or both? That's all. As long as I can save my life. After all, it's still my fault that I'm not strong enough. Qin Feng clenched his fists. And his belief in becoming stronger became stronger. In this world, Without strength, you are nothing. Thank you, Mr. Xijing, for the rescue. I am very grateful. Qin Feng walked to the corner of the yard and thanked Sher Ziming. The latter waved his hand. It's just a coincidence. If Xiao Song hadn't told me that there was free wine to drink here, I wouldn't have come. Miss Song? Where is she? Isn't she here? Qin Feng looked around, but did not see those sultry long legs. Don't look at it. She has something to do. I came alone. All right. Not long after, several other people came from the lobby and thanked Sher Ziming. Only Qin Jianan hesitated behind everyone. He may have thought of the scene when he gave someone adulterated wine. So he felt a little guilty. After thanking you, Lan Ningxuang reminded. Sir, 
You have offended the Tang family in Fontian City. It is best to be careful in the future. They are ruthless and will retaliate. Shirziming drank a glass of wine and asked, Be careful? Be careful about what? It was Wang Fukue who ruined his good deeds today. What does it have to do with me? Shirziming? Several people. By the way, my groom? All the troublemakers have left. What are you doing here? The bride is still in the lobby, waiting for you to take off the fan. I also want to see what the beauty praised by Fontian City as the beauty of the country looks like. Shirziming said as he picked up a mouthful of vegetables. Several people looked at each other and returned to the lobby to continue the ceremony. However, after the previous incident, many people were afraid of being affected again and left one after another. Only some brave ones stayed and wanted to see the bride's beauty. Qin Jianan and Aaron Yang sat back down. And Qin Feng finally came to Lu Jianli again. He slowly stretched his right hand towards the fan in the other person's hand, feeling a little nervous for no reason. As the fan was slowly opened, the entire lobby seemed to light up. Qin Feng couldn't help but widen his eyes, and even the sound of breathing could be heard from all around, with skin like gelatin, eyes like the bright moon, and red lips like elixir. This alluring look seemed to have come out of a painting, and Qin Feng's heart was stunned, but he also discovered something. Such a beauty had an expressionless face, especially those eyes, which were as calm as a pool of autumn water, as if nothing in the world could move her heart anymore. Qin Feng couldn't help but sigh in his heart. She was a fairy standing on the top of the clouds, but suddenly fell into the mortal world. Anyone who encounters such a thing will feel despair. Lan Ningxuan walked to her side and grabbed the back of the wheelchair, but the fan had been uncovered. According to etiquette, the bride was about to be sent to the bridal chamber. Qin Feng watched Lu Jinli's slowly leaving figure with mixed feelings in his heart. Such a woman, who was not meant to be with him, has become his wife by accident. God really likes to joke with me. Ah, time flies by. And before you know it, night has fallen quietly. The moonlight is very good today, as if it has covered the Qin mansion with a layer of white gauze. According to custom, at the end of the wedding, the groom should be poured wine and make a fuss in the bridal chamber. But everyone knew about Lu Jinli's situation and tacitly agreed not to mention it. The maids and servants in the mansion began to clean up the mess. Qin Jianan and Er Yang gave Qin Feng a look and left. Qin Feng took a breath and walked back to his room. On the way, he suddenly met that beautiful figure. Lu Jinli had already shed the red glow on her body and put on white clothes. At first glance, she looked as spotless as a fairy. At this moment, she was sitting in the yard, looking up at the bright moon, as if she was remembering something. Qin Feng sighed softly and did not go up to disturb him. He knew that what Lu Jinli needed now was to be left alone. Gently pushing the door open, Qin Feng laughed to himself. On the wedding night, the groom stayed alone in the empty room. Thinking about it, he was unprecedented and unprecedented. Right? But just as he was thinking this, he was surprised to find that Lan Ningxuang was in his room for some reason and was sitting beside his bed. Miss Lan, why are you here? Lan Ningxuang stood up and then slowly unbuttoned her clothes under Qin Feng's surprised gaze. I am the lady's sword attendant. The lady cannot sleep with my uncle, so I can only take my place. When she said this, her blue dress had taken off, revealing the light blue underwear underneath. Is this still good? How can it be justified? Qin Feng hurriedly changed his words. Lan Ningxuan explained while taking off her clothes. As a sword attendant, I must be inseparable from the lady. On the day I became a sword attendant, I thought about becoming my future uncle's maid. Don't worry. My uncle, my grandma from the Lu family has taught me how to have sex with a man. Just wait until my uncle lies on the bed and don't move. It's so good. Miss Lan, you don't have to be like this. Actually, Qin Feng was about to say something else. But when the words came to his lips, his mind seemed to shut down. Lan Ningxuang's inner shirt has also been taken off. And her figure that has been trained in martial arts for many years comes into view. She is really curvy. What Qin Feng didn't expect the most was that he thought the other party was an ordinary girl. But when he saw Lan Ningxuang slowly unbuttoning the white bra wrap on her chest, and then her breasts continued to swell. He, you know, how naive the original idea was. Uncle, what do you want to say? Lan Ningxuang asked curiously. Qin Feng came to his senses and immediately turned around. Miss Lan, you really don't have to be like this. In fact, I have already made up my mind before that I will never consider the matter of men and women before I step into the seventh level realm of literary saint. So, 
That's all. I didn't expect my uncle to have such ambitions. The sound of undressing behind him stopped abruptly. Ching Feng was of course extremely sad to refuse such a beautiful woman to sleep with him. But he did not regret it at all. If desire defeated reason, how would he be different from an animal? However, even though I can't touch it, it's always okay for me to sneak a few glances. Right? Ching Feng thought this way, and then slowly turned sideways. But when he looked sideways, he was surprised to find that the other party was actually fully clothed. So fast? Ching Feng subconsciously said. What so fast? No, it's nothing. Lan Ningxuang straightened her clothes, clasped her fists and said, Since I have great ambitions, I can't say anything more. Just go to sleep, and I won't disturb you anymore. After saying this, Lan Ningxuang walked away. Qin Feng walked to the bed and lay down heavily, feeling as if he had missed a hundred million dollars. In the yard, Lu Jianli was still sitting there, motionless. When Lan Ningxuang saw it, a trace of unbearable flashed in her eyes. She did not leave, but stood quietly outside the house, not only to protect her uncle, but also to accompany her. Lu Jianli looked at the moonlight. Her red lips parted slightly, and she murmured lightly, Kill one person in ten steps. Leave no trace in a thousand miles. There seemed to be a ripple in his eyes, which were like a pool of autumn water. At this moment, she suddenly tilted her head slightly and looked to the north, with a trace of doubt in her eyes. Chapter 28 New House Outside Jinong City, the mountains and forests were like dormant black beasts. A luxurious carriage led by two snow dragon ponies was galloping towards the north. And inside the carriage, it was Tang Xian and his party who were sitting. At this moment, Tang Xian still could not recover from the shattered reality of the questioning platform. He gritted his teeth and kept chanting, I want him to die, and I want his whole family to die. Seeing this, Mr. Mo couldn't help but sigh. This trip to Jinyang City was entirely based on the young master's own whim. He wanted to humiliate the Lu and Qin families and gain access to the royal family. So he did not report it to the head of the family. Unexpectedly, during one trip, he lost even the foundation of his cultivation. In this case, how could the young master fight against the bastard in his family? Don't worry, young master. This time I will return to Fotian City to report this matter to the family leader. The next time I come here again, it will be the day the Qin family is destroyed. But as soon as he finished speaking, Mr. Emo suddenly looked shocked and immediately grabbed Tang Xian and got out of the carriage. At the same time, the originally speeding carriage sank directly into the ground as if it had been crushed by the mountains. The rock shattered and blood flowed freely. Who is it? Mr. Mo shouted loudly, looking around with a vigilant expression. When he looked up, he finally saw the person who made the move. The other party was wearing a long black coat with a faceless white mask on his face. Only the exposed eyes could be seen, which were so cold and heart-stopping. We have no enmity with you. Why are you attacking us? Mr. Mo felt the strength of the other party and did not fight back immediately but used words to test. It's a pity that the faceless man didn't want to say a word. He held his right hand directly across the void, and Emo Lao suddenly let out a hysterical scream. He tremblingly turned his head and looked around, and found that his left arm was actually being held by someone in the air. Broken! What kind of horrific method is this? Young master, run away. Tang Xian was finally brought back to reality by the scream and the cry. He glanced at Emo Lao's injuries in fear and then ran towards the mountain forest desperately. Mr. Emo stopped in front of the faceless man and said in a deep voice, As long as I still have breath, you will never be allowed to hurt the young master. Etc. Is this? He stared at the scene in front of him with wide eyes in disbelief. Centered on the faceless man, the terrifying pressure spread to all sides. Within a moment, there was only a loud roar, and the earth trembled. Everything within a radius of one mile was wiped out and the original mountains and forests instantly turned into flat ground. After reciting the word, Domain, Emo Lao's body was like dust, scattered in the wind. Even until his death, he still could not understand why there were such powerful people in such a remote place, such as the small Jinyang city. The faceless man glanced briefly, and then disappeared into thin air. The night also returned to silence. Perhaps because too many things happened yesterday. Jin Feng didn't wake up until noon. Under Chinger's service, he washed up, got dressed and walked out of the house, then subconsciously looked at the yard. The beautiful figure was no longer there, and the second brother, who usually practiced swordplay in the yard, was also missing. 
The servants and maids in the house were all busy going back and forth, packing things. The scene was exactly the same as when the family moved. Ching Feng was curious and asked Ching Er on the side, What are they going to do? Ching Er replied, The eldest young master doesn't know. Because of the arrival of the young mistress, the Ching mansion has become a bit small. In addition, it was damaged yesterday, and it is very inconvenient to repair it. So after careful consideration, the master went out to look for it early in the morning. I have moved to a bigger house, and I will probably move there today. Where did my father get the money? Qin Feng was surprised. He knew very well about his family's financial situation. Did you forget? The eldest young master. The dowry sent by the Lu family yesterday? It was used to buy a new house, which happened to be about the same. Qin Feng opened his mouth. He originally thought that yesterday's dowry could relieve the Qin family's financial pressure. Who would have thought that all the money would be spent before it was warmed up? This piece of shit is really a loser. Where are my parents? Qin Feng asked, stroking his forehead. The master and the second lady have already gone to the new residence. Do you need Qing Er to take the young master there? Qin Feng shook his head. You tell me the location, and I will go by myself. Qing Er told a story that the new residence is located near the middle of Jinyang City where the housing prices are much more expensive than those in the surrounding areas. The Wang Yi residence that was bought at a large price is also nearby. After Qin Feng knew the location, he stepped out of the broken door and turned around to meet Xing Sheng standing by the door holding a halberd. You didn't return to Feng Tian City? Qin Feng looked surprised. He thought that after escorting the other party, he would rush back to the imperial capital and join the army. But he didn't expect that he was still here. Xing Sheng replied, the mission I accepted before coming here was to leave the Shenhou army and serve as the bodyguard of the young lady and my uncle. At this moment, the young lady is protected by a sword attendant. So I have been staying here, waiting for you to come out. Hearing the word sword servant, Qin Feng couldn't help but think of the blood-soaking scene last night. Even in his sleep, there was a huge, white full moon. Uncle? Ah? Qin Feng came back to his senses, saw the suspicious look on the other party's face and immediately coughed. Let's go to the new mansion. Jinong City is not big, so the two of them walked around in circles. But in just one stick of incense, they arrived outside the new house, looking at the new house, which was more than ten times larger than the original house. Qin Feng felt emotional. From now on, he would no longer have to be woken up by the sound of his second brother practicing sword practice. The two stepped into the mansion and saw servants and maids busy cleaning the new house. Qin Feng walked around at will, and was surprised to find that there was a small lake in this house. With such a configuration, no wonder it cost so much money. There is a pavilion in the center of the small lake. Lu Jinli in white is sitting there quietly, and beside her is Lan Ningxuang in blue. Looking from a distance, it looks like a picture of beauty. Qin Feng did not choose to step forward to disturb him. To be honest, he still didn't know how to face Lu Jinli until now. In this case, he could only take one step at a time. The two left quietly. But Lan Ningxuang in the pavilion had already noticed them. She whispered, Miss, my uncle just came. Um, Miss, my uncle didn't sleep with me last night. Um, Lan Ningxuang sighed. Actually, the young lady can talk to my uncle. He is a good person. The breeze blew by, lifting up my green hair, and the lake surface was sparkling. This time, Lu Jianli didn't respond. He just looked at the lake, wondering what he was thinking. Chapter 29 Discussion the two continued to walk, and Qin Feng suddenly asked on the way, Haiden too. Actually, I have always had a question. Is the relationship between your Lu family and the Tang family very bad? Haiden too, Xing Xing's face twitched. It's really not good. The Tang family controls the Ministry of War, but cannot control the Shenhou army. So they have always regarded our Lu family as a thorn in their side. In the court, the camps headed by the Tang and Lu families often fought against each other. This was well known in Fotian City. I see. Does that mean that extreme behavior like Tang Xian's yesterday is not uncommon? This, Xing Sheng pondered for a moment and then shook his head. That's not the case. Although the Tang family and our Lu family have never dealt with each other, it will not rise to the level of force. I'm actually very confused. I don't understand why the son of Minister of the Ministry of War came to Jin Yang City to perform such a performance yesterday. Jin Feng lowered his head and thought deeply. He always felt that he had overlooked something. He originally thought that Tang Xian was a dandy who came all the way to Jin Yang City just to publicly humiliate Miss Lu's family by getting married. However, after some analysis, 
It is not difficult to find that Tang Xian is very thoughtful, and does not just show what he sees. Every move he makes is to anger the Lu family, and take the opportunity to stir up trouble. But Qin Feng always felt that the other party had an inexplicable hostility towards him. Why is that? It was obviously the first time I saw him. Could it be that Tang Xian knew that Lu Jinli could not be touched? So he shifted the target to himself? Also, would the ghost cultivator who came to assassinate him have anything to do with the Tang family? Qin Feng couldn't figure out the clue. Shook his head and sighed. There were too few clues at present. And it was difficult for him to connect these things together. At this moment, a roar suddenly came from not far ahead. Qin Feng and Qin Feng went out in search of fame. Only to see Qin in the yard holding a narrow blade knife with an excited look on his face. The latter also clearly saw them and ran forward and said excitedly, Brother, I succeeded. I was finally able to crush the rock three feet away. Really? Then you demonstrate it again and let me see. Qin Feng was delighted when he heard this. It had only been ten days. His younger brother was really talented. When several people came to the yard, Qin Feng and the two couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. They saw knife marks everywhere on the ground of the yard. At a glance, gravels could be seen everywhere. It can be seen that Qin has been practicing here. For a long time, Qin picked up a palm-sized stone and placed it three feet away from him. Then he took a deep breath, circulated the energy in his body, raised his hand, and dropped the knife. The blade flashed, and white light swept out of the blade. It struck the stone three feet away without any bias, and instantly chopped it into pieces. Is this a sword? Xing Sheng was a little surprised. He looked at Qinan and said in admiration, I didn't expect that you could step into the second realm of weapons at Zhongyu at such a young age. It's really amazing. Qinan shook his head. I am still far away from the second realm Zhongyu. The reason why I can slash the sword light is thanks to the sword technique my elder brother taught me Tian Gang Yuan slash. Sword skills? Xing Sheng turned his head to look at Qin Feng and asked curiously, Uncle, aren't you a practicing literary saint? How can you teach others the martial arts of Shenwu? The meaning of reading a hundred times will be apparent to you. As long as you can understand the contents of the book, you can guide others even if you can't use it yourself. Of course, the main reason is that I have a pair of clairvoyant eyes. Xing Sheng was a little surprised when he heard this. He had never heard of such a literary saint, and he couldn't help but admire Qin Feng a little more. At this time, Qin Feng suddenly thought of something and said, Second brother, although you have been in the seventh level of Shenwu for a long time, you have never fought with anyone. As for Shenwu Dao, if you want to continue to improve, actual combat is indispensable. In the past, no one could practice with you. But now that Black Tan 2 is here, the two of you can compete. Hi, Tan Tu? Qin and turned his head and looked at Xing Sheng with a strange expression on his face. As if he was saying, is there anyone else with such a name in the world? Xing Sheng's face twitched, and he said helplessly, Uncle, my name is Xing Sheng. You can also call me Xing Shengling. But can you stop calling me Heighten too? Okay, Blackhead. Xing Sheng sighed and gave up. It was just a name. You can call me whatever you like. He stood up with a halberd in hand and said to Qin An, Master Qin, please enlighten me. Qin An held a narrow-edged knife in his hand, ready to fight, with an excited look on his face. This was the first time he had fought against someone after practicing for so long. The two adjusted their stances, and Xing Sheng took the lead, stepping forward with his right foot and thrusting his halberd forward, causing a blast of wind. Seeing this, Qin and dodged to the right, avoiding the halberd. At the same time, he raised the long knife in his hand and slashed directly towards the opponent's abdomen. Xing Sheng immediately changed his offensive, stood up the halberd, and blocked the narrow blade with the long handle. Knife and then pushed his arms forward with force. And the two were separated as soon as they touched. The first fight was a test for both sides. And the next step was the highlight. The two of them accelerated their offensive, constantly switching between offense and defense. In the courtyard, the sound of golden bells could be heard endlessly. Qin Feng, who was watching the battle on the sidelines, was a little surprised. He thought that his second brother, who had no actual combat experience, would be defeated in a short time in front of Xing Sheng the forward commander. But he never expected that after the actual fight, the two of them would fight back and forth. It can be seen that Qin An has an instinctive talent for fighting. Xing Sheng, who was fighting, also clearly felt this, and a trace of appreciation flashed in his eyes. But as time went by, Qin An became more and more struggling. He was able to take the initiative to attack before, 
But now, he could only defend blindly. Xin Feng activated his double pupil power and looked at the battlefield. It was obvious that the energy in Xin An's body was no longer enough. While Xing Sheng was still able to do it with ease. This is the gap in combat experience. Xing Sheng knows how to circulate the energy in his body more effectively. But after staring for a moment, Qin Feng suddenly frowned and discovered a problem. What Xing Sheng is currently performing is the imperial military art that is popular among the Dakian army. This martial art emphasizes offense and focuses on killing. It is a masterpiece that Dakian soldiers have continuously improved after years of conquering the battlefield. However, every time Xing Sheng wields his halberd and takes the initiative to stab forward, there will always be a spot on his body where the energy flow is blocked. If someone seizes the opportunity and attacks here, the consequences will be disastrous. The majestic Dakian imperial military art has such obvious flaws. Has no one discovered it before? Qin Feng fell into deep thought. In the yard, the battle between the two was coming to an end. Xing Sheng raised the corners of his mouth. Master Qin, it's over. As soon as he finished speaking, he used the long handle to shake Qin An's narrow edge knife away, then stepped forward with his right foot and stabbed forward violently. The latter stumbled back. Soon after he said it, Qin Feng suddenly shouted, Second brother, use the handle of the knife to attack the two inches above and left of Haydn Tu's right rib. Qin entrusted his eldest brother unconditionally and immediately complied. When Xing Sheng heard this, the shock in his eyes could not be greater. Chapter 30 The Disadvantages of the Military Military Jew Qin and squatted forward and the halberd passed over his right shoulder. With a flick of his wrist, the blade turned and the handle pointed directly at the position Qin Feng had mentioned before. Xing Sheng's eyes widened when he saw this. With his ability, he should have been able to avoid this move. However, due to the stagnation of his energy, his movements were a beat slower. He was immediately hit by Qin An and staggered back more than 10 steps. If this was a battlefield, if what was stabbed was not the handle but the tip, Xing Sheng didn't dare to think about it again. He looked at Qin Feng with a complicated expression. Uncle, how do you know the flaws in the imperial soldier art? I have read books before about Xin Wu's movement of energy, so I know the phenomenon and disadvantages of stagnant movement of energy. I just watched you and your second brother compete. Every time you lean forward and take the initiative to stab, you will feel very different. Twist. With a little analysis, it is not difficult to determine where the strength is stagnant. Well, actually these are all my boasts. Mainly because I have a pair of clairvoyant eyes. Qin Feng added in his mind. Upon hearing this, Xing Sheng's admiration for Qin Feng instantly rose to a higher level. However, heightened too. I hear what you mean. Did you already know that the imperial soldier art has this shortcoming? Xing Sheng nodded. As a soldier, I have been out fighting monsters and ghosts all year round. So I am very familiar with using this soldier's art as if I were eating. In that case, why didn't you get rid of this shortcoming or relearn a martial art? If you are against someone and someone catches this flaw, aren't you certain to die? Xing Sheng sighed. Uncle, there are nearly a million people in the Dakian army. It is not easy to find a martial art suitable for everyone to study. Although Yubing Ju has this shortcoming, compared with other martial arts, it is already the best choice. What's more, not everyone has a vision like my uncle, who can easily see through flaws. Qin Feng nodded and then fell into deep thought. If he could improve the art of military control through what he had learned in the past, and then let all the soldiers in the Gon learn it, wouldn't he be able to gain a lot of literary spirit at once? Qin Feng's eyes suddenly lit up. But after thinking about it carefully, he felt that this idea was a bit ridiculous. The Imperial Soldier Art is a fine product that has been improved over many years by Dakian soldiers. If they are still unable to overcome this shortcoming, how can they succeed? Qin Feng shook his head, picked up a branch from the ground, and drew on the soft soil. Xing Sheng and Qin and were curious and approached one after another. On the ground, what Qin Feng drew was a diagram of the human body's movement of energy and Xing Sheng was even more surprised, because this diagram was the luck method of Yu Bing Ju. My uncle was able to deduce this thing after just seeing it once. This was so scary that Xing Sheng swallowed subconsciously. As we all know, the Xin Wu Taoist energy movement is based on the Zhou Tian, and the energy that circulates in each Zhou Tian is either clockwise or counterclockwise. The moment when Xing Sheng's energy stagnated earlier, if he could reverse the flow of energy, it seemed that he could overcome this shortcoming. Thinking of this, Qin Feng drew a semicircle clockwise on the ground, and then drew a semicircle counterclockwise. Xing Sheng's eyes widened when he saw this, and then he sighed as if he thought of something. 
My uncle is really amazing. This method can indeed solve the flaw of the Imperial soldier art at that moment. But My uncle doesn't know that the Shinwu Taoist system can only move the energy in one direction every week, and that is to prevent the energy from conflicting in the body and causing the blood to flow backwards. Although this method is feasible in theory, it is not practical in practice. Once you use it, you will definitely die. Qin Feng threw away the branch and said casually, Energy cannot flow against the flow, which is a wise saying summed up by generations of Shinwu Taoists. Countless ancestors have tried to use retrograde energy, but they all ended in failure. Sure enough, it is not that easy to solve the shortcomings of the imperial soldier art. Qin Feng sighed and could only watch so much literary energy go away from him. He patted the dust off his hands and said, Forget it. I don't want to think about this anymore. By the way, Haiden too. After we fight, how do you feel about my second brother? Xing Shun affirmed. The second young master is extremely talented, and his instinct in combat is even more enviable. But? But what? Qin Feng wondered. The second young master obviously has strong blood energy, which is different from ordinary people but the energy transformed in his body is less than that of an ordinary 7th grade Shinwu. Qin Feng frowned when he heard this and immediately looked at Qin'en, whose eyes were obviously a little evasive. Have you not taken medicinal baths or taken blood pills recently? Qin Feng asked. Seeing that he couldn't hide it, Qin'en hesitated and said, Brother, I have encountered a bottleneck now, and I don't need this for the time being. Qin Feng sighed. Strength is the foundation of a warrior and the strength in a warrior's body is refined from blood, of which medicinal baths and blood pills are indispensable. His second brother is quite talented in the divine martial arts. How could you not know this? He just doesn't want to add any more burden to the Qin family. After all, the Qin family is really poor. No, we can no longer hand over the family's financial power to that cheater. It's time for him to take action. Qin Feng made up his mind and then asked, That cheater? Well, where is dad? Where are the others? Dad? Maybe he's in the study room now? I saw him going in with a sad face this morning. I understand. Hey, Tan too. You don't have to follow me. You are here to teach my brother how to use strength more effectively in actual combat. I have something to discuss with my father. So I will leave first. Qin Feng said goodbye to the two of them, and soon arrived at the location of the new Qin Mansion study room. The door to the study room was open, and Qin Feng saw at a glance a handsome middle-aged man with his elbows on the desk frowning and sighing, on the desk. At first glance, there are open books. When you get closer, it turns out to be the Qin family's account book. Each column is outlined with a red pen and has a big word, deficit, written on it. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. It is not easy to be able to do a project without making any money. Qin Jianan, who was leaning on the table, heard the movement and turned his head to look. After seeing the person clearly, he hurriedly opened his arms and took the ledger into his arms. Phone! Why do you want to come here? Clicking the tower. A ledger slipped down with a sound. Qin Feng picked it up and took a look. The three characters, Wang Yu Ju, were clearly written on the cover. Just as he was about to open the account book, he heard his father shout anxiously. No! He may have wanted to maintain his last dignity as a father. But unfortunately, Qin Feng did not give him this face. Slowly opening the account book, Qin Jianan's face was ashen, while Qin Feng's brows were also tightly knitted together. Although Wang Yueju has been losing money, the amount of losses is not large and is still within the acceptable range. However, three months ago, Wang Yueju's sales plummeted. Chapter 31 Revitalizing Wang Yueju You know, Wang Yueju is a three-story luxury restaurant. Every month is a monthly fee for paying staff. It costs a lot of money to buy ingredients. If the turnover shrinks significantly, then the loss must be a lot of money. Number of. Dad, what's going on? Didn't you say some time ago that there was no business in Wang Yu residence because of the appearance of evil spirits? But three months ago, there was no evil invasion in Jinan City. Your account book. Qin Feng looked up at his father, only to see him dodge his eyes. It took him a long time to explain the reason. It turned out that three months ago, for some unknown reason, the Lord's Palace of Jinyang City began to purchase restaurants in the city and began to put pressure on other restaurants and engage in price wars. Many small restaurants lost business because of this, and Wang Yuage's business naturally plummeted. The City Lord's Mansion took this opportunity to swallow up these small restaurants. So far, about 60% of the restaurants in Jinyang City have been owned by the City Lord's Mansion. 
They also set their sights on Mochizuki just hang, and offered to buy it many times. However, their father was stubborn and never agreed, resulting in increasing losses. Of course, the main reason why dad disagrees is because the food in the city lord's mansion is too ugly. He actually wants to buy the restaurant at half the original price. How can the miser like dad be willing to do so? After hearing this, Chin Fong fell into deep thought. To be honest, he was a little surprised by the drastic operation of the city lord's mansion. It was like trying to monopolize the entire restaurant industry in Jinong City. But Jinong City is just a small city with a small population. Even if it successfully monopolizes, how much profit can it get from it? At this time, Qin Jin sighed and said, The Qin family's property is almost ruined by Wang Yueju. I'm actually already considering whether to sell the restaurant to the city lord's mansion at a low price. Anyway, since I bought this restaurant, our family has never made any money. Maybe if I get rid of this burden, I can make achievements in other businesses. Qin Feng immediately comforted him. Dad, look at what you said. Apart from this restaurant, you haven't made any money from other businesses. What I fear most is the sudden silence of the air. Seeing his father's face turn red and white, Qin Feng directly chose to show off his cards. Dad, actually I have a way to bring the restaurant back to life. You? Qin Jianan sneered when he heard this, as if this could restore his lost dignity. Feng, it's not that I look down on you. Although you are a scholar and have a good mind, doing business is not as simple as what you read in the books. Your father and I have been studying this stuff for more than 10 years, but we still dare not say that we have entered this industry. You have never been exposed to it. How dare you boast about it? You should just study peacefully and leave the making of money to me. I just don't trust you. That's why I want to take charge of the family's finances. Chin Fong twitched the corner of his mouth and said helplessly, Dad, how about I make a bet with you? What bet? If I can bring Wang Yueju back to life. From now on, I will be in charge of the Qin family's treasury. Hearing this, Qin Jianan raised his eyebrows. What if you didn't do it? Then I will stop asking about these things. Huh? I obviously lost this bet. Why should I agree to it? Because you don't promise me. I will show these account books to Air Nyang. What I fear most is that the air will become quiet again. Qin Jianan pointed at Qin Feng. His mouth opened and he couldn't say a word for a long time. Where is the second lady? Qin Feng took the account book and turned to leave. I promise you. The threatened Qin Jianan had no choice but to agree to the unequal bet. So, what are you going to do? Qin Feng turned and looked at the sky. It was already November, and the weather was getting colder and colder. On days like this, what could make people feel happier than eating a steaming meal of spicy hot pot? Dad, I want you to go to Qiang Town again. The next day, it will be dawn. Outside the Qin mansion, more than ten carriages carrying goods were lined up. The back of each carriage is covered with a thick quilt, which looks very tight. Qin Jianan and Qin Feng stood at the front of the team. Beside them, Xing Sheng stood holding a halberd. On both sides of the carriage, there were four men dressed as warriors. They were all guards hired from the Demon Slayer division. Qin Jianan slowly opened a corner of the quilt, and a burst of cold air came out. He looked inside the quilt, and there were ice cubes everywhere he could see. Four. Can this method really ensure that the fish shipped from Chiang Town will still be fresh? Dad, this is the method I read in the book. It's called refrigeration. As long as you are faster, there will be no problem. This is true. But the method of refrigeration is what Qin Feng learned from the book in his previous life. Thinking in mind, Qin Jian nodded. But his expression was still dubious. Also, Dad, don't forget. In addition to going to Chiang Town to buy enough fish this time, the cold star grass is also essential. You can collect as much as you have. I know. How many times have you reminded me of this? I really don't understand. It's just weeds beside the rocks at the bottom of the lake. Why do you value it so much? Of course I'm useful. The father and son chatted for a few more words and then parted. Before leaving, Qin Feng said to Xing Sheng, I'll leave it to you for this journey. No matter what my uncle said, I will do my best to protect my safety. The team marched towards the west gate in a mighty manner. It was not until the last carriage disappeared on the horizon that Qin Feng looked back. The sun had slowly risen. Qin Feng turned around and was about to go to the Demon Slayer division. At this time, a graceful blue figure came into view. Miss Lan? Why are you here? Qin Feng asked curiously. Xing Sheng is not here, so I will be responsible for that uncle's safety. Lan Ningxuang held a long sword folded her arms, 
and leaned against the door beam. Qin Feng once again thought of the scene that night, and his eyes unconsciously looked at the part wrapped in the evil white cloth. And he cried out in his heart that it was a pity. If you don't wear a good belly band, why wear a bra wrap? By the way, who invented something like the bra wrap? Do you dare to stand in front of the majority of male compatriots? Uncle, what are you looking at? Lan Ning Chuang asked with a frown. Ah? Qin Feng came to his senses and coughed dryly. The sword is good. Where did you buy it? The Divine Workshop of Feng Tian City. Qin Feng nodded. You don't look ordinary at first glance. If you follow me, what will happen to your young lady? Miss, there won't be any danger if you stay in the Qin Mansion. But I heard Xing Sheng say, Uncle, are you going out of the city? Yes, I am going to a place to collect some things. Now I am planning to go to the Demon Slayer Division to hire a guard. I will go with you. Good. Chapter 32 Black Mist Forest As the two of them were walking on the road, Lan Ning Shuang suddenly asked, The mission of the Demon Slayer Division is mostly to eradicate demons and ghosts and protect the safety of the people. Why didn't I know that they also accept the mission of guarding? What you don't know is that Jinan City is a small city, and the salary given here by the Dakian Dynasty is not very high. If they fail to eradicate the demons and ghosts, there will be no additional income and the monthly salary may not be enough for their cultivation. For this reason, Xi Jing here, the sure Ziming you met last time, allows his subordinates to accept tasks from ordinary people to earn some extra money to supplement their own needs. Qin Feng explained slowly. I see. Lan Ningchuan nodded. As a sword attendant of the Lu family, she had never worried about money. She also had enough medicinal baths and blood pills necessary for practice. So she didn't know this, it didn't take long for the two of them to arrive outside a large courtyard with four entrances. And this was where Jinong City's Demon Slayer Division was located, next to the gate of the Demon Slaying Department. There is a wooden fence, which is covered with white paper. And what is written on the paper are mostly tasks issued by ordinary people and the rewards given. There are many strange contents, such as helping to find the lost rhubarb at home, or the husband-in-law visiting a brothel at night, begging the master of the Demon Slayer Division to capture him. If he can break one of his lines, the reward will be doubled. There are many such things. However, a noble family like the Qing family does not need to issue tasks here. They can go directly in to find people. Qing Feng took Lan Ningxuang into the mansion. Except for some people who were practicing. Most of the people inside were idle. It seemed that even the monsters and monsters were too lazy to visit such a quiet place like Jinong City. If that ghost cultivator didn't want to kill him last time, he probably wouldn't want to come to a place like this. Qin Feng found a gray-haired old man in the room. He was the bookkeeper here. If he wanted to hire someone as a guard, it would be most efficient to ask him. Isn't this Mr. Qin? I saw your father before dawn today. Why? Why did you come to see me? I'm going to the Black Mist Forest 20 miles away and need to hire a guard. Black Mist Forest? The old man was shocked. When the demon slayers nearby heard these three words, they also looked sideways, with a trace of fear flashing in their eyes. No wonder they had this reaction. The Black Mist Forest is not a kind place. It is said that every night, when the moonlight shines into the Black Mist Forest, there will be black mist, blocking the vision. This is why the word, Black Mist Forest, comes from. But if it were just like this, it wouldn't make these people change their minds. The most important thing is that there are unusual monsters in the Black Mist Forest. It is often heard that when villagers in the mountains are cutting firewood and pass by the outskirts of the Black Mist Forest, they can often hear terrifying and infiltrating roars. At that time, the entire mountain forest will tremble, and birds and beasts will be frightened and run away in all directions. To be able to make such a big noise, you don't need to think about how terrifying the monsters in the forest are. Some people even speculated that the monster might have reached the fourth level of tribulation power and awakened its natal magical power twice. If anyone strayed into the forest and encountered it, they would definitely escape death. Over time, this black mist forest has become the default forbidden area for everyone. Master Qin, why are you going to such a dangerous place? Qin Feng replied with a smile. It's not that I went deep into the mountain forest, and I don't think I will live long. I just wanted to pick some fruits on the outskirts of the black mist forest. I know this is still somewhat dangerous, so I am willing to pay ten tails of silver as reward. Yes, Qin Feng's purpose this time was to pick the last key ingredient for hot pot. A fruit called vermilion fruit. Dagon Bai Chao Lu records that there is a red thumb-shaped fruit on the outskirts of the Black Mist Forest. It was born in May and June and died at the end of November. 
It tastes spicy and is difficult to swallow. It is red in color, hence its name, vermilion fruit. And this thing is the familiar chili pepper from the previous life. Ten tails of silver is already a lot, considering that a blood energy pill is only five tails of silver. Ching Feng originally thought that there would be brave men under the heavy reward. But these demon slayers seemed to be more cowardly than he originally expected. Just when everyone was looking at each other in silence, a familiar voice suddenly came to mind. I've accepted this mission. Ching Feng went out looking for fame and couldn't help but be a little surprised because the person who came was none other than Song Filin. Why didn't you go to listen to Yushuan yesterday? Before Ching Feng could say H, Lo, Song Filin took the lead and there seemed to be a hint of displeasure in his tone. I just got married, and there were too many things going on at home. So I didn't go to listen to Yushuan. Song Filin was silent for a moment after hearing this, then turned her head to look at Lan Ningxuang. Looking up and down, her beautiful eyebrows slightly furrowed. But for some reason, when she saw the other person's chest, her frown slowly relaxed. This slight change made Lan Ningxuang feel inexplicably uncomfortable. Is this your wife? Song Filin asked. Before Qin Feng could answer, Lan Ningxuang immediately replied, I am Lan Ningxuang, the sword servant of the young lady. I am responsible for guarding my uncle's safety. Who are you? Demon Slayer Si Song Filin. His tone was as calm as a pool of autumn water. Without any ripples, Lan Ningxuang turned her head and looked at Qin Feng. Her eyes seemed to be asking about the relationship between the two. My friend, Qin Feng answered truthfully. When Song Filin heard this, she also looked at Qin Feng. Her light blue eyes reflected the other person's face. She didn't know what he was thinking. Qin Feng's heart trembled inexplicably when she saw it. She always felt that she had said the wrong thing. Let's go. While it's still early, maybe we can get back to Jinan City before dark. Song Filin turned and left. Qin Feng followed closely and stood side by side with the former. When Lan Ningxuang saw this scene, she followed him thoughtfully. The gray-haired old man was still curious as to why Song Girl, who had never accepted any external missions, would take on such a mission. Suddenly, there was a crunching sound in his ears, which startled him instantly. Turning his head, he saw that it was Sher Ziming holding a plate of peanuts over there, chewing and drinking. Lord Si Zheng, when did you come? I was there when the show was on, but I just didn't show my head. Sher Ziming answered inarticulately. Good show. What good show? The old man was puzzled. Hey, I don't have any eyesight. Sher Ziming didn't know what to say, and left leisurely with the peanuts in his hands, leaving only the gray-haired old man with a puzzled look on his face. On the other side is the Lord's Mansion of Jinong City. A person hurriedly ran into the house and reported to Yi Hung. Report to the Lord of the City, Jin Feng, the eldest young master of the Qin family, recently stepped out of Jinong City with the two girls, intending to go to the Black Mist Forest. Yi Heng's eyes lit up when he heard this. In such a dangerous place as the Black Mist Forest, it would not be a surprise for anyone to die. I was worried that I wouldn't have a chance to express my loyalty to the Tang family. But this guy actually came to my door. Luo Ting, the child is here. Go and tell Lord Wang about this. Yi Luo Ting heard this and left in a hurry. Yi Hung narrowed his eyes and sneered. If we can kill that kid secretly and give Mr. Tang his head as a gift, our Yi family will be able to enter Feng Tian City just around the corner. Chapter 33 Confrontation The three of them left Jinong City. And Song Filin said calmly, I heard that on the day of the wedding. You composed a poem in the lobby? Yes. Lord Xijing told you? Song Filin pondered for a moment. Well, this time I will escort you to the Black Mist Forest. My reward will not be the ten tails of silver. When you come back, you can write the poem to me. Jin Feng was stunned when he heard this. Miss Song seemed to have a special liking for what she wrote. Could it be that she was attracted by my literary talent? Just when he was feeling complacent, a blue figure suddenly inserted between him and Miss Song. It was Lan Ningxuang. Song Filin glanced away and ignored it. So, what is your answer? Since Miss Song has said so, it's just a poem. Written for you. Merely? Song Filin frowned slightly. A trace of displeasure flashed in her eyes. What's wrong? Qin Feng was confused. Whenever it came to literary saints or poems, the usually cold girl song seemed to have obvious mood swings. You should be more confident in your literary talent. At least I like what you write. Before she finished speaking, Lan Ningxuang suddenly interrupted. Miss Song, I would like to ask you what your current strength is. Song Filin stopped and stared at the other party quietly. Why do you ask this? 
The place we are going to this time seems to be a bit dangerous. With my ability to protect my uncle alone, there is no problem. But if I have to take care of another person, it will be a bit difficult. Well, I always feel that Miss Lan today is different from before. Why did she speak so abruptly? Xin Feng was a little surprised. So, how do you want to verify my strength and try it yourself? Song Filin touched the dagger at her waist. If this can be done, that would be great. Lan Ningxuang slowly pulled out the sword at her waist. A cool breeze blew by, making the air seem thicker. It's not necessary. It's really not necessary. Qin Feng hurriedly came out to smooth things over. I know Miss Song's strength, and it's more than enough to protect myself. Just to protect yourself? Song Filin looked up, her eyes seeming to say, Give you a chance to reorganize your language. It's not just self-protection. It's absolutely okay to protect me. Qin Feng swallowed and hurriedly changed his words. It's not necessary. I will protect my uncle's safety. Lan Ningxuang added inappropriately. I see your strength. But it's only the seventh level Shenwu. It's good to be confident. But don't be overconfident. Song Filin's tone was calm. But it was like the cold snow of winter. Lan Ningxuang smiled slightly. And half of the sword on her waist was drawn out. Let's have a duel. People who are traveling with us know the basics better. And can cooperate better. It makes sense. Song Filin had already drawn out the dagger and turned a knife flower in his hand. Qin Feng didn't know whether to laugh or cry when he saw this. The two of them didn't seem to be able to cooperate with each other. They looked like they could just say let you know your status clearly. He immediately advised. You too. With our current pace. If we don't hurry up and go to the Black Mist Forest. I'm afraid it will be difficult to get back to Jinong City before dark. Look. Can this discussion be dispensed with? Silence. Deathly silence. After a while, Lan Ningxuang reluctantly sheathed the sword. Then I'll listen to my uncle. Song Filin calmly took back the dagger and said calmly, Let's go! Qin Feng wiped the sweat from his forehead and breathed a sigh of relief. And the three of them finally continued on their way. The road to the Black Mist Forest is not an official road. In the past, few people came and went. The mountain road is rugged and continuous, which is very difficult to walk. Especially Qin Feng a scholar, seeing that the other two girls were still breathing as if they were walking on flat ground. He was envious from the bottom of his heart. It's better to practice martial arts. Fortunately, the pain was finally over. Qin Feng looked up and saw that the continuous mountain forest not far away was the Black Mist Forest, their destination. Arriving in front of the mountain forest, Qin Feng looked around and recalled the contents of Dagon Bai Chao Lu, the place where the vermilion fruit grows should be under the cliff shaped like a snake head. After searching for a moment, he got the result. Qin Feng pointed to the raised snakehead cliff to the west and said happily, What I'm looking for is right there. After burning incense, the three of them came to the foot of the mountain. Qin Feng saw at a glance that the layers of short shrubs were covered with bright red fruits, which were the peppers from the previous life. Mist Song, how many dead objects can your three-star wooden order hold? Space treasures generally have limitations. For example, they cannot accommodate living creatures. For example, the storage space is generally not too large. Otherwise, Dad would not be able to bring seven or eight carriages to transport goods every time he goes out to do business. Almost a foot square. Qin Feng was a little frustrated when he heard this. There is only such a small space. It seems that this trip, I can only bring a few vermilion fruits back for testing. Uncle, do you want these fruits? Lan Ningxuang suddenly said. Yes, these fruits are of great use to me. Lan Ningxuang nodded, and then took out a jade pendant from her arms. I have a space jade pendant here, about one foot square. Maybe it can help my uncle. Really? Qin Feng looked excited. This way, he could indeed hold a lot of vermilion fruits. But he really didn't expect that the Lu family was so wealthy that even a sword attendant could wear a space jade pendant. Moreover, if I remember correctly, a space jade pendant measuring one foot square is almost as expensive as half of Wang Yueju. Right? thinking that he, a young master from a noble family, was not as good as a swordsman from another family. Qin Feng's face twitched, and he always felt ashamed. Wait, Lu Jinli is already my wife. So doesn't the Lu family count as half of my family? Thinking of this, Qin Feng's mood instantly improved a lot. Thank you. Qin Feng happily took the jade pendant. Lan Ningxuang nodded slightly, and then glanced at Song Filin on the other side. The corner of her mouth slightly curved but she quickly restrained it. Song Filin obviously saw this change, without saying anything. 
She took out a ring from her arms and threw it to Qin Feng. Show me ring? Qin Feng took the ring and exclaimed with eyes wide open. Lan Ningxuan on the side heard this and was stunned for a moment. The space that the Sumer ring can accommodate is far beyond that of the space jade pendant. It is said that the top Sumer ring can even form its own world. This thing is a priceless treasure. Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Mist Song, how much space can this Sumer ring hold? Song Filin glanced at the continuous bushes and said calmly, It will be more than enough to take away all the fruits here. Lan Ningxuan paused, and Qin Feng was even more stunned. Rich woman. Miss Song is definitely a hidden rich woman. Chapter 34 Wang Ming Attacks You just work in the Demon Slayer Division. How can you own a treasure like the Xiumi Ring? Lan Ningxuan asked curiously. I have a lot of this kind of stuff at home. Why? You don't have any? The simple and calm words were like a critical blow causing considerable trauma to Lan Ningxuan's mind. She pursed her lips and did not reply. There were only two treasures, like Shumi Ring in the entire Lu family. One of them is in the hands of Mr. Lu, and the other is in the hands of the current head of the Lu family. How can she, a sword servant, have something that even the young lady does not have? Qin Feng looked at Song Filin, his eyes gleaming. How could this be a rich woman? This was clearly a mobile treasury. I don't know if the key on my body can open the lock of this vault, and share the glory and wealth from now on. No. No. I am a glorious time traveler. I should use my own hands to achieve my dreams. Wait. This doesn't seem to conflict with eating soft rice? Qin Feng fell into deep thought. Suddenly, a roar from the mountain forest brought him back to reality. The three of them hurriedly looked into the forest and saw countless birds and beasts running around and the trees trembling. Is this the terrifying beast in the black mist forest? Qin Feng subconsciously took a step back, his face slightly pale. Without saying a word, Lan Ningxuang immediately protected Qin Feng behind her. On the side, Song Filin was looking at the mountains and forests thoughtfully. She always felt a little strange about this beast's roar, and she instinctively felt a little disgusted. The movement came suddenly and went away quickly. It didn't take long for the Black Mist Forest to return to its previous calm appearance. The three of them relaxed a little, and Lan Ningxuang said, Uncle, we better pick the fruits quickly. It's not safe to stay here. Qin Feng nodded and then said, When you pick the vermilion fruit, be careful not to break the outer skin and pull it off along with the stem. After he finished speaking, he stepped forward to pick the peppers himself to demonstrate. Since he grew up in a rural area in his previous life and often helped his family with farm work, he picked the peppers quickly and accurately. Qin Feng turned around with some complacency. He was ready to accept the admiring gazes of the two beauties. But the sight before him stunned him. Lan Ningxuan was seen holding a long sword, waving it gently, and a few white sword energy slashed out instantly. And in the blink of an eye, he cut off countless vermilion fruits. Song Filin on the other side seemed not to be outdone, and even took out two daggers from her waist. You know, when she fought against the ghost cultivator in Jinyang City, she only took out one. The dagger flew, and the black hair danced. In just a few moments, more vermilion fruits than Lan Ningxuang had chopped down fell to the ground. But this is not the end, but only the beginning. The two of them seemed to be secretly competing for strength, and their shooting speed became faster and faster. Before Qin Feng could react, all the vermilion fruits in front of him had been picked. You guys are awesome, and you can't afford to offend me. But I can't afford to hide from you. Qin Feng stood up silently and planned to go to a remote place to pick vermilion fruits alone. However, as soon as he squatted down, he felt a strong wind blowing by. When he came to his senses, he saw that only the branches of a shrub in front of him were left. An hour later, the sun was setting and the sky was getting dark. Qin Feng looked at the large area of bare shrubs in front of him, holding the zumaji in his hand and feeling satisfied. With so many chili peppers, the hot pot plan will definitely be implemented perfectly. Miss Lan! Miss Song! Let's go! Qin Feng turned around and saw two beauties standing opposite each other. 29,327 trees. Lan Ningxuang raised her eyebrows slightly. 31,204 trees. Song Filin said lightly. I don't know if it was his own imagination. But Qin Feng always felt that Miss Lan's figure was instantly shorter. The lonely Lan Ningxuang seemed to want to comfort herself through food. So she subconsciously picked up a vermilion fruit on the ground and put it into her mouth. No! Qin Feng wanted to remind him. But it was too late. Then, they saw Lan Ningxuang's face turn red, her tongue sticking out, and she kept fanning herself with her palms. After a long time, 
She stopped. Uncle, this food tastes so bad. Why did you take it back? Lan Ningxuan looked resentful. This is called a vermilion fruit. Generally, you can't eat it directly. When I get back, I will use it to make soup. Then you will know what delicious food is in the world. No need. Lan Ningxuan refused immediately. And her mouth was still filled with a pungent taste. Hey, just wait for Xiang's warning. Qin Feng didn't take it seriously, but said with a smile, It's getting late. Let's go back to Jinyang City quickly. But at this moment, a sudden voice sounded. There is no need to go back. Because today, you will all die here. The three of them looked for the sound, only to see a burly figure wrapped in strips of cloth come into view. It was Wang Meng who came to attack on the wedding day. You didn't leave? Qin Feng asked with a frown. Of course I'm not leaving. I'm going to carry your head back to the Tang family to receive the reward. Wang Meng's face was gloomy, and murderous aura filled his body. Song Filin and Lan Ningxuang protected Qin Feng without saying a word. You brat, you are very lucky. Not only did you marry Lu Jianli, but you also have two such cute little girls protecting you. But do you naively think that the two of them can protect you from death? As soon as Wang Meng finished speaking, an explosion sounded immediately. I saw his right foot stepping on the mountain road. And using the reaction force, he rushed over like a tiger. Then his right hand turned into a claw, aiming directly at Qin Feng's neck, as if he wanted to take off the latter's head with one blow. Naturally, Lan Ningxuang will not just sit idly by. The sword light flashed, and a ray of white sword energy flew out, and it touched the palm that reached over. Wang Meng sneered, and instead of dodging, he used his right hand to crush the sword energy. Then he stepped forward, made a fist with his left hand, and hit Lan Ningxuang's sword blade. With a roar, it was instantly knocked away. At this moment, the distance between him and Qin Feng was less than one foot, and at a distance of only one foot, a sixth-grade Shenmue Taoist trying to kill a ninth-grade literary Saint Taoist was like squeezing an ant to death. Wang Meng was about to take action when he suddenly felt alarmed. Why did he only see the girl in blue? Where had the other person gone? At the same time, he only felt a hint of coolness above his head and immediately ignored Qin Feng, who was not far away in front of him, and stepped back suddenly. With a click, a sharp dagger fell from in front of him, cutting off his bangs and easily piercing the rocks on the ground. The three of them instantly resumed their previous positions, as if everything that had just happened was just an illusion. This electric fight was really exciting. Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and his palms were covered in cold sweat. He began to analyze the current situation. The opponent was a sixth grade power gathering master. So far, he had not found any weapons or injuries on his body. My girl, Lan, is in the seventh grade breath holding realm, and her sword will is in the mountain realm. Although Mist Song says that she is from the Hundred Ghost Dao lineage, she likes to fight hand to hand with others, but her strength is definitely not something to be said. This battle should be fought with due force, but the premise is that I am not a drag on them. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and stepped back a few steps with great self-knowledge. Chapter 35 Life and Death Confrontation Lan Ningxuang and Song Filin looked at each other, and then attacked Wang Meng tacitly. The graceful figures of the two were like ghosts. They attacked alternately from left to right, with their swords flying vertically and horizontally, and their double daggers flying, which actually made Wang Meng, who was in the sixth level force gathering realm, exhausted to parry. It has to be said that although the two of them had never dealt with each other before, when they actually met the enemy, they cooperated in a good manner, like friends who had known each other for many years. Not long after, numerous blood stains appeared on Wang Ming's body, dyeing the white cloth he was wrapped in blood red, making it look very permeable. Qin Feng could tell that Lan Ningxuang and the others did not intend to confront Wang Ming head-on. They just wanted to use this method to inflict more injuries on the opponent until the opponent was exhausted and then give a fatal blow. It's really bad. So don't mess with women if you have nothing to do. Qin Feng shrank his head. If the current situation continues, it will only be a matter of time before the opponent is killed. But Qin Feng just realized that with Wang Ming's strength, even if he could not effectively counterattack, he would not be as embarrassed as he was now. Feeling vaguely uneasy in his heart, he immediately activated his pupil powers, looked at the battlefield, and then frowned. What's going on? Why is Wang Ming bleeding so much? But his blood energy is getting stronger and stronger. And why is there more and more energy in his body? At this time, Qin Feng suddenly thought of a book he had read in Tingyu Vitality or Blood, thus condensing a large amount of energy in a short period of time 
and breaking the current confinement of oneself. Isn't this exactly the same as Wang Ming now? Qin Feng was shocked and shouted hurriedly. Miss Lan. Miss Song. Deal with him as soon as possible. He is converting his injuries into energy in his body. What? The two said in unison. Looking down, they saw the sneer on Wang Ming's lips. I was discovered by you. But it's a pity that it's already too late. Wang Ming shouted. And a terrifying surge of pressure erupted. Not only did Song Filin and the two of them fly away, but it also crushed the rocks within a foot of their feet into powder. He clenched his right fist and swung it out in the air. The air seemed to be trembling. Lan Ningxuang's eyes widened in midair, and she hurriedly blocked the long sword in front of her. Then she heard a golden sound, and her body seemed to be disconnected. The kite flew upside down and directly broke a large tree that required two people to hug each other, spurting out a mouthful of blood. After the attack was successful, Wang Meng did not pause, and swung his left hand behind him. Song Filin, who was about to make a sneak attack, also received the palm firmly, and his body smashed into the mountain wall on the side, causing gravel to scatter in all directions. Miss Lawn! Miss Song! Qin Feng shouted anxiously. Just as he was about to move, he felt the hairs on his body stand upright, and his spine felt chilly. Are you still in the mood to care about others? At some point, Wang Meng had arrived behind Qin Feng. He opened his arms, and then suddenly closed his palms. The air was compressed instantly, and with a loud explosion, dust flew into the sky. Uncle! Lan Ningxuan stood up with difficulty. She clutched her chest. Her eyes widened and her eyes were red. Even if she had to bear the blow just now, it would be a life-threatening situation, let alone her uncle who is in a frail body. I'm going to kill you! Lan Ningxuan gritted her teeth. Don't worry. I will send you down to accompany him. Wang Meng sneered. At this moment, he just hoped that Qin Feng's body would not be too broken. After all, he had to take the latter's body back to the Tang family in Feng Tian City to receive the reward. Lan Ningxuang clenched the hilt of the sword, preparing to fight to the death. The uncle she wanted to protect was dead, so she naturally had no face to live on. But as the dust behind Wang Ming gradually dispersed, a hint of joy suddenly flashed in her eyes. Seeing that something was wrong, Wang Ming turned around immediately and saw Qin Feng who was supposed to be dead, being held in the arms of another woman. Qin Feng escaped, but felt a little ashamed that he was hugged by a girl princess. Also, if I read it correctly, Miss Song's hair seemed to have turned silver in an instant. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. That was the sound of blood dripping. Qin Feng was stunned and looked down. Song Filin's white left arm was already dripping with blood. It seemed that in order to save herself just now, she had not completely escaped Wang Ming's attack. Miss Song. You, Qin Feng looked complicated and hesitated to speak. It's just a minor injury. I'm fine. But continuing like this is not an option. Song Filin said in a deep voice. Miss Song and Miss Lan were both injured. And the current situation was very unfavorable. Qin Feng left Song Filin's arms and looked at Wang Ming. His brain running rapidly. Since it is a martial art that injures the enemy by 1000 and damages 800. This extreme state cannot be maintained for a long time. The fact that Wang Ming did not attack immediately is the best evidence that he is at the end of his strength. If you can find the valve where the opponent's energy circulates, and then break it with force, you can definitely kill him in one fell swoop. Qin Feng widened his eyes and tried his best to search, but he never found any flaw. On the other side, Wang Ming obviously wants to seize the last duration of the limit state and take the lead again, and his target is still Qin Feng. Seeing him disappear in a flash, Powerful wind pressure came towards him. Song Filin frowned, pushed Qin Feng away, and then swept his body back. Boom! With a roar, the mountainous area where the two were originally was instantly torn apart and turned into a mess. However, Wang Ming missed the attack and did not pause. He pursued sideways again. This time, he was blocked by the approaching Lan Ningxuan with his long sword. Wang Ming roared and knocked Lan Ningxuan away. The latter took the opportunity to grab Qin Feng's clothes and retreated to avoid it. And at the moment when he soared into the air, Qin Feng finally saw the operating valve on Wang Meng's left shoulder. He immediately reminded, Two inches to the left of the neck, above the shoulder blade, is his life gate. Wang Meng's eyes widened when he heard this, with a look of shock on his face. Seeing this expression, Song Filin and Song Filin knew that what Qin Feng said was true. So they immediately stabilized their bodies and used their strongest means. Lan Ningxuan was seen swinging three swords in midair, each sword faster than the other. 
The three sword energies were superimposed and slashed towards the opponent. Looking at the other side, Song Filin has long disappeared, feeling the powerful power of the three swords combined into one. Wang Ming did not dare to raise his hand and directly crossed his arms in front of him to block it. The sword energy arrived as expected, even in Wang Ming's current state. He was still pushed back nearly ten feet by the sword energy. Wang Ming, who had blocked the sword energy, hurriedly looked for traces of the other person. But at this moment, the acupuncture points on his body exploded and blood spurted out. He turned his head with difficulty and looked to the left. Unexpectedly, a dagger had been inserted into his life gate. Song Filin's weird speed is comparable to that of a fifth grade divine warrior. Wang Ming, your death has come. Qin Feng and the three of them stood together with indifferent expressions, and they all looked at him. When Wang Ming heard this, he coughed out a mouthful of blood. His life gate was broken, and coupled with the injuries on his body, he was definitely dead. But, do you want to see my final killing move in martial arts? Wang Ming said with a ferocious smile. As he spoke, the flesh and blood all over his body began to swell. Qin Feng suddenly felt that something was wrong. No, he is going to blow himself up. Boom, flesh and blood flew everywhere, and the terrifying pressure swept all around in an instant. Song Filin immediately took out a bell-shaped treasure, which rose with the wind and protected the three of them. However, the power of Wang Meng's self-destruction was too great. Within a moment, numerous cracks appeared on the surface of the golden bell. With a click, the golden bell shattered, and the pressure rushed towards me. At this critical moment, Qin Feng actually stood in front of Song Filin and the others. He gritted his teeth and channeled all the literary energy in his body, turning it into a Halkin mirror that was one person high and two people wide. Even though the terrifying pressure was reduced a lot by the golden bell, it was still not something Qin Feng of the ninth grade could stop. In just an instant, the Halkin mirror exploded, and the powerful impact shook Song Filin and the others away, and even knocked Qin Feng away. The turbulent air was like a sharp blade, cutting Qin Feng's nerves and squeezing all his flesh and blood. He spurted out a mouthful of blood and his eyes went black. When he was unconscious, in addition to the sound of the wind in his ears and the click of branches being broken, there were the anxious shouts of Song Filin and others. Am I going to die? Qin Feng thought like this and then completely lost consciousness. Chapter 36 Giant Snake Little Beast The night is deep and everything is lonely. The moonlight hanging high in the sky shone on the snakehead mountain cliff. And the entire black mist forest began to tremble slightly. There were sounds of rustling sounds one after another, and rocks kept rolling down on the mountain forest. Suddenly, two huge scarlet eyes hung like lanterns on the snake head cliff. The cliff actually came alive. The huge snake held its head high. It looked around with its scarlet eyes, then opened its huge mouth, and black gas spurted out. But after half a stick of incense, the entire black mist forest was covered by black mist, and the continuous ridges were also covered with black mist. Start squirming. Hiss. It hurts. Qin Feng slowly opened his eyes. And what he saw was darkness so dark that he couldn't even see his fingers. What's going on? Am I blind? Qin Feng was shocked and wanted to get up. But there was a sharp pain in his back. The pain made him grin and made him dare not move at will. He let out a breath. Carefully recalled everything before he fell into coma. And had a guess in his mind. It must have been the impact of the explosion that propelled me into the Black Mist Forest. Every night in the Black Mist Forest. When the moonlight falls, there will be black mist that covers the sky and the sun. So I can't see anything. Wait, I remember that there seems to be a fire seal in this land space jade pendant. Qin Feng carefully groped in his arms. Fortunately, the Sumeru ring and the space jade pendant were not lost. He used his spiritual consciousness to probe into the jade pendant. And within a moment, he took out the fire fold and a candlestick. After lighting the candlestick, the weak firelight flickered and he could finally see things within one foot. This is where? Where are Mist Song and the others? It should be fine. Qin Feng lowered his head to check his injuries. His outer shirt was already in tatters. When he looked inside through the torn gaps in his clothes, he saw shocking traces of blood. Of course, the most serious injury was his back. At this moment, Qin Feng just hoped that there would be no problems with his waist and kidneys. After all, this was related to his future happiness. The impact of the explosion cannot lift me too far. So I should be very close to the outskirts of the Black Mist Forest. But with my current physical condition, it may be very difficult to move. In addition, the black fog obscured my field of vision, 
making it impossible for me to distinguish between east, west, and north. If I went in the opposite direction, the consequences would be disastrous. And if Miss Tong and Miss Lon are okay, they will definitely come to search for me. If they move around, it will cause more trouble for them. After Qin Feng analyzed it, he still felt that staying where he was and waiting until dawn was the safest approach. So, he found the most comfortable position that would not affect his injuries and lay down resolutely. It's very quiet in the forest. Except for the rustling and crawling sound of something from time to time, he suddenly thought of the amazing ferocious beast in the black mist forest. Could this sound be made by that thing? In the books I had read before, there were many introductions about mountain spirits and wild monsters, most of which were guys who ate people without spitting out their bones. Qin Feng was a little scared and swallowed subconsciously. At this moment, a roar of a sky-shattering beast suddenly sounded in the forest. Qin Feng was shocked because the sound was exactly the same as what he heard during the day. And it seemed to be very close to him. It won't be so unlucky. Right. Click. Click. That was the sound of branches being trampled down. Something was approaching. The black mist one foot away blocked the view, infinitely amplifying the fear in his heart. Qin Feng seemed to have seen a monstrous beast with a huge mouth. He lowered his head, stared at him with scarlet eyes, and then swallowed him whole. The sound was already close at hand, but it stopped just at the edge of the light. Qin Feng stared in that direction in fear, not daring to blink. Bang! A stone rolled into the bright area. That guy is coming! The edge of light and darkness really penetrated the sharp claws of the ferocious beast. If you look closely, it is as big as half your own palm. Um, only that big? Qin Feng was dumbfounded. He didn't understand the situation. The little white claw seemed to be still testing. It stretched forward and then retracted. After repeating this three or four times, it slowly moved forward. It wasn't until its figure completely entered the light that Qin Feng could see its full picture. This is a small white beast that looks like a cat. The white fluff is mixed with black hair. There are two small ears on the top of the head. The small sapphire-like eyes below are very cute. That's it? Qin Feng was completely confused. And the expressions of everyone in Jinan City changed. According to legend, the monstrous beast with at least four levels of calamity power was this thing in front of him? No. It's impossible. I must have made a mistake somewhere. Qin Feng shook his head. No matter what. The sky-shaking beast roar couldn't have come from the little guy in front of him. Yes, that monstrous beast must still be hiding in the black mist ahead. And the little white beast in front of him must also be fleeing. Unexpectedly, just when Qin Feng was thinking this, the belly of the little white beast growled. And the familiar roar of the beast came again, roaring in his ears. Qin Feng opened his mouth wide. He would never have thought that the extremely domineering roar of the sky-shattering beast was actually just the sound of a hungry little white beast. Ha! Huh? Qin Feng smiled contemptuously. And the fear in his heart disappeared for such a little thing. He could blow it away with just one fart. The little white beast seemed to notice Qin Feng's contempt, and a humanized expression of anger appeared on its chubby little face. It opened its little mouth and sneezed, as if it was sneezing. But just this sneeze was like a cannonball, directly shattering a boulder half a man's height. The gravel smashed into Qin Feng's face, as if slapping him in the face. A sneeze is so powerful. If this little thing farts, wouldn't it kill me? Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva and forced out a harmless smile. The little white beast ignored it and instead raised its head and called out. It looked like a tiger roaring in the forest. But maybe because it was too young and its vocal cords were not fully developed. It sounded like, meow. What does this little thing mean? Is it shocking me? Qin Feng secretly speculated and glanced at the gravel beside him. Compared with the meow, the sneeze was more intimidating. But Qin Feng obviously thought too much. The little white beast was just asking for its food. The black mist above the head began to surge. And within a moment, a huge snake head came in. Its scarlet eyes glanced around, staying on Qin Feng for a moment, and then withdrew its gaze. Qin Feng's face turned pale with fright. He recognized the snake head, which was exactly the same as the shape of the cliff. The huge snake head did not stay for long before diving back into the black mist. Then there was a bang, and the carcass of a bull, about the size of two adult men was thrown down, creating a deep hole in the ground. Chapter 37 Rose the Bull The little white beast approached the bull carcass, sniffed it, showed an expression of disgust, and then ate it reluctantly. In The Gone Hundred Monster Chronicles There are many introductions to common monsters, such as the barbarian bull. 
Its bones can be used to refine medicinal bath materials needed by warriors. Its flesh and blood are excellent tonics that can improve warriors. Of blood. But the most mentioned thing is its hard fur, which is difficult to be damaged by ordinary swords. Qin Feng didn't expect that this little white beast, which didn't look big, could actually tear apart the fur of a bull. It had such sharp teeth. Was it because of Colgate? The little white beast gnawed for a while, eating about one-fifth of the bull's flesh, and then stopped. It opened its mouth and stuck out its little tongue, seeming a little nauseous. Hey, this little guy is actually picky about food. Qin Feng thought like this, and then his stomach let out a scream. He touched his stomach with a sad face, thinking about it carefully. I haven't eaten for a long time. At this moment, a bloody bull forelimb fell in front of him. Is this for me? Qin Feng was a little surprised. He looked at the little white beast and asked aloud. The little white beast glanced at it and let out a meow before looking at the body of the bull again. It seemed to be worried about whether to swallow such an unpalatable thing. Qin Feng was a little moved. The monsters were not as described in the book. They were all ferocious beasts that ate people without spitting out their bones. He looked at the raw cow's hoof in front of him. It was definitely not possible to chew it directly. He had to find a way to deal with it. So I collected some nearby branches, lit them with fire sticks, and planned to use them for roasting. He picked up a piece of sharp gravel and made several cuts on the cow's hoof. Then he used a hard thin tree trunk, sharpened its head, inserted it into the cow's hoof, and started roasting it on the fire. As time passed slowly, the fat in the flesh and blood was baked out by the fire, and it made a sizzling sound when it fell on the charcoal below, accompanied by a rich fragrance. Seeing that the cow's hooves were already half done, Qin Feng took out a few chili peppers from the shumi ring, crushed them into powder, and sprinkled them on the scratches made with the stone. The chili peppers are roasted over fire, and combined with the original aroma of oil. Just smelling it will make people appetite. Qin Feng picked up the ox's hoof, and after it cooled down a bit, he bit off a large piece and immediately showed a happy expression. Tick tock, tick tock. What sound? Qin Feng looked down, and he didn't know when the little white beast had arrived. It raised its little head, sweating, and its pupils were full of roasted ox hooves. Forehead. You want a bite? The little white beast nodded. Qin Feng raised his brows and handed the roasted cow's hoof to the little beast. Then, he could only divide two by five. When Qin Feng realized what was happening, all that was left of the cow's hoof in his hand was a stick of cow bones. I just took one hacking bite. Qin Feng's eyes widened, and he was about to cry without tears. What made him even more speechless was that this little beast obviously didn't eat enough. It ran back to the man Nyo corpse. Under Qin Feng's surprised eyes, it used its young body to push the man Nyo's huge body in front of it, then raised its head and looked at itself expectantly. This bull is too big. If you want to roast it, you have to cut the carcass into pieces. The little beast understood, raised its claws, and pulled at the body of the bull a few times. The huge body of the bull was instantly divided into countless pieces. Qin Feng took a breath. This little thing was too tough. There's not enough firewood here. You have to get some. When the little white beast heard the words, he immediately raised his head and meowed. Within a few breaths, piles of branches fell down one after another and it turned out to be the handiwork of the giant snake. Yes, this wage earner seems to be a sure bet. Qin Feng was about to take action when he suddenly thought of something. The giant snake earlier seemed to be the boss of the black mist forest. Maybe it was also responsible for the black mist. And the little white beast in front of him could actually control that big snake. In this case, can I ask the little beast to let the big snake send me away? Thinking of this, Qin Feng coughed dryly and said, Want to eat the barbecue just now? The little beast nodded. Then do me a favor. If you agree, I will cook barbecue for you. How about it? The little beast tilted his head and thought for a while, then nodded again. I entered this forest accidentally. When I finish roasting the wild cow for you, can you please ask that big snake just now to send me away? The little white beast looked up to the sky and meowed. At the same time, a charming female voice sounded in Qin Feng's ears. If you can let the little master finish eating these meats, I will not only send you away, but I will also send you another send the two women who are traveling with you away together. Is this sound that big snake? It turned out to be a female snake. The other two women, Miss Blue and Miss Song, they are indeed fine. Qin Feng looked happy, clasped his fists and said to the black mist above, Senior Orochi, don't worry, I will definitely complete the mission. In his excitement, he wanted to get up and barbecue. 
but he forgot that he was still injured, and he grinned in pain. At this time, a drop of water fell on his head and instantly turned into mist and swept over his body. Sheen Fong was surprised to find that the injury on his back no longer hurt. Not only that, even the bloodstains all over his body were quickly fading away at a speed visible to the naked eye. What kind of divine object is that water droplet that has such a terrifying effect? What are you doing standing there? Don't you want to leave? The woman's voice sounded again. Qin Feng did not dare to delay and immediately started to barbecue. As time passed, the rich aroma spread again, and all the carcasses of the barbarian cows were turned into barbecued meat. The little white beast began to feast on it with saliva flowing from it. Qin Feng looked at the uneaten internal organs of the little white beast and thought that these were good things. He immediately put them away with the summer ring, then raised his head and asked, Senior Orochi, can you let me and the others go now? Of course I do what I say. As he finished speaking, the black mist in the mountain forest began to surge, and the strong wind swept in and turned into a tornado, which actually blew up Qin Feng's entire body. Then, before Qin Feng could exclaim, his body was blown out of the black mist forest and landed firmly at the foot of the mountain. Senior, and my two friends, Qin Feng shouted. I saw two more figures swept out by the strong wind at the edge of the nearby black mist forest. If I looked carefully, I saw that they were not La Ningxuang. Uncle! The three of them were excited to meet again. Qin Feng and La Ningxuang were chatting about what happened after they were knocked apart by the impact. While Song Filin on the side looked at the black mist forest and frowned. In the black mist forest, the little white beast ate happily. It had never eaten such delicious food since it was a child. At this time, the woman's voice rang out from the black mist. My lord, is this stuff really so delicious? Can you let me try it? The little white beast hesitated for a while, then reluctantly pushed out the smallest piece of barbecue. A huge suction force came, and the barbecue flew into the black mist. And then a hymn was heard, which was an extremely satisfied sound. My lord, this thing is really delicious. Let me try another piece. The little white beast was frightened and jumped up hastily. It was about to refuse. But the largest piece of barbecue beside it flew into the black mist in the blink of an eye. And another, uh, sound was heard. The little beast kept shouting high into the sky. And its eyes were covered with mist. It was obviously extremely aggrieved. Little master, if you still want to eat, I'll catch that guy and cook it for you. After hearing this, the little beast calmed down a little. And then saw another piece of barbecue flying away next to him. Meow. An angry cry. Him, a satisfied voice. Chapter 38 Everything is ready. On the way the three of them went back. Lan Shuang said in surprise. Giant snake. Little white beast. This is the secret of the black mist forest? This place is really dangerous. But uncle, you were blown away by the power of the explosion. How come you were unharmed? At that time, Senior Orochi dropped a drop of water on the top of my head. The water drop turned into mist and washed my whole body, curing my injury within a moment. But I don't know what that thing is. Jean Feng rubbed his chin and replied. At this time, Song Filin, who had been silent all the way, spoke up. Ambergris has the ability to heal injuries and strengthen the body. It seems that the giant snake in the black mist forest is about to turn into a dragon. Jean Feng stopped and his face froze. Damn it. Doesn't that mean that the drop of water is saliva? But luckily it was a female snake. So I felt at least a little bit more accepting of it. Jean Feng was still comforting himself when he suddenly saw Song Filin's left arm, which was as smooth and white as usual. But at that time, she was obviously injured in order to save herself. Moreover, when she met the ghost cultivator in the city and was poisoned by the ghost poison, it only took a moment for the ghost poison to heal her injuries. What happened? Qin Feng had so many thoughts in his mind. And combined with the dragon's saliva, an answer seemed to be ready to come out. This is ambergris. Apply a drop of it on the back of your hand and the injury will heal. Song Filin took out a small jade bottle from her arms and threw it directly to Lan Ningxuang. Ambergris is a very precious and rare thing. It is rare to see it even in Fotian City. Are you really willing to let me use it? Lan Ningxuang looked complicated. I still have a lot of this stuff at home. You can use it. Song Filin looked calm. But when Lan Ningxuang pursed her lips and applied a drop on the back of her hand, the corners of her eyes still twitched subconsciously. Thank you. Yeah. Song Filin took back the jade bottle. Qin Feng on the side looked at all this and breathed a sigh of relief. I thought Mist Song was actually a dragon. But it turned out to be just a power. But there is a saying, 
Ambergris saliva is indeed produced by dragons. It can not only heal injuries, but also strengthen the body. By the way, can this strong physique be specific to a certain part? Qin Feng lowered his head and looked somewhere. And a bold idea sprouted in his heart. With his friendship with Mist Song, it shouldn't be a problem to borrow 10 or 20 drops of ambergris. Right? Song girl. Get out! Song Filin saw Qin Feng's actions. And there was a trace of shame and anger in her light blue eyes. I didn't say anything yet. But I got angry. Women are really unreasonable. Qin Feng shrank his head. Naturally he didn't dare to mention the matter of using ambergris saliva again. The three of them returned to Jinyang City at an ugly time. Fortunately, there was no curfew in Jinyang City. Otherwise, they might not even be able to enter the city gate. Qin Feng said goodbye to Song Filin. But for some reason, the latter did not reply and glared at him before leaving. It was really inexplicable. Returning to the Qin family's new residence, everyone was already asleep. When Qin Feng and the two passed by the lake, they saw that white figure in the pavilion, sitting quietly in a wheelchair, looking at the pool of clear water in front of them. That lonely figure made people feel distressed inexplicably. Blue girl, what's the matter? Uncle, is your lady's injury really incurable? What if we use that ambergris saliva? La Ningxuan said lonely. My uncle doesn't know something. Although ambergris is precious, it is not difficult to obtain it with the ability of the Lu family. However, the injury of the young lady is beyond the imagination of ordinary people. It is as difficult as going to heaven to cure her. The head of the Lu family and Mr. Lu have also tried countless methods, but all in vain. Qin Feng sighed and patted Lan Ningxuan's shoulder. Don't be discouraged. Nothing is difficult in the world. As long as there are people who are willing, your young lady's injury will eventually be cured. Even if there is really no way in the world, I will come up with this way. Yes. Lan Ningxuan nodded. She didn't know why, but her uncle just said a simple word of comfort. But she was willing to believe it deep down in her heart. I'll go back and get some water to wash myself and go to bed. You stay here with your lady. After saying this, Jean Fong turned and left. Uncle, do you need me to take care of you and bathe you? Jean Fong staggered and froze on the spot, obviously struggling. But in the end, he waved his hand and left alone. Londing Chuang looked at the other party's tangled back and raised the corners of her mouth slightly. She strolled up to Lu Jinli and began to slowly reveal what happened after leaving the Qin mansion. Miss, my uncle is a responsible man. Um, miss, my uncle said that he will find a way to heal your injury. Um, miss, I believe my uncle can do it. The moonlight was like water and silent. Lu Jianli looked at the bright moon reflected on the lake. And a bright moon was also reflected in his beautiful eyes. Yeah, it was inaudible. The next day, Xin Feng, who was sleeping soundly, was awakened by the noise outside the house. He leisurely opened his eyes and looked out the window. It was already three o'clock in the morning. After getting dressed and opening the door, she learned from Qin'er that the reason for the noise outside was because her father was back. The distance from Jinyang City to Qiang Town is a hundred miles, plus the time for purchasing and transporting goods. If we go non-stop, it will be about this time. Qin Feng came to the gate of Qin Mansion, where his father was greeting his servants to unload the goods. Due to the cold weather and the fact that the cold air did not leak out under the quilt, the fish on the carriage was still fresh. Qin Feng greeted Xing Sheng. Xing Jianan heard the noise, stepped forward and said with a smile, Feng, your refrigeration method is really feasible. Jinong City is close to the mountains and there are no rivers nearby. These fish are scarce. If you resell them, you will definitely make a good profit. Price. Shallow. What's wrong? Did Dad say something wrong? Qin Jianan looked confused. How much money can we make by selling some fish? How can we revitalize Wang Yueju? If we want to make a profit, we must make a lot of money. Have you bought back the Hang Sinko? Qin Jianan pointed to the three carriages behind. They are all up there. I originally wanted to unload two carriages to hold fish. After all, what use can these aquatic plants be? But thinking of all the warnings you gave me before leaving, I grit my teeth and didn't do it. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief. He was almost killed by this scammer again. If you want to make a perfect hot pot base, this cold star grass is essential. Dad, send someone to bring out a basket of cold star grass and some fish to the kitchen. What are you up to? Cooking. Of course. Qin Jianan frowned. Gentlemen, you are far away from the kitchen. What do you, a scholar, want to do with this? You just tell the people below to do it. No one has made what I want to do before. 
so I have to season it myself first. Qin Feng still insisted. No, I won't agree. It's hard for the Qin family to have a scholar like you. What would it sound like if word spread about you going to the kitchen? Dad, I wonder what Er Nyan will think after reading those account books in the study room. You guys, please be quick and help me move these things into the kitchen. Found the correct way to use Dad. Chapter 39 The Birth of Hot Pot In the evening, it was dinner time and the family came to the lobby. Even La Ningxuang and Xing Shan were called over by Qin Feng. Your lady isn't coming? Qin Feng glanced at the entrance of the lobby and did not see the white figure. La Ningxuang shook her head. Her young lady had a cold temperament. Coupled with the incident in Wan Jin sect, Lu Jinli now liked to be alone most of the time. That's all. You can bring something to her later. La Ningxuang wanted to answer. Even if I bring it to the lady, she won't eat it. But when the words came to her lips, she nodded silently. Phone. What on earth are you going to feed us? Making it so mysterious? Er Nyan was curious, as the dining table was still empty at this moment. Sheen and touched his belly. As a martial artist, he had an amazing appetite. Plus, after Xing Shen returned, the two of them had practiced a lot. At this moment, they were already hungry, with their chests touching their backs. Don't worry. Qin Feng smiled and then clapped his hands. Upon hearing the predetermined signal, the servants outside the house took plates of ingredients and brought them to the dinner table. There are many types of ingredients, including sliced pork, thinly sliced fish fillets, cabbage, and tofu. But everyone was even more confused because these things were all raw. Feng, you've been tinkering in the kitchen for a long time. Just to let us eat these? And what is this big plate of furry skin? Qin Jinan stared at the dining table. Dad, don't worry. Everything is not here yet. Qin Feng pretended to be mysterious. As soon as he finished speaking, a servant carefully carried a small stove for decoction and placed it in the middle of the dining table. Just as Qin Jinan was about to ask another question, a strong aroma entered the hall and hit his nostrils. Within a moment, two servants were holding a large pot, one on the left and the other on the right, and placed it steadily on the stove. Everyone was curious and looked into the pot. They saw that the red soup was boiling and the aroma was overflowing. There were also many red fruits as thick as a thumb floating on the surface of the soup. They didn't know what they were. La Ningxuang naturally recognized that it was a vermilion fruit, and her nose seemed to be filled with that pungent smell again. Her appetite aroused by the aroma was reduced by half in an instant. And she even began to plot in her mind. Waiting for some excuse to escape first. Phone. What is this pot of red soup? Er Nyong asked. Tilting her head. This is the soup base I made today. You put the ingredients in and rinse it. You can pick it up and eat it in a moment. Qin Feng looked confident. But no one in the room moved their chopsticks. This was what Qin Feng expected. He took the lead in picking up a piece of fish fillet. Put it into the pot stirred it a few times, and picked it up again. It melts in your mouth and is so delicious. Everyone looked at each other and still made no move. I almost forgot that I still have that thing. Qin Feng smacked his lips and shouted outside the room. Qing, help me bring all the small dishes on the kitchen table. Okay, young master. Qing responded. And not long after, a plate of various small dishes was brought to the dinner table. Everyone saw Qin Feng pouring a plate of pork into the pot. After a while, he picked up the meat slices, dipped them in the sauce in the small dish, and put them in his mouth, showing a satisfied expression. After repeating this, Chinan finally couldn't bear it anymore and moved his chopsticks. When he hesitated to eat the first piece of pork, his eyes lit up and the movements in his hands quickened instantly. In just a moment, the pork was ready in one pot. He ate it all by himself. Brother, this stuff is so delicious! Chinan mumbled while chewing the pork in his mouth. Hearing this, the rest of the people looked at each other in shock, and finally started to move their chopsticks, and then couldn't help themselves. Only La Ningxuang stood on one side, looking at the vermilion fruit in the pot with fear. Qin Feng saw her thoughts, handed over a bowl of boiled tofu, and said with a smile, Try it! Uncle! I'd better forget it! La Ningxuang's expression was stiff. Just try one piece. If you're not used to it, I won't make it difficult for you. I'll ask the people in the kitchen to get you a bowl of noodles later. Okay. La Ningxuang picked up a piece of tofu and looked at the red oil that showed adhesion. She looked confused. After letting out a breath, she finally made up her mind and put the tofu into her mouth. The tip of the tongue is very hot, followed by the fresh and spicy taste. 
filling the entire taste buds. Hmm, La Ningxuang's eyes were shining. How? Qin Feng smiled. It's delicious! La Ningxuang left these words, and then joined the army of Feng Wan Kian Yun. The food on the table was eaten one plate after another, but no one took the chopsticks of the fluffy thin slices of meat. Qin Feng saw this, and didn't take it seriously. In the past, these things were thrown away directly by people. Naturally, they didn't understand how delicious this thing was. Pick up a piece, put it into the pot, dip it in minced garlic and sesame seeds, and eat it. The crunching sound made everyone stop their chopsticks and look over. Brother, what are you eating? It looks good, Sheenan swallowed. This thing is the stomach of a bull. I also call it hairy belly. Second brother, you eat more. It can replenish the blood in your body. A bull? Several people were shocked. It was a monster with strong skin and thick flesh. Its bones and flesh were expensive things. It was the favorite of warriors. But this cow's stomach is not the stuff of cows. It is really edible. Sheenan was dubious. Picked up a piece and put it into the pot. Be careful to do it up and down. Otherwise it will affect the crispiness. Chin Feng reminded. Sheenan was stunned when he heard the words. Then followed the instructions. Put it in his mouth. And started chewing. The crunching sound sounded again. And his expression instantly became very exciting. How is it? Asked the father and mother on the side. And Xing Sheng was also waiting for an answer. I have eaten so many things tonight. And I think this tripe is the most delicious. Hearing this, everyone moved their chopsticks one after another with wonderful expressions. Within a moment, the bottom of the large plate of tripe was revealed. Qin Jianan still had more to say. Oh, do you still have this thing called Maodu? Yes, but there is not much left. I will use the rest to revive Wang Yueju and use it as a treasure to protect the store. Qin Feng vowed that this stuff is not only delicious, but also can enhance the warrior's blood. It will definitely be great. Sell. The other people heard this and called it a pity. Uncle, what is the name of the food on your table? Even in Feng Tian City, I have never eaten such delicious food. Xing Shen asked. I call it hot pot. The dining table was cleared and everyone left, rubbing their bellies. La Ningxuang came to the pavilion in Ha Tong with a small bowl and said to the man in white, Miss, this is the hot pot invented by my uncle. It tastes very good. Lu Jianli still looked at the bright moon in the lake without responding. La Ningxuang sighed. This reaction was also what she expected. After a warrior reaches the seventh level of qi condensation, if he does not condense his blood energy into energy, he can theoretically go without eating for a long time. And my young lady has not eaten anything since she returned to Feng Tian City from Wanjin sect. La Ningxuang understood that this was a sign that the young lady was disheartened and wanted to give up the Shunwu alliance. Miss, I will put this bowl next to you. If you are hungry, you can eat some. La Ningxuang put down the small bowl and left quietly. Not long after she left, Lu Jianli's Chiongyu Jade nose moved slightly. She looked sideways at the small bowl of red soup, not knowing what she was thinking. Jinong City in the city lord's mansion. What are you talking about? Qin Feng is not dead. Yi Hun was furious. Reporting to your lord, I have seen it with my own eyes, and it is absolutely true. No wonder the good-for-nothing named Wang was abandoned by the Tang family. If I had known this, I should have thrown him into the wilderness and left him to fend for himself. Yi Hun slammed the table. Father! Don't be angry. The kid has another plan. Yi Lu Ting said suddenly from the side. Oh! What's your plan? Qin Jianan, the head of the Qin family, has a restaurant called Wang Yueju in the middle city. It has suffered serious losses in the past few months and has already been unable to make ends meet. As far as I know, in the past few days, they spent most of their money to buy a new house. And they were already stretched thin. If we continue to lower the price of food in our restaurants and prevent their Wang Yueju from receiving business, we will definitely bring down the entire Qin family. And then we will slowly start trying. Yi Hang's eyes lit up when he heard this. Okay, what a good plan. You are worthy of being my son. In this case, I will leave this matter to you. The child takes orders. Chapter 41 Conversation The sun rose the next day. Qin Feng got dressed and left the house. Today, he is going to Wang Yueju to promote hot pot and make a lot of money. Wan Qinger called a few servants and brought the needed ingredients. And Qin Feng planned to leave Qin Mansion and go to Wang Yu residence. Just at this moment, he saw La Ningxuang walking towards the kitchen with a small bowl in her hands and a sad look on her face. 
Ching Feng had the impression that the small bowl contained Miss Lu's meal last night. But looking at it now, it was clear that the contents were not moved at all. He immediately stepped forward to stop Lan Ningxuang and frowned. What's going on? Miss has no appetite. Lan Ningxuang's eyes were a little dodgy. Oh, I have no appetite. Did I just have no appetite last night? Or have I always had no appetite? When Qin Feng went to the kitchen to work yesterday, he heard his servants mention that the food prepared for Lu Jinli was often brought back untouched. Move. Uncle. Lan Ningxuang hesitated. Looking sad, Qin Feng sighed. How long has this situation lasted? Miss, she has been like this since she came back from Wanjin sect. Qin Feng was stunned and made a rough estimate of the time in his mind. It was almost 20 days. He hadn't eaten for such a long time. If Lu Jinli hadn't been a martial artist and had rich blood in his body, ordinary people would have starved to death long ago. Nonsense! Qin Feng scolded and immediately went to the kitchen to order a bowl of noodles himself, then picked up the noodle bowl and walked towards the lake in the house. Uncle, it's better not to go. The young lady won't eat, Lan Ningxuang advised, with a hint of pleading in her tone. She was not only afraid that the young lady would be embarrassed, but also that her uncle would be embarrassed. You, the Lu family, are spoiling her, but I will not spoil her. Now that she is married into the Qin family, she must follow our Qin family's rules and not eat. What does that look like? Isn't it just a failure to overcome the tribulation? Isn't it because you are ill? Is it so difficult to climb back up after falling from a height? Since I am his husband-in-law, let me scold her to wake her up today. Qin Feng was so impassioned that Lan Ningxuang was stunned. Qin Feng didn't know why he was so angry. Maybe it was because of the lonely figure. Maybe because of their reputation as husband and wife. Or maybe some other reasons. But he just didn't want to see Lu Jianli give up on herself again. Go down. Seeing that Lan Ningxuang no longer stopped him. He strode towards the Qin Mansion Lake Pavilion. Qin, who had been following Qin Feng, ran towards the house where Mr. Qin was, fearing that something might happen. Within a moment, Qin Jianan and Aaron Yang came to the lake in a hurry, hiding behind a corner and secretly observing it. What's wrong? What's wrong? This boy Fonger follows me. He is domineering and responsible. But that girl from the Lu family is arrogant. If Fonger waits and yells at her, something will happen. Qin Jianan was worried. Are you domineering? Are you responsible? The second mother on the side heard this and didn't know how to answer. Outside the lake pavilion, Lan Ningxuang stood far away in the corridor and did not come forward. She had tried to persuade the young lady countless times, but to no avail. Perhaps severe cases require strong medicine. The young lady really needs someone to wake her up now. And my uncle is the most suitable candidate. Qin Feng came to Lu Jianli, who slowly raised her beautiful face and looked at him quietly. Her eyes were extremely calm and could not bring out the slightest sparkle. Qin Feng originally wanted to say a few harsh words, but when he stood in front of the client, many words suddenly flashed through his mind. Da Qin Kuang is a prodigy from ancient times to the present. With unparalleled talent in swordsmanship and superb swordsmanship, he is unprecedented and unparalleled, and will be the sword god of the future. God knows what would happen if he pissed her off. Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva and the taste of the words that filled his stomach changed instantly when he reached his mouth. Madam, I heard that you haven't eaten for a long time. This is the noodles that my husband ordered specially for you. You can eat them while they are hot. Lan Ningxuang was stunned. This was different from what she expected. Qin Jianan, who was hiding behind the corner, opened his mouth. Er Yang glanced at her side and said after a moment of silence, Oh, it's really up to you. There was silence in the lake pavilion. After a few breaths, Lu Jianli shook his head slightly, turned away, and looked at the lake again. Looking at Lu Jianli's calm profile, Qin Feng sighed secretly and said lightly, If you don't eat this bowl of noodles today, I won't leave. After saying these words, Qin Feng stood motionless beside him holding the noodle bowl. The breeze blew, lifting their hair, causing ripples on the lake, and they were speechless for a moment. After about a stick of incense, the beauty's red lips parted slightly. Why? Qin Feng was a little surprised. This was the first time he heard Lu Jianli speak. It was as clear and crisp as jade colliding. You are my wife. And I am your husband-in-law. It is natural for my husband-in-law to care about my wife. Why? Put down the noodles. I will eat them. Lu Jianli was silent for a moment and made a promise. Qin Feng was unmoved. After you finish eating, I will leave. The two were in a stalemate again. After a few breaths, 
Lu Jianli finally stretched out his slender hand and took the noodle from Qin Feng's hand. Not far away, La Ningxuang and Qin Jianan's couple both looked happy when they saw this scene, with her jade fingers stroking lightly and her red lips slightly open. Lu Jianli achieved the ultimate in elegance even when eating noodles. Qin Feng even looked forward to it. If such a beauty lifted the sword again in the future, what kind of beautiful scene would it look like? Perhaps, killing and shedding blood can become art in her hands. The noodle bowl was empty. Qin Feng took the noodle bowl and left according to his previous promise. However, before leaving, he left this sentence. The edge of a sword comes from sharpening, and the fragrance of plum blossoms comes from the bitter cold. The sufferings experienced in the past may be the future. The stepping stones to the top are not certain either. Hearing this, Lu Jianli's eyes flashed. Noodles are delicious. Qin Feng paused and said, If you like it, I'll do it for you next time. Um, uncle, thank you for your hard work. La Ningxuang in the corridor said from the bottom of her heart. If your young lady doesn't eat from now on, call me over. Qin Feng instructed. Okay, uncle. La Ningxuang looked excited. After some delay, Qin Feng quickened his pace and wanted to rush to Wang Yu residence as soon as possible. Unexpectedly, when they turned a corner, they met Qin Jianan. Dad? Mom? Why are you here? Ern Yang smiled apologetically, and Qin Feng instantly guessed the reason. Qin Jianan was hesitating on the side. Eavesdropping on this kind of thing was not the behavior a head of a family should do. So he immediately made up a casual comment. I took your two mothers around and happened to be here. By the way, you have no problem with that girl from the Lu family. Right. When Qin Feng heard this, the corner of his mouth raised slightly. Of course there is no problem. But the method dad taught me before is really useful. Method? What method? Qin Jianan was confused. Dad, have you forgotten? Last time you told me that a woman must not get used to it if she doesn't have sex for three days. I tried it. And it really works. Qin Jianan's eyes widened. When will I? Qin Feng interrupted. Mom and dad. I have to rush to Wang Yu residence. So I'll go first. He said goodbye and left immediately. You haven't put up a roof for three days? Er Yang glanced at Qin Jianan with her beautiful eyes widened. Madam, this is all nonsense made by that boy. Tonight, you sleep in the guest room? Lady! Chapter 41 Reform The new mansion is in the middle city, very close to Wang Yu residence. Qin Feng only walked a few streets before arriving at the entrance of Wang Yu residence. It has to be said that Wang Yueju is indeed the most luxurious restaurant in Jinan city not to mention its three floors. It is definitely top-notch in terms of materials and decoration. To be able to run such a restaurant to the point where it has been losing money for consecutive years. My father is considered to be extremely talented. In terms of losing money, Qin Feng secretly sighed in his heart. You guys move all the ingredients into the kitchen. Qin Feng walked into the restaurant and ordered the people accompanying him. The servants took action one after another. He casually came to a table and chairs and touched it with his hands. It was spotless and clean. It seemed that the shopkeeper here was at least a good person. Not long after, the shopkeeper of Wang Yueja heard the noise and came down from upstairs. The shopkeeper is a middle-aged man with a mustache and a slightly stout figure. When he saw Qin Feng, he immediately said with a flattering look on his face, Young master, you are here. Do you need me to pour you a cup of tea? I'll drink tea later. What do you call me? Qin Feng had never been in charge of Wang Yueja's affairs before so he didn't know the name of the shopkeeper. Reporting to the eldest young master, the younger one's name is Peng Ching. Shopkeeper Peng. Right. Okay. Bring me the price list of your dishes. Hearing this, Peng Ching waved back, and a waiter immediately handed over a blank paper. Young master, I thought you needed this, so I prepared it for you in advance. This guy is quite smart. So how can he manage Wang Yu residence like this? Ching Feng was curious, took the price list and looked at it and was stunned on the spot. The prices of the dishes here cannot be said to be outrageous. They can only be said to be extremely outrageous. Jinong City is a small town, and the consumption level is not high. But the price of these dishes is almost as high as that of Feng Tian City. Who can a normal person afford it? Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. This price list? It was decided by the master. Peng Qin smiled bitterly. I knew that no one would be so unreliable except that guy. Qin Feng put down the white scroll and asked tentatively, Shopkeeper Peng, do you think the price of this menu is appropriate? Peng Qin shook his head. I once advised the master that the price is too high and ordinary people cannot afford it. 
so it should be lowered appropriately. But the master said that the ingredients used in Wang Yueju are all the best and are high-end. Ordinary people can't afford it. Young master, you also know that although I am the shopkeeper, I can only follow the master's instructions on such matters. Qin Feng made a preliminary evaluation of shopkeeper Peng, and then asked again, If you were asked to change Wang Yueju, what would you do? Jinong City is not as good as Fontian City. Most people are ordinary people. They need to eat more to get enough food and clothing. If I were asked to do it, I would abandon ingredients that are too expensive to reduce costs, lower the price of dishes, and then increase the volume to increase the restaurant's profits. Peng Qin talked eloquently. Okay, Qin Feng affirmed, and then scolded his father in his heart. With such a pearl under his control, he could still make the restaurant continue to lose money. What a sin. Does dad have a physique that is insulated from money? Your idea is very good. But if I were you, I would not give up the high-end route while attracting ordinary people. I would like to hear the details, Peng Qing said humbly. The biggest feature of Wang Yueju is its luxury. In addition, it has three floors of lofts, so we can receive different customers on each floor. For example, the first level corresponds to ordinary people. The second level corresponds to martial artists. And the third level corresponds to powerful and wealthy businessmen. In this way, not only can ordinary people ensure daily basic profits, but it can also make those powerful and wealthy businessmen feel superior, making them more willing to come to our restaurant. Qin Feng gave a simple explanation. Hearing this, Peng Qin thought for a moment. Then his eyes flashed. Young master is a great talent. Get paper, pen, ink and ink stone. The waiter brought paper, pen, ink and ink stone from the accounting room. And Qin Feng immediately redrawn the prices of the dishes. He divided the different prices corresponding to different customers with black lines to distinguish them. From now on, our Wang Yueju will use this price as the standard. Peng Qin stared at it for a long time, finally understood the menu, and said with a dry smile, the word eldest young master. Um, it's so unique that most people can't imitate it. Qin Feng patted the other party on the shoulder and said, Shopkeeper Peng, I have asked the servants in charge of the house to prepare the new dishes. From now on, the management of this restaurant will have to rely on you. Don't worry. If the restaurant's profits are high, your monthly salary will naturally not be less. Peng Qing immediately said excitedly, Young master, please rest assured. I, Peng Qing, will devote my whole life to Wang Yueju and will never complain. Okay, let's get to work. Qin Feng dismissed everyone, chose a seat by the window, drank tea, cracked melon seeds, and waited for the meal to arrive. Time goes by. The sun shines high, and there are more and more people walking on the street. But it was obviously time to eat. But no one came to the restaurant. Qin Feng frowned, summoned shopkeeper Peng and asked, At this time on weekdays, is there no one around? Peng Qin also looked curious. Although ordinary people come in frequently, there are always a few, and wealthy people can usually see three or five. A situation like today has never happened before. Qin Feng originally wanted to rely on Hot Pot to open up the reputation of Wang Yueju, and then spread the word to attract customers. But if no one comes, all the original plans will be ruined he said with an ugly face. When something goes wrong, there must be a monster. Send a person outside to find out what happened. Peng Qing immediately ordered a waiter to run out to find out. After just one stick of incense, the waiter ran back panting. The eldest young master and shopkeeper Peng are in trouble. The restaurants under the city lord's mansion are drastically lowering the prices of their dishes. And ordinary people are going to them. And those powerful and wealthy businessmen who originally planned to come to us were lured away by people from the city lord's mansion on the way. What? What are the prices of their dishes now? Shopkeeper Peng asked with a frown. The waiter answered truthfully. After listening, Qin Feng fell into silence. Shopkeeper Peng slammed the table. At such a price, even if they are selling at a loss, what are they going to do? Qin Feng sneered. No need to ask. Naturally, he wants to use his own financial resources to bring down all the other restaurants in Jinyang City, and then become the only one. Peng Qin was stunned. Then we have nothing to do? That's not necessarily the case. Qin Feng stood up and said, I'll go out to do some errands. You guys keep an eye on the restaurant. If nothing else happens, you'll be busy tonight. You like to play dirty, right? Today I will let you see how terrible the marketing methods in the 21st century are. Chapter 42 Cooperation Qin Feng returned to the Qin Mansion and told his father 
and second mother what happened today. After Qin Jianan heard this, he became furious. This is simply too much bullying. I won't sell their Wang Yi residence. So I use this despicable method. Do you really think that I, a third class general of the country, are easy to bully? Qin Feng, the third class Feng with general who can really be stepped on by anyone in Dakian, did not answer. He just watched silently as his father pretended to be the head of the family and asked him to establish himself as the head of the family in front of his second mother. Image. After an impassioned speech, Qin Jianan felt comfortable and managed to send Er Nyan away. Then he coughed dryly and said, So, Feng, what do you think? I knew it would be like this. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and immediately told his father his own solution. When Qin Jianan heard this, he hesitated. Feng, what's the difference between what you're doing and deceiving the people? I'm afraid it's not very good. Right? Yes. It would be great to spread wealth like you do. Qin Feng complained in his heart. And then explained patiently. It's because the city lord's mansion doesn't respect martial ethics first. We just responded. What's more? We didn't defraud people of their money by doing this. They naturally have their own ideas about where to eat. Okay then. Dad finally agreed and immediately ordered his servants to do it. Qin Feng also rushed to Jin Yang City's Demon Slayer Division and met with Sher Ziming. The commander. You said you want to cooperate with our Demon Slayer Division? Sher Ziming poured himself a glass of wine and smiled meaningfully. Yes. If Lord Si Zheng is willing to agree, I will give 30% of Wang Yuejie's monthly profits to the Demon Slayer Division. Moreover, people from the Demon Slayer Division will receive a 20% discount when they go to Wang Yu residence to eat. The Demon Slayer Department of Jinong City receives very little salary from the Imperial Court every month. My colleagues in the Demon Slayer Department have already been miserable. By doing this, I will not only allow Wang Yuejie to be protected by the Demon Slayer Department, but I can also sell stones to make a fortune. Favor can be said to kill two birds with one stone. Qin Feng thought this way. Your words really make me excited. But as far as I know, your Wang Yu agent never seems to have much profit. In this case, why don't I cooperate with the people in the city lord's mansion? But with your Qin family? Shi Ziming put down the wine glass in his hand and tapped his fingers on the table. To tell you the truth, people from the city lord's mansion actually came to see me a long time ago. Sher Ziming looked at Qin Feng, waiting for his reaction. So what? Master Sijin will not agree to them. Qin Feng looked determined. Why are you so sure? You know, more than 50% of the restaurants in Jinong City are now under the name of the City Lord's Mansion. In terms of profit alone, I should be working with them. Right? Sher Ziming is still testing. The reason is very simple. If Mr. Sijin really wants to cooperate with them, he won't be able to stay here and listen to what I have to say. Moreover, the Yi family of the city lord's mansion is obviously related to the imperial capital's ministry of war. As far as I know, the demon slayer department and the ministry of war have always been at odds with each other. So it is impossible for Lord Sijing to cooperate with them. Of course, the most important point is that compared to the city lord's mansion, investing in me is a surefire deal. Qin Feng shouted loudly. Sure Ziming couldn't help laughing when he heard this. It's good to be young. After saying this, he pushed an empty wine glass to Qin Feng and helped him fill it up with wine. When Qin Feng saw this, he knew that the cooperation was almost certain. I promise you. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief when he heard the confirmation. But I have a condition. Sure Ziming said leisurely. What conditions? Within two months, you will take over all the restaurants in Jin Yang City except those under the name of the City Lord's Mansion. And our Demon Slayer Division wants 20% of the profits from all your restaurants. Qin Feng frowned and pondered, but then heard Sher Ziming speak again. Do you know why the city lord's palace wants to buy restaurants in the city? Please ask Mr. Si Zheng to clarify my doubts. The people from the Ministry of Industry of Feng Tian City have already been digging the official Huarong Road in the southern region a few months ago under the orders of Emperor Ming. If nothing goes wrong, it will only take less than three months to dig the Huarong Road. Go outside Jinong City. Sher Ziming raised his head and drank a glass of wine. Qin Feng was shocked when he heard the news. From ancient times to the present, one of the key factors that promotes the development of a place is transportation. If Warong Road can really be opened outside Jinong City, then Jinong City will no longer be a small unknown city. After all, the geographical location here is excellent. If it were not restricted by the surrounding mountains and unfavorable transportation, it would be able to grow and develop. 
the emergence of official channels can solve this problem. This news is so valuable. Qin Feng's eyes were shining with gold. But there was still a trace of doubt in his heart. It will cost a lot of money and manpower to open up official channels. But Dakian's current treasury is tight. How can Emperor Ming agree? After all, Shi Ziming is the seizing of one side and knows far more than Qin Feng. Because this idea was jointly proposed by the three departments of Hubingong. And the most important thing is that the Tianjin National Division also suggested that Emperor Ming dig Huarong Road. Qin Feng took a deep breath. The Imperial Master of Heavenly Supervisor. A person below 10,000 people. A person who stood at the top of the Wenshang Dao tradition. All spoke. No wonder Emperor Ming would agree. I understand. Within two months, the Qin family will take over the rest of the restaurants. But now, there is one more thing that needs Mr. Si Bing's help. Explain. After Qin Feng finished explaining, he said goodbye and left. Shi Ziming looked at Qin Feng's leaving figure, and the smile on his face became brighter. The Qin family really has an incredible person. Someone is here. Not long after, a piece of gossip quickly spread in the streets and alleys of Jinan City. Have you heard? Wang Yueju has a new dish called Hot Pot. It can strengthen your body and is not expensive. Ordinary people can afford it. Why did I hear that Hot Pot can help you grow taller and nourishing and young? What I heard is that eating that hot pot can improve your beauty. Ah, Why did I hear that eating it can make you immortal? No one knew what would happen after eating hot pot. But their curiosity was aroused, and they rushed towards Wang Yu residence. It's still a street away from Wang Yu residence. And the pleasant aroma hits the nostrils, whetting one's appetite. Some people swallowed their saliva and wanted to go in and try this dish called hot pot. But when they saw the long queue at the entrance of Wang Yu residence, they were all dumbfounded. Since when do you have to queue up for a meal? Is that thing called hot pot really so magical? Just when the people were surprised, a group of adults with demon slaying orders on their waists walked out of Wang Yu Center with satisfied expressions on their faces. After eating so much delicious food, I have never felt so comfortable as I do today. Isn't that right? Fortunately, we came early. If we were late, we might not even be able to drink a sip of hot soup. Brothers, remember to be early tomorrow. I'll treat you. Then it's settled. A few people crossed their shoulders and put on their vests and left with satisfaction, leaving everyone present stunned. What surprised them even more was that the waiter in Wang Yu Chuzhong actually walked out of a shop and put up a plaque that red ingredients are limited. And the limit is 300 people per day. The crowd was completely dumbfounded. They looked at each other. But after a few breaths, they all lined up at the back of the line, hoping that they would be lucky enough to be one of the 300 people. Chapter 43 Overcrowded at night, Wang Yi residence is brightly lit and crowded. The white air mixed with fragrance fills the entire restaurant, dispelling the cold of winter. Everyone here is sweating profusely and enjoying themselves. This delicacy called hot pot really refreshed their understanding. It is not only delicious, but also very user-friendly. In addition to the few cents charged for the bottom pot, you can choose which ingredients you want to add based on your own financial resources. Even ordinary people can order more soy products and vegetables to satisfy their taste buds. Where had they seen such a way of eating before? The waiters at Wang Yu residence were busy back and forth without stopping for a moment. Ever since they entered Wang Yu residence, there had never been a day as fulfilling as today. There is still a long queue at the door of the restaurant. The waiting people are looking at the fiery scene inside the restaurant. Their curiosity and appetite can no longer be suppressed. However, no one pays attention to the plaque that limits the number of people to 300 people placed at the door. None have been touched. Aren't we here yet? It's coming. It's coming. Due to lack of manpower, shopkeeper Pung went to the entrance to sit in person. At this moment, he was already smiling from ear to ear, and the admiration for the young master in his heart was as continuous as the blue sky and the sea. Absolutely. See table number three. The guests have paid their bills. Please go slowly. The waiter in the restaurant shouted. Upon hearing this, shopkeeper Peng hurriedly greeted the next batch of guests to take their seats. The common seats are the first floor. This is the concept that Qin Feng instilled in everyone in Wang Yu residence. The second floor is the special seats. And the third floor is the elegant seats. Different nouns correspond to the different guests received. As he explained before, the first floor has the largest area and is used to deal with ordinary people. It focuses on volume and ensures the basic profit of the restaurant. The second floor is used to receive martial arts practitioners. The ingredients they order are mostly monster flesh and blood, which are more expensive, so they can naturally earn more. As for the third floor, 
facing those powerful and wealthy businessmen who accounted for the bulk of the restaurant's profits. Chin Fong directly set a rule. If he wanted to eat on this floor, his single consumption must not be less than one tail of silver. And this amount of money is equivalent to an average family earns one-third of their annual income. But even though it is so expensive, there are still many people wearing luxurious clothes on the third floor of Wang Yi residence at this moment. For these people, money is not an issue. Being able to enter the third floor of Wang Yi residence has become a status symbol, giving them a sense of superiority. And this is exactly what Qin Feng wants to see. In just half a day, Wang Yueju was brought back to life. And it was overcrowded. Your kids' methods really opened my eyes. On the second floor of Wang Yueju, Shi Ziming's face turned red after eating especially the thing called Maodu, calling people to the top, making him unable to stop. The colleagues from the Demon Slang Division, who were in charge of guest appearances today, were also invited over by Qin Feng. Tonight, Mr. Qin, as his son, would foot the bill for these people. Although he was a little heartbroken, Qin Feng felt that this was a necessary investment. As the saying goes, if you don't go with small money, you won't get big money. The two exchanged glasses, and chatted for a long time. Sher Ziming took a sip of wine and suddenly said with emotion, The food is really good. Even in Fontian City, you may not be able to have such delicious food. Unfortunately, he swung the glass and said, This wine is really a bit bad. If this wine were better, it would be perfect. Qin Feng lowered his head and pondered after hearing this. He had already had an idea about brewing wine, but he just lacked an opportunity and a brewer he could trust. This has to be done, but not in a hurry. It has to be done slowly. On the other side, in the imperial capital Fontian City, Tang Hongyun, Minister of War, has not been in court for many days and announced that he is seriously ill. Emperor Mingda sent someone to offer condolences and learn the shocking news that Tang Xian, the eldest son of the Tang Dynasty, had his soul-drawing lamp extinguished and was dead. After Tang Hongyun found out, he was shocked and fell into a coma. When he woke up, he became depressed and became ill. In the bedroom, the haggard Tang Hongyun was lying on the bed with his eyes closed. His face was pale. And beside him stood a handsome young man in purple clothes. Dad, Emperor Mingda has asked hundreds of high-level Taoists from hundreds of ghosts to search for the soul-drawing lantern. The scene before the death of the eldest brother was darkness. The death lasted only a moment. They suspected that the eldest brother mistakenly entered the territory of powerful demons, and ghosts that derive the magical power of space. Unfortunately, he died. Die. This young man in purple is none other than Tang Fei, the Tang family's concubine born to Tang Hongyun's concubine. Tang Hongyun heard this, opened his eyes, and then stood up slowly. In order to please the third prince, I traveled thousands of miles to provoke the Lu family. How could I give birth to such a fool? He coughed a few times, looking like he hated iron. Dad, what you mean is that eldest brother's death is related to the Lu family. Yes or no? It doesn't matter anymore. In this world, if you want to die without being noticed, there are many ways. Tang Hongyun said coldly. Did that mean that? Tang Hongyun said nothing. A fierce light flashed in his eyes. Unconsciously, seven days have passed. During these seven days, Qin Feng could be said to have not stopped for a minute or a second. Not only does he have to check the restaurant's accounts and ration ingredients every day, he also has to go to Tinjiachuan to read books and accumulate literary talent. But what troubled him was that, after the literary Saint Taoist system reached the 8th level, the advancement speed was obviously much slower. Even after reading the book for 7 days and reading many books, the absorbable literary energy still could not fill the tea on Tai in the Sea of Gods. The first step is not even a third of the way up. He couldn't help but began to wonder if he was going in the wrong direction. Qin Feng was thinking and wandering around the house when he suddenly heard bursts of golden sound. Looking for reputation, he saw his second brother competing with Xing Sheng in the courtyard. Compared to the last time, his second brother was much more mature this time and was more comfortable fighting against others. Qin Feng opened his eyes and looked at the battlefield. The blood in his second brother's body was obviously richer than before, and the amount of energy was also greater. It seemed that the medicinal baths and blood pills in the past few days had taken effect. This is money-making ability. Brother, you're here. Qin and put away the narrow-edged knife in his hand. Uncle. Xing Sheng nodded in greeting. Qin Feng stepped forward and asked with a smile. Hey Tan Tu. Has my second brother made any progress? The corner of Xing Sheng's mouth twitched unconsciously. 
And then he replied, The second young master is extremely talented, making rapid progress, and his future is limitless. And if I read it correctly, the second young master's sword intention is probably about to enter the Chongyi realm. So fast? Qin Feng was a little surprised. This was half a month faster than he originally expected. In this case, Qin Feng turned to Qin and said, Then it's time to tell you about the second stage of Tiangang Yuan Slash. Qin looked excited when he heard this. Xing Sheng's eyes showed curiosity. Although his uncle saw the shortcomings of Yu Bingju at a glance last time, he still wanted to see how his uncle, as a scholar of the Holy Way of Literature, could teach the martial arts moves of Shenmue Wufu. Qin Feng walked into the courtyard, broke off a branch, and then began to draw figures of figures and swords on the ground. Upon seeing this, Qin immediately stepped forward to observe and learn carefully. Xing Sheng looked over and was shocked. Not only was he a sharp eye, but he was also an excellent poet. And even his painting skills were so superb. This silhouette of a sword can really be described as lifelike. Qin Feng was also a little frightened. After entering the eighth level, he obviously felt that his mind was clearer and he could easily retrieve memories. In just a moment, all the diagrams of the second stage moves of Tiangang Yuan Zhan were drawn. After Qin and finished observing, he pondered for a long time and then began to follow the move diagram and imitate it. However, after wielding the sword three times, his moves were exactly the same as those shown in the diagram. Xing Sheng stood aside all the time, saying nothing and showing surprise. For a martial artist, martial arts moves are just superficial, and it is not difficult to learn them. However, it is rare to learn them so quickly like the second young master, but this alone is not enough. If you want to master a martial arts, the moves are only second. The most important thing is the method of energy circulation. As he expected, Qin Feng began to tell Qin An about the powerful method of Tiangang Yuan Zhan. After finishing the dictation, Qin Feng said, Second brother, you integrate the strength method into the moves, and then use the sword technique several times. If there is something wrong, I will correct it for you. Then I'll trouble you. Brother, Qin An raised his knife and began to swing it, and the sound of breaking the wind could not be heard. Chapter 40 for the Cultivation Direction of the 8th Grade Literary Sage Qin Feng used his eyes to observe the direction of energy in Qin An's body while explaining. As I said before, this sword technique pays attention to the four levels of energy. The first level is the front, and the sword can be used to spread the energy three feet away, chopping rocks. This second level of force is so subtle that it can chop off leaves from a tree ten feet away without damaging its veins. Of course, to accomplish this, you, second brother, need to be able to put more energy on the blade and master the energy more skillfully. Qin An responded and continued to swing the knife. Suddenly, he paused and frowned. This was because there was a deviation in the movement of his energy, and he had to stop. This result was also within Xing Sheng's expectation. If Xin Wu's martial arts was something that could be understood through oral instruction, then Dakian would have already been ruled by the Xin Wu Taoism. For a martial artist, in order to fully master a divine martial art, in addition to long-term practice, a famous teacher who can impart experience is also extremely important. Obviously, my uncle who has no energy cannot do this. Xing Sheng shook his head and sighed in his heart. Sure enough, it was still a bit of a fantasy to have a Wen Sheng Taoist teach Wufu martial arts. Second brother, do you know what went wrong with the energy movement just now? Qin Feng asked. Xin and shook his head. Please let me clear up my doubts. Well, come here. When Xing Sheng heard this conversation, some genre monks were confused. His uncle's keen eyesight could see that there was something wrong with the movement of energy. But it didn't surprise him too much. After all, his uncle had also seen through the shortcomings of the previous imperial weapon Jew. But guiding the movement of energy and seeing problems with the movement of energy are completely different things. Qin Feng put his right hand on Qin An's abdomen. After about half a stick of incense, the latter's eyes suddenly lit up. Brother, I understand. As soon as he finished speaking, Qin An couldn't wait to practice the second stage of the Tiangang Yuan Slash. And the place where his energy flow went wrong just now was passed by him this time. How could this happen? Xing Sheng's eyes widened. But what happened next surprised him even more. After Qin An solved one problem, there were three more errors in the movement of his energy. Each time, the uncle just put his right hand on the second young master's abdomen just like before. It can be solved easily. Xing Sheng swallowed his saliva. This completely broke his previous understanding. Second brother, I have corrected all your mistakes. Next, you need to continue to practice and understand. If my prediction is correct, 
When you successfully step into the second level of Tiangang Yuanzhan, your sword intention should be able to step into Zhongyue. And the sixth level Shenmu Power Gathering Realm can also touch the threshold. Qin Feng vowed. Thank you, brother. Qin and looked excited. And then, he didn't want to waste a minute and devoted himself to practicing swordsmanship again. At the same time, Qin Feng's eyes widened suddenly. And he was extremely excited. At this moment, in his divine sea, a burst of white light flashed out from the first step to the rooftop. Within a moment, literary energy emerged, instantly filling the first level of the stairs. One-fifth of the stairs. This accumulation of literary skills is much faster than reading books. After being excited, Qin Feng fell into thinking. When you are in the ninth rank, applying what you have learned from the book will bring you about ten times more literary spirit than reading a book. However, when you reach the eighth rank of literary sage, Applying what you have learned will bring you far more literary spirit than reading a book. It can be seen from this that if you want to improve quickly in the eighth level of literary saint, applying what you have learned is the key. But even so, it does not mean that reading is useless. After all, the more knowledge you accumulate, the more opportunities you will have to apply what you have learned. After weighing it again and again, Jean Feng decided to read all the books in Ting Yushuan as soon as possible, so as to achieve it step by step and accumulate more knowledge. Second brother, you can practice your sword here. I have something else to go out for. Okay, brother. Seeing that Qin Feng was about to leave, Sheng Sheng hurriedly followed. Uncle, what happened just now? Why can you guide the correct flow of energy to the second young master just by putting your hand on his abdomen? What's so difficult about this? I just transferred my literary energy into his body and then showed him the correct path of the energy. Qin Feng replied casually, Can it still be like this? Xing Sheng opened his mouth wide with disbelief on his face. But if you want to demonstrate to the second young master, you need to know how to use your energy yourself. But? Qin Feng turned his head and said, You want to say, But I am just a scholar, not a martial artist. How can I figure out the correct way to circulate energy just based on the contents of the book? Xing Sheng nodded. But his uncle patted his shoulder and said seriously, Heighten too. This kind of thing requires talent. Don't you think that I am studying because I am not good at martial arts? I just think that I am good at martial arts. Wu is just too unchallenging for me. As the saying goes, it's cold when you're high up, but it's the loneliest when you're invincible. Looking at the admiring look on Heighten Tu's face, Qin Feng's heart was soaring. This kind of pretentiousness felt so good. Uncle, have you ever considered joining the army? If you can guide the Shenhou army with your ability, our army will be able to kill enemies on the battlefield in the future with overwhelming force. Xing Shun said excitedly. Are you kidding me? You don't want to kill me if I go to the front line. Qin Feng coughed dryly. I have always considered joining the army to serve the country. But it's not the time yet. My uncle thinks that his cultivation is still shallow. So he wants to hone himself more. Hush. The secret must not be leaked. I will tell you when the time comes. Qin Feng waved his hand and left. Leaving Haydn too with an enigmatic back. Before leaving the Qin mansion. Qin Feng went to find Lan Ningxuang. Since returning from the Black Mist Forest, Lan Ningxuang has taken over all the security work when going out, not allowing Xing Sheng to interfere. Although Qin Feng didn't understand why he was doing this, he didn't ask too much. Anyway, it was the same no matter who protected him. When they arrived at the lake pavilion, the two beauties looked at the lake with calm expressions. Lan Ningxuang saw Qin Feng and said softly, Miss, I'm going to protect my uncle. Yeah. Lu Jianli was unfazed. After the two left Qin Mansion, Qin Feng asked, Has your lady been eating normally recently? Thanks to my uncle. My young lady now eats at least one meal every day. Lan Ningxuang was sincerely grateful. That's good. Now when I go to Tinjiuxuan, I will also read books on medical skills. I believe that one day, I will be able to cure your young lady's injury. Lan Ningxuang smiled slightly, her brows full of tenderness. I believe my uncle can do it. When I arrived at the door of Tinjiuxuan, I saw Song Filin with her arms folded across her chest. Standing beside Bailey, old man, it looked like she had been waiting here for a long time. She glanced at Qin Feng and the two of them. But without saying anything, she stepped into Tinjiuxuan. Qin Feng followed closely behind. Lan Ningxuang didn't have much interest in the interior of Ting Yushuan, and she was not qualified to enter. So she held her sword and stood at the door, closing her eyes and breathing out condensing the energy in her body. Old man Bailey opened a slit in his eye, glanced at it, and couldn't help but smile. 
This boy from the Qin family is so lucky. The beauty in blue pretended not to hear, and still closed her eyes to practice. But her cheeks were slightly blushed. Chapter 45 Drawing Fire from the Bottom of the Cauldron In Tinjiaxuan, Qin Feng walked up to Song Filin and apologized. Miss Song, I will borrow the summer ring for a while. Don't worry. When I have spare money to buy a space jade pendant, I will definitely borrow the summer ring. Return it. No need. Song Filin looked sideways and said, The summer ring will be given to you. Send it to me. Qin Feng's eyes widened when he heard this. Such a priceless treasure. Just give it away. Even if you have money, there is no need to be so willful. Right? Qin Feng swallowed. Although there was a voice in his heart that kept tempting him to accept it. His reason still defeated his desire. It's still inappropriate. This thing is too valuable. Song Filin took a book and started flipping through it. And said calmly, I like the song. Xia Kuxing. You gave me last time. So Zumiji took it as a return gift. But isn't that poem your reward for escorting me? Qin Feng looked confused. Song Filin frowned slightly. A mere escort is not worth that poem. Even if I exchange it for the Sumer Ring, I still feel that I have earned it. What's more, I still have many Sumer precepts at home. So the matter has been settled and there is no need to say more. Qin Feng opened his mouth and sighed in his heart. Rich women are so heroic. If he could marry her home, he would have spared himself 200 years of struggle. At this time, Qin Feng thought of the dragon's saliva again. And his evil thoughts arose again. Miss Song herself said that she earned the money for the Sumer Ring in. Xia Kuxing. So it shouldn't be a problem for me to ask her for a few drops of ambergris. Right? Of course. This is mainly because as a literary saint, I want to satisfy my curiosity about novel things. And it definitely does not contain any dirty thoughts. Qin Feng coughed dryly. Miss Song. I wonder if you can give me that ambergris saliva. Get out! Before he could finish his words, he was interrupted by Song Filin. The other party glared at him fiercely, then left straight away. Wandering around in the attic as usual, Qin Feng was confused. Why did Miss Song have such a big reaction every time she mentioned ambergris? Even if you are willing to give away the summer ring, do you still care about those few drops of saliva? Poor people really don't understand the thoughts of rich people. Qin Feng shook his head and started to read books. As time passed, Qin Feng's knowledge reserves increased. But he read many medical books, but did not see any content on how to reconnect damaged meridians. There are not many books left on the third floor of Tinjiaxuan. It seems that if you want to find a solution, you have to look at the upper floors. However, the old man Bailey at the door said at the beginning that they can only browse on the lower three floors. What should I do? Qin Feng looked troubled and thought to himself that it was time to ask the bad old man what conditions were needed to go above the third floor. At this moment, Lan Ningxuang's call came from the door. Generally speaking, Miss Lan will not disturb her when she is reading unless there is something urgent that needs to be reported. Qin Feng frowned and hurried downstairs. Then he saw shopkeeper Pung with an anxious look at the entrance of Tinjiaxuan. What's going on? The restaurant's business is booming. Now one day's income is equal to the profit of the past three months. There shouldn't be any problems. But looking at the look on the face of shopkeeper Pung, it's obvious that something big has happened to the restaurant. Pung Qin glanced at the others and said a few words. Qin Feng frowned and rushed towards Wang Yu resident with Miss Lan and shopkeeper Pung. Just at this time, a lame middle-aged man wearing a patchwork cloth and using a cane walked slowly over with a bottle of wine in his hand. The two parties passed by each other, and Qin Feng glanced at him. He was surprised at the number of wounds on the other party's body, but he didn't pay much attention to it and left in a hurry. Old man, your wine, the middle-aged man said. Yeah, old man Bailey responded, took the wine flask, and handed over a bunch of copper coins which was still 30 coins. Is it still this time tomorrow? I'm afraid you have other things to be busy with tomorrow. What can I be busy with? The middle-aged man asked curiously. Old man Bailey didn't respond. Lying on the wicker chair and fanning himself, the middle-aged man glanced at him and said, That's inexplicable. Then he limped away. Qin Feng and others rushed to Wang Yu residence. Business was still booming. But from time to time, they could hear complaints from customers and apologies from the waiter. A restaurant as big as yours doesn't even have drinks? Oh, I'm really sorry. Sir, you've seen this person recently. There are so many of them. All the drinks in stock have been sold out, and we haven't had time to replenish them. Why don't you have tea instead of wine today? Next time you come, I'll be sure to serve you good wine. That's all we can do, the guest said helplessly. 
Jean Fong glanced around and saw that every guest's table was filled with tea. And there was not even a bottle of wine in sight. He asked in a low voice. Shopkeeper Peng, what's going on? Peng Qin's face turned ugly. We at Wang Yu residents get our drinks from the Time Winery in the city every month. This morning was supposed to be the time to replenish the supplies. Who could have imagined that they would actually collude with the city lord's mansion and cut off our drinks? Supply? Then you can't go to other wine shops to buy wine? Jean Fong frowned. The eldest young master didn't know something. After knowing this, I sent people to other wineries. But they all came back empty-handed. It must be related to the city lord's mansion. Now, in order to ensure a continuous supply of drinks for the nobles on the third floor. The drinks on the first and second floors can only be cut off. But even so, judging from the current passenger flow, it can only last for three days at most. Young master, what do you think we should do now? Qin Feng closed his eyes and meditated. Although Wang Yuage's current reputation is attracted by the hot pot, if a restaurant does not have drinks, it will definitely be greatly affected, and it will eventually lead to a loss of customer flow. The City Lord's Mansion did a really good job of pulling out all the stops. It seems that the brewing plan will be implemented ahead of schedule. Jean Fong murmured. At night, the City Lord's Palace is brightly lit. Yi Luoting clasped his fists and said with a smile. Father, you have a way. You can even think of cutting off their drink supply. It won't be long before their Wang Yuage business will be affected. Although that kid from the Qin family has some skills. He is still a bit young after all. There is nothing I can't do in this small Jinong city. Yi Hung sneered, looking complacent. At this time, two servants brought a pot of red soup and placed it in front of Yi Hung and the others. Yi Hung dipped some of it with his chopsticks, put it into his mouth, and said angrily, Trash, this is the soup base you made. It has no taste at all. How can it be compared with the hot pot at Wang Yueju? The two of them said tremblingly, Lord City Lord, we have tasted Wang Yueju's hot pot. The red soup is indeed extraordinary for ordinary people to imitate. If you don't know the recipe, you will never be able to make the taste. Then why should I feed you trash? Yi Hun kicked the table and knocked over the red soup. The two people who served the soup screamed when the red soup was spilled and burned. At this moment, a cold voice came from somewhere in the hall. Master Yi is really cruel to his subordinates. But dogs who fail to complete their tasks do deserve to be punished. Who is it? Yi Hun was shocked. As soon as he finished speaking, the heads of the two servants flew up and blood spurted out. Chapter 46,000 Ghost Faces Yi Luting was so frightened that he screamed when blood splashed on his face. After all, City Lord Yi Hong had seen strong winds and waves. He was not frightened by the battle in front of him. Instead, he shouted, Shut up! Upon hearing this, Yi Luting hurriedly covered his mouth with his palms. But his trembling body still showed how scared he was at this moment. Since your excellency is here, there is no need to hide. Anyway, all the masters in the mansion have probably died at your hands. And the two of us do not pose any threat to you. Yi Hung looked around carefully as he spoke. Oh, how do you know they are dead? The person in the shadow became interested. The sound my son made just now was so loud. With the ears of the seventh grade warriors in my house. They would have heard it and rushed over immediately. However, there was no movement outside. Apart from the fact that they are dead. I can't think of any other reason. Possibility. Yi Hang's face turned ugly. There was a clear sound of applause in the shadows, which seemed extremely harsh in this night. I thought City Lord Yi was a loser, but I didn't expect he still had some brains. After the words fell, three heads were thrown into the lobby. Each head and face was bleeding from the orifices, with a look of horror on their faces. Seeing the scene, Yi Lu Ting was so frightened that he collapsed on the ground and his crotch became wet. Yi Hum clenched his right fist, and gritted his teeth. The three heads on the ground were none other than the three seventh-level warriors in the city lord's palace. At this moment, the shadow of the pillar in the hall suddenly shook. Within a moment, the shadow stood up and gradually transformed into a man wearing a red ghost mask, long gray hair, wearing a black and white robe, and hanging from his waist. Countless figures with big skulls and palms. Yi Hing Chiang pretended to be calm and asked carefully, You and I have no enmity. Why are you so cruel? to collect people's money and eliminate disasters for them. Do you still remember Tang Xian, the son of the Minister of War, who came here a few days ago? A cold voice came from under the ghost's face. Of course I remember that when Mr. Tang came, I was waiting for him and looked after him. Even when he left, we saw him off all the way. But I don't understand. What does this have to do with you coming to me? You really don't know? 
a strong sense of oppression came from the shadows. Yi Hang's face turned pale, and large beads of sweat fell from his forehead. I really don't know. The ghost-faced man walked out of the shadows and came to Yi Hung. Under the huge pressure, the latter felt that the red ghost face seemed to be alive. He opened his bloody mouth and exposed his sharp fangs, trying to devour him. You really don't know? The ghost-faced man asked again. Yi Hung shook his head desperately when he heard this. At this moment, he was speechless. The ghost-faced man stared for a moment, put away his pressure, paced back and forth in the hall, and then said slowly, Master Tang, he did not return to Fontian City. What? Yi Hang's eyes widened. He thought of a possibility, and cold sweat instantly wet his back. But he still held on to a trace of luck. Maybe Mr. Tang has something to do. So he didn't return to Fontian City immediately. Uncertain. The ghost-faced man sneered. His soul-drawing lamp is out. The so-called soul-drawing lamp is a method of the hundred ghost Taoism. They can peel off a strand of soul thread from a living person and fuse it with a wick to make a soul-drawing lamp. As long as the soul-drawing lamp goes out, it means that the soul thread the owner is dead. Yi Hung was so frightened that he immediately knelt on the ground. Sir, this matter has nothing to do with me. I was definitely not the one who killed Mr. Tang. Please spare my life. Of course, I know it wasn't you who killed him. You don't have the courage yet. However, Mr. Tang came into contact with you, and you failed to protect his safety. Do you think you should die? Yi Luoting on the side was so frightened that he lost his mind after hearing this. Yi Hang's face changed from gloomy to bright. And finally, he put his hands on the ground and stood up with difficulty. If you really want to kill me, you can do it from the beginning. After telling me so much, you still think that I have some value. Sir, it doesn't matter. As long as I can do it, I will go through fire and water. No matter what. The ghost-faced man nodded. I like talking to smart people. You saved a life for me. I was ordered to come here with two tasks. Although I can complete it by myself. It will take some effort. Yi Hung breathed a sigh of relief. Sir, what do you need me to do for you? First, I want you to find a man named Li Yang in Jinong City and tell me his location. Second, find a way to kill Qin Feng, the eldest son of the Qin family, and bring his body to me. Yi Hung was shocked at first, and then said with a complex expression, To be honest, Sir, the three masters in my house have died in your hands, and Qin Feng is always protected by a seventh grade guard. I really have no choice. When the ghost-faced man heard this, he snapped his fingers, and then an incredible scene appeared. Yi Hung was shocked when he saw three figures walking towards the courtyard outside the hall. These three figures were clearly not human beings, but bodies without heads. They were the corpses of three seventh-grade warriors. But even the heads are gone. How can these three broken bodies move? The three broken bodies walked into the hall, picked up their own heads, and then pressed them on the neck again, with a charming smile on their faces. Seeing this, Yi Luoting fainted from fear. Yi Hung has lived for most of his life and has never seen such a weird thing. Even the hundred ghost tradition has never heard of such a method of bringing the dead back to life. The ghost-faced man said coldly, From now on, these three puppet corpses will be under your control. Their strength is only slightly stronger than when they were alive. And they are more than enough to deal with the seventh level. I understand. I will find a way to use the three of them to kill Qin Feng. May I ask? Sir? How do you call him? Thousand Puppets. The next day, Qin Feng yawned and opened the door. He smelled the wine in the teacup in his hand and nodded with satisfaction. After a night of trying, he finally distilled an extremely pure spirit. What he had to do now was to find a reliable distillery, teach him this distillation method, and then mass produce mellow spirits. Once successful, Wang Yuage's profits will surely be raised to a new level. However, Qin Feng also understood that it was not easy to find a reliable wine shop. After all, in Jinong City, the city lord was the biggest official, and basically no wine shop would dare to go against the city lord's mansion. The wine in Wang Yuage can only last for three days. It's time to look for a winery. Since all the big wineries in the city are bribed by the city lord's mansion, maybe I can go to the demon slaying department and ask Mr. Sijin. He might know where to buy it. Small wineries that no one cares about can take over the brewing business. After thinking about it, Qin Feng was about to leave the Qin mansion, but happened to meet his father when he was looking for Lan Ningxuang. With the tip of his nose, the latter immediately smelled the wine in the teacup. It was extremely pure spirit. After taking a sip, he felt a little ecstasy and immediately became interested. Feng, what do you think of this wine? Where did you buy it from? 
Upon hearing this, Jean Fong told the story of the brewing process and the difficulties Wang Yu residents encountered at the moment. Jean Jianan thought for a moment and suddenly said, I know there is a small winery. Maybe you can go there and try it. Chapter 47 Wine Shop Lowly Dad, the winery I'm looking for has a trustworthy boss and must be able to handle a lot of work. Can the place you mentioned do this? Jean Fong expressed doubts. After all, it's difficult for an unreliable father to do this. Give reliable advice. Jin Jianan rubbed his chin and thought carefully. That man's surname is Lee. He is a straight-minded person and is absolutely trustworthy. As for whether he can take on a lot of work, I'm not sure. How about you go and see it yourself? He asked him to confirm it in person. That person is in the innermost house on Xinjian Street in Nancheng. Xinjian Street, a street close to the periphery, is relatively remote and rarely visited by people. That's all we can do. Qin Feng nodded and suddenly thought of something. By the way, Dad, Wang Yueju has been revitalized by me. When will our family's treasury be restored? Before he finished speaking, Qin Jianan slapped his forehead and interrupted. I almost forgot. Your second mother wants to see me in an emergency. I have to go there quickly. By the way, what did you want to say to me just now? Forget it. Forget it. When you come back from your work, it won't be too late to talk to me again. After putting all this aside, I saw only a figure leaving in a hurry. Jean Fong sighed. Well, I don't expect to be able to easily get the money bank from Dad. Now I'd better go to South Street to take a look. Going to the Qin Mansion Lake Pavilion to look for Miss Lan. Jean Fong accidentally saw a shocking scene. Lu Jianli, who was dressed in white, made a slight move with her right hand, and a goldfish wrapped in a ball of clear water in the lake slowly came to her. The goldfish moved back and forth with its tail, but it was still unable to break away from the shackles of the water ball. It could only stare at the beautiful woman in front of it with wide eyes. Jean Feng was horrified. It was rumored that Lu Jianli's level had plummeted after he failed to overcome the tribulation. However, the ability to control his energy alone was comparable to that of most 6th grade Shinmu warriors. Could it be that she is still in the 5th level of divine power? Qin Feng murmured to himself. Guessing like this, Lu Jianli in the lake pavilion twitched her delicate white ear slightly, then waved her right hand lightly, and the water polo swept the goldfish back into the lake. Go! The red lips parted lightly. Lan Ningxuang didn't know why. So she turned her head and saw her uncle in the corridor. Her expression suddenly became happy but she quickly restrained herself. Miss, I'm going to protect my uncle. Don't forget to eat today's meal. Um. Qin Feng left with Lan Ningxuang. But when he left, he couldn't help but look at the lonely back a few more times. I wonder if it was his imagination. Compared with the beginning, the latter seemed to have more angry. The edge of the sword comes from sharpening. And the fragrance of plum blossoms comes from the bitter cold. Lu Jianli recalled the poem Qin Feng said. The sword box placed by Lan Ningxuan on the side of the lake pavilion trembled slightly, and ripples appeared on the surface of the lake. Qin Feng and his two men left Zhongqing and came to Xinjian Street in Jinan City. There were very few people coming and going here. Most of the residents on both sides were wearing patches, and their lives were obviously very tight. The dilapidated houses and poor people gave the whole street a sense of depression. After walking the entire street, the two came to the innermost house. From the outside, it doesn't look much better than the rest of the street. Is this the wine shop that dad mentioned? Qin Feng twitched, feeling that he still paid by mistake. He shouldn't have trusted that unreliable guy from the beginning. But perhaps with a sense of luck, Qin Feng did not leave directly, but knocked on the door. No matter what, it was better to take a look and give up. The wooden door was not locked. When you knocked lightly, it made a sharp squeaking sound and slowly opened. Looking inside the house, I saw that the yard was not big. But it was neat and tidy. It had a complete set of brewing tools. But no one was seen. There were sh. Lead grains and baskets. And next to the baskets, there was a pile of unhandled sorghum. There was a large pot used to cook the grain and gelatinize it. And the wooden stick used for stirring was still in the pot. There are fermentation tanks and wine jars with lids. No matter how you look at the scene in front of you. It seems that a group of people were making wine just now. But what about the people? Where have they all gone? Snap followed by a sound. The two hurriedly looked for the sound and saw a broom falling down for no reason in the corner of the yard, as if it had been blown by the wind. Is there anyone? I am Qin Feng, the eldest son of Qin. I was introduced by someone and want to come here to negotiate a deal. Qin Feng shouted. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard noises coming from inside the house. 
just hearing the sound of a hard object hitting the stone slab. The door of the back room was pushed open, and a middle-aged man with gray hair walked out. Jean Fong was shocked. He had met this person yesterday. He had a chance meeting at the door of Tinji Akshwin. He was the lame middle-aged man. This man is already like this. Why should he open a wine shop? Dad is really unreliable. Just in case, Jean Fong still confirmed. Are you the owner of the wine shop here? Mr. Lee? Lowley didn't answer immediately. He walked straight to the stone bench in the courtyard and slowly sat down with his crutches. He took the wine cup on the table and poured himself a glass. After drinking half of it, he drank the remaining half directly. Pour into the courtyard. Due to his strong strength, the spilled wine almost fell on Qin Feng's shoes. This guy doesn't welcome us very much. Qin Feng thought. You? Lan Ningxuang frowned and was about to say something. But Qin Feng reached out to stop her. What do you want from me? The middle-aged man admitted his identity. But his tone was a bit unkind. As if he was very unhappy with Qin Feng and his wife coming without permission. It was really him Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. Scolding the cheating father in his heart. And then clasped his fists and said. I came here originally to entrust you to make wine for us at Wang Yueju. But our entrustment volume is relatively large. If it's just you, I'm afraid you won't be able to complete it. Sorry for the inconvenience. And I'll take my leave. Qin Feng and Qin Feng turned around and left. Lao Li sat there and didn't look like he wanted to stay. But just as the two were about to leave, his nose sniffed the air. And then his eyes widened. Just a banging sound was heard. And the dilapidated house door suddenly closed on its own. La Ningxuang frowned and immediately turned around to protect Qin Feng behind her. This inconspicuous middle-aged man is not that simple. What are you going to do? La Ningxuang asked. Qin Feng looked confused. What's going on? Boy, where does the smell of wine on you come from? Lao Li looked excited. The faint aroma of wine in the air was extremely mellow. It was obviously stronger and more delicious than the liquor he brewed himself. How could he let it go? It turns out it's because of the aroma of the wine. He <laughs> he. You were indifferent to me before. But now you're anxious? Qin Feng slowly took out the teacup from the sumer ring. And the rich aroma of wine spread instantly. Lao Li took a sharp breath of air and showed an intoxicated look. This is it. This is it. He leaned on crutches. Jumped up and down. And came to Qin Feng. Anxiously saying. Give me a taste. You want a drink? Qin Feng looked strange. Lao Li nodded. No. Chapter 4800 Ghost Taoist. He even sprinkled me with wine on his front feet. And now he wants to drink my wine. Do you really think that a handsome person has no temper? You won't give me a drink? Lao Li raised his eyebrows. Qin Feng smiled. Of course I refuse. Looking at your expression. Do you still want to hit me? It's not that I look down on you. But Miss Lan can beat up ten of you for a cripple like you. Qin Feng thought this. And suddenly raised his eyebrows. The scene where the wooden door closed on its own just now was a bit like the strength of a sixth grade warrior, coupled with a tense look on Miss Lan's face at the moment. This guy in front of him must not be a master. Right? He swallowed a mouthful of saliva and hid behind Miss Lan honestly. This was not because he was afraid, but because he was taking precautions to prevent the other party from taking advantage of her. Lao Li narrowed his eyes slightly and knocked his cane on the ground. La Ningxuang instantly pulled out the sword from her waist and stood ready. Qin Feng hurriedly shrank up and hid himself tightly. But after a long time, there was no movement. Qin Feng carefully poked his head out. But there was no strong energy sweeping around him. The ground was also safe and sound. And Miss Lan in front of him did not move. That's it? Could it be that the wooden door was blown shut by the strong wind just now? If that's all you have, then I'm not afraid. Qin Feng walked out from behind Miss Lan and raised the corner of his mouth. I can't give you wine. If there's nothing else, We'll leave first. Qin Feng turned around gracefully, only to find that Miss Lan remained motionless. Miss Lan? Qin Feng turned his head and saw that the beauty's body was stiff, and the pupils in her bright eyes were trying their best to glance back, as if to remind him to run. Qin Feng, who suddenly realized something was wrong, used the eye expansion technique and discovered that the green light spots in the courtyard were densely packed, far more than in other places. Qin Feng, who didn't know what these green light spots were before. Understood after reading many books that these light spots were the residual yin chi left by the passing of all things and were indispensable for the hundred ghost Taoism to improve their cultivation. However, the yin chi here is so strong. Doesn't it mean that there are many things that have passed away in the courtyard? Qin Feng looked at Lan Ningxuang and saw that the yin energy around her was like a chain. 
tightly wrapping her around. Immediately I was shocked. This is a soul-binding method that can only be used by Baigui at the sixth level. This lame person practices the hundred ghost tradition. And his rank is not low. Lao Li, who was not far away, waved expressionlessly. Qin Feng laughed dryly, walked closer slowly, and offered the strong wine in the teacup with both hands. Lao Li took the teacup and drank it in one gulp. Then his eyes lit up. Boy, this wine is good. Seniorly, it's fine if you like him. I was blind before. Please don't blame me. Qin Feng had no choice but to lower his proud head with a wry smile on his face. How could he have guessed that the small Jinong city, such a dilapidated hut, and a lame man were actually at least a sixth level master of the hundred ghost tradition? This can no longer be called pretending to be a pig to eat the tiger. This is simply insane. This is like an NBA professional player coming to the field and shyly saying to the people on the field, Add me. I'm not good at playing. It's like a geisha who has been through the battlefield. During the wedding night, she shyly said to the groom, My lord, please be gentle. This is my first time. Is this what people should do? Shameless. Extremely shameless. Boy. Lowly spoke again. Qin Feng hurriedly looked flattering. Senior, what are your instructions? I have brewed so much wine. Even if it has been hidden for nearly ten years, the taste cannot be compared to your cup. How many years has your cup of wine been buried? Qin Feng raised his eyebrows. This glass of wine was distilled. How old it was. But the distillation method had cross-era significance and was the source of wealth. There was absolutely no way he could tell the other party. But just when Qin Feng wanted to talk about the year to put it off, he saw a faint red flame melting with the yin energy on the other party's lame leg. That is, Qin Feng's eyes widened, and his mind was racing with thoughts. The scars all over his body, the invisible flames, and his straightforward personality. He took a deep breath and slowly stretched out a finger. A hundred years? No wonder. Lao Li suddenly realized. And then sighed. Such rare wines can only be found but not sought. Senior, it's one night. Lao Li was stunned for a moment. Then said coldly, Are you entertaining me? You won't even have time to ferment in one night. Qin Feng waved his hand hurriedly. The wine was fermented in advance. I just improved it on the original basis. Tell me about it. Lao Li became interested. But he was still dubious. Qin Feng let out a breath and began to tell the other party about the brewing process last night. Distillation? Old Li's eyes widened. Such a practice had never been heard of before. Yes, it is distillation. After the fermented wine undergoes this operation, the water in the wine can be removed, thereby continuously purifying it and brewing a mellow spirit. Qin Feng explained the principle in detail, which made Lao Li's eyes light up. Is there such a thing? You kid, you are amazing. Senior is so complimentary. Old Li rubbed his chin and asked again. The deal you mentioned earlier was for me to brew this wine for you? Yes. I wonder if Senior is interested now. Hey, kid, you have to know that this method of brewing wine is unprecedented. You and I are just friends. So how dare you trust me to talk to me? It turned out that the middle-aged man also remembered meeting Qin Feng yesterday. Qin Feng clasped his fists. Senior, you can see that you are not an ordinary person. I am willing to do this business with you. Lao Li smiled disdainfully and tapped the cane on the ground again. Lan Ningxuan, who had been unable to move before, finally regained his freedom. Uncle! Lan Ningxuan came to Qin Feng's side, clenching her fists and blaming herself. Fortunately, the other party had no killing intent. Otherwise, Boy, I never like to threaten others. I can pretend that I haven't heard of what just happened. You can leave. You don't like to threaten others. So you have the nerve to say this. What happened to Miss Lan? Who asked for a drink earlier? Qin Feng glanced at her with disdain. Lao Li saw Qin Feng's thoughts. His face turned red. And he immediately coughed and said, Just think of it as buying that glass of wine. You can give me a price. Senior, whatever you said, that glass of wine should be regarded as a meeting gift before our cooperation. You really want to cooperate with me? Lao Li was a little surprised. Why? There are so many big wineries in the city. Wouldn't they be more in line with your requirements? Because those wine shops have colluded with the city lord's mansion. I don't believe them. Then you believe me? Believe it. Qin Feng said sincerely. Lao Li stared at each other. And their eyes met. After a long time, he suddenly smiled. In this case, if I don't agree, it will look like I'm being hypocritical. Thank you. Senior, let's discuss the details of cooperation. 
Chapter 49 Lao Li's Identity Qin Feng handed over the tools and operating details of the liquid distillation method to Lao Li. The latter felt like he had found a treasure and immediately patted his chest and promised that he could come here to pick up the wine in the morning three days later. The two said goodbye and left. In the yard, Lao Li sat back on the stone bench and an incredible scene happened. The broom that had fallen on the ground stood up and began to sweep the courtyard. The unhandled sorghum was constantly stripped of grains by inexplicable forces and thrown into baskets. The wooden sticks in the cauldron began to stir on their own. And even the wine cup on the table was lifted up by someone unknown and began to pour wine. Lao Li seemed to have thought of something. Stood up and tapped the ground with his crutch. Near the corner of the courtyard's outer wall, dust was billowing. And the ground cracked, revealing the stone steps going down. As you go down the stone steps, you will find a huge cellar. The space is many times larger than the courtyard. At a glance, the candles were flickering, and there were all the memorial tablets of the deceased. Below the tablets, there were jars and jars of wine piled up. Lao Li's eyes were cloudy, and he said with a smile, Guys, I know a new brewing method, and the wine produced is fragrant and strong. When the time comes, I'll give you a taste. The firelight flickered, but no one answered. A sigh echoed in the cellar. On their way back, Qin Feng and Lan Ningxuang suddenly lowered their heads and bit their lips and said, Uncle, I blame my low strength for not being able to protect your safety. Qin Feng smiled when he heard this. Miss Lan has already entered the seventh level of Shenwu and the sword and tent realm at such a young age. Does this mean she has low strength? Then, Uncle, am I not a loser? But just now, how old is he? Do you want to compare with him? Feeling that the beauty next to him was still blaming herself, Qin Feng stopped and said solemnly, there are many kinds of Taoism in the world, among which the martial arts is the purest. It pays attention to an open-minded mind. You must not get into trouble and affect the improvement of your cultivation. But, if it weren't for me, I wouldn't be forced to cooperate with that person. Forced? Why are you so guilty? It turns out it was a misunderstanding. Qin Feng shook his head and chuckled. I cooperated with C nearly willingly and was absolutely not forced. You don't have to blame yourself anymore. Uncle, you don't need to comfort me. Lan Ningxuang bit her lip, her face even more guilty. Hey, this girl is also stubborn. In desperation, Qin Feng could only tell the reason. Who do you think that senior looks like? Who? Lan Ningxuang was stunned and began to analyze. He has a hot temper and is straightforward in doing things. He is arrogant but very principled at the same time. And the scars on his body make him look like a soldier fighting on the battlefield? Qin Feng nodded, his eyes full of admiration. If my guess is correct, Senior Li is not an ordinary soldier, but a person who survived the battle at Jinling Pass 18 years ago. The Battle of Jinling Pass? Lan Ningxuan exclaimed. This kind of battle can be said to be unknown to everyone in the Dakian dynasty. Those who went to Jinling Pass to die were all called Jinling Pass by the people of the Southern Territory. For a hero. But? I'm afraid I'm mistaken. The 100,000 soldiers who went to Jilin Pass have long since died in the long river of history. And no one has survived. Qin Feng was shocked. How could it be? I read the historical records and found that less than 100 people returned. Lan Ningxuang replied. That's true. But I don't know something. Because Garuda eats dragons all year round. He accumulates dragon blood in his body and turns it into a cursed fire. Once it is contaminated, it will be like a gangrene attached to the bone and cannot be extinguished. The soldiers who survived that year were burned to death by Garuda's cursed fire on their way back before they could be reunited with their families, leaving no bones left. The History of Daki and Jinling War Also records that less than a hundred people returned and their bodies were hidden in the wild. To this day, no one knows where the ashes of those returning soldiers were scattered. Qin Feng opened his mouth and recalled the contents of the history books he had read in Ting Yushuan. It did not explain what was the final outcome of the surviving soldiers. Were they really dead? No, that's not right. The invisible, everlasting flame on Senior Li's broken leg is clearly the cursed fire of Garuda. But if Senior Li was really a surviving soldier from the Xinlingwen battle, why did he disappear and hide in this small Jinong city? Qin Feng thought about it and couldn't figure out the reason. Maybe you can go to Tinjiuxuan and ask that bad old man? Qin Feng had an idea and immediately took Lan Ningxuang to Tinjiuxuan. Old man Bailey shook his fan and glanced at the two of them. Hey, you came quite early today? Even so, there was no surprise in the old man's words. As if he had expected it. Senior Bailey, 
I have something that I don't understand. Sheen Fong was interrupted before he finished speaking. Stop it! I'm just a bad old man guarding the door. If you want to know anything, go inside and find the answer yourself. The old man crossed his legs, looking like he was in trouble. Lan Ningxuang frowned slightly. I really wanted to beat up this bad old man. Qin Feng clenched his fists, but finally let go. After all, he still had someone to ask for. Senior, I have read almost all the books on the third floor of Yushuan. I would like to ask, what are the conditions for reading on the floors above the third floor? Qin Feng said in a good voice, and he had already done it. He was mentally prepared to be made difficult by the bad old man. But what he said next made him never expect. Conditions? There are no conditions required. You can go up if you want, except for the ninth floor. You can wander around the rest as you like. The old man replied casually. Is it that simple? Qin Feng's eyes widened with disbelief on his face. The old man shook his fan and said leisurely. Do you still remember the last bet? Qin Feng recalled for a while and asked tentatively. The poem is more than six feet high? Yes. I said at the time that as long as you write a poem that is more than six feet tall, Ting Yushuan will come and go as you please. And I have won your poems. So the restrictions below the third level must naturally be given up. Otherwise, if I am taking advantage of a junior in vain, where will I put my old face? The old man took out his ears and blew away the dirt on them. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth, suddenly thought of something, and asked again, If that's the case, why didn't you say it before? Senior? Didn't I say that? The old man raised his eyebrows. Have you said that? Qin Feng asked immediately, with a complaining tone. The two were in a stalemate. After a long time, the old man yawned. Then you didn't ask before. So that's it. If you want to go in, go in quickly and don't disturb my rest. I really want to beat him up. Qin Feng suppressed the frustration in his heart and said sideways. Miss Lan, please go to Wang Yu residence and tell shopkeeper Peng that the drinking matter has been resolved. I won't leave Tinjiachuan for the next three days. So I won't need your protection. If there's anything urgent, just come to me here. Okay, uncle. Lan Ningxuang said goodbye and left. Qin Feng stepped into Ting Yushuan, but did not notice that there was a figure standing at the corner of the street, with a strange smile on his face, staring at his back. This person is one of the seventh grade warriors who came back from the dead in the city lord's mansion. I saw him slowly approaching Ting Yushuan, his right hand slowly touching the saber on his waist. But just when he was less than ten feet away from Ting Yushuan, a gust of breeze blew, and his body paused, and his body actually turned into smoke and dispersed in the wind in the blink of an eye. All this happened in the blink of an eye, and no one noticed it. Old man Bailey was still lying on the wicker chair, squinting his eyes and murmuring, Did rats get in? Why does it smell so bad? Chapter 50 Tian Yuan Neijing In Jinong City In a dark room in the city lord's mansion, Qian Puppet wearing a red ghost face suddenly trembled. He seemed to sense something, and turned his head to look at his right hand. The palm fell off for no reason, fell to the ground, and turned into a puddle of rotten flesh, exuding a pungent smell. There are actually such masters in this small city of Jinyang. It seems that the people and things we are looking for are very likely to be here. I didn't expect that after casually eating a few people. I would get such an unexpected surprise. A cold voice came from under the red ghost's face. At this moment, there were rapid footsteps outside the house, and the city lord Yi Hung was sweating profusely. Sir, it's not good. One of the three puppet corpses you gave me before was unknown to me when he was following Qin Feng. Why? Suddenly disappeared out of thin air. Where did it disappear? Qin Puppet asked. Outside a library called Tinjiaxuan in the city. Qin Feng often goes there to study. Yi Hung answered truthfully. When Qin Puppet heard this, he didn't say much. He just said lightly, Thank you for your hard work. It's my honor to share your worries with you. Yi Hung replied respectfully. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw several long hands of rotten flesh stretched out from under the sleeve of Chin Puppet's right arm. In the blink of an eye, they were wrapped around Yi Hung's neck, and they became tighter and tighter. Sir, why is this? Yi Hang's face turned red, and he had difficulty breathing. He didn't understand why the other party suddenly attacked him when he clearly did nothing wrong. Sorry. I have something I want to know, but rather than listening to you say it, I still think it's better to check it out myself. With a click, Yi Hung tilted his head and died completely. The flesh and blood on his body was continuously sucked by the long hand, and Qin Puppet's right palm also condensed again. Not long after, 
A pool of human skin was left on the ground. Chin Puppet's long gray hair danced. And the ghost face trembled violently. It took a long time to calm down. He seemed to have finished digesting Yi Hang's memory. And sneered. Those old foxes from Fontion City. Looking at the human skin on the ground. Chin Puppet snapped his fingers. Behind his loose black and white robe. A piece of flesh kept squirming. Then fell to the ground and slowly crawled into the human skin. After a while. A vivid city lord appeared in front of him again. Go! Chien Puppet ordered. Yi Hung clasped his fists, turned around and left. At the same time, on the way from Fontian City to Jinong City, several mountain woodcutters did not take the usual route in order to take a shortcut to cut firewood in the mountains. One person suddenly pointed to the edge of the woods and said in surprise, Look! You guys! What's on the ground? A few people were curious and walked forward. They saw clothes all over the floor. At least a dozen pieces. But not a single person. Bangta. A man stepped on a hard object. Looked down and saw that it was a piece of white bone. And there were some dark red mints meat stained around the white bone. This. Can't this be human bones? The man screamed in fright. Given the strange environment at the scene. It is not difficult to guess that the owner of these clothes must have encountered a terrible thing while on the road and ended up with no body left. Several people were so frightened that they turned pale and hurried home as if running away, never bothering to chop wood. Tang Hongun in Fontian City would never have thought that the killer he said would die on the way before he could reach Jinyong City. At night, Qin Mansion, Hu Pavilion. Today's Lan Ningxuang is different from before. She holds the hilt of the sword in her right hand. Her expression is tangled, and she hesitates to speak. What's wrong? Lu Jinli asked calmly, sensing the unstable mood of the sword server beside him. Miss! Can you guide me in my practice? Lan Ningxuang took a deep breath, made up her mind, and said these words. Why? I want to protect my uncle. But with my current ability, I simply can't do it. His tone was a little aggrieved. Lu Jianli didn't respond, seeming to be thinking about something. After an unknown amount of time, a fish jumped out of the lake and splashed, breaking the tranquility. The sword box trembled slightly. Draw your sword. Okay. Miss. Lan Ningxuang looked excited. The wind stirred, and the silver light fell. The lake pavilion is destined not to be peaceful tonight. And it will be the same in the future. Three days is neither long nor short. Qin Fong was on the fourth floor of Tinjiuxuan, watching day and night for three days and three nights. Completely forgetting the passage of time. This Tinjiuxuan is really amazing. Every time you go up a level, the types and quantity of books become more and more. And the quality becomes higher and higher. Moreover, Qin Feng was also surprised to find that in the Tian Yuan in the I Jing, a medical book on the fourth floor, there was a theory on repairing damaged meridians. However, when he finished flipping through the entire medical book, he didn't seem very excited, but rather depressed. The more you know, the greater your disappointment. No wonder there are so many famous doctors in Feng Tian City, but no one can cure Lu Jinli's injury, because it is really difficult to cure Lu Jinli's injury. There are many difficult points raised in medical books, among which two are undoubtedly the most difficult. First, the medicinal materials required for the medicinal solution to repair the meridians are all rare in the world. To collect them all, the time and financial resources required are beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Secondly, the meridians are intricate and complex, and some of them may be as thin as a hair. To repair all the damaged meridians, you must reconnect the meridians one by one, and then use silver needles to soak the meridians with medicinal liquid and point them at the broken parts of the meridians for repair. And once there is a slight mistake, the meridians are wrongly connected, or the meridians are punctured. The consequences will be disastrous. The first point is not bad. After all, the Lu family is behind Lu Jinli and has a very important position in Dakian. As long as Mr. Lu opens his mouth, the imperial capital will definitely search for the required medicinal materials. The key is the second point. Qin Feng frowned. How is it possible to reset the hundreds of intricately tangled meridians one by one when the meridians cannot be seen? Apart from anything else, just carefully untangling the entangled meridians is an impossible task unless someone can see through the flesh and blood. Huh? Qin Feng was stunned for a moment. Then his eyes gleamed. Those who are obsessed with the authorities can see clearly. Am I not that one in a million man who can see through things? Thinking of this, Qin Feng looked excited. After all, he had seen a glimmer of hope. However, this matter cannot be carried out rashly. After all, he has no experience in treating diseases and saving people. 
although the damaged meridians can be seen. If the skill of the hand is poor, and one of them is not grasped firmly, the meridians will be punctured and Lu Jianli will be killed. Presumably, Mr. Lu from the Lu family in the Imperial Capital will bring the Shihou army to defeat the Qin Mansion. Qin Feng imagined the scene, and couldn't help but shudder. Perhaps, I can first learn to treat diseases, and save people according to the contents of the medical books. After I have accumulated enough experience, I can then find a way to treat Lu Jianli's injuries. While Qin Feng was thinking, the literary energy from the Tian Yuan in Yai Jing suddenly poured into his body, and his consciousness was also brought into the Divine Sea. Qin Feng was shocked at first, and then he was filled with excitement. If he remembered correctly, when the Chao and Jing taught the literary skills how Tian Mirror, it was like this now. Chapter 51 Literary Skills Are in Vain Sure enough, a white phantom appeared out of thin air in the Divine Sea. With a move of his right hand, the literary energy in the ascending platform poured into the phantom's body and began to flow. Qin Feng calmed down and watched attentively. He knew that this was Su Ying demonstrating how to guide Wen Qi. After the white and holy literary energy circulated in the shadow for five weeks, it gathered on the index and middle fingers of the right hand that were closed together and turned into a white needle, which looked somewhat like the silver needle commonly used by doctors. Think about it. The literary skills taught in a medical book should naturally be related to medical skills. At the same time, an inexplicable voice sounded again. Bye, see you in. It can be used after stepping into the ninth level. It can turn the cultural energy into sharp needles, break the skin into the bones, and kill people invisible. The more prosperous the literary spirit, the stronger the power. Qin Feng opened his mouth wide and couldn't believe that the literary skills taught in a medical book were actually killing skills. Do you still have any medical ethics? Of course. He just complained. But he was still happy in his heart. After all, after being a turtle for so long, he finally had the means to take the initiative to attack. Moreover, just looking at the introduction of Bai Siyuan's literary skill, it doesn't say that it cannot be used as a silver needle. The white shadow disappeared, and Qin Feng returned to reality. He circulated the literary energy in his body, and within a moment, a white needle appeared on his two fingers together, which was Bai Siyuan. This needle, no matter how you look at it, is a bit short and thin which is incompatible with the majestic and majestic self. Qin Feng twitched the corners of his mouth. He could not admit that he was short, and could only attribute it to the fact that he had not accumulated enough literary spirit. Suddenly, as a burst of fragrance hit her nostrils, Song Filan's graceful figure came into view. She blinked her light blue eyes, and handed over the bun in her hand. I stayed at Tinji Uchuan for three days, and did not leave. During this period, Miss Song kept coming to feed me. It felt so good to be taken care of by a rich woman. Qin Feng took the bun and took a big bite, with a satisfied look on his face. Thank you so much, Miss Song. These days, well, your garden blue is already at the door of Tinji Uxman. It seems that he has been waiting for a long time, Song Filan said lightly. Hearing this, Qin Feng ate the buns in several bites. But because he ate too fast, he choked and turned red. Seeing this, Song Filan stretched out her white, and delicate right hand, as if she wanted to pat Qin Feng's back. But halfway out, she suddenly thought of something. Her movements paused, and the faint pink color climbed onto the mutton-fat jade-like hair. Tip of ear. Qin Feng patted his chest several times, and finally recovered. Miss Song, I still have something to do, so I'll take the first step. Well, I won't send it off. Song Filan replied softly, as the hurried steps on the stairs gradually faded away. She looked at her right hand in a daze. I've been feeling a little strange lately. What's going on? Song Filan thought. Uncle! Listening to the entrance of Yushuan. Lan Ningxuan greeted Qin Feng. Qin Feng nodded in greeting, and was about to leave, when he seemed to find something. Why did he feel that Miss Lan's temperament was different from before? As if she had more confidence? Perhaps because she had been staring for too long. Miss Lan subconsciously took a step back. Her eyes were a little dodgy. And her confidence was gone. Sure enough, I was wrong. Qin Feng touched his chin and said, Three days are here. Miss Lan, accompany me to Xinjiang Street to get some wine. Okay, uncle. In about the time it took them to burn incense, the two of them arrived at Xinjiang Street. The door of Lao Li's house was not closed. At a glance, they saw that the courtyard was full of wine. If you take a closer look, there were 300 jars of wine. At this moment, Lao Li was sitting on the stone bench. When he saw Qin Feng and the two of them, 
he pointed to the courtyard. The drinks you want are all here. They are all distilled repeatedly according to your requirements. Qin Feng's eyes showed excitement, and he hurriedly opened a jar. The aroma of wine overflowed, and he seemed to get drunk just by smelling it. Even Lan Ningxuang, who had never drank alcohol, couldn't help but be attracted by the aroma of wine and showed an intoxicated expression. Qin Feng's thoughts were lost in the Sumer ring, and then the Sumer ring in his arms flashed, and the 300 jars of wine in the courtyard disappeared in an instant. Hey, you brat is quite rich. A space treasure that can accommodate so many wine jars is not cheap. Oldly raised his eyebrows and said, No, no, it's just a gadget. Qin Feng pretended to be humble, but he was happy in his heart. It's good to have a rich woman behind him. When you go out, you can show off your face even more. After simply pretending to be cowardly, Qin Feng took out a money bag from the shimmy ring. Seniorly, this is the 500 tails of silver agreed upon in advance. After the drinks are sold, 20% of the profit will be given to you. Superior. Lowly took the money bag and tossed it in his hand. He did not show the joy of becoming rich. Money seemed to be just a number to him. Then what should I do next? Continue to make this kind of wine for you? Brewing is definitely necessary. But I hope seniors will hide the brewed wine in the cellar and not take it out easily. Why? Once this kind of fine wine is released, money will come rolling in. I see that you are a greedy man. And you don't want to make a fortune from this wine? Lowly looked puzzled. Qin Feng explained. Things are rare and valuable. If this drink appears in large quantities in front of the world, it will be worthless. Business requires steady flow. I see. Oldly raised his eyebrows and glanced at Qin Feng with disdain. His look seemed to say, You are a profiteer. I understand. I will put the brewed wine in the cellar. You can pick it up when you need it. Thank you. Senior Lee, I still have some things to deal with. So I'll take the first step. Qin Feng said goodbye with Lan Ningxuang and Lan Ningxuang. Three days have passed, and the drinks in the restaurant should be sold out. If the drinks are not replenished, Wang Yuage's business will inevitably be affected. After the two left, Lao Li poured himself a glass of wine, drinking half of it himself and spilling the other half on the ground as before. The wine was very strong and had a strong aroma. Lao Li's face turned slightly red and he hummed an unknown tune in his mouth, recalling the days when he drank with his brothers. Humming, humming, two lines of clear tears fell from the side of the cheeks. He knocked on the ground with his crutch, and the bag containing 500 tails of silver suddenly deflated. For the poor people of Xinchuan Street, today is a good day. Because for some reason, some money appeared on the table in their house. That's their life-saving money. When you come to Wang Yu residence, you can hear noisy sounds from a distance. What do you mean? You lied to us that we didn't have any wine. But in the end, all the nobles on the third floor could drink it. Why? Rich people are human beings? We ordinary people are not human beings? Selling drinks depends on a person's identity. You guys at Wang Yueju are really amazing. Everyone, listen to me. What's so delicious about a restaurant like this? They look down on us. The worst we can do is go somewhere else to eat. Shopkeeper Pung at the door was sweating profusely and kept apologizing to everyone, but to no avail. He kept thinking in his heart. Why doesn't the young master come? I can't hold it anymore. At this moment, a ray of sword energy came through the wind and struck at the feet of the man who screamed the most fiercely, making him scream in fright. The rest of the people were also confused by this sudden scene. A restaurant is a place to eat. If you want to make a noise, go somewhere else. Everyone heard the voice and looked for it. The speaker was a handsome man wearing white clothes and a black shirt. Beside him stood a beautiful woman in blue with a sword in her waist and a cold expression. Pung Ching was extremely excited when he saw the visitor. Young master, you are finally here. Chapter 52 Conflict Under Everyone's Gaze Qin Feng walked up to Peng Qing and asked, What's going on? Shopkeeper Peng glanced around, stepped forward and whispered the whole story. It turns out that someone leaked the news this morning, and it was revealed that drinks at Wang Yu residence were only provided on the third floor and not on the other two floors. Originally, with Shopkeeper Peng's ability, he could give ordinary people some small favors and send some dishes, and this matter would be revealed. But who knows? Just as Shopkeeper Peng was preparing to deal with it, Someone in the crowd suddenly expressed his dissatisfaction. Then, like a drop of water falling into a frying pan, more and more people responded, and things became more and more out of hand. After listening to this, Qin Feng looked around. If someone wasn't behind this incident, he wouldn't believe it even if he were killed. But who could it be? 
after turning around. He locked his eyes on the man who had yelled the most fiercely before. Perhaps because Qin Feng's aura was too strong and he was dressed like a young man. The man being stared it was not as arrogant as before, but rather timid, as if he had a guilty conscience. Qin Feng squinted his eyes, looked at the money bag on the man's waist, and showed a meaningful expression. Brother, we at Wang Yuejia have no grievances against you. So why are we trying to stir up trouble here? Qin Feng approached the man with a condescending attitude that scared the latter into a cold sweat. The man flinched a little, but when he touched the money bag at his waist, his expression changed, and he still gritted his teeth and said, I don't understand what you are talking about. You Wang Yu residents treat you differently. You only provide drinks to the nobles. But we commoners are not allowed. Talk? Hearing this, the people around him began to whisper again. Qin Feng patted the man's shoulder and said with a smile, Brother, forget it. How about I give you double what the people behind you gave you? Let's let this matter go. The man was startled and shouted hurriedly. I don't understand what you are talking about. I have something else to do, and I don't want to talk nonsense with you here. After saying these words, the man wanted to turn around and leave. But Qin Feng grabbed his shoulder and stopped him. What are you going to do? I just told the truth. But you still want to do it. Look what you said. Poor hospitality is our restaurant's dereliction of duty. As the boss, I naturally have to compensate the guests. Qin Feng smiled while using his literary skills. In the blink of an eye, the man's waist the money bag was cut open. I don't have time. Let me go. The man had a guilty conscience and naturally did not dare to stay. He broke away from Qin Feng's arm and tried to escape. However, due to the big movement, the money fell from the open hole and scattered all over the floor. At a casual glance, there are at least a dozen tails. The crowd suddenly became commotion. The man was dressed like ordinary people. How could he carry so much money with him? You know, a dozen tails of silver is at least a family's income for several years. Thinking back to what Qin Feng said before, the answer is already obvious. The man panicked and hurriedly picked up the money on the ground, trying to escape. When he looked up, he saw the woman in blue, holding a sword in both arms, looking at him indifferently blocking the way. The man was so scared that he collapsed on the ground. Qin Feng said meaningfully, It's really amazing to carry so much money with you. I don't know where my brother found a way to earn so much money. Why don't you introduce it to me? As he approached step by step, the man was sweating profusely, and his inner defenses were about to collapse. But at this moment, Wang Yu was standing on the stairs. Footsteps sounded, and someone sneered. The eldest son of the Qin family is so majestic. Where does other people's money come from? It is his freedom. What does it have to do with you? Do you really think that you are a person? Everyone looked for the voice. And the person who spoke was the young master in a yellow robe, followed by two guards. He should be a martial artist. But his expression was slightly stiff. Yi Luo Ting. Qin Feng saw the other party's appearance clearly. And word by word, the context of the matter became clear in an instant. Behind all this, it was indeed the city lord's mansion that was causing trouble. These people are so idle. In the past, Qin Feng might have pretended to be sociable and say H, Lo to Yi Lu Ting. But now that the matter has come to an end, the two parties' faces have been torn apart. And Qin Feng naturally doesn't bother to care about the other party's face. He didn't point at the other party's nose and call him a bitch. Which is already very good. Uh huh. Mr. Yi, you're fine. Oh no. He almost cursed subconsciously. But Qin Feng hid his face to show his embarrassment. Unfortunately, Yi Luoting still heard that word. And he immediately shouted angrily. You just wanted to call me a bitch? Qin Feng hurriedly defended. You said this yourself? I didn't say it. Everyone is here and can testify for me. The common people looked at each other, not daring to identify anyone. One was the son of the city lord. And the other was a noble person at first glance. Neither of them was easy to mess with. Lan Xuan couldn't hold it back. She burst out laughing, but the situation was wrong. So she quickly calmed down her expression and returned to her previous appearance. But this laugh made Yi Luo Ting furious. Men are very proud of themselves, especially in front of beauties. I am the son of the lord of Jinyang City. You dare to insult me in front of everyone. How brave you are. Come, take him back to the city lord's palace to await his fate. Jinyang City is a small city with incomplete government institutions so the city lord's palace can exercise many rights. This also makes Yi Luoting accustomed to being arrogant and domineering. When the two stiff-looking warriors heard the order, they immediately took action. 
one on the left and the other on the right. Their palms were like sharp claws, poking out from the wind, as if to lock Qin Feng's shoulder blades. Naturally, La Ningxuan would not let these two people succeed. She flashed her body and waved her long sword, intending to make the opponent throw a rat weapon. But instead of hiding, these two warriors tried to grab the sharp blade with their fleshy palms. La Ningxuan frowned, shook her wrist, trembled the sword blade, and let out a sword energy. While shaking the two men away, a sound similar to Jin Ming sounded in her ears. Looking at the two warriors, they were unhurt. How can it be? La Ningxuan looked surprised. She had copper skin and iron bones, and her sword was indestructible. This was a state that could only be achieved by the fourth grade Shenwu, whose golden light was indestructible. But looking at the strength of these two people, they are at best a little stronger than ordinary seventh grade warriors, and are far from reaching that level. Perhaps, they are practicing the martial arts of body training? Yi Luoding's eyes were excited when he saw this. When he came here in the morning, his father appointed these two people beside him. He did not expect that the two people who had been resurrected from the dead would be so powerful now. In the past, it would have been impossible for these two warriors to take over the sword energy forcefully. Full of confidence at the moment, he shouted loudly, What are you still doing? If this person dares to resist, then break his limbs and drag him back to the city lord's palace. Whoever dares to stop it will do so. After the words fell, the two warriors set off again. La Ningxuang raised her sword to protect Qin Feng with a look on her face. But at this moment, two giant black hands emerged from the shadows under everyone's feet, holding the two warriors tightly. The fifth grade of Bai Gui, the puppet's method. Finally it came. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows and looked around. Xi Jing Ziming was walking slowly with a big wine gourd on his back. Chapter 53 Immortal Drunk Naturally, Shur Ziming did not come here by chance. But two days ago, he heard Qin Feng and Song Filin say something to each other in Yushuan. In two days, Wang Yueju will send a batch of excellent wine. Please take the time. Miss Song, talk to Sir Xijing and ask him to come early and taste it. Anyone who knows Shur Ziming knows that Mr. Xijing is addicted to alcohol. Therefore, Qin Feng expected that Shur Ziming would definitely come after hearing this. As for why he did this, firstly, it was to consolidate the friendship between the two. After all, if you want to enhance the friendship between two men, the best way is either to drink together or to taste seafood together. This second point is naturally to deal with unexpected troubles. The city lord's mansion was stuck in time and cut off the supply of drinks to Wang Yu residents. Naturally, it was possible to guess how many drinks were left in Wang Yu residents. And it took so much effort to sort out so many things add fuel to the fire at the last minute. They can definitely do this. And the reality was just as Qin Feng thought. Xi Jing Ziming, what are you doing here? Yi Luoting frowned. The relationship between the city lord's mansion and the demon slayer division was not harmonious. Shur Ziming picked his ears. This Wang Yueju is a restaurant. What else can I do here besides eating and drinking? On the other hand, the young master of the city lord's mansion, if you are doing all this beating and killing at the entrance of a good restaurant, wouldn't it be a joke to people? We don't need your demon slayer division to take care of our affairs in the city lord's mansion. Release my people quickly. Otherwise, Yi Luting was about to say harsh words. But the moment he met Sher Ziming's gaze, his words stopped. On his lips. But he forcefully suppressed it. Si Zheng, Sher Ziming, is the ceiling of Jinong City's combat power. And he, Yi Luting, is famous for bullying the weak and fearing the strong. What else? I want to hear it. Sher Ziming glanced at the dirt between his thumbs, wiped it on Yi Luoting's body, and patted it casually. Being so humiliated, Yi Luoting didn't even dare to fart. He blushed and said harshly, I'm going to find my father. He threw up his sleeves and left. The master of the trouble was gone. So Sher Ziming naturally would not embarrass the two guards. So he immediately stopped the puppet's tactics and freed the two of them. From the beginning to the end, the two warriors had stiff faces, without any change in their expressions. This strange phenomenon couldn't help but make Sher Ziming take a second look. His eyes opened to identify ghosts and souls. And then he frowned. These two people don't have three souls and seven souls. Sher Ziming glanced around. There were so many people and so many eyes. The small city of Jinan couldn't stand the trouble and couldn't take action on the spot. But this matter had to be clarified. Then, he tapped the ground lightly with his right foot. And the shadow under his feet transformed into two small black figures quietly blending into the shadows of the two departing warriors. Originally, 
I wanted to invite Mr. Sijing to come over for a drink. But I didn't expect that someone would turn his back and disturb your enjoyment. Jean Fong looked distressed. Boy, you asked me to come here to drink. Didn't you guess that there would be trouble in advance? Stop pretending to be here. If the wine doesn't taste good, you'll feel better. When the plot was exposed, Jean Fong was not embarrassed. Instead, he smiled and said, Don't worry, Mr. Sijing. The wine will definitely satisfy you. Sher Ziming nodded. Hurry up and deal with the trouble. The profit from your restaurant will be shared by my Demon Slayer division. It's very simple. When Sher Ziming stepped into the restaurant, Jean Fong breathed a sigh of relief, turned around and said to everyone, Some time ago, due to the shortage of drinks, we sold them in limited quantities. Because of their high price, they were not open to the first and second floors. But no matter what the reason is, it would be our dereliction of duty at Wang Yuaji to neglect you all. So I hereby announce, in the next three days, anyone who comes to my Wang Yu residence for dinner at noon will be given a bottle of wine at each table. Effective immediately. As soon as these words came out, the crowd instantly became commotion. But some people still questioned. Although it sounds nice, don't give us wine then. It will have more flavor than water. Many people responded. Qin Feng smiled slightly and did not defend himself. Instead, he took out a glass of distilled wine diluted with water from the Sumer ring. Even though the wine has been diluted with water, the aroma is still intoxicating. Some wine lovers, while indulging in the aroma of wine, asked in a trembling voice, Is this the wine you want to give us? Exactly this wine. Didn't you lie to us? I, Chin Fong, always tell the truth. After receiving the confirmation, all the people looked at each other and immediately started pushing and queuing up. If you spend money to buy this kind of fine wine, you don't know how much it will cost. How can we not make people crazy when pie in the sky things happen? The crisis in Wang Yu residence has been solved here. Qin Feng brought Lan Ning Shuang and shopkeeper Peng to the kitchen. Shopkeeper Peng expressed his admiration from the bottom of his heart all the way. However, young master, will it cost a lot to deliver such good drinks in three days? Peng Qin was a little worried. Qin Feng didn't say anything more, but took out a hundred jars of wine from the Sumer ring and gave instructions. Naturally, it is impossible to sell original wine directly. As a profiteer, you must mix it with water. As for how to mix it, it naturally depends on who the customer is. Qin Feng had already made plans to sell only one bottle of genuine original distilled liquor every month, and it would also be in the form of bidding, so as to take advantage of the rich people. This can be regarded as a contribution to narrowing the gap between the rich and the poor in Jinong City, and Qin Feng feels at ease. After everything was explained, Qin Feng left the kitchen. He believed that with the ability of shopkeeper Peng, he would know what to do next. Arriving on the second floor of Wang Yu residence, Shi Ziming had already ordered the food and sat by the window. Lan Ning Shuang knew that her uncle had something to talk to Xi Jin, so she found another place to sit. Qin Feng walked up to Shi Ziming and took out a jar of original distilled liquor from the Sumer ring without saying a word. The moment the lid of the wine jar was opened, the entire second floor stopped holding chopsticks in their hands and looked at it. The aroma of the wine was almost life-threatening. Sher Ziming's eyes widened. He couldn't wait to pour a bowl. Drank it in one gulp. And then he felt a little ecstasy. He had been to Fontion City. Entered the best restaurant. And drank the strongest wine. But even that wine was still completely incomparable to the altar in front of him. What's the name of this wine? Sher Ziming asked in surprise. I named it Immortal Drunk. The wine is good. And the name is not bad either. Such good wine is not cheap. There is a price but no market. The two looked at each other, both showing cunning smiles. Boss, what kind of wine are you drinking? Give us some? There are not many idle martial arts practitioners in Jinan City. So the guests on the second floor are mostly from the Demon Slayer division. And there are many people who like wine among them. Smelling the aroma of the wine, he naturally came to ask for it shamelessly. But in the end, without exception, they were all shouted back by Sher Ziming. He himself had too little of such fine wine. So how could he possibly share it with others? After drinking this drink, the chatterbox naturally started to open up. As the two chatted, they talked about the acquisition of a restaurant. Chapter 54 Conversation in the Dark Actually, I have always had a question. Where did the city lord's mansion get so much money to buy restaurants like this? Even if they lower the price, it's still a lot of money. Qin Feng looked at her zimming. The latter put down his glass and replied calmly. Of course they can't afford so much money, but the people behind them can. 
Jean Fong suddenly realized. How could the little lord of Jin Yang City know about the excavation of Warong Road and then purchase the restaurant in advance? This must be someone in Fong Tian City who revealed the news to them. In this case, it is reasonable for the person behind the city lord's mansion to finance the acquisition of the restaurant. And based on previous information, the person behind the city lord's mansion is most likely the Tang family of the Ministry of War. However, a new problem will arise here. Even if Warong Road is excavated outside Jinong City, which can bring a qualitative leap to the city, will the Tang family of the Ministry of War spend so much effort for this benefit? You must know that the construction of the Huarong Road in the southern region will definitely pass through more than just Jinyang City. If it were me, I would only focus on those big cities instead of focusing on this small town. Jin Feng fell into deep thought. The city lord's mansion is already putting pressure on the remaining restaurants in the city. You should hurry up on the acquisition. Sher Ziming put down his wine glass and tapped on the table. A crisp sound interrupted Jin Feng's thoughts. He immediately replied, I have been arranging for shopkeeper Pung to deal with this matter. But there is still a suitable opportunity. Sher Ziming nodded. Those who can insist on not selling restaurants under the pressure of the city lord's palace are hard to crack. If you want to buy them, the money spent will definitely not be a small amount. I know you have difficulties. But I received news that Emperor Ming had issued an order, ordering the Ministry of Engineering to step up the excavation of Warong Road, and even invited people from the Imperial Capital Shen Workshop. So the originally expected time of excavation to Jinyang City would be much earlier. Is there such a thing? Jin Feng's eyes widened. The Ministry of Works is okay. After all, they are on the royal rations. And fishing for fish and water is their specialty. Even if they are given twice as many people, they can complete the task according to the original time. But Shengong Feng is different. According to the memory of the original owner, these people are all mentally ill and regard work as life-threatening. When the Qin family was still in Fontian City, they asked people from the Shingon Fan to build a house. As a result, several people from the same team got involved with each other and refused to eat, drink or sleep. The workload that was originally scheduled to be completed in 10 days, they only took half the time. Is this something humans do? Qin Feng looked ugly and immediately ordered the waiter to call Peng Qin. How is the progress of the acquisition of those small restaurants? Qin Feng lowered his head and asked. This. Peng Qin glanced at Sher Ziming and hesitated to speak. Master Xi Jin is one of our own. Just say so. Qin Feng did not shy away. When shopkeeper Peng heard this, he no longer had any worries and told everything about what happened in the past few days. After Qin Feng finished listening, he lowered his head and pondered. The rest of the restaurant owners are really hardcore. They would rather lose money than make money every month rather than sell their own restaurants. This attitude of persistence is comparable to that of my father. However, Qin Feng also got a good piece of information. That is, the city lord's palace had not only cut off the supply of drinks to their Wanyu residents, but also to these small restaurants. He was originally worried that there was no way to break the situation. But he didn't expect that the city lord's mansion would give such a great gift. You know, there must be a fine line in everything. Don't push people to death. Rabbits will bite people when they are anxious. Let alone people. The quarters of Qin Feng's lips raised. Shopkeeper Peng. Tomorrow you will invite the owners of these restaurants to Wang Yu residence. I have something to discuss with them. Invite everyone here. Peng Qing was a little surprised. Yes. Please come all over. I will catch them all. Qin Feng vowed. Peng Qing didn't know why. But he still agreed. The eldest young master has great talents. He is just a servant and just follows the instructions. Sher Ziming looked at Qin Feng with a strange expression. Do you have so much money to buy the restaurant? I don't have one. Qin Feng spread his hands. Then why did you gather them here? Who said you have to spend money to buy other people's restaurants? Mr. Si Zheng. Believe it or not, when they come here tomorrow, they will not only give me the restaurant, but also give me some money. Sher Ziming stared at it for a moment, then pushed a plate of peanuts forward. Boy, eat some peanuts too. Don't just drink. Look how drunk you are. As soon as he finished speaking, Sher Ziming suddenly frowned. The little shadow man he had sent to track the two warriors had lost contact. The other party is a master. Sir Xijing, you look ugly. But what happened? Jean Feng asked curiously. Sher Ziming came back to his senses. It's nothing. I was just thinking about whether I would have the opportunity to drink such a delicious wine for free in the future. If I have to spend money to buy it, I can't afford it. Sir Xijing, eat vegetables. Eat vegetables. This pork belly is delicious when dipped in garlic paste. 
Chin Fong pretended not to hear. This wine. Hey, waiter. I didn't see that the meat here is almost finished. Why don't you hurry up and serve a few more plates? At the same time, the main palace of Jinyang City was in the back hall. Chin Puppet shook his hand, and the little shadow figure that had just been crushed turned into black shadows, fell to the ground, and merged into the shadows again. The fifth grade of Bai Gui is able to use the puppet technique with such proficiency. It seems that our Lord Sijing is not an ordinary person. Chien Puppet sneered. Even so, judging from his tone, it was obvious that he was not an ordinary person. I thought it was okay and just showed some interest. Seeing this scene, Yi Luoting turned pale with fright. Sir, I don't know anything. This must be a good thing that Gai Shi Ziming did. Seeing that Lord Ghostface didn't reply, Yi Luoting hurriedly asked his father, who was not far away, for help. But his father, who usually loved him so much, was indifferent at this moment, silent, and even turned his head and stared at him coldly. Yi Luoting suddenly trembled. Okay, I know this matter has nothing to do with you. Go out first. I will discuss something with your father, Qian Puppet said coldly. Upon hearing this, Yi Luoting left the back hall as if he was being pardoned. At this moment, behind Qin Puppet, on the ground, in a circular formation engraved with strange patterns. A strange Buddha statue with three heads and six arms actually spoke human words. Why don't you make him a corpse puppet? It doesn't suit your character, Qian Puppet replied. Don't you think that a brainless, arrogant and domineering waste is the best chess piece to deceive others? It makes sense. When can you come to Jinong City? Qian Puppet asked. I'm afraid it will take some time. You should know that we are preparing to capture another place. How sure are you? It's hard to say. The divine generals in the southern territory are not easy to mess with. In addition, for me, the commander of the order can escape and scathe. The ghost Buddha statue joked. Dickian's combat power is limited. So how can the generals and commanders stay together? What's more, with your divination methods, if you knew you would encounter Si Ming, how could you possibly take action? Qian Puppet exposed it on the spot. It's boring for you to do this. The ghost Buddha statue said dissatisfied. Qian Puppet ignored it and said in a deep voice, There is one more thing I want to tell you. There is Tinjiaxuan in Jinong City. Guifu suddenly fell into silence and spoke again after a long time. No wonder you are so sure that the thing from back then will be here. I'm afraid I have to make more preparations before going. You just stay here and wait for our news. The hall became quiet again. Qian Puppet glanced at Yi Hung aside. His entire body turned into a squirming mass of flesh and then continued to sink into the latter's body from his mouth. After a long time, Yi Hung twisted his neck and made a clicking sound, muttering to himself, This body is really weak. That's all. Let's make do with it for now. Chapter 55 Joining At noon the next day, the sun was shining brightly, and all the restaurant owners came to the door of Wang Yueju. When they saw the long queue in front of them, they all showed expressions of shock and envy, comparing the conditions of their restaurants. They couldn't help but sigh. Sad. When shopkeeper Peng saw everyone, he immediately stepped forward with a smile and greeted. I have been waiting for you for a long time. Please come with me. A group of people walked towards the private room of Wang Yueju. Someone on the road couldn't bear their curiosity and asked. What method did Brother Qin use to bring Wang Yueju back to life? There is a constant flow of customers. How did he come to us to learn from us in the first place? Run a restaurant. The others heard the words and responded one after another. Brother Qin in their mouth naturally does not refer to Qin Feng, but to Qin Jianan. Due to the unethical operation of the city lord's mansion, the living environment of the small restaurant has gradually deteriorated. They are tired of dealing with it, so they do not know that Wang Yu residence has been changed. Owner. In their impression, Qin Jianan was a well-known money-splitting boy and idiot. How could he have such magical means? Peng Qin smiled and said nothing, and just made a riddle. You all will understand everything when you meet my little master. Little master? Everyone looked at each other with curiosity in their eyes. After opening the door of the box, all the bosses were surprised. There were only two people in the box. But Qin Jianan was not seen. I saw a handsome young man pouring wine there. And a swordsman in blue stood beside him. The wine glasses were placed in a circle on the wine table. If you look carefully, the number just matched the number of people present. The aroma of wine overflowed making everyone's eyes light up. Are you Qin Fong of the Qin family? Someone recognized the young master's identity, and the others suddenly realized it. When the Qin mansion held a wedding last time, 
several people present went to the scene. But after the accident, they did not stay until the end. This junior is Chin Fong. Please take a seat. All the bosses. You looked at me. I looked at you. And finally they all sat down. Where's your father? Didn't you say that you have something important to discuss? One person asked curiously. My father won't come. I am the one who invites you to come here to discuss. And Wang Yu residence is now managed by me. Qin Feng looked around with a smile, observing everyone's expressions. All the bosses were shocked. No wonder shopkeeper Peng said he was the young master before. Could it be that Wang Yueji was also brought to life by this boy in front of him? The atmosphere was silent for a while until one person broke the deadlock. I am really impressed that you have such means at such a young age. But I always like to speak directly. I know you called us here because you want to discuss the acquisition of the restaurant. But I'm sorry. This restaurant is my family's ancestral property. And I won't sell it no matter what. Qin Feng nodded and looked at the others. Do you think so too? Some people agreed. Some were silent. And one person said with a tangled look, In order to acquire the restaurant, the city lord's mansion has aggressively lowered the prices of the dishes and cut off the supply of drinks to me. My restaurant has already been unable to make ends meet. Everyone, I can't hold on any longer. But rather than selling the restaurant to the city lord's mansion, I would rather sell it to the Qin family. When the others heard this, they all sighed with regret, and their situation was not much better. So, Mr. Qin, how much money are you willing to spend to buy my restaurant? Everyone held their breaths and looked at the handsome young man in the right position. If the price really made their hearts move, it would not be impossible to change their minds. Who knows? Qin Feng took a sip of wine and said with a smile, I won't pay a penny. The air was suddenly quiet, as if you could hear a needle drop. Lan Ningxuan glanced at her uncle. Although she already knew that Qin Feng would say this yesterday, she was still surprised when she heard it on the spot. Absolutely ridiculous. One person slapped the case, obviously really angry. One person's face was gloomy, as if he could drip water. Master Qin, if you call us here just to entertain us, then I won't be able to accompany you. After the words fell, the man stood up and wanted to leave. And so did the others. The sound of chairs being pushed away kept coming and going. Everyone is angry. Everyone, don't be impatient. You might as well listen to what my eldest young master has to say. Peng Qin blocked the door with an anxious look on his face. He turned his head and looked inside, hoping that Qin Feng would speak quickly. Who would have thought that the other party was actually there? Pour the wine calmly and calmly. Shopkeeper Peng, get out of the way quickly. I, Zhang, have never been so humiliated. Yes, this guy is arrogant, and there is no need for us to stay any longer. The situation was out of control, and Peng Qin was so anxious that he was sweating profusely. At this moment, Qin Feng finally spoke again. What do you think of my Wang Yuage business? Everyone turned to look, not knowing why. The boss named Zong sneered. So what if business is good? Boy, this is no reason for you to humiliate us. The corners of Qin Feng's lips raised. Wang Yu residents can still have such a customer flow despite the pressure from the city lord's palace. All because of the dish called hot pot and the home-brewed wine. So what? Everyone raised their eyebrows. They were already familiar with the name of hot pot. And it can be said that Wang Yueji was able to come back to life because of the delicious red soup. As for what Qin Feng said about the home-brewed wine, they only found out last night. The refreshing aroma of wine they smelled when they entered the house just now did explain a lot of problems. If I say that I am willing to share the hot pot's red soup base and wine with you, what do you think? What? There was a commotion among the crowd. If this is true, their restaurant will definitely be able to resume its customer flow. And it will be far better than the peak period in the past. What conditions do you have? One person asked excitedly. Sit down and talk. Qin Feng calmed down. After the words fell. Within a few breaths, everyone sat down again, looking like they were all listening. Qin Feng stood up slightly, leaned forward, and said mysteriously, Do you know what joining is? Everyone was confused. And Qin Feng also started his performance and talked about the rules of joining. You mean that the restaurant is still managed by us, but it can be under the name of Wang Yueju, and 50% of the monthly profits should be given to Wang Yueju. As for the red soup base and wine, we can purchase them at Wang Yueju at cost price every morning? Not bad. Qin Feng nodded. The bosses lowered their heads in thought and began to calculate the gains and losses. They were all smart people, so they could naturally figure out the stakes. Under the constant pressure from the city lord's mansion, if they could get the support of Wang Yuju, 
It would be a surefire deal. Everyone's eyes flashed. And some even made an immediate decision. Took out some money from their pockets. And decided to join Wang Yueju. And one person took the lead. And the rest of the excited bosses couldn't help it. So they paid for it one after another. Shopkeeper Peng blinked. And the admiration for Qin Feng in his heart rose to a higher level. Everything was just as the young master said. He won these restaurants without spending a penny. When Lan Ningxuan on the side saw this, her beautiful eyes lingered. Qin Feng had already expected this result and signed the prepared contract with everyone. And everyone had a smile on their face. Everything was settled. Qin Feng raised his wine glass. From now on, everyone can make money together. Master Qin is right. If you have money, let's make money together. Everyone agreed. Then everyone present discussed many details. And an hour later, they reluctantly left. Shopkeeper Pong was both excited and a little worried. Young master, although we have obtained these restaurants in disguise, what if they rebel and defect to the city lord's mansion? The soup base and wine of the hot pot are all in my hands. So what if they defect to the city lord's palace? And I believe that they are all smart people who know how to make the right choices. Qin Feng is full of confidence. Since today, many Wang Yueja branches suddenly appeared in Jinong City. And the hot pot and wine taste exactly the same as the genuine Wang Yueju. On weekdays, some people who don't want to queue up, or who don't want to rush because they are far away from Midtown, can finally enjoy the delicious hot pot closer to home. As for Wang Yueju, the sun was rising in the city of Jinong, and gold was rising every day. However, these have little to do with Qin Feng. Wang Yueju's business is on the right track. And he also wants to be a hands-off shopkeeper and concentrate on other things. Anyway, for him, he just needs to get money from shopkeeper Peng regularly. Chapter 56 Incidents in the Black Mist Forest In peace and quiet, half the moon passed by in a hurry. Since Qin Feng took control of Wang Yueju, the Qin family's wealth code, the days when the Qin family was in straits were gone forever. Erin Yang added a lot of new luxurious jewelry and even ordered her servants to buy expensive cloud yarn to sew new clothes for the family before the end of the year. The second brother no longer has to worry about medicinal baths and blood energy pills. The blood energy in his body becomes stronger and his cultivation improves by leaps and bounds. As for Qin Feng, no matter where he goes in Qin Mansion, he can feel the adoring eyes of his servants and maids. And during this period of time, he read through the medical books in Ting Yu Xuanzhong to the letter, and successfully accumulated the literary spirit of two levels in the Divine Sea. Next, he had to start preparing to open a medical clinic. After all, before he could personally heal Lu Jinli's damaged meridians, he had to ensure that he could do it with practice. Qin Feng walked towards the lake pavilion in the mansion, but did not see Lu Jinli and Lan Ningxuang. The two of them have been disappearing in the mansion for no apparent reason recently. Qin Feng had asked Titan Tu about this before. He heard from the latter that Lu Jianli wanted to guide Lan Ningxuang's sword practice. So he went outside Jinyang City, nearby mountains and forests. In desperation, Qin Feng went to the courtyard. Before he could get closer, he heard the sound of clashing golden sounds. The second brother and Haitin too were sparring with each other, and Qin Feng was too embarrassed to interrupt them. That's all. I just went to Wang Yu residence. Nothing will happen. Qin Feng shook his head and walked towards the gate of Qin Mansion. As a result, halfway through, he met Qin Jianan, who was pacing back and forth. Dad, what are you doing here? Qin Feng was curious. Qin Jianan was startled at first, then looked confused. Finally, his eyes were fixed, as if he had made up his mind, and he said, Feng, after much thought, I decided to hand over the Qin family's treasury to you. Hey, the face-hungry father has finally put down his arrogance as the head of the family and is willing to let go? But, Qin Feng shook his head. No need. Dad, you can just keep the money bank. Those who have money can only call it a treasury. And those who have no money can only call it a warehouse. The Qin family's previous savings have been squandered by the unreliable father Qin. And there is no use for him to come. Anyway, as long as he is in charge of Wang Yuage's business, his pockets will only get bigger and bigger. Qin Feng's answer was obviously unexpected by Qin Jianan who was stunned on the spot. Dad, if nothing happens, I'll leave first. I still need to check Wang Yuage's recent accounts. Seeing that his father was silent, Qin Feng was about to leave, but was stopped again. Wait a minute. Qin Jianan suddenly flattered him. Feng, Wang Yuage's business has been good in recent days, and the profits should be very high. Right. 
Jean Fong twitched the corner of his mouth and instantly guessed what the other person was thinking. This look was exactly the same as when he asked his mother for money in the previous life. Dad, how much do you want? Jean Fong went straight to the point. Now he is not short of money. Jean Jianan's face was happy, but he quickly calmed down. He lowered his head and pondered for a while. After his expression changed several times, he stretched out a finger. Without saying a word, Jean Fong took out a money bag from the sumer ring. Here are ten tails of silver. Dad can use it first. Don't be polite to me. After saying this, he turned and left, leaving only a handsome silhouette behind. Jin Jianan opened his mouth while holding the money bag. After a long time, he cursed. You brat! What can you do with ten tails of silver? His original plan was to ask for one hundred tails. When we arrived at Wang Yueju, business was still booming. In the private room, shopkeeper Peng held up the account book, and his joy was beyond words. Since the young master took charge of Wang Yueju, the changes in this restaurant have been earth-shaking. However, in just one month, Wang Yueju's own profit plus the share of other franchise restaurants have earned nearly 10,000 tails of silver. In the past, shopkeeper Peng would never have dreamed of earning so much money. Jean Fong closed the account book and asked, Not bad. What problems have you encountered in business recently? Shopkeeper Peng thought for a moment and replied, There are no big flaws in the management. Those restaurants that have joined us have tasted the benefits and are all respectful when they see me. There is also the auction of immortal drunkenness that the eldest young master mentioned before. I am also preparing for it. Many powerful and wealthy businessmen are looking forward to it. Oh, by the way, there is one thing I want to report. What's up? Something happened in the Black Mist Forest recently. And I don't know why the monsters in the forest went crazy. They were so furious that their roars shook the heavens and the earth. In the past, there were brave warriors who dared to go to the outskirts of the Black Mist Forest to hunt monsters and sell them in the city. But recently, no one dared to do this anymore. Therefore, the monster meat in our restaurant will basically be out of stock. Peng Qing told the whole story. When Qin Feng heard this, he twitched the corner of his mouth and thought of the giant winding snake and the small white beast in the Black Mist Forest. Where is the roar of the sky-shattering beast? It is clearly the sound of a hungry little guy. But why is this little guy so crazy? He is hungry every day. Is he going on a hunger strike? I understand. You go and do your work first. Qin Feng shook his head and was too lazy to think about it. Anyway, this matter had nothing to do with him. Hearing this, Peng Qin said goodbye and left. Qin Feng used the summer ring to put away the money box containing silver in the room and walked out of the box. It was lunchtime at this moment, and the lobby on the first floor was crowded with people eating in full swing. This person... Once he has wine and meat, he will inevitably chat and gossip. And Jinong City rarely stirs up any disturbances. So everyone's conversation naturally falls on the Black Mist Forest, which has recently experienced changes. Have you heard about the Black Mist Forest? Of course I've heard that the Demon King in the Mountain Forest seems to have gone crazy, roaring wildly, shaking the mountains and shaking the ground, making people panic. I know a few warriors who originally made a living by hunting monsters. But now let alone hunting monsters. They don't even dare to get closer. I also know about the Demon King. In the past, he would roar every few days. Now that he has roared so frequently recently, he probably wants to leave the mountain. His this is not something we want to talk about. If such a Demon King really comes out, Jinong City will suffer. By the way, this morning, I heard a woodcutter say that when he went to cut firewood in the mountains near Jinong City, he looked into the Black Mist Forest from a distance and discovered that the Snake Head Cliff was missing. Do you think this has anything to do with the Demon King? Snake Head Cliff? Is that the Raised Cliff? It must have collapsed due to the Demon King's roar. The few of them didn't chat for too long on the Snake Head Cliff. They probably felt that compared to the Demon King, such trivial matters were negligible. But Qin Feng was shocked when he heard this, because he understood that the Snake Headed Cliff was clearly the daytime incarnation of the Winding Mountain Snake. What's going on? Could it be that Senior Orochi came out of the mountain? Qin Feng was frightened, not knowing whether this was a good thing or a bad thing. At this moment, a very seductive, uh, sound came from the window near the entrance of the restaurant. Chapter 57 Beauty in Black Robe Qin Feng was curious and looked for a voice. He saw a woman in black robe sitting by the window. She had a very good figure, with peaks and ridges like clusters and waves like anger. The loose black robe actually seemed a bit tight on her body. She was wrapped in black robe. 
The buttocks are printed with an exaggerated shape on the chair, making people's blood flow. The woman's hair is tied up. Her face is as fair as winter snow. And her lips are plump. She is a complete beauty. Especially the beauty mark on the right corner of her mouth. Which adds to the enchanting charm and makes people uneasy. Every time she eats, she will taste it with her tongue first. And the length of her red tongue is really amazing. Ching Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Look down. And imagine the scene. Who could withstand such an exaggerated tongue? The beauty is extremely charming and naturally attracts the attention of countless men around her. And every time the guests who finished their meal pass by her and left, they would leave with their bodies hunched over. Like a prawn. Maybe because they were too full. You can't look at such a beauty for too long. If you look at it too much, you won't be able to sleep at night. Ching Feng thought about it and was about to look away. At that moment, the beauty in black robe actually looked over. Those beautiful eyes were shining with a faint green light. And then, they stared at him motionlessly, as if they were staring at prey. What's the situation? Could it be that I looked at it for too long and she discovered it? By the way, her eyes are a bit scary. Strange. Why do I feel flustered when she stares at me? Can't afford to offend. Can't afford to offend. Jean Phone quickly lowered his head and strode outside the restaurant. And when the two passed by each other, the corners of the black robe beauty's mouth slightly raised. This moment of youthful beauty seemed to be able to charm all living beings. Qin Feng stepped out of Wang Yu residence, still feeling flustered. Is that woman still staring at him? He didn't dare to look back to confirm. So he could only leave quickly as if running away. The beauty in black robe glanced at the unfinished food on the table, feeling a little reluctant to part with it. But she still stood up and planned to follow. But the waiter reached out to stop her. Sir, you haven't paid me yet. The woman in black robe stared at the waiter with a flash of green light in her eyes. The people on the first floor felt as if they were in a daze. When they came to their senses, they should be eating and drinking. But the beauty by the window had long disappeared. The waiter looked at the table of unfinished food, scratched his head and said, This is the first time since the hot pot started selling that there are so many people left. Huh? Strange. Why can't I remember what this guest officer looks like? When Jean Phone came to the street, he thought that the feeling of panic would disappear but unexpectedly it got worse. He couldn't help but look back. On the other side of the crowd, there was the figure of the beauty in black robe. She had obviously seen him too, winking playfully. Are you following me? What a perversion. The look in her eyes made it look like she wanted to cut my waist. Ching Feng didn't care so much at the moment and started running wildly towards the direction of the Demon Slayer Division. When Wang Yueju goes to the Demon Slayer Division, he needs to pass through an alley because it is off the main street. There are relatively few people walking there in the past. The alleyway was not that long. Nearly ten feet. With Qin Feng's footsteps. It was only a matter of seconds before he ran across it. But an accident still happened. A man with a stiff expression suddenly appeared and blocked the end of the alleyway. Qin Feng hurriedly stopped and frowned. He recognized this man. He was one of the two seventh level warriors who followed Yi Luoting and Wang Yueju. Why is he here? What is he going to do? Ching Feng wanted to see some clues from the other person's face. But the stiff expression was like a dead face. Which shocked him and subconsciously backed away. The visitor is not good. No. He had to go back. Ching Feng turned around. And then his eyes widened. He thought he had left the black robed woman a certain distance away. But he didn't expect that the woman in black robe was following him so closely that she had already blocked the entrance to the alleyway. The black robe beauty crossed her arms across her chest squeezing them into an astonishing arc. She did not take a step forward, but watched quietly, her eyes teasing, like a beast teasing its prey. The martial artist on the other side had no intention of waiting. He slowly pulled out the long knife from his waist and approached step by step. Ching Feng kept retreating until he was in the middle of the two people. At this moment, with the man on the left and the woman on the right, it was difficult to decide which side to break through from. Ching Feng's brows even knitted together. At exactly this moment, the martial artist at the noodle stall picked up his long knife and quickened his pace, taking three steps and two steps at a time. His posture was obviously to cut the person in half. Just die. Ching Feng had no choice and hurriedly ran to the side of the black-robed woman. At least so far, the other party had not shown any killing intent towards him. Ching Feng practiced when Shang Taoism, so his speed was naturally not as fast as Shen Wu Wufu. Within a short distance of a few feet, it would be extremely easy for a 7th level martial artist to catch up with his prey. The long knife had reached the top of his head, glowing with a cold light. 
Qin Feng's scalp was numb. He immediately circulated the Wen Qi in his body, stacked his palms, and unfolded the Haokian mirror. The knife fell with a crisp sound, and cracks spread rapidly on the surface of the Haokian mirror like a spider whip. Qin Feng was also struck by this powerful and heavy knife. His knees were half bent, and his body was shortened. A seventh grade breath condensing warrior is at least ten times more powerful than an ordinary person. He can withstand one sword strike at his limit. Another strike will surely kill him. Seeing the opponent raising the knife again, Qin Feng hurriedly shouted to the black robe beauty not far away. Save me! The beauty raised her lips when she heard the words. But this time, she did not stand by and watch. Her slender hand stretched out from under the black robe. And then a little away. The green light was like a sharp arrow. And it shot into the warrior's chest in the blink of an eye. Wu Fu's body flew out and fell heavily. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this scene. But the black shadow approaching behind him made his heart rise to his throat again. I don't seem to know you. Why do you keep following me? Qin Feng half turned around and asked with a dry smile. The beauty's plump lips were slightly opened. And when she was about to speak, she suddenly pushed Qin Feng away. A long knife pierced the air and struck fiercely. It was about to fall on the woman. But in an instant, it was firmly clamped by the woman's fingers. What kind of horrific method is this? Qin Feng's eyes widened. Looking to the other side, Wu Fu, whose chest was dented by the heavy blow, stood up again as if nothing had happened. At this moment, he shrugged his body and let out a low roar like a beast. How does this look like a human being? The black-robed woman frowned and then spoke. If you continue to stand by and watch, I will take action at your own risk. The voice was charming, full of charm, and sounded very familiar. Qin Feng was stunned for a moment. And then he remembered that he had heard this voice before in the Black Mist Forest. It's Oroki Senpai. How could she be so enchanting in her human form? But who is she talking about? Is there anyone else around here? Regarding this point, Qin Feng quickly had the answer. From the shadows, a huge black hand emerged and gripped Wu Fu fiercely. Just the sound of crunching was heard. And within a moment, the warrior was crushed. At the end of the alley, Shur Ziming's figure came into view. Chapter 58 and M.O. Lord Sijin! Qin Feng called excitedly, as if he saw his savior. Shur Ziming nodded, then looked at the martial artist who had turned into carrion on the ground. Frowning, Qin Feng didn't know whether the reason why Senior Orochi came to the city to look for him was good or bad. So he took advantage of him and trotted to Shur Ziming's side to seek shelter. When the woman in black robes saw this, she raised her eyebrows, but didn't say much. She did not move. Probably because she was afraid of Qin Feng next to me. He breathed a sigh of relief and asked, Master Sijing, why are you here? And isn't this person a 7th grade martial artist from the city lord's mansion? Why is it like this? Shur Ziming did not hide anything and told the whole story. It turned out that after the little shadow man used for tracking was discovered, Shur Ziming did not relax his vigilance. Instead, he kept watching the movements of the city lord's mansion. There was obviously a problem with the two warriors. Since then, one of them has always stayed by Yiluating's side in the city lord's palace, while the other has always been wandering around Jinyang city. Shur Ziming sent his men to watch every move of the city lord's mansion, while he secretly followed the martial artist just now. Qin Feng nodded when he heard the words. There is indeed a problem in the city lord's mansion. This person looks very human. Wait, Lord Sijing, you have been following this person. That means you were also present when he slashed me with a knife just now. Well, I just didn't expect that he would suddenly attack you. Shur Ziming said calmly. I'm going to kill you. If you don't save me while you're here, what if my Haokian mirror doesn't hold up the first time? Qin Feng glanced sideways at the other party. Like a resentful woman. Perhaps the woman in black robe was impatient with waiting. And said loudly, Are you done talking? If so, I will take this boy away. Take me away? Heh. You're afraid you don't know the person next to me. Right? Qin Feng coughed dryly. Let me introduce you solemnly. This is Lord Sijin of the Demon Slaying Department of Jinong City. He has unparalleled fighting power. Hates evil as much as he hates evil. And cannot tolerate any monsters in his eyes. He pronounced the word demon with a particularly strong accent. Which was also a disguised reminder to the other party that after all, Senior Orochi was not a vicious person. There was no need to kill them all. Just scare him away. But who knows? I know. The woman's lips raised with a SOSO expression. Qin Feng was shocked. Did you know you didn't even run away? Your body is a big snake. A monster. When you meet Sijing from the Demon Slayer Division. Running is your only way out. 
At this time, Sher Ziming sighed. Boy, how could you provoke her? Jean Fong was stunned. What do you mean? You two know each other? Before he could ask, Sher Ziming said again. You said at the beginning that you would not take action against Jean Ong City. The woman in black robe shrugged, and a wave of waves rose in her chest. Did I take action? I just took this kid back to deal with some things. After the matter is completed, I will naturally send him back. What's more, if I really want to take action against Jean Ong City, can you stop me? There was a flash of green light in the beautiful eyes, and the space in the small alleyway was trembling. Jean Feng's chest seemed to be pressed by a huge stone, making him unable to breathe. Just a look can achieve this effect. How strong is Senior Orochi? Wait, Master Si Zheng won't abandon me. Right. Qin Feng turned his head and looked at Sher Ziming, who nodded slightly and gave him a reassuring look. Seeing this, Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, there was still some friendship between the two. I will leave this boy to you. Remember, you must send him back safely. In just a few breaths, Qin Feng realized the coldness of the world and the warmth of people's hearts. He stared blankly at the woman in black robe who gradually walked in and moved his eyes downward, thinking that in this world, only such tolerance and magnanimity could bring some warmth to his cold heart. On the way to the black mist forest, there was silence all the way. This imprinted atmosphere made Qin Feng's already uneasy heart gradually go crazy. So, he mustered up the courage and took the initiative to break the silence. Senior Orochi, I wonder how this junior should call you. The woman in black robe took a glance and saw the other person's restraint. She raised her brows and said teasingly, Senior, I'm only more than 300 years older than you. As for the title, if the young master calls me an MO in private, then you can call me an MO. You are more than 300 years older than me. And you want me to call you aunt? Do you want to show some face? Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. And after thinking for a moment, he shamelessly called out, Sister MO. When Aunt MO heard this, she laughed so hard that her branches trembled. Sure enough, no matter what age or background, it is an eternal truth to underestimate a woman's age. Sister Emo, my brother has something to ask me. Jean Fong said flatteringly. Brother, tell me. Sister, listen. The smile on Aunt Mo's face became even wider. I wonder what my sister is going to do when she takes me back to the Black Mist Forest. It's not a big deal. But I still remember the beef you roasted for me a month ago. My little master. It's the little white beast. Jean Fong nodded. There were so many changes that happened to Black Mist Forest and his party. So naturally he still remembered them fresh. Aunt Emmo stroked her face and said helplessly, Ever since the little master ate the barbecue you made, he has never been able to eat anything else. Even if I used real fire to roast the meat into an attractive black color, it would only smell it. After a while, I had no desire to speak. Attractive black, you must be burnt. Chin Fong listened with a dry smile. My little master is just growing up. How can he not eat or drink like this? There is really no other way. So I thought of taking you back and making the same barbecue as last time to give him something to eat. It turns out that this is the case. Chin Fong secretly breathed a sigh of relief. This little thing is naturally a piece of cake, since Aunt Emmo would occasionally use surprising tricks to shrink the ground into an inch during the journey. The journey that originally took nearly two hours was completed in just two sticks of incense. Approaching the Black Mist Forest, you can hear the earth-shattering roar of beasts from a distance. In the past, at this time, the birds and beasts in the forest would be frightened and flee in all directions. But perhaps it's because these beasts have roared too frequently in recent days, and they seem to be accustomed to it. Chin Fong even saw a group of birds on the tree trunks outside the Black Mist Forest. They just glanced at the forest and began to preen their feathers again. When Aunt Emmo heard the roar, she sighed, grabbed Chin Feng's shoulders, and used shrink to the ground again. The surrounding scenery was in a trance for a while. When they came back to their senses, the two of them had entered the black mist forest. And the thundering sound also sounded. The sound of hungry stomach so often? Qin Feng's face twitched. Sister Emo, has that little guy not eaten for nearly a month since last time? Oh, that's right. The little master's mother is not around. And his temper is getting more willful, and his mouth is getting more and more naughty. I can't control it. And Emo stroked her forehead and frowned. At this moment, with the rustling of trees and grass ahead, the cute little white beast appeared in front of Chin Fong again. Chapter 59 Aura Little Master Aunt Emmo stepped forward and opened her hands, as if she wanted to hug this little thing. However, the little white beast didn't appreciate it. 
and its small sapphire-like eyes rolled around, revealing a human-like look of resentment. Qin Feng knew this look. During the Chinese New Year in his previous life, he used a little magic trick to trick the little sister next door into giving her a lollipop. The girl cried a lot, and then she would look at him like this every time they met. The little white bee snorted and turned his head away, like an awkward little boy who couldn't be coaxed. Aunt Emma was helpless. Little master, look who I brought here. She stepped aside, and the little bee saw Qin Feng behind him, and his expression suddenly became excited. She trotted up to Qin Feng, rubbed her trouser legs, and meowed, as if she was saying, I'm hungry. I need to be fed. Qin Feng looked embarrassed and wanted to pull away his legs, but he was afraid of hurting the little beast's young heart, until third NMO picked up the little beast, threw it aside, and said angrily, My little master, you will become the demon king in the future. How can you ignore your identity like this? Before the little white beast had time to protest, its stomach rang again, shaking the earth and the earth. Third Aunt Emma was defeated and said to Qin Feng, You stay here with me for a while. I'll catch some monsters. As soon as the words fell, Aunt Mo's figure disappeared instantly. Leaving now, Qin Feng was stunned for a moment and looked at the little beast, who was also looking at him. His blue eyes were bright and seemed to be shining with light. If you go out, carrying such a cute little thing with you is a great tool for picking up girls. But what does Aunt Emma mean by the Demon King? Just this little thing? Qin Feng expressed doubts. The so-called Demon King is a being who dominates a party. His strength must be at least above the sixth level of calamity. And he needs to have a strong bloodline talent. After all, demons and monsters will give birth to their own natal magical powers every two turns of calamity. The stronger their bloodline talent is, the stronger the natal magical powers they will give birth to. What's more, those top beings in the world can derive a natal magical power with every turn of calamity, which is just like cheating. Therefore, it was difficult for Qin Feng to associate the little guy in front of him with the legendary existences in the book, looking at its appearance. How is it different from the cat I raised in my previous life? Wait, speaking of cats, he is an expert at petting cats. Qin Feng looked at the little white beast and swallowed a mouthful of saliva. The spirit of petting cats in his heart seemed to be unbearable. He waved and said with a friendly smile, Come here! Ah! After a while, the little white beast showed an expression of enjoyment under Qin Feng's 18 cat-stroking postures. Oh! Sure enough, no cat in the world can take on such an offensive from me. Qin Feng looked complacent. But I didn't expect that this little thing like you is actually a female. Qin Feng accidentally discovered this when he was just turning the little thing over. He thought that because the little thing was so greedy, it must be a male. However, to him, male and female were insignificant. As long as you can masturbate. Boom. At this moment, the corpses of several monster beasts fell from the sky, making a loud bang on the ground and flying dust. Aunt Emma appeared again. She clapped her hands. And then she saw the little beast in Qin Feng's arms. And immediately frowned. What are you doing to me? Little master? I didn't do anything. Qin Feng's expression froze and he subconsciously let go of the little beast. The latter landed on the ground with a somewhat reluctant expression. Aunt Emma glanced at it suspiciously and said without saying anything more, Let's start baking. Okay. Qin Feng agreed readily, but after seeing the number of monsters in front of him, he twitched his face and asked, All roasted? If not, has it finished eating? Qin Feng expressed doubt. I'll bake you if I ask you to. Do you still want to go back? Time passed by in a hurry and it was getting dark before he knew it. Qin Feng sprinkled the last sizzling monster with minced chili pepper and wiped the sweat from his forehead. After several hours of unremitting efforts, he finally roasted all the monsters. The little beast couldn't wait and immediately pounced on the barbecue and started biting it. On the other side, there was also a sound of, hmm. Qin Feng looked up and twitched the corner of his mouth. No wonder he had to bake so many by himself. It turns out you want to eat too. One snake and one beast devoured the meat, and several roasted beasts were quickly wiped out. The little beast lay on the ground and burped. Aunt Emma leaned lazily against a tree and stretched, with a satisfied look on her face. The sight of those exquisite curves made Qin Feng feel unbearable. Don't watch too much. If you watch too much, you won't be able to sleep at night. Qin Feng reluctantly looked away and asked aloud, Sister Emma, with your strength, why do you want to stay in this black mist forest? In order to obtain more cultivation resources, powerful monsters often circle their own areas to deter other monsters and ghosts and prohibit them from approaching. 
although Qin Feng doesn't know how strong third and Imo is. She can make sure Ziming so fearful. She is not that weak. She is fully capable of competing for areas with richer resources instead of living in this small in the dark foggy forest. Third and Imo had no intention of hiding anything and said directly, When the young master's mother, my eldest sister, told me to practice here, I was completely puzzled. However, over the years, I have actually absorbed some of the spiritual energy from heaven, earth, sun and moon, and my practice speed has really improved a lot. Even the little master is of great benefit. Perhaps the eldest sister could see that this is our blessed place. Qin Feng pondered. There are many ways to practice cultivation for all things in the world. Xin Wu emphasizes the transformation of blood energy into strength. Literary saint emphasizes the empowerment of literary energy. And hundred ghosts emphasizes eating the yin of all things. In addition to blood energy, literary energy, and yin energy, an extremely rare spiritual energy is also derived from the heaven, earth, sun and moon. Speaking of this spiritual energy, it is really a good thing. People of different sects can absorb this thing to improve their cultivation and achieve the effect of rapid progress. There is even a record in the book that in ancient times, all things in the world relied on spiritual energy as the basis for cultivation. However, as time passed, spiritual energy became increasingly scarce in the world. So many methods of cultivation that did not rely on spiritual energy were derived. According to what NMO said, spiritual energy can actually be produced in the black mist forest. Isn't this a treasure? Qin Feng used the eye expansion technique and looked around. Apart from the abundant green yin chi, he didn't see anything special. Naturally, there was no trace of the rumored spiritual energy. He shook his head, thinking that maybe San Yemo had absorbed some of it by chance. Looking at the sky, it was already getting late. Qin Feng stood up and said, Sister Emo, please take me back. Aunt Mo yawned. Thank you for your hard work this time. I won't take advantage of you. So I will give you this thing. A small object was thrown towards him. Qin Feng stretched out his hand to catch it. When he opened his palm, he saw that it was a black scale. It was smooth and cold, glowing with dark light. Sister Emo, what is this? This thing is the snake scale I shed. If you encounter danger in the future, it may be able to save your life. When Qin Feng heard this, his face lit up with joy. The more life-saving things he had, the better. As for the effect, the things Sister Emo gave him couldn't be any worse. Thank you, Sister Emo. Yes. Third and Emo nodded. Then grabbed Qin Feng's shoulders and sent him back to Jin Yang City just as he came. In this one-day trip, not only did I meet a powerful sister, but I also got her personal belongings. It was really a fruitful experience. Outside Jin Yang City, Qin Feng thought happily. Chapter 60 An Unquiet Night It's late at night. The moon and stars are sparse. And Jin Yang City is destined to be restless tonight. The gate of the city lord's mansion collapsed. And Sher Ziming stepped into the mansion with a gloomy and terrifying expression. Not long ago, all the five men he sent to monitor the city lord's palace had their soul drawing lamps go out. He rushed here anxiously and found the location where the five men had been ambushed. He saw bloodstained clothes and corpses all over the ground. None left. The deaths of these five people were inseparable from his orders. In a rage, Sher Ziming summoned everyone from the Demon Slayer Division, destroyed the gate of the city lord's mansion, and rushed into the mansion, intending to find the culprit of all this and kill him, cut into pieces by a thousand cuts because there was too much noise. Everyone in the mansion ran out, including the city lord Yi Hung and his son Yi Luoting. Yi Luoting saw that his door was destroyed and shouted, What are you going to do? This is the city lord's palace. It's not your demon slayer's turn to run wild here. Shur Ziming waved his right hand, and the hysterical Yi Luoting was immediately restrained and could not utter a word anymore. There is an evil spirit in the city lord's mansion. With the order of the demon slayer Sijin, I will conduct a thorough investigation of the whole mansion and gather everyone here. If anyone dares to disobey, Sher Ziming put down the big wine gourd he was carrying and heard a bang. The ground shattered and cracks spread everywhere. The threat is self-evident. Yi Hung watched all of this coldly, with no intention of stopping him. Instead, he sneered. Master Sijing is so majestic. Do you know what the consequences will be if the Demon Slayer Division breaks into the City Lord's mansion without permission? Sher Ziming smiled but said, what the Lord City Lord said. What does it mean to trespass? An evil spirit killed five of my brothers and then fled to your house. I am completely considering your safety. Hey, you guys, hurry up and protect the City Lord. 
Don't let the evil spirit take advantage of it. After hearing this, several people immediately surrounded Yi Hung with their horns. This appearance was more like preventing him from escaping than protecting him. The rest of the colleagues from the demon slaying department entered the city lord's palace one after another and started searching. The atmosphere was so oppressive that it made people breathless. About half an hour later, everyone returned to the gate. Shur Ziming looked at the leader, Song Filin, and saw that the other party shook his head. Nothing gained. Shur Ziming frowned and immediately used his ghost eyes to identify ghosts and recognize souls. He glanced at the people gathered in the city lord's mansion. Everyone's three souls and seven souls were complete. And there was nothing abnormal. Yi Hung sneered. It seems that our lord Xijing made a mistake and failed to find the evil spirit. Hearing this, Shur Ziming approached step by step and asked condescendingly, Where is the seventh level warrior who has been protecting your son? Yi Hung didn't take it seriously. He is a human being, not a tight dog. Can I still keep looking at him? Wu Fu is very angry. He may have gone to a brothel somewhere. Master Xijing is also a frequent visitor to the brothel. Why not go and find it? The two looked at each other. Also in an invisible confrontation. Seeing that there would be no results tonight, Shur Ziming turned around, picked up the big wine gourd, and strode away. Let's go! No! Yi Hung looked as usual. But when everyone in the Demon Slayer division left, his eyes turned completely black in an instant, and quickly returned to normal. On the other side, Xinjiang Street, Lao Li's house. The dilapidated wooden door creaked open, and an uninvited guest came. With the help of the dim moonlight, he could see clearly that the visitor was the seventh grade martial artist who had disappeared from the city lord's mansion. Mr. Lee heard the noise and walked out of the back room. It's too late today. We won't sell wine. Wu Fu did not open his mouth, but there was a sound inside his body. Who would have thought that Li Yang, the leader of the Zhilin army 18 years ago, would now look like this. Old Li narrowed his eyes slightly and looked at Wu Fu. The method of puppet corpse. He he. Something that is not human. Ghost or ghost. Why come to me? A cripple? Back then, you led an army of 100,000 people to fight against the Garuda clan at Jinling Pass. And returned with a tragic victory. The soldiers who survived were corroded by the cursed fire. And life was worse than death. However, Fontian City turned a blind eye and did not send anyone to rescue you. As a result, all the returning soldiers except you were burned to death. Don't you hate it? Wu Fu's eyes glowed with a faint green light. Like a will-o'-the-wisp. And his words were also provoking. Lao Li's chest rose and fell slightly. As if he was remembering that time. Under his calm expression, there was hidden anger. So? So. We come to you. Hoping that you can join us. Destroy Dakian. And reshape the world. The night wind blew. And the silence was eerie. Lao Li didn't respond and he laughed out loud after a long time. Why are you laughing? The existence inside Wu Fu asked. I'm a little moved by what you said. Lao Li grinned. In that case, before he finished speaking, the shadows of the surrounding houses turned into huge black pillars, like a coffin, burying Wu Fu instantly. Lao Li turned around and returned to the inner room again, laughing at himself. If I agree to you and go to H, L in the future, what will my dead brothers think of me? On their way back that year, those surviving generals died in Jinong City. For him, it is not so much Jinong City as Jinong City. This is his Liang City, and this is also his Liang's coffin. In the city lord's palace, Yi Hung opened his eyes in the dark room. We found Liang. But it's a pity that we couldn't bring him into our camp. Otherwise the plan in the future would be much easier to implement. The three-headed and six-armed ghost Buddha statues let out an enchanting laugh. These soldiers are all stubborn. It's harder to make them go against their true intentions than to make that big eater stop eating. How are you preparing? When will you start? Soon. The two were still talking when hurried footsteps were heard outside the house. Yi Luoting entered the house, carefully looked around, and then asked, Dad, where is that Lord Go's face? He was summoned by the Tang family of the Fontian City Military Department and has left. Yi Luoting breathed a sigh of relief. So the two remaining warriors, who came back from the dead, were also taken away by him. Yes. What do you want from me when you come here? Yi Hung turned his head and looked indifferently. Yi Luoting was shocked. He always felt that his father had become a stranger after the ghost face came. I want to ask. How to deal with Qin Feng of the Qin family next? After all, we have no useful people at hand. But that kid always has a guard by his side. We don't have to deal with this matter anymore. Hearing this, 
Yi Luoting was full of confusion. We don't need to deal with it. But dad, didn't you want to use his body to please the Tang family of the Ministry of War in exchange for our chance to enter Feng Tian City? I don't want to repeat the same thing again. Yi Hung stared at Yi Luoting, who trembled when he saw this, immediately stopped asking, and left in a hurry. The ghost Buddha statue spoke again. Qin Feng of the Qin family? Who is that? It's just the son of a third-class Feng with general, who offended the Tang family of the Ministry of War. In order not to arouse Yi Hang's suspicion, I just followed the memory of those people in the Ministry of War. They are insignificant people. I see. I'm going to be busy next time and won't be able to contact you anymore. You should keep a low profile. I'm waiting for your good news. Chapter 61 There is no male or female in the eyes of doctors. In the early morning of the next day, Qin Feng opened the door and left the house very early. He tossed and turned on the bed last night and couldn't sleep. He could only read the medical books he had read over and over in his mind. Before he knew it, it was dawn. No wonder the ancients often said, Don't look at anything inappropriate. The ancients will never deceive me. Qin Feng sighed. After all, this young man's body was still too angry. Today, he does not plan to go to Tinjiuxuan, but to find a store to open a medical clinic. In this way, by treating patients and applying what they have learned from medical books, they can quickly accumulate literary talent. This will naturally allow him to improve his medical skills and try to help Lu Jinli sort out his damaged meridians as soon as possible. After going around and around to the Qingfu Lake Pavilion, two beautiful figures have returned. The breeze blew by, lifting up the green hair of the beauty in white, and unknowingly plucked Qin Feng's heartstrings. Looking at that beautiful fairy-like profile, Qin Feng felt deeply in his heart. If she hadn't failed in trying to survive, I'm afraid he and her would have been just passers-by for the rest of their lives. Huh? At this time, Qin Feng suddenly discovered a detail. In the past, Miss Lan was either responsible for carrying the exquisite sword box, or placed it next to the pillars of the lake pavilion. But today, the sword box was quietly leaning on the wheelchair next to Lu Jinli's hand. This is a good sign. At least it showed that Lu Jinli's heart knot was loosened. Qin Feng smiled slightly, and then called Lan Ningxuang. Are you still going out to practice today? Qin Feng asked. Lan Ningxuang shook her head. Haste makes waste. I plan to consolidate what the young lady has taught me these days. I have to thank my uncle for it. If it weren't for you, I don't know how long the young lady would have been sinking. She is my wife, and it is my duty to care about her. Qin Feng didn't take it seriously. Then if you have nothing to do today, just go out with me. There were too many things that happened yesterday, and Qin Feng had already made plans. No matter what he went out to do in the future, he would always take a guard with him and never take his own life at risk. And until now, he has not been able to understand why the seventh level martial artist in the city lord's mansion wanted to kill him. Is it because of the Tang family of the Imperial Military Department? Qin Feng always felt that after traveling to this world, many people wanted to kill him, which made him feel a little aggrieved for no reason. Lan Ningxuang nodded. Uncle, wait a moment. Miss is helping me practice. I didn't eat anything yesterday. I'll tell the kitchen to make some. Don't bother. I'm going to make a bowl of noodles for your lady. Last time she said the noodles I made were delicious. After Qin Feng said that, he went to the kitchen. And not long after, he brought a bowl of noodles. Delivered to Lu Jianli. The faint fragrance of noodles came. Lu Jianli slightly raised his white jade-like chin, looked at the other party, and lightly opened his red lips. Thank you. After saying that, he stretched out his fair arms to take over the new bowl. She ate very slowly, still as elegant as last time. Qin Feng stood aside without any hurry. When Lan Ningxuang saw this scene not far away, she couldn't help but have the idea in her heart that maybe the uncle and the young lady were meant for each other. The two left Qin Mansion and took a different path. Lan Ningxuang asked curiously, Uncle, where are we going? I want to open a medical clinic in the city, but since I don't have much experience, I want to ask Dr. Song, whom I know well. Qin Feng replied, Open a medical clinic? My uncle is so good. Why do he want to be a doctor? I found the idea of treating Miss Yan's damaged meridians in the Tian Yuan in the I Jing. Written by Ting Yushuan. However, the meridians connecting the upper body and lower body are too important. If you are not careful, the consequences will be disastrous. Therefore, I want to open my own medical clinic first. Treat more patients and improve my medical skills. In this way, perhaps your young lady's injury will be cured in the near future. Qin Feng said plausibly. 
When Lan Ningxuang heard this, she stood frozen on the spot. Uncle, is what you said true? Seeing the other party's expression of disbelief and excitement, Qin Feng could understand it. After all, Lu Jinli's injury was so serious that even the doctors in Feng Tian City were helpless. But he also understood that the greater the hope, the greater the disappointment. So he did not make his words too absolute. It's just a general direction. Whether it succeeds or not, you won't know until you try it. My uncle's words have always come true. I believe that my uncle can do it. Lan Ningxuan looked determined. Qin Feng smiled and said nothing more. Only when a person has hope can he have hope in life. The two of them had walked for a while while burning incense. When the familiar sound of a chicken crow suddenly came from ahead, Qin Feng hurriedly looked up and saw that it was indeed the brothel he had longed for, because the new Qin mansion was moved to Chongqing. The way from Qin mansion to Tinjiaxuan would no longer pass through the brothel, which made Qin Feng very regretful. But I didn't expect that I would get such unexpected results from going to see Dr. Song today. The weather is getting colder, and the girls are wearing more clothes. But under the colorful clothes, the bulging breasts and long white legs are still vaguely visible. And this hazy feeling is even more exciting than before. The closer we got, the clearer the voice was. Uncle, it's freezing cold here. Why don't you come in and warm yourself up? Naturally, it's impossible for Qin Feng to go in. But it's okay to take a few more looks. Right? So, he deliberately slowed down his pace. Lan Ningxuang frowned when she saw this scene. She wanted to say something, but she swallowed it back. The young lady is ill and cannot sleep with her uncle. And Lu's mother-in-law once said that at the age of her uncle, a man is at his most energetic. And if he does not get relief, he may suffer from suffocation. Thinking of this, Lan Ningxuang's face turned slightly red. She bit her lip and said, Uncle! Ah? Oh? Qin Feng was startled. Could it be that he had been staring for too long and was discovered? If you really can't help it, I can go to your room in the dead of night. Lan Ningxuang's voice was as thin as a mosquito's. Her ears felt hot, and her heart was beating harder. During the bridal night, she could still take off her coat without expression and have sex with her uncle on behalf of the young lady. However, as the contact deepened, her courage became smaller and smaller. Damn it, I was really discovered. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and hurriedly defended himself. You misunderstood. I have said before that before entering the seventh level, I will never touch the matter between men and women. Then why are you staring at those prostitutes? Lan Ningxuang's critical blow caught Qin Feng off guard. You asked so directly, why don't you give me a step down? Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva. His mind was spinning rapidly. And then he said nonsense. Miss Lan, you misunderstood. I am going to open a medical clinic and become a doctor soon. In the eyes of doctors, there are only patients. And there is no distinction between men and women. Do you think I'm looking at those girls? No. You are wrong. I am just looking at their symptoms. Sickness? Lan Ningxuan frowned, looking unconvinced. Look at the girl with a pale face and purple lips. She probably has a gastrointestinal problem, resulting in a loss of appetite. If you look at the girl with a bulging chest, it is probably pneumothorax caused by excessive mental stress and insomnia caused by fierce competition among peers. Look at that again. Qin Feng mentioned many diseases in one breath. And Lan Ningxuang's suspicious eyes slowly faded away. I didn't expect that my uncle has such high attainments in medical skills. Can I tell what symptoms I have? Are you testing me? It seems that you still don't believe in my character. Qin Feng was stunned for a moment. And after just one glance, he asked, Miss Lan, do you sometimes have chest tightness, shortness of breath, and short-term symptoms when you exert too much force? Difficulty breathing? Lan Ningxuang's eyes widened. How do you know? Oh, such a great mind. But trying to wrap it up with a bra. How can it not be uncomfortable? Qin Feng said earnestly. Miss Lan, stop using the bra wrap and replace it with a belly band. When Lan Ningxuang heard this, she hurriedly hugged her arms to her chest. Her face flushed with embarrassment. After a long time, she said softly, I wore a belly band before, but that would affect my sword practice too much. Qin Feng opened his mouth thinking that he might have underestimated Miss Lan's ambition. Chapter 62 Heart-Eating Goo The two came to a street, and the aroma of medicine hit their faces. This is where most medical clinics and pharmacies in Jinong City gather, and it is also the destination of Qin Feng's trip. Walking outside Dr. Song's medical clinic, Qin Feng suddenly stopped. The medical clinic was packed with people, most of whom looked like doctors. Even Dr. Song stood outside the crowd. 
frowning. Dr. Song? Qin Feng stepped forward and said H, Lo, followed closely by Lan Ningxuang. The gray-haired old man turned his head when he heard this, and then looked surprised. Master Qin, why are you here? I was going to find you. I have something to ask Dr. Song. Why is he looking for me? Qin Feng was curious and looked forward. In the center of the crowd, there was a bed board. At this time, a young man wearing luxurious clothes was lying on it. His lips were black and his face was bloodless. Next to it, there was a fat middle-aged man who was equally well-dressed. His eyes were red and he looked anxious. Dr. Song whispered the reason. It turned out that the fat, middle-aged man was a wealthy businessman in Jinong City. And the person lying on the bed was his son. Yesterday, when he came back from his business trip, he took his whole family to Wang Yu house for dinner. In the evening, Master Qian felt chills all over and vomited. Later, he invited a doctor to come to his house and gave him a dose of medicine. And the symptoms disappeared. I thought it was just a false alarm. But unexpectedly, this morning, it turned out like this. Qian Fugui was so worried that he hurriedly sent someone to send the child here. However, the doctors examined him and found no problem. Last night, Master Qian developed this disease after eating something from Wang Yueju. So everyone speculated. Dr. Song didn't explain what he said. But the meaning was very clear. When Qin Feng heard this, he frowned. He was in charge of Wang Yu Julai. Such a thing had never happened before. He immediately squeezed through the crowd and walked towards the center, wanting to check it out for himself. However, because of the pushing action, the doctor on the side was dissatisfied. The latter turned his head and was stunned for a moment. Then exclaimed, You are Qin Feng from Wang Yueju. There are many restaurants in Wang Yueju, and the business is booming in Jinong City. Therefore, Qin Feng's name is also spread among many people. This doctor once attended a banquet with his friends on the wedding day of the Qin family. So I recognized Qin Feng. When everyone around heard this, they all looked sideways, and Qin Fugui beside the bed stood up suddenly, turned around and shouted, Who is Qin Feng? All the doctors got out of the way, and Qin Feng was also exposed. Qian Fugui immediately stepped forward and grabbed his collar without saying a word, glaring angrily. My son became like this after eating in Wang Yu residence. What if, if there is anything wrong with my son, I want you to pay for it with your life. Lan Ningxuang frowned when she saw this, and was about to step forward to separate the two, but was stopped by Qin Feng. Wang Yu Eiju has been open for such a long time, and there has never been any problem. What's more, Boss Qian and his family were also having dinner at Wang Yu Eiju last night. Even if something happened, there's no reason why it would only happen to Master Qian. Right. This statement makes sense. Which is why many doctors are puzzled. They thought it was because Master Qian was young and had poor health. But in the past, there were many children who went to Wang Yi residence to eat. It made no sense that only Master Qian was the one. Trick. I still want to quibble. Qian Fugue's hands became stronger. Qian Feng was dissatisfied. But when he saw the other party's anxious expression, he still sighed and said, Boss Qian, you can't save Master Qian now. So why don't you let me go forward and check it out? Qian Fugue naturally refused, thinking that Qian Feng was trying to take advantage of the situation to make him die without any proof. Hearing this, the other doctors also spoke out to stop him. Seeing that the scene was in a stalemate, Dr. Song suddenly spoke up for Qian Feng. You might as well let Mr. Qian check it out. I have learned Mr. Qian's medical skills before, and they are no better than the old man. As soon as these words came out, everyone looked at each other. Dr. Song had been in this profession for a long time and was considered highly respected in Jinong City. But how old is Mr. Qin? And his medical skills are even inferior to those of Dr. Song? The opposition was much quieter. Qian Fugue looked struggling. And although the strength in his hand was a little weaker, he still didn't let go. At this moment, the young man lying on the bed suddenly coughed up a mouthful of blood and then laid down in a daze with no breath between his mouth and nose. Everyone was shocked. Qian Fugue was even more frightened, and his mind seemed to be shut down. Qin Feng frowned, immediately pushed Qian Fugue away, and walked to the bed. He put his finger on the tip of the boy's nose. He was indeed breathless. But strangely, there was still a weak heartbeat in the boy's chest. Golden light flashed in his eyes. Qin Feng looked at the young man's chest, and then his eyes widened. This is, with the power of his eyes, Qin Feng could clearly see that there was a small black insect about the thickness of a little finger clinging to the boy's heart. 
There were also strange and ferocious bloodlines on the surface of the insect's body. In Tinjiakshuan, there is a book called The Strange Chongji, which has detailed records of this insect. This insect is called the heart-eating goo. It is born in the land of nine eans and is born with corpses. The larvae are invisible to the naked eye, colorless and odorless. Once they enter the human body, they will attach to the heart, suck the blood from the heart, release poison, and gradually grow stronger. The heart-eating goo is usually born from a mother worm. Human beings parasitized by the heart-eating goo will have their bodies involuntarily controlled by the mother worm. But the strange thing is that this kind of heart-eating goo is rare in the world and was even considered extinct at one time. The book records that the last time someone discovered the heart-eating goo was decades ago. Why did such a rare heart-eating goo appear in a young man's body? Qin Feng had no time to think, because the young man was in critical condition at this moment, and he had to take out the heart-eating goo as soon as possible. Otherwise the awakened heart-eating goo would eat up his heart. So he hurriedly said, Get me ice cubes. The more the better. No one reacted until Dr. Song shouted, What are you still standing there for? Everyone took action. Within a moment, Master Qian was surrounded by ice. Qin Feng was always observing the movement of the heart-eating goo. This insect was afraid of cold, and the cold air entering the body would slow down its movements. Only in this way could he have a chance to take out the heart-eating goo. Seeing that the heart-eating goo was no longer sucking the young man's blood, Qin Feng took a deep breath, and the white tips of his fingers took shape, turning into narrow blades. This is the result of his experiment after filling up the two steps of the divine sea with literary energy. As long as the literary energy is enough. By seeing can be turned into a sharp needle or a narrow blade. After confirming the position, Qin Feng used by Siyun to carefully make a small opening on the boy's chest. He didn't use metal utensils, not to show off his skills, but because the heart-eating goo is particularly sensitive to metals. And if you are not careful, you may irritate it. The next step is the most critical, and there is no room for error. Qin Feng held his breath and concentrated. The white inches on his fingertips changed again and became slender white needles. The people around him were surprised and surprised when they saw this. But they all tacitly agreed not to make any movement. The white needle continued to penetrate through the small opening on the young man's chest, getting closer and closer to the heart-eating goo. It's now! Qin Feng's eyes widened suddenly, and with a flick of his fingertips, he instantly pierced the heart-eating goo. Then he lifted it outward, and the heart-eating goo landed steadily in the basin he had prepared in advance. A small black insect covered in red lines. Struggling and twisting appeared in front of everyone. Surprising everyone. They had never seen such a strange insect before. Chapter 63 Source of Goo And when the heart-eating goo was taken out, the boy lying on the bed regained his breath. But his face was still pale. His lips were blue. And his heartbeat was intermittent. This was a sign that the insect poison had not been removed. Qin Feng breathed out. This insect is called the heart-eating goo. Master Qian's illnesses are all caused by this thing. Although I have taken it out to ensure that Mr. Qian's life is not in danger. It still takes 10 years to cure it completely. Who can fetch the three herbs for me? Qin Feng reported 13 medicinal materials. Except for two or three rare medicinal materials. These medicinal materials were all common. The doctors quickly gathered together common medicinal materials. As for the rare ones, Qian Fugui, who had returned to his senses, paid a lot of money to get them from various pharmacies. According to the records in Gui Chongji, Qin Feng boiled all the medicinal materials into a bowl of soup in a specific proportion and order. Strangely enough, this medicinal soup was clearly boiled repeatedly with fire. The moment the medicine was ready, the medicinal soup there was an astonishing chill coming out, and a layer of white frost formed on the edge of the bowl. The two doctors carefully lifted the young man up, and Qin Feng fed him the decoction. The effect was obvious. Within a few moments, the greenish color on the young man's lips faded, and some vitality slowly returned to his face. At the same time, literary energy emerged in Qin Feng's divine sea, and in the blink of an eye, it filled one-tenth of the third level of the stairs. Qin Feng expressed his composure, but he was very excited in his heart. At least he could be sure that the direction of quickly accumulating literary power through practicing medicine was the right one. The insect poison in Master Qian's body has been eliminated but it will take some time for him to fully recover. Qin Feng suppressed his excitement and said calmly, and all the doctors looked at him with admiration. This disease that confused everyone. Mr. Qin discovered the clues after just one glance and used a special method to eliminate the disease, which naturally made them. The doctors admire them very much. Qin Fugue even bowed and apologized on the spot. 
I had many misunderstandings about Mr. Chin before. And I hope Mr. Chin will not blame him. Chin Feng waved his hand and then asked, Where did Master Chin go before? Did he encounter anything special? This kind of insect is rare in the world. He just glanced at Qian Fugui's body with his eyes and saw no trace of the heart-eating goo. He thought it was the young master of the Qian family who accidentally came into contact with this strange insect. Qian Fugui thought for a moment and then recounted the itinerary for the next few days. He made a fortune by reselling goods. So he went out to do business all year round. In order to let his children get involved in the Qian family's business early, he specially brought them with him when he went out this time. The business route followed the usual path before. Xian Fugue also spent a lot of money and hired several adults from the Demon Slayer Division to accompany him. The journey went smoothly without any accidents. If anything happened, it would be that the child was playful and accidentally fell into the water. But no one paid much attention at the time. Falled into the water? Jin Feng frowned. Where is the water? Jinong City is 800 miles northwest to the Chuaning River. Xian Fugue said without thinking. The world is too chaotic. When I travel, I mostly do business along mountain roads and rivers. Because it is safe. I have walked along the Chuaming River many times before. And sometimes, I would drink a few sips of water when I was thirsty. But there had never been any accidents. How could I have thought of this time? Qian Fugui was still a little scared when he recalled it. If it weren't for Qin Feng, his son might have narrowly escaped death. Chuaming River, Qin Feng murmured to himself. He had read, Da Qian Tu Ji, and had already memorized the distribution of mountains and rivers in the southern region. This river is an east-west river, about 200 miles long, which will merge into the Chiyuan River and eventually flow into Chiyuan City. Chiyuan City is one of the 32 celestial cities in Dakian. It covers a vast area, has a dense population, and the force of force that protects the city is second to none in Dakian. Every celestial city is, for the common people of Dakian, the most desirable place to live. Besides the imperial capital, Qin Feng could not be sure that the heart-eating goo must come from the Chuaming River. So he asked Qian Fugui to summon all the people who were traveling with him this time. He opened his eyes and looked at everyone, but did not find the second heart-eating goo. From this point of view, Master Qian's heart-eating goo is most likely to come from the Sichuanming River. Qin Feng asked Qian Fugui to take the boy away and go back to have a good rest. The other party was grateful and left 5,000 tails of silver as a reward before leaving. The others thought that was such a huge sum of money. Qin Feng would be polite. But the latter just said, hmm, and accepted it directly. Just kidding. You can earn money based on your skills. Why are you so polite? After Qin Fugui left, a group of doctors surrounded Qin Feng and asked about the heart-eating goo. However, Qin Feng still had many unanswered questions in his mind. He said a few words casually and dismissed everyone. After everyone realized they were bored and left one after another. Qin Feng looked thoughtfully at the dying heart-eating goo in the basin. According to the records in the book, once the heart-eating goo enters the human body, it will cling to the heart and suck the blood from the heart. Unless called by the mother insect, they will never wake up. But this one, Qin Feng frowned and murmured to himself language. La Ningxuan on the side heard the words and asked curiously, Maybe there is a mother worm with the heart-eating goo in Jinong City? Qin Feng shook his head. Heart-eating goo summoned by the mother worm will not be so manic. They will hide in the human body, causing the host to be controlled by the mother worm, which shows that they are no different from ordinary people. Dr. Song suddenly said, Could it be that the heart-eating goo was stimulated by something? Qin Feng nodded. He thought so too. But what exactly could stimulate the heart-eating goo? Even the book, The Strange Chongji, has no relevant records about this. Suddenly, Qin Feng had a flash of inspiration. Master Qin fell into the Sichuan Ming River three days ago, and on his way back, Nothing happened to him until he went to Wang Yu residence. In other words, something inside Wang Yue just stimulated the heart-eating goo, forcing it to wake up and go crazy. Is it the drinks? The wine at Wang Yue is uniquely distilled, with extremely high concentration, and alcohol has a bactericidal effect. So this possibility is extremely high. Qin Feng immediately took out a cup of immortal drunk from the Sumeru ring and poured it into the basin. But the heart-eating goo was unmoved. It's not alcohol. Qin Feng pondered for a long time, then patted his forehead. How could the young master of the Qin family know how to drink at such a young age? He would definitely only eat hot pot. Wait! Hot pot! Qin Feng seemed to have discovered something and took out a vermilion fruit from the Sumer ring. If there is something that distinguishes Wang Yuaja from other places, 
apart from the wine. It is the hot pot soup base made of this vermilion fruit. Qin Feng swallowed his saliva and carefully put the vermilion fruit into the basin. But the heart-eating goo, which had been indifferent before, suddenly became irritable. It really is this thing. Chapter 64 The Storm is Coming I saw the heart-eating goo in the basin constantly struggling and twisting. After about half a stick of incense, the dying heart-eating goo turned into blood as black as ink and disappeared into nothingness. Qin Feng looked strange when he saw this. The rumored strange and unpredictable heart-eating goo was actually afraid of spicy food. This is somewhat interesting. This feature is not mentioned in the strange Chongji. Dot. But think about it. The heart-eating goo is rare. And the vermilion fruit is generally produced in the south of Dakian. Because of its spicy taste, it is not popular among people. So it is difficult for the two to intersect. This is a big discovery for me. Just as Qin Feng rubbed his chin and thought like this, the literary energy in his divine sea began to surge and swell again, and then continued to flow into the steps of the questioning platform. And when the movement in the divine sea subsided, he was surprised to find that the third level of the stairs was half filled with Wen Qi. Qin Feng was excited and surprised at the same time. According to past experience, applying what he learned in the book should only trigger a surge in literary spirit. But what happened this time? After thinking for just a moment, he had the answer. For the first time, I treated the disease according to the content in the book. So I gained a lot of knowledge. But the second time, I discovered something that was not mentioned in the book. So I gained an extra dose of literary energy. Comparing the two, it is not difficult to see that the literary spirit that can be obtained by making a breakthrough in original knowledge is far greater than the literary spirit that can be obtained by applying what you have learned. Qin Feng secretly clenched his fists, thinking about the new way to obtain literary spirit although it could not provide him with substantial help at the moment. After all, it is not easy to surpass his predecessors and open up new knowledge. But it is always good to know one more method of practice. And, with my intelligence, I may not be able to carry forward this practice. Qin Feng grinned, thinking shamelessly. Uncle, why are you so happy? Lan Ningxuang asked curiously. It's nothing. Qin Feng coughed dryly and turned to look to the other side. Dr. Song. I'm here to ask for advice. If I want to open a medical clinic, what should I pay attention to? Open a medical clinic? Dr. Song was a little surprised and asked the reason. Qin Feng naturally had nothing to hide and spoke out his thoughts. I see. After hearing this, Dr. Song nodded and then said, Actually, in a situation like Mr. Qin's, you don't need to open a medical clinic. What you need is just a place to practice medicine. In order to improve my medical skills, and increase my experience. Qin Feng thought thoughtfully. And this was a feasible solution. After all, he had to go to Tinjiuxuan to read on weekdays. He could not sit in the medical center all the time. If he could find a place to practice medicine, he could not only save money, but also save money. With the next two dollars, I can be more free in allocating my time. But the question is, where to find such a place? Perhaps sensing Qin Feng's thoughts. Dr. Song stroked his beard and said, Mr. Qin, what do you think of my place? Qin Feng looked at the other party in surprise and heard Dr. Song sigh. I am old and I am not strong enough to practice medicine. Originally, I wanted to hold on for a few years before considering closing the medical clinic. But when I saw Mr. Qin's superb medical skills, I completely figured it out. It is the duty of young people to be doctors and help the world. If Mr. Qin does not object, I will hand over this medical clinic to you from now on. Qin Feng was moved by the other party's words and said solemnly, Dr. Song, please rest assured, I will definitely carry forward Bao Medical Hall and never disgrace your reputation. Bao Yutang is the name of Dr. Song's medical clinic. Okay, okay. Dr. Song looked pleased when he heard this. But Qin Feng is still a little worried. But Dr. Song, you gave me the medical clinic. How will you make a living in the future? Gift? What gift? Dr. Song was very surprised and then said, I will lend you this place to practice medicine. I will give you 10% of the reward you get every time. I originally thought that the delivery of the medical clinic was a spiritual inheritance between old and new doctors. But I didn't expect that it would be mixed with dirty interests in the end, which would return my previous feelings. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and finally agreed. Anyway, he was not at a loss. Just when Qin Feng thought that everything was finalized, Dr. Song suddenly said, By the way, Mr. Qin, you just cured Master Qian in my Bao Medical Hall. According to what you just said, do you deserve the reward you received? 
Give me 10%? The atmosphere was silent for a moment. Ginger is still hot when he is old. Chin Fong finally gave the 500 tails of silver. Perhaps Dr. Song felt that he had made a big deal. So he handed over the land deed of Bao Medical Hall. From this point of view, 10% of the profit from the medical practice plus 500 tails of silver in exchange for a medical clinic is a surefire deal. Moreover, Chin Fong also made an agreement with Dr. Song that if he did not come to Bao Medical Hall, Dr. Song would still be in charge of the hospital. And the latter happily accepted it. In this way, Chin Feng's journey as a doctor officially began. On the other side, in the middle reaches of the Chiyuan River, two figures, one tall and one fat, were standing on the trunk of a towering tree. I saw that they were all wearing black and white robes and red ghost masks on their heads, which were exactly the same as the thousand puppet that appeared in Jinyang City. But the only difference is that one has the number 5 tattooed on their chests, and the other has the number 9 tattooed on them. I wonder if these numbers represent status or strength. Suddenly, a bulge appeared on the right arm of the tall ghost face. A white insect half the size of a palm pierced the black robe and poked out its head full of fine fangs. The tall ghost felt something in his heart and turned his head to look in the south direction. Bai Chong, what's wrong? The fatter ghost face next to him made a dull sound from his stomach. A little insect is dead. Bai Chong replied calmly. It won't affect our plan. Right. I don't want to be made irresponsible remarks by that fellow ghost bodhisattva. It's just a small problem. Anyway, there are a lot of heart-eating goo flowing into Chiyuan City. Snap Tower. Snap Tower. That was the sound of drool dripping. Baizu, let's discuss this. Since you have so many bugs, is it okay to let me eat some? These bugs are not even qualified to fill your teeth. What's more, you haven't eaten enough yet? Baizu turned his head and looked behind him at the fallen trees. The mountain forest was broken into pieces. The rocks were covered with bloodstains. And there were countless broken limbs and bones. Obviously, there had been bloody massacres here. At this moment, a thundering roar came from deep in the forest, and a giant white ape suddenly landed not far away from the two. The rock shattered and the ground shook. The giant ape glared at the two of them with red eyes. The powerful energy emitted from its body showed its strength, which was at least above the fifth turn calamity power. If ordinary people encountered such a terrifying monster, they would have been frightened out of their wits. But, Bai Chong said calmly, Are you here to avenge your heir? Jin Yun is hungry. Your lunch is here. The white giant ape kept beating its chest with both arms, and the air waves swept around like a tsunami, making the two men's black robes crackle. It jumped up suddenly and clasped its arms like a war hammer. Before the attack came, the pressure had already crushed the giant tree where the two were sitting into sawdust. However, when the white giant ape was less than three feet away from the two of them, a bloody mouth appeared out of thin air. With a click, only half of the arrogant giant ape was left in an instant, and blood fell like rain. Genian's hungry belly kept squirming, and the crunching sounds were endless. Remember to eat cleanly. Baizu glanced at the remaining half of the giant ape's body. I never waste. Jin Yangxing was full of confidence. Chapter 65 Sudden Earthquake After practicing medicine for a period of time, Jin Fang's medical skills were recognized by everyone, and he became famous in Jinong City. For some difficult and complicated diseases that ordinary doctors cannot treat, patients will come to see him. Some people even queue up at the entrance of Baoyutang in the middle of the night in order to get the chance to be diagnosed and treated first. And Qin Feng, by treating a large number of patients, gained enough literary energy to fill the third and fourth steps of the Divine Sea. It was another early morning, and there was a long queue like a dragon at the door of Bali Hall. Qin Feng sighed when he saw this scene, because there were too many people coming for consultation every day. Bali Hall could not accommodate them. He had no choice but to set up a table next to the street. Dr. Qin, my wife's belly became so big overnight. Is she going to give birth? Qin Feng glanced at it and immediately wrote two prescriptions. This prescription is for your wife. She suffered from flatulence, which is why her belly became so big. After taking the decoction and regulating her stomach, she can recover. Normal. This prescription is for you. You may have suffered from colds when you were young. So you have symptoms of infertility. This prescription can help you regulate your body. Hearing this, the man's face suddenly turned red. He left the reward, hurriedly picked up the prescription, pulled the lady to cover her face and left. Dr. Chin, please help me quickly. I don't know what's going on. I have a lot of black patches on my upper body for no reason. Do I have some terminal disease? Chin Feng looked up 
and twitched the corner of his mouth. How long has it been since you took a shower? Is this disease caused by not taking a shower? The man was confused. The plaques on your body are due to the fading of your shirt. They will disappear naturally after taking a shower. Get out of the way and don't block the real patient. Under the disgusted eyes of everyone, the man shrank his head and ran away. Dr. Chin, I have a friend. Chin Fong raised his brows and handed over a prescription. Kidney deficiency is nothing to be ashamed of. Have less sex these days. Follow this prescription to take the medicine. Three times a day. Remember to use slow fire and cook it four times. The middle-aged man opened his mouth wide, then put the prescription into his arms. After leaving the reward, he trotted away under the joking eyes of the others. People who come to seek medical treatment have long been accustomed to all this. Other doctors may have to wait and see before they can cure their symptoms. But Dr. Chin, who is highly skilled in medicine, can cure the disease with just one look. And since practicing medicine, Dr. Chin has not misdiagnosed a single case. The team seeking medical treatment continued to move forward, and there was no tendency to decrease. Chin Fong had been talking since the morning, and his mouth felt dry. At this moment, a pair of white hands brought a cup of tea to the table. Uncle, are you thirsty? This is the tea I brewed. It has been cooled, and you can drink it directly. Chin Fong glanced at Lan Ning Shuang, whose eyes were full of tenderness, and said, Thank you. After drinking a sip of tea, Chin Fong survived for half his life. But the moment he put down the teacup, the entire Jinyang city trembled inexplicably, and the ground began to shake. At the same time, the old man Bailey at the door of Tinjiaxuan suddenly opened his eyes and looked to the north. Lame Lao Li was still drinking, and the wine glass in his hand suddenly broke into pieces. On the snakehead cliff in the black mist forest, rocks rolled down, and Sanyi Mo's daytime incarnation also faced the north. In the demon slaying department, Sher Ziming felt the tremors of the earth, felt heart palpitations for no reason, and frowned. In the city lord's palace, Yi Heng's eyes turned black, and in the dark room, he only heard the sound of, it has begun. The shock didn't last long. It took about ten breaths. After everything returned to normal, everyone present was still in shock. Qin Fong was stunned for a moment and muttered to himself, is it an earthquake? He didn't pay too much attention and looked at the crowd of heads behind the team, sighing to himself, how long will it take to heal? While busy, time flies by. By the time everyone dispersed, the sun had set and every household lit lanterns. Chin Fong was about to stand up and thump his shoulders, but suddenly a faint fragrance came from behind him, and then a pair of soft hands fell on his shoulders, gently rubbing them. Uncle, thank you for your hard work. Lan Ning Shuang said softly, yeah. Chin Fong closed his eyes and began to enjoy. It must be hard work, but everything is worth it. After this period of hard work, his medical skills have improved by leaps and bounds through continuous practice. And the literary skills accumulated through applying what he has learned are much faster than reading books. The only fly in the limit is that because he treats too many people, many of the illnesses he encounters are repetitive, which also results in less and less literary energy he can gain from them. For example, Today, the literary energy he has accumulated is barely enough. One-tenth of the fifth ladder in the mansion C. Of course, this is also because every time you go up a ladder, more and more literary skills are needed to fill it. Tap, tap, tap. Horses galloped past. Pedestrians hurriedly gave way. And complaints arose one after another. Chin Fong opened his eyes and looked around, only to see two men wearing wooden corsets sitting on two black horses. Their faces anxious and the direction they were heading towards was the Demon Slayer Division. Chin Fong frowned. Those two black horses were not simple. That is a thousand mile horse. The Demon Slayer Division will only use it when an emergency occurs. However, ordinary cities cannot have such a divine horse. Looking at the wood-colored corset, there is a word, John, tattooed on the chest, which is unusual. It is a demon slaying uniform. The Demon Slayer Division has three kinds of tokens. Woodling, Sapphire, and Red Lotus. The Demon Slayer Division in Tianqing also has a Demon Slayer uniform with matching colors. Combining the above two points, these two people must be from one of the 32 heavenly cities in Dakian. Uncle, something seems to have happened. Lan Ning Shuang frowned slightly. She was born in Lu Mansion, so she naturally knew a lot. Yeah. Qin Fong nodded, but didn't care too much. Let's go. It's getting late. Everyone in Qin Mansion must have eaten. 
So we'll go to Wang Yu residence to eat something casually. Okay. Uncle. The two of them came to Wang Yu residence together. Shopkeeper Peng saw them and came to greet them with enthusiasm. Master, which floor do you want to eat on today? Just at this time, a table of guests walked by the window on the first floor. Ching Feng also wanted to experience the lively feeling. So he walked forward and sat down. This is it. Okay. Shopkeeper Peng understood and immediately called the waiter to clean up the mess on the table. After the hot pot was served, the meat and vegetables were served, and the two of them started eating. During this period, Lan Ningxuang poured wine for Qin Feng. After all, the first floor of Wang Yueju was full of common people, and it was very lively and noisy. At this time, the conversation between three men at a nearby table caught Qin Feng's attention. Do you know why the ground in Jinyang City kept shaking at noon today? Chapter 66 The Sudden Change in Chiyuan City When another man at the same table heard this, he immediately became interested. The tremor scared me so much that all the pots and pans in the house fell to the floor. Tell us what is going on! Qin Feng pretended to drink, but he pricked up his ears and began to listen carefully. And the sturdy man who was the first to speak also spoke slowly. The man usually travels with caravans, loading and unloading goods. A few days ago, a wealthy businessman in Jinong City gathered people and planned to sell some herbs in Chiyuan City. The wealthy businessman saw that the man was strong, so he hired him with money. Since he was escorted by the Demon Slayer Division, there were no accidents along the way. When the wealthy businessman arrived in Chiyuan City, he sold the herbs and made a lot of silver. He looked happy. After the transaction was completed, it was getting late. They stayed in Chiyuan City for one night and packed their bags and set off before dawn this morning. And the weird thing started from here. The man looked a little scared. But he still had the courage to say, On the way back, we were obviously walking on a mountain road. But the mountain forest was quiet. And we couldn't hear a single sound of birds or animals. And the scariest thing is the bugs. Insects? The other two people joked. Looking at how big and thick you are. You are actually afraid of insects? You know what the heck. Those were not just a few bugs. But a mountain full of bugs. With colorful colors different sizes, and ferocious looks. I even saw a centipede as thick as a tree. The man trembled. At this point, the other two people looked at each other, stopped laughing, swallowed their saliva and said, How can you come back alive after encountering such a battle? Who says it's not the case? Now that I think about it, I feel like I'm destined to be lucky. The lord of the demon slayer division, who was accompanying us at that time had a solemn face and was on guard. The mountain of insects was separated from us by a mountain road. Only three feet away. As long as they turn a corner, all of us will die. But the strange thing is that those bugs, as if they didn't see us, headed straight towards Chiyuan City. All of us were so scared that we didn't move until all the bugs left. And then we breathed a sigh of relief. Quickly, drink some wine to strengthen your courage. If you survive this catastrophe, you will be lucky in the future. But I listened for a long time. And you still haven't said what's going on? Asked the man at the same table. The strong man took a sip of wine, picked up a mouthful of vegetables from the hot pot, chewed it a few times and said again, I was just about to say it now. After such an incident, everyone was frightened. The demon slayer master asked us to leave useless things behind and speed up our return. Although the wealthy businessman was reluctant to give up, he agreed for the sake of his own life. We rushed to Jinyang City nonstop. Near noon. We felt the ground shaking. At that time, I was so scared that I sat down on the ground and looked to the north. Guess what I saw? The other two people scratched their heads and scratched their heads anxiously. Come on! What kind of riddle are you trying to play? It's a centipede. The strong man trembled and gritted his teeth and said, It's a huge centipede that looks like it can reach the sky when it stands up. It opened its mouth. And the two fangs were as big as a city gate. It swooped down suddenly trying to break through the gate of Chiyuan City. But outside Chiyuan City, a golden cover suddenly lit up, blocking the centipede, and the shaking feeling of the ground was caused by the impact. When the two heard this, they took a deep breath. Qin Feng thought thoughtfully, Chiyuan Cheng is one of the 32 celestial cities in Dakian, and all celestial cities have several common characteristics. First, there is a barrier guarding the outside of the city, making it difficult for ordinary monsters and ghosts to enter the city. Secondly, Tiancheng has a sound government structure, has its own army, and has strong military force. Xijing, who guards Tiancheng, must be at least level 4. Thirdly, 
The reason why each celestial city has such a strong protective power is to protect the dragon suppressing monument that can guard luck. The golden cover the man was talking about must be the barrier of Chi Yuan Chung. And the two people from the Demon Slayer division that he saw today are most likely from Chi Yuan Chung. Qin Feng took another sip of wine, feeling heavy. Even the celestial city of Dakian is not absolutely safe. This is the current situation of this world. The strong man was still recalling. The giant centipede hit him for ten breaths. And the golden shield cracked a huge hole. At that moment, a red light shot out from Chi Yuan City, turning into a huge spear shadow in midair, knocking back the giant centipede. Then, as the dazzling white light filled the sky, Chi Yuan Cheng seemed to have disappeared out of thin air, and nothing could be seen. Is it a barrier? Or a strange supernatural power? It is impossible for Chi Yuan Cheng to disappear. It must have been hidden using some means. Qin Feng frowned. First, countless insects marched. Then giant centipedes broke the barrier. And finally they used strange means to cover it up. This was obviously a well-thought-out plan. Suddenly, the sound of vomiting sounded in my ears. Qin Feng interrupted his thinking and looked away, only to see that the strong man who had been chatting just now was pale, clutching his chest and looking in pain. The diners on the first floor were shocked, and the two people at the same table were as anxious as ants on a hot pot. When Qin Feng saw this symptom, he immediately thought of something. He opened his eyes and looked into the man's body, and he saw the heart-eating goo attached to the heart. Miss Lon, go to the kitchen and bring ice cubes. Okay, young master, what's going on here? Peng Qing walked up to him and was at a loss when he saw the man's painful appearance. Qin Feng immediately ordered, clear this table and have someone push him onto the table. Peng Qing immediately called the waiter in the restaurant to do as he was told. But the burly man's companion didn't know the situation and hurriedly stopped him and shouted, what are you going to do? I am Dr. Qin from Bao Medical Hall. If you still want to save him, get out of my way. Qin Feng shouted. After hearing the words Dr. Qin, the two men looked at each other and slowly backed away. In recent days, Qin Feng's name has spread throughout the streets and alleys of Jinong City. And everyone is talking about it. Naturally, these two people have heard of it. Not long after, the ice cubes were in place. The heart-eating goo was cold. Its movement slowed down. And the man's pain was reduced a lot. Qin Feng grabbed a handful of chopsticks and stuffed them into the man's mouth. There may be some pain next so you have to endure it. Hearing this, the man nodded with difficulty. Qin Feng exhaled, and the white inches of his fingertips appeared, turning into narrow and sharp blades. Due to his previous experience, he could take out the heart-eating goo in one go. In just a few breaths, Qin Feng used a white needle to pick out the strange heart-eating goo, and dropped it into the basin containing the hot pot soup base. Then it turned into a pool of black blood and disappeared completely. Qin Feng sent Miss Lan to grab some medicinal materials from the treasure medical hall, boiled it into a bowl of cold soup, and fed it to the man. The latter's breathing stabilized, and some color returned to his face. Seeing this, everyone clapped their hands and praised Qin Feng's miraculous medical skills. But there was no trace of joy on Qin Feng's face. According to what the man said before, they would not pass by the Chuaming River on their way back. So how could he be infected with the heart-eating goo? You know. Strange insects, like the heart-eating goo, are not something that can be seen everywhere. After thinking about it, there is only one possibility. The heart-eating goo that Master Qian was infected with in the Chuaming River came from the Chiyuan River. And a large amount of the heart-eating goo had already flowed into Chiyuan City from the Chiyuan River. Chapter 67 The Young Man in White The opening on the chest was smeared with recovery ointment and rolled up with gauze. The strong man also regained his breath. He said weakly, Thank you, Dr. Qin. For saving me. Qin Feng nodded slightly. With an extremely heavy expression on his face. The people traveling with you are likely to be infected with this kind of strange insect. Is there any way you can notify them? The man nodded. I can notify you. But it will take some time. Okay. Bring them all to the Qin mansion tomorrow. And I'll check them out. The man agreed immediately. After such an incident. Most of the guests in Wang Yu residence left. Qin Feng didn't pay much attention to it. He briefly explained a few words to shopkeeper Peng and then returned to the Qin mansion with worries. For safety reasons, Qin Feng summoned everyone in the mansion to the hall as soon as he returned to Qin mansion and then scanned the circle of people with his eyes. After confirming that no one was contaminated with the heart-eating goo, he slowly took out a breath. Um, no. Why does it seem like one is missing? Qin Feng frowned. 
Second mother, where is my father? The second mother heard this and sighed helplessly. Today at noon, your father suddenly said that he had come up with a wonderful idea and he went out to the city to do business in high spirits. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop him. This unreliable guy is still running around at this time. Qing Feng's face suddenly became very ugly. Seeing this, Er Yang asked worriedly, Feng, oh, has something happened? You brought us together at night, and your face is so ugly. Hearing this, the others also cast doubtful glances. In order to prevent everyone from worrying too much, Qing Feng just found an excuse to excuse himself, and then returned to the house alone, trying to clear his head. At the lake pavilion, the beauty in white turned her head to look at the worried Lan Ningxuang, and asked softly, What's going on? Lan Ningxuang hesitated for a moment, and then truthfully reported what she saw and heard today. After Lu Jianli heard this, he fell silent again. After a long time, he said softly, Protect him. Okay, miss. The night was like water, and most of the people in the Qin mansion had fallen asleep. However, Qin Feng, who was lying on the bed, was still tossing and turning with thousands of thoughts in his mind. Why did the two adults from the Demon Slaying Division come to Jinyang City? Did they want to ask Sher Ziming to go to Qi Yuan Cheng to save the situation? No, it shouldn't be possible. It takes too much effort to do it again and again. By the time Sher Ziming arrives, Qi Yuan Cheng will probably have been breached long ago. Moreover, with Sher Ziming's strength, he could not influence the situation of the battle in the face of such battles. By the way, why did those guys attack Qi Yuan City? If you just want to devour flesh and blood, there is no need to chew the hard bones. Wouldn't it be more reasonable to find a few more small towns? I don't know what's going on in Chi Yuan City at the moment, and whether there are big bosses coming to support it. If the heart eating goo really penetrates into Chi Yuan City, it will definitely be a disaster. Wait, I still have time to care about them. Qianqing is not safe, let alone this small Jinong City. Should I find a way to bring the Qin family back to Fontian City? Alas, living in troubled times, you really can't help yourself. Only when your strength improves can you have the capital to protect your family. Qin Feng sighed and couldn't help but sigh. At this moment, a violent knock on the door outside the Qin mansion broke the tranquility of the night. Qin Feng was so frightened that he immediately got out of bed, put on his clothes and opened the door. Many dark rooms were lit with oil lamps and flames. Lan Ningxuan arrived immediately. Uncle, are you okay? Qin Feng shook his head, and the two of them rushed to the gate together. There were constant knocks on the door, and there was a spear standing out of thin air beside the door. If you look closely, it was Xing Sheng's spear. Where's the charcoal-headed man? Was there an accident? Oh, it turns out that person was standing there. I couldn't tell what black clothes you were wearing at night. Qin Feng muttered in his heart. Many people gathered at the entrance of Qin Mansion and Xing Sheng opened the door carefully with Qin Feng's nod. Seven people came into view, led by two middle-aged people, with serious faces, not angry, and wearing luxurious clothes. However, judging from their aura, they were obviously a little depressed, and there were damaged openings everywhere on the luxurious clothes. Qin Feng also noticed that there were freshly dried blood stains on their arms under their sleeves. At this moment, these two middle-aged men were supporting a handsome young man in white, and brocade clothes with both hands. This young master is really extraordinary in appearance. He is as rich as Jade, and even more handsome than his second brother. However, the handsome young master is not in a very good condition at the moment. His face is pale and bloodless, especially his stretched right arm. Obviously seriously injured. Outside the Qin mansion, the sound of horse hooves neighed. Qin Feng looked out, and was shocked to see that it was actually a snow dragon horse. In the previous life, this kind of horse was equivalent to a high-end version of Lamborghini. How could ordinary people own it? Combined with their dress and demeanor, it all shows the distinguished status of this group of people. The seven people walked directly into the Qin mansion without being polite. The taller middle-aged man in the lead shouted anxiously, Where is Dr. Qin? Looking for me. Qin Feng looked strange and took a step forward. I am the Dr. Qin you call me. What do you want from me? So young? The two middle-aged men looked at each other, with a trace of disappointment in their eyes. I inquired from the city and learned that Dr. Qin has superb medical skills and is the best doctor in the city. I implore you to save my young master. If you succeed, I will be grateful. The middle-aged man's attitude was sincere, and so were the rest of the people accompanying him. Bend down and clasp your fists in salute. It doesn't have to be like this. Qin, go clean up a guest room. Qin, 
who was wearing a green dress, immediately ran away. Qin Feng followed up. You guys, come with me. Everyone came to the guest room, and the two middle-aged men slowly placed the handsome young man on the soft bed. After Qin Feng retreated from the servants in the mansion, he opened his eyes and looked at the young master. He immediately raised his eyebrows. Looking at the figure and bones of the young master, it was obvious that he was a girl instead of a man. I said, how could there be a man in the world who is more handsome than my second brother? Qin Feng complained in his heart and began to check the other person's injuries, then frowned. This man's injuries were more serious than he imagined, for ribs were broken, organs were damaged, there was massive bleeding in the body, and the meridians in the upper arm of his right arm were severed, as if he had been shattered by some powerful force. The most serious thing is the purple color in the heart, which should be some kind of fatal toxin. The injury was so serious that an ordinary person would have died long ago. But the reason why this person survived was only because there was a sapphire-colored bead in her abdomen, which was constantly spreading warm waves, repairing the damaged internal organs and organs in the body. The ribs prevent toxins from spreading into the heart. Qin Feng had seen records of this bead from books. There is a colorful lake in the Tiashan Mountains in the northern region. There is a green lotus with ice leaves in the lake. It can produce one lotus seed every hundred years. It looks like a jade bead. If you swallow it into your belly, it has the magical ability to extend your life. This lotus seed name. Life-protecting lotus. Qin Feng blurted out. When the two middle-aged people heard this, they were shocked at first. And then, their eyes flashed with excitement. Chapter 68 Detoxification Jinong City is just a small town. They came here unexpectedly. They didn't have high expectations for the doctors here. However, the handsome man disguised as a man was dying. If he didn't receive treatment, he might not be able to survive even the life-protecting lotus. With no other choice, they could only find the most famous doctor in the city and try to take a chance on the slim possibility. However, when they saw that the Dr. Chin everyone said was just a young man, their disappointment suddenly increased. Looking at the dying young man in white, they had no choice but to treat a dead horse as a live doctor. But what they never expected was that it was such a young doctor who discovered the life-protecting lotus in the belly of the young man in white without any further inspections. The only glimmer of hope left in their hearts suddenly enlarged. Dr. Chin really deserves his reputation. He can actually recognize the life-protecting lotus. Do you dare to ask Dr. Chin if my young master can be saved? The two middle-aged people asked eagerly. Chin Feng pondered for a moment and did not answer the two of them directly. Instead, he turned around and said, Miss Lon, could you please go to Bao Medical Hall and help me get these medicinal materials? Dozens of medicinal materials were reported. And Qin Feng added, Be quick! Lan Ningxuang left immediately without stopping. Your young master is seriously injured internally, with her organs and ribs damaged, but with the warmth and nourishment of the life-protecting lotus. Her life will not be harmed in a short period of time. The biggest danger at present is the toxins in her heart. Qin Feng frowned and said. When the two middle-aged people heard this, they were both excited and worried. Dr. Qin, you must think of a solution. I already have some guesses in my mind. But just in case, I would like to ask you to tell me how your young master got this poison. When the two middle-aged people heard this, they looked at each other and told him everything that happened today. Qin Feng's eyes widened when he heard what the two said. This group of people actually escaped from Qiyuan City. They called themselves a caravan and went to Qiyuan City to discuss business. As a result, they were attacked by demons and ghosts. The people in the city were all delirious and began to burn, kill, and loot. Among the guys who invaded the city, there were people with more than six levels of calamity power, which instantly put Chi Yuan City in danger. Fortunately, several adults from the demon slaying department in the city took action in time and opened a hole in the middle of the Zerg army that was besieging the city, allowing the conscious people in the city to escape, and they were among them. But no one expected that when they were running away, the top masters from both sides of the city clashed, and the air waves generated swept around and affected them. Another long purple poisonous insect took advantage of their unpreparedness and bit their young master. The toxins were also contaminated at that time. After Qin Feng heard this, he fell into deep thought. The people were unconscious. It was most likely because of the heart-eating goo. It seemed that his previous guess was correct. Qi Yuan Cheng had already been infiltrated by the heart-eating goo. But the two people in front of him must be hiding something. How can an ordinary caravan own such a BMW as the Snow Dragon Horse? Moreover, he has observed these two people. They have strong blood in their bodies and continuous golden energy. They are at least the sixth level of Shenwu. A master above. 
He didn't believe that a noble son from a businessman's family could have two such masters with him. Moreover, Chi Yuan City is extremely dangerous, and it must be very difficult to escape. How could they downplay it like the two of them said? Qin Feng didn't bother to dig deeper. After all, in this world, it was reasonable for the other party to be more cautious and conceal something. Dr. Qin, do you have any clues? One person asked. Qin Feng nodded. In the book, The Strange Insect, there is a record about the long purple insect. Its name is Purple Adder. It is about one foot long and looks like a snake. It contains highly poisonous poison. If the poison enters the heart, you will definitely die. Now that you know the identity of the poisonous insect, Dr. Chin, you must have something to do. The two middle-aged people said excitedly, Don't be impatient. When the medicinal materials arrive, I will take out the poison. Chin Feng shouted outside the house again. Chin, prepare a bucket of hot water. I understand. Young master, Chin responded. After burning a stick of incense, a bucket of steaming hot water was placed in the room. And Miss Lawn also rushed back. Uncle, these are the medicinal materials. The space jade pendant flashed. And all the medicinal materials Chin Feng needed appeared on the mahogany table. Chin Feng took a deep breath and put the medicinal materials into the bucket in a certain proportion according to the records in the book. Within a moment, the fragrance of the medicine hit his face. You put him into the water, Chin Feng said. The two looked hesitant. Dr. Chin, do you want to take off your coat? No need. Hearing this, the two of them breathed a sigh of relief, then picked up the young man in white from the bed and carefully put him into the medicinal bath. The originally unconscious young man in white shuddered and spat out a mouthful of blood the moment he was immersed in the bucket. Young master, the two middle-aged men were shocked. Don't panic. He just coughed up the accumulated blood in his body. Chin Feng explained briefly, then stood beside the bucket and waited quietly. Everyone present didn't know what was going on but they didn't dare to ask questions. So they could only wait quietly together. Time passed by quietly, and the water in the medicinal bath gradually turned lavender. Even the face of the young man in white recovered a little, and was no longer as pale as before. Seeing this scene, the two middle-aged people were both surprised. Seeing that the time was almost up, Xin Feng asked the people around the bucket to disperse. And then the white inches of his fingertips took shape and turned into sharp needles. He opened his golden eyes aimed at the location, and with lightning speed, the sharp needle pierced the young master's white clothes in the medicinal bath, pierced his heart, and then quickly pulled it out. A stream of purple liquid shot out from the chest of the white-clothed young man and landed on the ground beside him. White smoke suddenly rose, and the hard blue stone melted instantly under the surprised eyes of everyone. I have removed the toxins from his body, and there is no longer any fear for his life. Here is a prescription and the medicinal ingredients are on the table. You should boil the medicine according to the instructions and take it for him every two hours. Combined with the life-protecting lotus in his body, it should be able to quickly repair the injuries in your young master's body. The two middle-aged men took the prescription and looked at each other, then half knelt on the ground with a tacit understanding. Dr. Chin's life-saving grace will definitely be engraved in our hearts. That doesn't have to be the case. I have to charge anyway. That's natural. The reward must satisfy Dr. Chin. Chin Feng nodded and looked at the right arm of the young man in white. Oh, by the way, the meridians in his right arm are seriously damaged. If not treated, he will definitely be disabled. Hearing this, the two middle-aged men looked gloomy. Damaged meridians are almost an incurable disease. In today's world, only the imperial doctors of Fontian City may be less than 30% sure that they can repair it. But the success rate is still too low. Chin Feng raised his eyebrows. He had always wanted to find someone with damaged meridians to practice his skills with. So this opportunity had come. I can give it a try. But I'm only about 50% sure. Once it fails, there will be no possibility of repairing his right arm. What do you say? 50%? The two middle-aged people stared wide-eyed. Isn't this a higher success rate than the Imperial Doctors of Fontian City? But even so, they still struggled with their brows and did not dare to agree without permission. It doesn't matter. Tomorrow, when your young master wakes up, you can confirm with him whether his meridians need to be repaired. However, I must state in advance that the medicinal solution for repairing meridians is extremely rare and rare, and you need to prepare it yourself. Chin Feng left these words and walked away. The two middle-aged people looked at each other, and one of them couldn't help but sigh. This boy is really young and promising. Chapter 69 asked, 
as a ray of sunlight passes through the window. It pours into the house. The young man in white, who was lying on the bed, opened his eyes. The moment he regained consciousness, he seemed to have thought of something. He stood up suddenly and looked around. What he saw was a strange room without any danger. Sir, are you awake? A woman in the team said excitedly. The young man in white checked himself. His clothes had been changed, and most of the injuries in his body had recovered. But he could still feel some faint pain. What happened after I was unconscious? The young master shook his head and asked aloud. And the woman beside the bed also told everything that happened yesterday. After a long time, the young man in white breathed out. I see. Then I have to thank Dr. Chin very much. As soon as he finished speaking, he planned to lift the quilt. But his right arm didn't obey his command at all. The young man in white remembered something and was silent for a while. After a long time, he pretended that nothing was wrong and opened the bed quilt with his left hand. When the woman beside the bed saw this, she wanted to say something. But in the end she didn't. With a distressed look on her face, the two left the house and wandered around the Chin mansion and happened to come to the lake pavilion. In the middle of the lake pavilion, there was a man in white clothes sitting upright. He was so beautiful that the young man in white had dilated pupils and murmured. It's her. You just told me that the doctor's surname is Chin? I report back to you that your surname is Chin. The young man in white was stunned for a moment, not knowing what he was thinking. He did not come forward to disturb him, but continued to the front hall of the mansion with his maid. Not long after the two left, Lu Jianli in the wheelchair turned his head, glanced at the direction the two left, and then looked away again. The front hall of Chin Mansion was crowded with people. These are the people who went to Chiyuan City with the strongman they met last night, including four people from the Demon Slayer Division. The burly man had already told them the cause and effect of the matter before gathering everyone. So they all looked a little nervous when they arrived at the Chin Mansion. Dr. Chin, you must save us! The wealthy businessman begged. Chin Fong nodded without saying anything. He opened his eyes and glanced at everyone present. All thirteen people had heart-eating goo clinging to their hearts. Miss Lan, please go to Wan Yu residence to get some ice cubes. Lan Ningxuan was about to agree when another person in the front hall suddenly said, Don't bother. I just have some stored in my space jade pendant. As he finished speaking, a pile of ice cubes appeared out of thin air in the center of the hall, making the surrounding area extremely cold. The person who took out the ice cubes was the sturdy middle-aged man who came to Qing Mansion last night. His name was Wang Su. Standing next to him was another tall middle-aged man in gray robe named M.O. Lintian. This is what Qing Fong learned from them when he talked with them in the early morning. As for the young man who was disguised as a man, the two also mentioned his name, Yin. As for the surname, they seemed to have deliberately avoided mentioning it. Qing Fong ordered 13 people to sit on the ice. Everyone was shivering from the cold. When all the heart-eating goo became stiff due to the cold air, Qing Fong followed the familiar steps and picked out the heart-eating goo from everyone's hearts one by one, and then put them into the basin. Looking at the ferocious-looking heart-eating goo in the basin with blood-colored lines all over its body, everyone looked ugly. Wang Su asked in a deep voice, Dr. Qin, is there something wrong in our body? Qin Feng shook his head. I have seen all seven of you, and there is no heart-eating goo in their bodies. Hearing this, Wang Su and Imo Lintian breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, a clear voice suddenly came from the entrance of the hall. It turns out to be the heart-eating goo. No one of the people in Chiyuan City are like crazy demons. Someone must have controlled their minds with the mother worm. Qin Feng looked around and saw the young man in white disguised as a man again. Maybe it was because it was dark last night and he was eager to save people. So he didn't look carefully. But when he saw it today, he was a little shocked. Her appearance is refined and her facial features are distinct. So she dresses up as a man and looks serious not to mention her fair skin. Her nose is very straight, especially her narrow eyes and red lips, which together make her an unforgettable beauty. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows. Brother Yin also knows about this insect? I have read thousands of books since I was a child, and I have seen the description of this insect in The Strange Insect. Dot! Yin replied calmly, but his plain tone was mixed with a strong confidence. Wang Su on the side added, My young master is gifted with extraordinary talent. He has practiced the literary sage tradition and has now entered the eighth level of Ming's state of mind. This actually surprised Qin Feng, and he became even more curious about the other party's identity. It's really amazing. I admire you. The young man in white nodded slightly and looked at Qin Feng. He was good-looking, handsome and handsome. This was her first impression. 
But what made her even more curious was that she had just heard from the maid that this man had also practiced the Wenxiang Taoism. Once turned culture and spirit into a fingertip. I heard from my maid that Dr. Qin has also practiced the Wenxiang Dao tradition. Dare I ask which rank? I'm not talented. I've just entered the ninth level. Yun thought thoughtfully and spoke again. Dr. Qin asked based on his medical skills. It is reasonable for his cultivation to improve slowly. Qin Feng didn't understand what he meant and asked. What does it mean to ask questions with medical skills? The books he had read before did not introduce this. Your teacher never taught you. Yin was a little confused. I don't have a teacher. I entered the Wenxiang Dao tradition by chance. As soon as these words came out, a trace of surprise flashed in the eyes of Yun and others. No wonder she used medical skills to become a literary sage. It turned out that she was a self-taught person. She shook her head slightly, with a trace of regret in her eyes. Throughout the ages, no one who entered the sage of literature with medical skills has advanced to the fifth level. Brother Yun, can you help me clear up my doubts? Qin Feng's attitude was sincere. Yun didn't hide anything and began to explain in detail. Compared with Shenmu and Baigui, the Wenxiang Taoism advances much slower. After all, memorizing thousands of books in the mind requires years of accumulation. Considering that applying knowledge and pioneering and innovating can quickly accumulate literary spirit. Everyone who practices Wenxiang Dao tradition has the books he reads and the direction of study determined in advance. Throughout the ages, most literati have chosen to study political and military books in order to become officials in the court or become military staff officers. After all, entering the court to display your ambitions, serve the country and the people, join the army to strategize, and win thousands of miles, will affect at least tens of thousands of people. In this way, you can gain a lot of culture and improve your cultivation in a short period of time. It is difficult for doctors to do this. The most important thing is that the tradition of Wenxiang has been passed down from generation to generation. And the ancestors came to the conclusion that if you want to step into the fourth rank of Wenxiang, you must be close to the country. Chapter 70 Injury on the Right Arm After listening to this, Qin Feng fell into deep thought. He didn't expect that Wenxiang Taoism still had so many skills. Fortunately, he met a knowledgeable person today. Yen paused for a moment and spoke again. You have entered the ninth level of literary saint and you must have memorized at least 10,000 volumes of medical books. Although it is cruel to say this, I still recommend you. If you want to step into a higher realm, you might as well change the direction and spend time memorizing some other books to pave the way for becoming an official in the court or becoming a military staff officer in the future. Qin Feng scratched his head and didn't know how to answer. Demons are rampant in Dakian, and they advocate force. There are no civil service assessments such as imperial examinations. If you want to enter the court as an official with the Wenxiang Dao Tong, you can only enter Haowen Academy first, and then accept the assignment. As for joining the army, there are not so many rules and regulations. As long as you have real talents and understand the art of war, the generals will naturally be willing to take you under their command. Just like Xing Sheng hoped that he could join the Shenhou army. But the key is that no matter which direction he chooses, he must leave Jinong City and be separated from the people he cares about. This is something Qin Feng absolutely cannot accept. After all, his original intention of improving his strength was, firstly, to protect himself, and secondly, to protect the important people around him. If he had to separate from his family in order to improve his strength, wouldn't that be putting the cart before the horse? What's more, he has a pair of magical eyes, and it only takes him a moment to memorize a book. Maybe he can walk on a path of cultivation that no one has ever walked before. For example, if the Wenxiang Taoist instructs Xin Wufu to practice, who else can do it besides him? Qin Feng thought proudly. Wait, she just said she memorized 10,000 volumes of books? Qin Feng discovered something suspicious and couldn't help but ask. If you want to step into the ninth rank of literary saint, shouldn't you memorize 100,000 volumes of books? The Wenxi waterfall in the divine sea was clearly compressed 10 times before it was successfully filled and turned into a staircase and a platform for asking the mind. Hearing this, Yun frowned slightly. I don't understand why you ask this. It will take at least several years for a talented and intelligent person to memorize thousands of books, let alone 100,000 books. Could it be that you want to say that when you first entered the ninth rank of literary saint, this was the number? Qin Feng was stunned and nodded blankly. The most fearful thing is that the air will suddenly become quiet, and some people will look a little strange. After a while, Wang Su smoothed things over. Dr. Qin, don't be ridiculous. Even if my young master is as talented as he is, he has only memorized a hundred thousand books 
since he started studying. Even so, the young master's teacher praised him as a genius rarely seen in 10 years. You know, the person who said this is today. Be careful what you say, Yun interrupted. But Wang Su reacted and immediately fell silent. Yun looked at Qin Feng with a trace of undisguised disappointment in his eyes. All literati are proud, but they must also seek truth from facts. Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. None of them believed what he said. They thought he was showing off? He he. If he memorizes less than 100,000 books, he is a genius that is rare to see in 10 years. So who does he count? The greatest genius of all time? That's all. It was just a chance encounter. There was no need to be serious with the other person. What's more, an excellent person like himself was destined to bear the suspicion and suspicion of the world. Qin Feng shook his head slightly and couldn't help but think of that sentence again it's cold at high places. Invincible and the loneliest. Maybe I remembered it wrong. In order to take care of the other party's face, Qin Feng chose to bear everything and gave up the opportunity to show his saintness in front of others. On the other side, the servants in the Qin mansion had prepared the cold soup. Qin Feng drank it for the 13 people and the insect poison in their bodies was completely eliminated. Everyone thanked him profusely and said goodbye. Yun nodded slightly when he saw this. Although this man was a bit vain, his medical attainments were indeed extraordinary. Turning her head to look at the water basin, the thirteen heart-eating goo were still ferocious and terrifying. She opened her red lips slightly and said, Heart-eating goo is extremely difficult to kill. Even if it is chopped into pieces, it is possible for it to be reborn through the corpse. The best the way is to freeze it. And after 7749 days, it will be extinct. This statement is true. The strange Chongji also describes this method of killing the heart-eating poison. But the effect is too slow. I have a better way. Qin Feng took out the vermilion fruit from the Sumeru ring and threw it into the basin. Yun's beautiful eyebrows frowned slightly, confused, until she saw the heart-eating goo in the basin turned into black blood and disappeared. Her narrow eyes widened in surprise. What is this? Why can the heart-eating goo be eliminated? Qin Feng glanced at it and raised the corner of his mouth slightly. This thing is called vermilion fruit. It grows in the south. I also discovered this effect by accident. A flash of shock flashed in Yun's eyes. But it wasn't mentioned in the book. Brother Yun, it is better to have no books at all than to believe in books. The predecessors pioneered the way. Not just for future generations to imitate it. The young man in white was shocked when he heard this. Seeing this expression, Qin Feng didn't say much. His remarks were a bit out of line for people of this era. Inadvertently glancing at the other person's right arm, Qin Feng's thoughts started to change. He turned to look at Wang Su and the two of them, stepped forward and asked in a low voice, Have you ever talked to Brother Yin about the right arm? He has been practicing medicine in Jinong City for so long, and he has never encountered a case of broken meridians. Now that he has such an opportunity to practice, he naturally does not want to miss it. After all, it is all related to his beautiful wife. Wang Su and Wang Su looked at each other and shook their heads. Mo Litian pondered for a moment, walked to the side of the young man in white, and whispered something. Ye Jing listened quietly, her expression calm. It wasn't until Mo Litian finished speaking and stepped away that she raised her head to look at Qin Feng and strolled closer. The most important thing related to the right arm is that everyone will experience inner torment and struggle. Qin Feng did not expect the other party to agree directly. He had already conceived many words in his mind, hoping to guide the other party to let go of his guard step by step. But he never expected that what was waiting for him was an understatement. When can we start? Qin Feng was stunned and asked in surprise. Didn't he make it clear to you? I am only 50% sure. If it fails, there will be no chance of recovery of your right arm. Don't you need to think about it again? You saved my life. I believe in your medical skills. And I'm 50% sure it's worth a try. Yun said calmly. She was obviously a woman, but she was so decisive without any sloppiness, which made Qin Feng couldn't help but admire her. The medicinal materials required for the medicinal solution to repair the meridians are all precious and rare. It will take a lot of time and money to collect them all. If you are really determined, then I will write down the medicinal materials so that you can prepare in advance. Seeing Yun nodding, Qin Feng called Qinger to get a pen and paper, and wrote down one precious medicinal material after another in crooked characters on the paper. Wang Su and Mo Lintian looked at it, and their expressions froze. This calligraphy is really amazing. Chapter 71 Jibiozai Qin Feng glanced at them, and saw their expressions. And his face twitched. If you dare to say that my handwriting is ugly, 
Be careful I get angry on the spot. Wang Su and Wang Su were two fine people. Very discerning. They wanted to say but didn't say anything. They felt very uncomfortable. They turned their heads and looked at the young man in white. As if they were waiting for something. At this time, Yun walked forward with a frown and grabbed the end of the pen with his left hand. Qin Feng's wild curse of calligraphy stopped abruptly. What are you doing? Qin Feng expressed his dissatisfaction. He felt that his calligraphy had improved a lot this time. He was just about to start writing. But he was interrupted by someone. You can write in such an ugly way. Are you really a practicing literary saint? Yun spoke directly. Without any intention of saving face for Qin Feng. Wang Su and Wang Su looked at each other with expressions that showed that this was indeed the case. The lump in their throats instantly disappeared. What the young master said was exactly what they wanted to say but didn't say. Qin Feng opened his mouth and was shocked. The tone of his words made him think of the bad old man at the door of Tinjiakshuan. He was so disrespectful of other people's face and didn't leave any steps behind. Taking advantage of Qin Feng's days, Yun grabbed the brush and started writing on the white paper. Wang Yangjing, Tai and Feng Mu, Jukka Lian Hua. The names of the medicinal materials are vividly displayed on the paper. The handwriting is beautiful and pleasing to the eye. I don't know how many times better than the crooked characters on it. The most important thing is that these words were written by Yan with his weak left hand. If there is no comparison, there will be no harm. Qin Feng was so angry that he couldn't speak. But when he saw the names of the medicinal materials written by the other party, he was surprised and asked, You actually know the prescription for the medicinal solution to repair the meridians? Yun did not hide it. For some reasons, I have checked relevant books, and I have seen similar records in the Tian Yuan Neijing. I couldn't confirm it at first. But after seeing how many herbs you wrote about, I thought it was this one. Qin Feng squinted his eyes and had a lot of thoughts in his mind. Most of the books in Tinjiakshuan were of rare quality in the world. And this, Tian Yuan in Yai Jing, was still on the fourth floor. So it was even more precious. Originally, he was surprised that the other party had read Gui Chong Ji, but he didn't expect that he had also read Tian Yuan in Yai Jing. What is this woman's identity? And why does she have access to so many precious books? Does she also know Ting Yishuan's bad old man? Stab. That was the sound of the paper being torn apart. Qin Feng's thoughts were interrupted. And his eyes widened. Why did she tear out the part one wrote? Yin tore off the messy part of the handwriting and wanted to tear it into pieces again. But she had no feeling in her right arm and it was difficult to do it with one hand. In desperation, she could only crumple the torn white paper into a ball and throw it aside. How much do you dislike my words? Qin Feng twitched the corner of his mouth. Brother Yin, since you know the prescription, just write another one and give it to your subordinates. There is no need to ruin my writing like this. Right. Yin looked away and frowned. What's your calligraphy? Qin Feng opened his mouth and was speechless. This woman has a very straightforward personality, but her emotional intelligence seems to be very low. If it was a four-person dormitory for girls in the previous life, a person like this could only join a four-person WeChat account. Group. Yin ignored Qin Feng and Wu Zi circled the three medicinal herbs on the prescription, Tian Feng Wood, Kasiko, and Millennium Hanji. What does this mean? Do you have these three herbs? Qin Feng asked curiously. No, it still lacks these three flavors. Yin replied lightly. Qin Feng was shocked. The medicinal ingredients for the medicinal solution required a total of 23 flavors, each of which could be said to be priceless. What kind of family background did this person have? He actually collected 23 flavors. Emo Lintian on the side saw his thoughts and said, Dr. Qin, have you ever heard of Jubiozai? Qin Feng was stunned when he heard this. He had naturally heard of Jubiozai. His unreliable father had imagined many times that he could build a business like Jubiozai. Jubiozai started its business in the imperial capital. It was originally a small shop, but in just a few years, it expanded its business to 32 heavenly cities in the southeast, northwest and northwest of Dakian. Each city has its own semicolon. Jubiozai's business involves a wide range of businesses, with caravans all over Dakian. Jubiozai is very keen on collecting rare and rare objects and treasures from all over the world. And every once in a while, it will hold a grand auction, taking the opportunity to make a lot of money. Full? And everyone in the world has heard that Jubiozai can become so big in a short period of time. In addition to the unique vision of the mysterious founder, it must also have a considerable background in the imperial capital. Otherwise, how could Jubiozai be able to easily expand in the 32 heavens? Open a semicolon in the city? You know, the water in Tiancheng is not shallow. 
Jean Fong thought of something. If there is any way to quickly collect medicinal liquids and medicinal materials for repairing meridians, it is definitely through Jubiozai. This group of people may really be a caravan. And it is a caravan from Jubiozai. In this way, the Snow Dragon Horse and the two Divine Martial Guards above the sixth level, although exaggerated, are reasonable. I just don't know what the status of this young master who disguises himself as a man is in Jubiozai. Could he be the young master of some celestial city? Of course I've heard of it. Qin Feng's attitude became more respectful. He had no choice but to be poor and short-minded. Our young master is the young master of Jubiozai, Emolintian said with a smile. It turned out to be really it. Qin Feng took a breath of cold air. May I ask which part of Tianqing it is? Where? Emolintian was stunned for a moment and was about to explain, but was interrupted by Yin. Yulin City. Qin Feng opened his mouth. Yulin City. Tianqing in the middle of the Dakian South region has Yushan nearby, which is rich in jade and treasures, and is extremely rich. It turned out to be the young master there? She is a rich woman. Identification completed. Yun added. This time, I went from Yulin City to Chiyuan City. I originally planned to exchange supplies and sell jade treasures, but I didn't expect to encounter such changes. After the incident in Chiyuan Chung subsides, I will contact Jubio's eye everywhere. I think it will not be difficult to find those three medicinal plants. It's not hard to find a rich woman who is awesome. No wonder he speaks so directly and confidently. However, Qin Feng was worried. Can the chaos in Qi Yuan Cheng be quelled? As far as I know, the other party is well prepared for the invasion of the city. Heart-eating goo, insect plague, giant centipede, no matter which one they are, if they are placed in Jinong City, it will be a disaster for the city. If all three appear at the same time, even if Qi Yuan City is a heavenly city, it will be difficult to deal with it. What's more, Qin Feng didn't believe that those who invaded the city would have no other backups. After all, the terrifyingly powerful giant centipede was just the first offensive to break the city. Yen didn't worry too much about this. The defensive strength of Tiancheng is second to none in Dakian. There is a reason for this. Do you know about the 36 stars and the 12 divine generals? Chapter 72 36 stars 12 divine generals Qin Feng nodded after hearing this. The Demon Slayer Division is divided into Wooden Order, Jade Order, and Red Lotus Order, each of which is divided into one to three stars. Logically speaking, the Red Lotus Three Star Order is the highest combat power of the Demon Slayer Division. But in fact, this is not the case. The Dakian Four Regions Demon Slayer Division selects the 36 strongest people every year from those who hold the Red Lotus Three Star Order, and gives them more resources for training. And they are called the 36 Stars. As for the 12 Divine Generals, their strength is even higher than that of the 36 stars, and they are appointed by Siming, the Demon Slayer Division of the Four Regions. These people have unparalleled combat power, are legendary existences, and are the backbone of the defense of the Four Realms. And in every celestial city, there is at least one such combatant. Generally speaking, it is Sijing, the Demon Slayer Division in the city. But, this disaster in Chiyuan City, based on the few words I heard, According to the Disaster Evaluation Standards of the Demon Slayer Division, it is probably level A. It is impossible to resist with the strength of the city's defenders alone. The Demon Slayer Division divides the invasion of the city into four levels, A, B, C and D. The higher the level, the higher the possibility of the city's destruction. If you want to deal with a Class A disaster, you need at least one Divine General and three thirty-six Heavenly Stars to be in charge. And only then can you possibly avert danger. But combat power of this level is lacking everywhere. And it is basically impossible to appear in one place at the same time. Yin shook his head. From what I saw in Chiyuan City, this chaos has reached an upper level. On the armor? It would take at least the combat power of two god generals to fight against Qin Feng. His face was ugly. The chaos in Chiyuan City this time was so terrifying. Since it is so dangerous, why do you still think that this disaster can be quelled? Qin Feng expressed his doubts. Although the other party did not say it clearly. The look on his face clearly meant so. What is the sixth rank of literary sage? Yen answered the question. It's for divination. Qin Feng immediately replied. It was introduced in the Chaoan Jing that this sixth level realm has the ability to perform astrology and divination to seek good fortune and avoid misfortune. However, the book also vaguely mentioned that this thing in actual operation. It is very metaphysical. For example, if you want to predict the grand prize of one million, but the result is that you just stay at home. 
wait for the lottery, and then just avoid going downstairs and falling. Yin nodded slightly. The Imperial Master Tian Jian has predicted the disaster in Chi Yuan City before. In Chi Yuan City, Spear Immortal, one of the twelve divine generals, and the three thirty-six stars have been on standby. Is there such a thing? Qin Feng's eyes widened. What is the difference between this method of terror and cheating? Yun saw Qin Feng's thoughts and explained. Don't think that any literary Saint Taoist who has entered the sixth level has this kind of ability. Tian Jin Guisher is sitting in the imperial capital, gathering the power of all living beings in the world, and adding only the stargazer in the sky tower can do this divination. If it were anyone else, he would have been afraid that he would not be able to bear the cause and effect and die suddenly. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief. This is only reasonable. If there is no price, wouldn't it be invincible? However, it is no wonder that the Dakian dynasty can be as stable as Mount Tai in this world. It is difficult to imagine that there is a big boss like Tianji and Guisher sitting in charge. He added, But even so, coupled with Qi Yuan City's own combat power, it can only deal with Class A disasters. As for Class A, not enough. Yin nodded and began to recall. And some details that Wang Su and Wang Su had concealed were slowly revealed. At that time, the city was in chaos. The top combat forces of the two sides clashed at high altitude. The powerful energy was like a wave, sweeping across the surrounding areas. Houses collapsed, roads collapsed, and whales continued. Wang Su and Wang Su also joined the battle and fought against the insect. With their strength, it was no problem to deal with some insects that generally had less than three levels of calamity power. However, at that moment, a big black Buddha with three heads and six arms suddenly appeared in the sky above Chi Yuan City. It closed its palms and poured down terrible pressure, directly destroying one-fifth of the city. Yin was affected and seriously injured. Her right arm's meridians were also severed due to the strong energy at that time. In order to protect her, Wang and Su desperately withstood part of the pressure and were severely injured. They did not dare to stay any longer. So they hurriedly helped Yin onto the horse and ran towards the city gate. At a glance outside Chi Yuan City, the insects were as dense as a vast ocean. If you wanted to escape, you had to open a hole. Although the people from the Demon Slayer Division in the city took action, they were unable to repel the swarms of strange insects based on their abilities. Until high in the sky to the south, a black shadow swept over. Who is it? Qin Feng asked. Yin shook his head. He was wearing a black robe and a white mask on his head. So his face couldn't be seen clearly. But with just a wave of his hand, the swarms of insects were crushed into powder. Emolintian, who practices Shinwu Taoism on the side, added, His strength is unpredictable. After opening up a path for us, he swooped at the giant centipede entrenched on the city wall, fought with it, and helped Lord Spear Immortal free his hands. What happened next was just like what Wang and Su had said before. The mysterious man wearing a white mask confronted the giant centipede. The aftermath of the battle affected them. At that time, Yin was bitten by the purple viper and his life was in danger. Eager to save people, they ran south without stopping until nightfall and escaped to Jinyang City. If you think about it, the appearance of that mysterious man was also part of the fortune telling of the heavenly supervisor. Yun looked determined, with deep admiration in his tone. So Qin Feng lowered his head and pondered. In this way, the two sides were indeed evenly matched. Combining what the man from Wang Yueju, Wang Su and Yin said together, the beginning and course of Qi Yuan City's invasion of the city are basically clear. As for the result, now they can only wait. But there was still a doubt in his mind. What on earth were the two demon slayers who escaped from Qi Yuan City here to do? Judging from the escape experience of Yin and others, he also discovered a detail that he had ignored before. And that was time. The Demon Slayer Division arrived at Jinong City in the evening, and the invasion of the city occurred at noon. No matter how fast Qianlaju was, it would take at least five to six hours to arrive. In other words, the two of them had already set off from Chiyuan City before the invasion of the city began. This is unreasonable. At this moment, four unexpected people came outside the front hall of Qin Mansion. The leader was Sher Ziming, with Miss Song at his side, and the two adults wearing wood-colored demon-slaying uniforms they met yesterday followed closely behind. Master Sijing, what are you guys doing? Qin Feng looked confused. Go to the back hall and talk. When everyone came to the back hall, Sher Ziming said directly, Chi Yuan City suffered a disaster yesterday. I received news this morning that the enemies who invaded the city were repulsed last night. But the dragon-suppressing monument was looted by them. 
and the demons were slain in the city. The top experts of the company have gone to pursue him. Hearing this, everyone had different expressions. Some were happy. Some breathed a sigh of relief. But Yin's face was solemn. The dragon suppressing monument is a thing that suppresses a place's luck. According to legend, the 32 heavenly cities of Dakian are not randomly designated, but are key luck nodes drawn based on the trend of the entire Dakian's earth veins. However, when it comes to luck, it is so mysterious that Qin Feng doesn't really believe it. What he didn't understand even more was, what were the evil spirits who invaded the city doing to steal this thing? Could it be that the goal of those guys from the beginning was the Dragon Suppression Monument? Qin Feng raised his head confused and said, Then why did Lord Cixin come to my place? Shur Ziming did not answer. Instead, a thin-faced man wearing a wood-colored demon-slaying uniform said, We hope that you will go to Qiyuan City with us. Chapter 73 Heading to Qiyuan City What nonsense is this man talking about in a serious manner? Qin Feng opened his mouth wide with a look of disbelief. The rest of the people also cast surprised glances. Although the culprits who caused the chaos on the armor have been repelled. Who knows where they have gone? If we encounter him on the way to Qiyuan City, wouldn't he be certain to die? To put it another way, even if we don't encounter them on the road, who can guarantee that those guys won't kill anyone? Wait, the crux of the question is, why should I go? The demon slayer wearing wooden clothes slowly said, of the two of them, the one with a thin face was named Yang He, and the one with a paralyzed face and a silent face was named Zong Tianan. The purpose of this trip is to solve the heart-eating goose scourge in Qi Yuan Cheng. Yesterday morning, Spear Immortal, one of the twelve divine generals, rushed to Qi Yuan City and immediately discovered the heart-eating goo in the Qi Yuan River with his eyes. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows. The heart-eating goo was invisible to the naked eye. It was colorless and odorless, similar to an energy. It was impossible for ordinary people to detect it. But the mind's eye is different. It is a magical power that observes all things with the heart. It can feel the movement of everything around it. After practicing it to the extreme, it can see everything as if it is still, which is equivalent to the legendary bullet time. With such awesome magical powers, it is only logical that he can discover the heart-eating goo. Another master 36 stars, who is traveling with the spear immortal knew the power of this strange insect. He said that if this insect is not eliminated in the Chiyuan River, it will cause endless harm. So he sent someone to find Lord Cixin of Jinan City. And we these two are the ones who have been ordered. Yang, he said. Jin Feng was puzzled and looked at Shur Ziming, who explained, The wine gourd I am carrying is a treasure. It is called the Baojan Huang Gourd. It can bind the soul and transform in. I think they want me to use this gourd to remove Chi Chi, the heart-eating goo in the Yuan River. I see. But having said so much, and you have the ability to take out these bugs. I communicated with the four colleagues. They just ate some food from Chiyuan City and were infected with the heart-eating goo. Most of the people in Chiyuan City must have been harmed by it. Dot so. I hope you can go back with us and heal those people. Yang he clasped his fists. And Zhang Tianan on the side also bowed slightly. These two people were so sincere for the sake of the people of Chiyuan Cheng. Qin Feng really didn't know how to refuse them for a while. But the crisis in Qi Yuan Cheng has not really been resolved. And Qin Feng does not want to make fun of his own life. And his face is very struggling. Uncle. Lan Ningxuang hesitated to speak. In her heart, she naturally did not want Qin Feng to put himself in danger. Song Filan stood aside and said nothing. Just waiting quietly for what choice Qin Feng would make. At this moment, Yun, who was wearing white clothes, said, A scholar has the world in mind. Why should you hesitate at this time? It's natural to go. If feelings don't go away, your back won't hurt when you stand and talk? Seeing that Qin Feng was still struggling, Yin frowned slightly. Don't embarrass scholars. Yes, yes, you are noble. You are amazing. You just escaped from death, and you want to push me into a pit of fire. Qin Feng glanced sideways. Brother Yin is also a scholar. You might as well go with me. It's easy to do things on the way. A companion? Yin did not hear Qin Feng's strange aura and was about to agree, but was stopped by Wang Su on the side. Master, don't forget your right arm. Oops, I forgot she was injured. The plan to drag people into the water was aborted on the spot, and the pressure came to him again. Qin Feng looked ugly. When Yang He and Yang He saw Qin Feng like this, they looked at each other and shook their heads. If Dr. Qin is really unwilling, then we won't force it. Sir Shur Ziming, we have been delayed for a long time, so we should hurry up as soon as possible. Let's go. Shur Ziming nodded. 
then looked at Jean Fong with a half smile, stepped forward and whispered, Chiyuan City is not Jean on City. The people there are big shots. If you can sell them a favor, it will always be beneficial in the future. You can weigh it yourself. In this world, if you accumulate more connections, you will have more protection. Jean Fong was indeed persuaded. Then if I go, this reward, Yang he raised his eyebrows. No heavenly city is short of money. It is our duty to save all people from fire and water. Jean Fong immediately agreed. Seeing the weird expressions on Yang he and others, Jean Fong coughed dryly. Connections and money are secondary. The main thing is that I want to contribute my meager strength to the people of Chiyuan City. Of course, in addition to these two reasons, there must be a lot of people in Chiyuan City who are infected with the heart-eating goo. Maybe they can take this opportunity to accumulate a lot of literary energy. Chin Fong also has his own considerations. The matter had been finalized, and the few people did not delay any longer. They quickly prepared their horses and were ready to set off. La Ningchuan wanted to go together, but was stopped by Chin Fong. The chaos just broke out in Chiyuan City. No one knows whether it will affect Jinong City. You stay at home and protect the Qin Mansion. Otherwise I will leave. Not grounded. Um. Qin Feng reacted and felt that what he said was the same as planting a flag. Bah. 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 He spat a few times in his mind. And then said. I have Lord Xijing and Miss Song going with me this time. So nothing will happen. Uncle. Please be careful along the way. La Ningxuang no longer insisted. Well? Qin Feng looked at the Yen group again clasped his fists at Wang Su and Imo Litian and said, You can stay in my Qin mansion first. Anyway, we can't get the medicinal materials together in a while. I'm leaving. During this period, I hope you two can protect my Qin family. Don't worry. Dr. Qin. The two promised. After the matter was explained, Qin Feng came to the door of Qin mansion. And Shi Ziming and the other four had already sat on the horses. The servants of the mansion led the best kept horse in the house to the door. Qin Feng was about to kick his legs to get on the horse. But as soon as he lifted his legs halfway, his expression suddenly became awkward. Shi Ziming saw the clues and looked strange. You kid! Is it possible that you don't know how to ride a horse? Qin Feng nodded stiffly. Yang, he said. It doesn't matter. There are four horses here. You can just find someone to sit on one with. That's a good idea. Qin Feng looked up and saw two thousand-mile horses and two yellow-maned horses. Thousand miles of horse is a rare good horse in the world. If Snow Dragon horse is like Lamborghini, then thousand miles of horse is also a Mercedes Benz. Who can refuse the temptation of luxury cars? But there are many dangers along the way. To be cautious, it would be more reassuring to ride with Sir Zimming. Qin Feng thought about it and walked towards Miss Song's horse without hesitation. From the very beginning, this was not a multiple choice question, but a multiple choice question. What the H? LR3 stinky men. The long-legged beauties in tight pants or YYDS. However, just when Qin Feng was looking forward to riding on the same horse with Miss Song, he was easily lifted up by Shi Ziming with one hand and placed on the saddle behind him. It's just a matter of choosing a horse. But you still have to think about it for so long? You brat. Just ride on one with me. I really appreciate your whole family. Qin Feng's face twitched. Chapter 70 for the unusual two people. While riding on horseback, Qin Feng was really suffering. People who don't know how to ride a horse will have a turbulent feeling in their stomach if they are bumped. What made Qin Feng even more uncomfortable was that the gorcher Ziming was carrying on his back would bump into him at every turn. Especially when the horse jumped up. The huge gourd would press underneath him. The sour feeling could not be described in words. It would be fine if we were walking on mountain roads and rivers. At least the road surface would be smoother. There would not be so many potholes. And the frequency of horses jumping would be lower. But he didn't know why Yang He and the two were so crazy. They chose to walk through the mountains and forests instead of walking on a normal road. The horses bumped from time to time. Which man could bear it? No. If I don't. Okay. The rest of my life will be ruined if I continue like this. Qin Feng looked painful and wanted to ask for a different horse. At this moment, Yang He took the first step to rein in the horse. And the horse neighed and stopped leisurely. Shang Tianan, who was walking at the end of the team, reacted the fastest. Without saying a word, he tightened the reins and the horse stopped. What's wrong? Shirziming asked aloud. Yang he replied, Yesterday brother Zhang and I traveled a long distance with the Qinli horse. And the horses were very tired. There is no need to rush back to Qiyuan City today. We will take a rest here. Can you rest? 
Chin Fong breathed a sigh of relief. He couldn't wait to get off the horse and shake his body. His whole body felt much more relaxed. The remaining people got off their horses one by one, but no one sat down. Yang He and the two were feeding Kianlaju with water. Sher Ziming took out a small wine gourd from his arms, raised his head and took a sip, with a satisfied look on his face. As for Song Filin, she chose to rest against a towering tree with her eyes closed. Chin Fong was not surprised to see this. After all, if there is an emergency, the reaction speed is always faster while standing than while sitting. The professional performance of these people doubled the sense of security in his heart. Of course, Sher Ziming drank some alcohol while on the road, which would deduct some points in his mind. Slowly walking into Song Filin, Chin Fong chose a comfortable place to sit down. Anyway, he was fighting the fifth scum, and there was not much difference between standing and sitting. He couldn't treat himself badly. He glanced at the beauty next to him. Even though it was covered by a black scarf, the exposed half of her delicate profile was still refreshing. Speaking of which, he had never seen the whole picture of Song Filin, so he couldn't help but feel a little pity. At this time, Chin Fong thought when he saw Yang He and the two men taking off the water bottles on the side of the saddle and raising their heads to drink. He casually took out a kettle from the sumer ring. As soon as he opened the bottle, he pretended to think of something and handed it to Song Filin on the side. Miss Song has been running all the way. She must be thirsty. Right? I have some water here. If you don't mind, you might as well drink some. Song Filin, who had her arms folded across her chest, heard this and opened her eyes. She turned her head and looked up. Those light blue eyes were still so enchanting that it made people feel heart-stopping. The outline under the black scarf moved slightly. And he said lightly, No need. The plan failed. Chin Fong could only take back the kettle angrily and take a sip himself. In order to ease his embarrassment, he changed the subject and said, Why did Miss Song go to Chi Yuan Cheng this time? When Song Filin heard this, a trace of unnaturalness flashed in her eyes. It's a coincidence. The other party didn't want to say more. Chin Fong raised his eyebrows. And naturally it was hard to ask more questions. And Sher Ziming came to the two of them at some unknown time, took a sip of wine and said, What a coincidence. You obviously heard in the demon slaying division that we were going to take this kid to Chi Yuan Cheng. And then, uh, Song Filin's eyes were slightly narrowed. Her eyes were cold. And the two daggers on her waist had been unsheathed at some point. And they were spinning with a cold light. Sher Ziming shook his head and turned to leave. My drinking ability has been getting worse and worse recently. After just a few drinks, I got drunk and started talking nonsense. Chin Fong looked confused, turned his head and asked Miss Song. What next? Song Filin didn't answer. She put away the dagger, left the big tree, and said not far away, it's time to set off. If we continue to delay, we don't know when we can reach Chiyun City. Yang He and Zhang Tianan looked at each other and nodded. Going to mount the horse again? Chin Feng's face froze, and he opened his mouth to ask for a different horse. But before the words were spoken, a sudden change occurred. A giant snake that was as thick as a person and about ten feet suddenly sprang out from the forest. It aimed at Yang He and the two of them and opened its mouth. The width of its upper and lower jaws was enough to swallow a horse. At such a critical moment, Sher Ziming was about to take action. But Zhang Tianan, who had never said a word from beginning to end, stepped forward with his right foot and punched out violently. The huge head of the giant snake melted in the blink of an eye. There was a blood mist, and the huge snake body suddenly fell to the ground. Yang He and the others didn't take it seriously, wiped the blood on their bodies, got on their horses and said, Let's go. But at this moment, the expressions of Qin Feng and the others changed slightly. The name of this snake is the Forest Python. It is recorded in the Qin Hundred Demon Chronicles that the Forest Python's magical power is to become giant. Its power can reach up to 10 feet in the second rotation and 20 feet in the fourth rotation. It is extremely powerful. Looking at the forest python just now, it is obvious that it already has the strength of the second level tribulation power. But problems also arise. Chin Fong had already observed that the token on Zhang Tianan's waist was only a one star wood spirit. When converted into combat power, it was at most the peak level of ninth grade. How could such a person easily kill a powerful forest python with one punch? There is only one explanation. He is hiding his strength. The other person, Yang He, looked calm and unfazed when he saw this scene. He was obviously used to it, and it was also very problematic. There's something wrong with these two. 
Chin Fong swallowed a mouthful of saliva, opened his eyes, and looked at the two of them. Yang He, who has a thin face, has a strong green yin chi all over his body. He is only one step behind Shi Ziming. Even if he has not reached the fifth grade puppet realm, he is not far behind. Shang Tianan, who is unsmiling and taciturn, has strong blood and continuous golden energy in his body. Coupled with the power of his punch just now, he is very likely to be a master at the peak of the sixth level of concentration. These two people are obviously so strong, and they obviously have Ching Yu's strength. Why do they pretend to be a wooden order to kill the demon? Qin Feng was panicking for no reason. He only felt his scalp numb. He pinched his palm secretly to calm down and show that he was still pretending to be fine. Naturally, I didn't dare to mention the matter of changing horses. At this time, it was the safest to stay with Shi Ziming. All five people mounted their horses and started on their way again. With Yang He still at the front of the team and Zhang Tian and at the rear, as if the two of them had already reached some kind of tacit understanding. Previously, Xin Feng didn't think there was anything wrong with the positioning of Yang He and the two of them. He just thought it was convenient to protect the entire team. But now it seems that this is clearly to surround the three of them. On the way, Qin Feng took advantage of the fact that Yang He and the others were not paying attention and whispered, Master Xijing, they, a small hand transformed from a shadow instantly covered Qin Feng's mouth, interrupting his words. Shi Ziming swung the horse rope without moving his mouth, but a voice came to Qin Feng's ears, No matter what happens in the next journey, don't leave my side. Chapter 75 The Real Mission Tap 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 Four horses shuttled through the mountains and forests, and Qin Feng once again put on the mask of pain. Yan He, who was at the front of the team, seemed to be deliberately slowing down. The sky was getting dark, but they hadn't even finished half of the journey, because he discovered the abnormality between the two of them. Qin Feng secretly observed each other along the way. Yang He was very careful in his route. He was always mobilizing the yin energy around him and sensing the movements around him. Zhang Tianan, who was at the back of the team, kept the golden energy flowing into his whole body, and his muscles were tense. Whenever Yang He made a move, his reaction was also the fastest. These two people were obviously wary of something. The five people came to the depths of the mountain forest, surrounded by darkness and towering trees. Yang He tightened the reins of the horse again, and Qian Leju slowly stopped. He said, Everyone, it's getting late. We might as well take a break and eat something during this time. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows when he heard this. There is a rule for walking in the mountains and forests. After dark, if you want to stop for a long rest, you cannot eat, because the light of the campfire and the smell of food will attract those mountain spirits and wild monsters. If you stay for too long, you can easily fall into a dangerous situation. Yang He got off his horse and looked around. He took out four white flags from somewhere and inserted them in the four directions of the southeast, northwest, and then walked to the middle of the formation flag. He turned his right hand into a palm and slammed it to the ground, with him as the center. The bright green light connected to the white flags on all sides, and a formation formed instantly. This is the sixth level by a sixth level spirit sealing array, which can guard against ghosts and ghosts, and can also block the perception of most mountain elves and wild monsters. Jean Feng's face was ugly, and the other party didn't even act. Is this going to be a showdown? Master Sher, I have been hiding something before, and I hope you can forgive me, Yang He said respectfully, clasping his fists. Sher Ziming was unmoved. A sixth grade peak hundred ghost Taoist, a sixth grade peak divine martial artist, disguised as a wood order to slay demons, escaped when Chi Yuan City needed you most. When the people needed you most, arrive at Jinong City. Are you worthy of staying in the Demon Slayer Division? Underneath the calm tone was an unknown anger. Qin Feng knew that Lord Xijing, who was usually not a serious person, was really angry. Song Filin suddenly came behind Qin Feng, fully alert. The atmosphere suddenly became tense, and the air was as thick as a quagmire. Qin Feng's palms were covered in cold sweat. He did not look at Yang He, because as long as he stood next to Shi Ziming, Bai Gui's moves could not hurt him. But he must be careful about Zhang Tian In, a sixth level warrior at the peak of concentration. With such a few steps away, the opponent can smash his head in the blink of an eye, just like he did with the forest python before. The four horses, perhaps feeling the oppressive atmosphere, moved their hooves restlessly. Zhang Tianan still didn't speak. He just held the horse's reins and stroked the horse's mane. At this moment, Yang He sighed and broke the silence. You don't have to be like this. 
Brother Zhang and I have absolutely no ill intentions. We rushed to Jinyan City not because we wanted to be deserters, but because we had important missions. Sure, Ziming sneered. If you are still using the previous incident as an excuse, there is no need to say more. The previous matter was naturally referring to the heart-eating goose scourge. If Yang He and the two of them really only had the strength of one star of Mu Ling, there would be nothing wrong with them being sent to carry out such a mission. But these two masters at the peak of the sixth rank, in an ordinary small town, could even become Xi Jinping's existence, which is a rare combat power. Knowing that a war was coming, unless Qi Yuan Ching senior officials were clever, they would never be able to send them away to carry out such a low-priority task. You know, the most important thing is to defend Qi Yuan City in that situation. The matter of the heart-eating goo is naturally just incidental. Our real mission is to keep something safe and return it safely after the chaos on the armor subsides. What could be more important than the survival of Qi Yuan Cheng? Qin Feng blurted out subconsciously. When Yang He heard this, he struggled for a moment. It wasn't until Zhang Tianan nodded to him that he said one word. Suppressing the Dragon Monument. As soon as these words came out, Qin Feng and the three of them all raised their heads and looked at each other. But in the morning, we clearly said that the Dragon Suppressing Monument had been taken away by the enemy. Could it be? Qin Feng seemed to have guessed something. The Dragon Suppressing Monument left in the city is fake. The secret that had been hidden in his heart was revealed. And Yang He looked much more relaxed. As expected, Qin Feng took a breath of cold air. He was able to guess in advance that the enemy's target was the dragon suppressing monument. And then the civic cat replaced the prince. Could it be that the heavenly supervisor had calculated this? This is so awesome. Will I be able to be this awesome in the future? Qin Feng thought as he stroked his chin. With such a mission, it also explains why Yang He and the two of them pretended to be Mu Ling's demon slayer. After all, it would be too suspicious if two lords of the Qingyu order left Qiyuan City before the war started. If the enemy found out, they would definitely pursue and intercept them. But Qin Feng still has a doubt. What is the use of the dragon suppressing monument? Why does the enemy want to rob it? And why does Qi Yuan Cheng have to fight to the death to protect it? In the book records, there is only a few words about the Zhilong monument, a treasure that suppresses a party's luck. Luck, on the other hand, is an elusive thing that cannot be seen or touched. To be so attached to it is, to be honest, a bit puzzling. Besides, Luck belongs to the land. So what's the use of just taking away the dragon suppressing monument? Qin Feng frowned. The more he thought, the more he didn't understand. Why come to Jinyang City? Wouldn't it be safer to go to other celestial cities? Sher Ziming asked aloud, and there was no anger in his tone. Qin Feng turned his head and looked around. Sherzi clearly knew the importance of the dragon suppressing monument. Otherwise his attitude would not have changed so quickly. Yang He did not hide anything. The closest Tianqing to Qiyuan City. Even if you work hard, it will take a day to get there. And the longer the delay on the road, the higher the possibility of an accident. We don't dare to gamble. It's reasonable, but not enough. Sure, Ziming didn't fully believe it. The idea of asking Master Sure to use the treasure gourd to eliminate the heart eating goo in Qiyuan River is true. But this is just a way. The most important thing is that when Master Gun Xian came to Qiyuan City, he handed Master Xijing a tip's bag which contained only one sentence take the dragon suppressing monument to Jinyang City. Sher Ziming closed his eyes, wondering what he was thinking. Qin Feng raised his eyebrows. The Lord Xijing mentioned in Yang Hiku was naturally not Sher Ziming, but Xijing of Qi Yuan Cheng. As for the tip bag, it was most likely the work of the Imperial Master Tian Jin. But why did he have to go to Jinyang City? Could there be any accidents if he went to other places? By the way, how far can the divination ability of a high-ranking literary saint reach. Qin Feng fell into deep thought. 